Chapter 1. Myas is on fire. And why butthole is burning, fuck, make it stop please. With an unsightly face filled with tears and snort, Felix clutched his as cheeks tightly while rolling on the floor, leaving behind him a trail of blood that was coming out of his anus. His shrieks kept echoing non-stop inside a colossal hall that was floored using tiles embodied with colorful gems. Walls dyed with amber color gleaming under the artificial light of milky white gems, which were holstered on the ceiling. Their bright light illuminated not just the walls but everything that was inside the hall with vivid details. Starting with the soldiers' statues, that were standing uprightly at the corners of the hall, each holding a different type of weapon with one arm, while the other arm had a purplish chain rolled up their forearms. Like they were trying to clasp it with their own dear life. Those four purplish chains were connected to a small platform that was in the very center of the hall. They shackled it so tight that it was affixed midair without any support. At the surface of the platform, a fist-sized flame that had no color just like water was floating and flickering gently above it. While underneath it, two corpses were lying unmoving. Well, it was actually just one corpse, as the other was merely a blackened skeleton. Slam! Felix's unrestrained rolling was finally stopped as he collided with the corpse. If his eyes weren't hazy from crying his heart out, he would have seen that he just slammed into Kathy. His clan mate joined the ruins exploration party just like him, seeking natural treasures and resources to enhance her bloodline path further. Alas, here she was lying cold with one of her eyeballs dug out from its roots. Previously, her eye was assaulted by a needle made of colorless flame sent by that entity on the top of the platform. She dug her own eye out, trying her best to remove that needle and stop the hellish agony it was causing her. Sadly, her present form was enough to entail that her attempt failed miserably. Well, look at the bright side. At least she was not dealt with the same fate as Felix, who was still shrieking like a little girl who just had her lollipop stolen. Although his pained screams were a bit too bitchy, Felix could totally be excused since his butthole had just got penetrated by the same flame needle. Finally unable to take any more, he let one last scream and fainted with eyes rolled at the back of his head. To understand why he was even in this fucked up situation, one must first understand the events that led to this point in time. Seven days earlier, Felix's clan exploration crew picked up signals of a massive amount of energy coming from a destroyed planet nearby. They were on their way to the clan after successfully finishing their mission. But, after they noticed those signals, there was nowhere in hell they would have ignored them and move on. Hence, they changed their course and went directly towards that said planet. After landing, they immediately noticed, that the signals were coming from underneath a destroyed magnificent city that had half of its structures buried deep underground. Just like any exploration team, their senses tingled that it was their lucky day. After all, they just found a deserted city that probably belonged to one of the universe's superior races. The city's magnificence even while destroyed, made them reach such a conclusion. Instead of reporting what they found to their clan like they were taught to, Greed took the best of them and made them vote to explore the ruins by themselves. However, the city was humongous, and it would take them years to explore half of it. Thus, the captain proposed to split up into teams made of three each. Felix, Kathy, and Jaden, who sadly turned into a burned skeleton, formed one team and went to explore the western side of the city. Obviously, during the first day, Felix's party didn't come across anything worthy of their attention. Nonetheless, they didn't give up, as they kept on searching for a path that led to the underground, hoping to be the first to reach the place where the signal was emitting from. Yet, they still came out empty on the second day as well. Then came the third day, and still the same disappointing result. On the fourth day, nothing changed. On the fifth day, exhaustion started to wear them out. On the sixth day, when they were losing hope, Jaden spotted a two-meter hole hidden underneath the bricks of a destroyed building while he was taking a piss. However, instead of telling his teammates, he decided to explore the tunnel solo. First come, first serve, right? Unfortunately, what he found deep underground weren't long-lost legacies, inheritance, treasures, or such as they expected, but a long, very long semidark path led to an unknown destination. Without further ado, he climbed up and went to inform Felix and Kathy. The gloomy semidark path scared the shit out of him. He didn't have the guts to tread it alone. After hearing the news, Felix decided not to report the situation to the rest but keep it to themselves. Who could blame him, though? 
the exploration crew had at least 54 bloodliner, aiming to be the first to find the treasures. Felix, who was part of the weakest bunch in the crew, wasn't a retard to give up such an advantage for a pat in the head. Jaden thought exactly like him. As for Kathy? She wasn't too eager to go with just the three of them alone. However, few enticing words from Felix did the trick, making her drop her worry down and explore the path with them. They walked, walked, and continued to walk for a straight twelve hours before they finally spotted a sparkle of golden light at the end of the path. If their bodies weren't enhanced from their bloodline integration, they would have honestly dropped dead tired in the middle of the trail. They ran towards it with eager expressions. However, the moment they reached the end of the path and saw what was giving off that golden light, they couldn't help but stare wide-eyed, not daring to believe their eyes. A gigantic broken gate made completely out of heron amber stones. One of the rarest luxurious material in the known universe could only be extracted from the outer core of a planet if the harsh conditions of its creation were met. Yet this precious stone that could only be chanced upon by luck was being used for a humongous gate that reached 50 meters in height not to mention its width and depth. They honestly were beyond speechless and on the verge of questioning their own reasoning. Still, this gate just made their previous conclusion that the city belonged to an ancient superior race more solid. They knew that those races were a league apart from the human race. Whether in strength, culture, wealth, and even technological advancement. There was just no fair comparison between the two. This news didn't make them feel indignant but actually excited. Excited that whatever was behind that gate was definitely what they came for. They rushed in the direction of a slight opening at the bottom of the broken gate, resembling a rat hole in a wall. Felix lay down and crawled on his stomach, eating dirt and dust, yet his eyes never stopped shimmering with delight for even a second. After he passed through, Kathy and Jaden followed one by one. Immediately after dusting their outfits, they raised their heads and stared in shock at the hall that had the small platform shackled midair by those four purplish chains, and the soldiers' statues who were clasping those chains tightly. Yet, what truly shocked them was actually the colorless flame that appeared more like a sphere of water. If it wasn't flickering from time to time, they would have honestly assumed so. Still, they never saw or heard about such an uncanny flame in their entire life. They knew that they just hit the jackpot. There was no way such a strange-looking flame wasn't a natural treasure. In their eyes, the flame must be a natural treasure for fire elemental users. Although neither of them had a fire element, they still could sell it for a shitload of supremacy coins in the Universal Virtual Reality, UVR. They traded glances between each other, not knowing how to carry on. There was only one flame, but three of them. It was clear that trusting each other on holding the flame in their spatial card was not an option. They might be clan mates, but it didn't mean they were close tight friends. Abruptly, Felix bolted towards the platform, uncaring about his teammates' ugly expression. He didn't give them a single second to think things through before forcing them to race after him, trying their best to catch up. Yet, he sneakily slowed down his speed, allowing those two to surpass him quickly. They didn't see anything odd about his lackluster pace, as they knew that he was probably still tired from their long walk in the path. Felix kept slowing down his speed until he stopped all at once and retreated next to the hole, which they came from. If those two didn't have their entire focus captured by the colorless flame, they would have noticed that he bailed out. Oh, fresh souls to possess? Not bad. Suddenly, Felix, Kathy, and Jaden all froze in shock after hearing an angelic voice in their minds, sweet and enticing that might let even the devil himself drop his guard down. Kathy and Jaden, who were the nearest to the flame spirit, immediately turned around, planning to sprint towards Felix. They didn't know who spoke, and they weren't about to stay still in their position to find out. Their gut feeling told them to back off as far as possible. Unfortunately, the moment they entered the flame spirit territory and woke her up, their lives were pretty much doomed. Phew! Phew! Two colorless flame needles were thrown with the speed of light at their heads. One penetrated Jaden's ear, and the other penetrated Kathy's eye. Ah! Kaya! Before Felix's brain could even comprehend what had just happened, he heard two agonizing screams, far surpassing whatever he had heard in his entire life. His eyes landed on his two clanmates, who were currently thrashing around like fish caught in a net. His legs stiffened, not letting him take a single step back. 
he just kept watching, scared shitless, Kathy uses two fingers to dig deep within her eyeball, trying to get out that needle. Alas, she dug nothing but her eyeball out with her pale hand covered in blood. Yet she didn't seem to mind, as she only kept screaming and begging for the pain to be over. Sadly, neither her wish was fulfilled, nor anyone came to her rescue. She only left two last whimpers before going silent once and for all. TSK, she couldn't even handle the first stage of possession. Confused as ever from how things escalated so fast, Felix switched his vision from Kathy's corpse into unexpectedly Jaden, who just spoke. Dumbfounded, his eyes made direct contact with Jaden and instantly knew that it was definitely someone else. However, just as Jaden opened up his mouth, trying to speak again, his body started to burn, turning his hands and legs first into ash, followed by his torso and head. The only thing left from him were his blackened bones. Shit! Another failure. I had enough of this shitty place. It's been already 20 million years of imprisonment. I fucking had enough. The flame spirit cursed in Felix's mind, waking him up from his stupor. Boy, you better not disappoint me as well. She said coldly. Without a second delay, Felix turned around and lay on the floor, trying to crawl back inside the hole and leave this damned place. The thought of fighting didn't even cross his mind as he saw the speed those needles traveled with. He knew that all of his bloodline abilities didn't have a single way to defend against them. Not to mention, if he entered through the hole, his head would be completely protected from those needles that were obviously targeting his weak vitals to reach his brain and enter his consciousness. Do you think the ones before you didn't use the same strategy as yours? She laughed like a deranged person and said, I may not succeed in sinking our souls together, but at least I will add another butthole virginity to my collection. Thank you for that. She said sincerely. Scared out of his wits by what he just heard, Felix reflexively tried to turn around and protect his ass. Yet, the hole was too tight to let him make such a large movement. Hold on a second. Let's talk things through. He requested a cracking voice, hoping to buy a couple of seconds to pass through the other side. Unfortunately, the moment his torso was inside the hole, leaving his lower body outside in the open, he heard the spirit flame say in satisfaction, perfection. As all things should be. No. He screamed subconsciously, as he felt that his ass was being targeted by a rapist. Phew. The needle flew straight to his anus, resembling a dart hitting the bullseye. The flame spirit must have practiced thousands of times to have such precise accuracy. Ay -ay 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 -ay. My ass is melting. I am sorry for ruining your sleep. Please let me go. Henceforth, a symphony of shrieks and beggings resounded in the hall and the semi-dark path. Felix kept trying to move, wanting to ease up the pain by a little bit, yet the hole he was in made it almost impossible. Thus, he crawled back with his face planted on the dirt and hands clasped tightly on his ass cheeks. After getting his entire body outside, he immediately started rolling from the hole to where Kathy's corpse was, leaving behind a long trail of blood. The distance between the two wasn't a joke. He really rolled himself out cold. Inside Felix's sea of consciousness. A colorless flame slowly started to take the shape of a woman with shoulder-length wavy crimson hair that shone with crystal luster. Citrine yellowish eyes that radiate beams of light and heat just like stars. Above them, implausibly artistic black eyebrows, while beneath them, an elegantly straight nose, and broad and sensual bright rouge lips. All of those ravishing characteristics were contained within a flawless, elegant pale face that's on an hourglass curvy body with a perfect-sized chest and rear. Anyone who saw this otherworldly beauty would agree that only the universe's beauty could be compared to her. No matter their race or gender. Unfortunately, this stunning image was ruined instantly when she started to touch all of her assets while laughing hysterically. Finally. After twenty million years of imprisonment, and millions of souls that I failed to sink with. Finally. I found the perfect soul that matches mine without backlash. I as no origin of law, finally going to be free. Suddenly she calmed down her joy and thought, no matter what, I have to take control of this soul, even if I sacrifice part of my laws. I cannot let this chance slip by. Her form soon started to disintegrate into a mist that spread to cover the entire sea of consciousness. However, 
Just as she tried to ignite the mist so it would burn this consciousness and replace it, a shout filled with anger and humiliation resonated sonorously around the place, over my dead body, you old hag. The sea of consciousness that was just calm seconds ago began to rise with waves hitting the wall surrendering it. Roars of the sea covered the entire area as the waves kept smashing the soul barrier, trying to demolish it. Asna quickly figured what Felix was doing and yelled with a horrified voice, Stop it, you idiot. Are you trying to kill yourself for eternity? She quickly started to coax him logically, Please stop, even if I destroyed your sea of consciousness, you could still be revived later, or at least be reborn in another form. And even if you detonated your soul, I would not die with you. Felix, who just woke up for the most traumatizing experience in his life, was having none of her bullshit anymore. I would rather be reborn as a void creature in the universe than let you have what you want. This is for my butthole virginity. He shouted one last time as his soul barrier began to collapse on the sea of consciousness. Crash crash. You lunatic. Asna screamed in despair. Then suddenly, her expression turned crazed as well, I can't let this chance go by, I will start the merging process with his soul and if it got destroyed, my existence would be erased with it as well since our souls will be connected. Even though it's not the freedom that I seek, but I would rather be erased than spent another second in this prison, a few moments later, she finished the process of merging successfully. She sighed in relief and waited for the explosion to happen with a peaceful mild smile. Within the hall, an explosion that had the same power as of Earthling's old age nuclear bomb went off abruptly, destroying, well, just Jaden's bones and Kathy's corpse. The rest? Remained absolutely unscratched. At the moment of the explosion. Near the core of the same galaxy that Felix was currently at. An eye with an astronomical size unsealed itself silently. Its pupil was as dark as a black hole. Not a single light particle was being reflected on it. It glanced at the direction of the explosion and pondered, did something happen to the place I was imprisoned in? He kept looking at the same spot and instantly created a mirror that showcased everything that happened, since the spaceship arrived at the ruins, interesting, so that which finally found a soul compatible enough to hold her shameless spirit without backlash. He then started to laugh out loud after seeing Felix detonating himself due to humiliation. Ha 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 ha, you deserve it, you wench. If those old fogies saw what you did, they will probably denounce you for ruining the image of the Unigen race. But since you seek the freedom that much, to the point of trying even to erase your existence, I will break the rules of our race and give you a hand. He then gazed at the explosion, and time was suddenly stopped in that place. Everything was suspended in the same position. The eye looked deep within the explosion and saw a wisp of a soul in the process of being extinguished. Then, it sent two fingers that traveled through space-time and grabbed it swiftly towards its place. Two minutes later. The eye kept scanning the soul wisp with intrigue. He realized that both of their souls had merged to form one. But Felix's soul had total control of it. So, if he wanted to give Asna a second chance at life, Felix would benefit from it more than her since she would only be viewing for his eyes with zero control. He he, that's for her to solve, not me. Amused, he chuckled at the wisp one last time and then threw it at its humongous pupil. The eye being sealed its eye slowly in exhaustion after overusing space-time laws to send them into another timeline. A timeline that was the same as this one. Safe journey. He murmured one last time. Chapter 2. On an island in the middle of the northern Pacific Ocean, a neglected resort hotel was built near a beach. Inside a dimly lighted suite, a young man suddenly woke up with sweat on his forehead while taking deep breaths each time. He clutched his head tightly with his fingers, trying to dig deep within his brain to stop the agony that assaulted him during his nap, Aru. However, he soon gave up his futile attempts and let out a long shriek, passing out on his bed with rolled eyes. His scream managed to alert the guards who were standing in front of the sweet door. One of them rushed inside, heading towards the bedroom while holding a handgun. Young Master Felix, are you alright? He yelled. Yet, he received no response, so he kicked the bedroom door open when he reached it. He took a quick peek inside the room with one eye. Sure enough, he saw Felix lying on his bed unmoving above a puddle of sweat covering the bedsheets like someone just urinated on them. If Felix's cousin saw the current situation, they would make sure to shame him to death. 
the bodyguard dashed forward and touched Felix's neck to check if he was alive. As he confirmed that Felix was not dead and probably just unconscious, he sighed in relief. He knew that the family would definitely get him executed if any harm befallen Felix under his watch. He called for the room service and ordered sternly, you have five minutes to make a tonic that can help someone in regaining conscious, go make haste, six minutes later. Felix, whose nose was assaulted by the nasty tonic, regained his consciousness and groggily opened his eyes, who am I? Where am I? Who is this man looking at me like I'm his son, is he my father? But he is ugly. Am I ugly as well? Before his thoughts jumbled more, a vast amount of memories flooded his brain with great momentum. Unfortunately, his already weak brain after the soul possession couldn't handle the load of them all at once. Thus, he fainted again. His head hit the bedsheet with a plop sound and rolled eyes. The bodyguard soul instantly escaped his body after hearing that sound. He kept repeating in his mind, I am so dead, so dead, so dead, he realized that Felix was probably poisoned. After all, no one faints for no reason, not once but twice in a row. He looked at the tonic in his hands like it was a divine artifact and placed it under Felix's nose, while praying sincerely for Felix to wake up and not faint again. Felix smelled that nasty tonic again and woke up, but this time with clarity in his eyes. Memories of his past life started to rearrange themselves with an order in his mind. He smiled with triumph after viewing them, just as planned, how can someone like me die such uneventful life? My courage of detonating my soul due to humiliation, and wounded pride must have moved some entity into giving me a second chance in life. A second voice suddenly interjected itself while he was bragging, bastard, your shame truly knows no bounds, to even justify that your rebirth was part of your plan. You really need some serious help, Felix's grin instantly stiffened after recognizing this hateful voice. How could he not recognize the voice of the witch who caused him to undergo the most traumatic experience in his previous life? He soon shook his head in denial, I must be tripping due to a mental shock I received when those memories flooded my brain. His eyes brightened up after remembering a condition he saw online before, it must be that mental condition PTSD. I definitely got it after all the traumatic things I went through, he just kept convincing himself. Definitely, must, it can only be this, Asna sighed hopelessly. Am I going to be stuck for eternity with this idiot? Felix reflexively cursed her back out loud, you are the idiot, you evil witch, but whole virginity harvester. The bodyguard, who stood silently through the whole process of Felix having a mental breakdown, heard him say this and felt the soul that just returned in his body escape yet again. The only thought that coursed through his mind was, I am finished. The poison penetrated his brain and turned him into a moron, he could already envision tomorrow's biggest news in media. One of the Maxwell family heirs turned into a retard, and in some hidden corner of the internet, the disappearance of a hard-working man. Tears flooded his cheeks as he saw that image. Felix immediately realized that he was dealing with the real deal after reading her thoughts. Now there was no escaping from her, as she was probably sealed in his consciousness. Asna was pleased with his conclusion. Felix, we have all the time to chat with each other, but now you must fix the situation outside. That poor guy is crying for some reason, Felix knew that she was right, so he focused on the bodyguard who was sobbing like his life was over. He got up for his bed and whispered in the bodyguard ear, Jack, don't mention what happened here to anyone, as I tried some new drugs on the market that affected my mental state. He then walked to his closest and opened a drawer where he put his cash and grabbed $500. He returned to Jack's side and put it in the side pocket of his suit. Go outside and tell them I was watching a horror movie. That's why I screamed. He patted his shoulder and added, before you go, take the bedsheets with you and get rid of them. Jack nodded his head absent-mindedly and did as instructed. Just as he tried to leave the bedroom with the sheets, he heard Felix's voice, and send someone to fix the door that you broke. Don't worry, young master, the door will be changed in ten minutes. Asna saw that Jack had left, now that the third wheel is not here, let's carry on our conversation. What's there to talk about, you witch? No matter what you say, I will never submit or cooperate with you. My dear Felix, don't you already see what happened to us? She explained with an unhappy voice. Our souls were merged, forming one. And for some unfair reason, you have control of the main body, meanwhile, I can only view what is happening from your eyes and not interfere. 
but I don't want for myself to be like this forever, and I guess you also want me to be gone as fast as possible. Right? Felix stood in silence for a while and said, first of all, you fucking deserve what you got, and secondly, you are wrong. After all, why would I want to do you a favor and free you? We will be forever together, so just relax and enjoy watching me live my life. He chuckled wickedly. Asna did not get mad after hearing his claim since she already expected this answer based on what she had read from his memories. She replied while yawning, all right, as you wish. Do you want to play the long game? I will make sure to accompany you step by step. So don't worry and enjoy your life. If you could, that is. She murmured under her breath. After Felix heard the last part, his face became troubled with an uneasy expression. But shortly after, he relaxed his facial muscles and thought, bring it, you witch, let's see who is going to last. Fifteen minutes later. He was standing still in front of the mirror, as it reflected his above-average visage. Short curly electric blonde hair, blueberry eyes with dark eyelashes and thin eyebrows, meanwhile his nose was standing defiantly with red thin lips underneath it. On the other hand, his body was meh, average in every way with a height of 177 centimeters and a weight of 60 kilograms or 132 pounds. As he examined his youthful image, he rubbed his chin in wonder, such a fine noble face. Yet why was I single my entire life? It must be because females feel inferior and undeserving when next to me, and that forces them not to have any feelings about me. That must be the reason. He praised himself shamelessly. Asna rolled her eyes and ignored this narcissistic moron. Author note, Felix was sent into a different timeline. He possessed his own alternative version. In a sense, this was a rebirth. But, instead of rewinding the time of the entire universe, which was honestly illogical, he was sent into one of the infinite exact timelines, just in the past. Plus, his age before he died was 40 years or so. I hope this clears any future confusion. Chapter 3. After he was done admiring his young image in front of the mirror, Felix began to wear his clothes while thinking of the present era he was in right now. From his current memories, he believed that he was sent back to the modern era. An era where earthlings were still living in peace and harmony in their little blue planet. But that would soon change after the Supremacy Games invitation that turned the world upside down before makes an appearance shortly again. This was even better for his plans. By relying on the memories of his past life, he could without a doubt ace the games and climb the ranking ladder even higher than before. This would reward him with treasures he couldn't even dream of. His expression soon turned serious and solemn real quick as he said firmly, this time, I will not fall around and waste my time idling away. If he was dedicated and hardworking in his bloodline integration, he wouldn't have been sent by the clan to do such a difficult mission but remain in the headquarter being protected, and well taken care of like the prodigies. Sadly, he could only clutch his ass with a pained expression in regret after learning this lesson by having his asshole blasted to flames by Asna. His anguish expression was soon replaced by a determined one that would move anyone who sees it. For me not to feel that kind of agonizing pain ever again, I will work harder than everyone, I will make sure to reach the peak. No one will fuck with me again. No one. Crack. He punched the mirror until it shattered, sending small pieces of glass everywhere. Soon enough, he dropped to the ground while holding his blooded fist. Fuck me! He wailed in anguish. He already forgot that he was now merely 17 years old with a weak body that couldn't even harm a common tier 1 beast. Jack and the other bodyguard who were near the door heard Felix's roar and the mirror's shattering sound. Just as the other bodyguard tried to rush to check Felix's well-being, Jack stopped him with his arm. Don't worry. It's not serious. Young Master is probably watching a hot-blooded movie, and it moved him to his current state. While his actual thoughts were, Young Master Felix is probably on different types of drugs again, in his mind, he already accepted it as a fact since it was quite believable. After all, there was nothing much to do on this forsaken island besides going to the beach. If it was not for the Starlink internet, that uses satellites instead of cables. Felix probably would have gone nuts already, inside the bedroom. Felix was picking up the mirror glass pieces from the floor with a bandaged hand. Based on my phone, the current year is the 1st of June, 2024. 
If I recall correctly, the invitation will arrive 15 days later, which is quite an ideal period for me to make plans for later. After a while, he finished cleaning the floor and wore his sports shoes, preparing to head outside. He wanted to scout the hotel and the island's current condition. I am leaving the hotel to take a long walk, no need to follow me, and don't you dare send someone behind my back secretly, understood? He instructed Jack after exiting his suite. Yes, young master, just enjoy your walk, no one will bother you. Felix smiled while patting his shoulder. Good, keep following my orders like this, and I will promote you to my personal chief of bodyguards when I receive my shares from the family. Jack grinned widely, your wish is my command, young master. Felix then walked toward the elevator while examining the horrendous condition of the hotel in detail. Was my brain full of shit when I chose this business to revive as part of my coming-of-age test or what? He kept walking for a couple of minutes until he saw the rusty elevator that had a sign glued on the door, closed for maintenance. Figured so. Felix sighed in disappointment. He turned to his left and headed towards the stairs. The moment he arrived and saw those stairs leading to an abyss, he frowned his eyebrows. Fixing the elevator once and for all is a priority. I can't use those stairs each day. My knees would snap. He braced himself and descended the staircase while trying to organize his 17 years old memories. If he recalled correctly, he chose this resort hotel in the middle of nowhere as his adulthood test when he reached 16 years old. That's because he wanted to spend the five years of the test idling and sunbathing. He soon berated his young self-laziness that costed them dearly later on. After all, while others were trying their best to revive the companies, hotels, and restaurants, which they chose as their mission. On the other hand, he was sunbathing here like a salted fish. This negligence towards his test costed him heavily later on when the Supremacy Games invitation arrived. The other juniors who tried their best even if their project didn't do well were still chosen to be nurtured by the family, so they would clutch slots in the upcoming national team battles that were going to be held a year or so from now. Meanwhile, the lazy ones like him who took the family coming-of-age tradition as a joke were punished heavily by the elders' board. Since his parents and other close relatives had died one way or another, he had no one to vouch for him anymore within the family. Just as he wanted to keep on his nagging, he remembered his parents. One of the few ones who loved him in that wolf den, where competition to obtain benefits for oneself was but the norm, and every method to do so was allowed, as long as no one gets harmed. His parents were quite popular in the Maxwell family with their business handling skills. As his father managed five Wall Street investment funds with high efficiency, making profits in all of his desired investments without a single failure. This guarantee of success caused everyone in the business circle to refer to him as the spider since his investment senses were that sharp. Meanwhile, his mother managed tens of five stars hotels and a few three stars Michelin restaurants worldwide. Their reputation reached a peak in her hands, as every customer or critic who visited or ate in them left only good remarks behind. Unfortunately, they passed away in a helicopter incident when they headed to the family headquarter to surprise Felix on his 11 years birthday. Well, they did manage to surprise him when he heard the news of their death while he was cutting his birthday cake alone in his room. One could only imagine the trauma this event might have caused to young Felix. Since that moment, he changed into a different person. He became shameless, playful, making pranks on his cousins, bullying them daily until they feared his existence. They complained to the adults to punish him. But the elders knew that his playful personality emerged only to hide his pain and fear of loneliness deep within his heart. So they closed one eye and allowed him to bully them to the point they created an anti-Felix alliance, grouping and beating him up whenever he tried to prank one of them. Two years quickly passed by. Felix matured a tiny bit since then. He stopped harassing his cousins after realizing that it was not worth it to get beaten up just for a prank. He then became lazy and unproductive, his school marks were below average, while his friends were the typical second-generation nouveau rich kids who think with their penises and not their brains. If they had one that is. The years went by until he reached the most important year in his life, which was 16. The reason was that the entire life of every junior within the family depends on the coming-of-age tradition. We're needed to pass a test that spans five years' duration. This test entailed that one must revive a dead business, such as a company on the verge of bankruptcy, 
a restaurant with negative reviews, hotels that had a bad reputation from their customers, or just were not performing well in general. Suppose the junior managed to revive his business in a period of five years successfully. The family board would reward him with 49% shares of that project. This meant, the bigger the company or hotel you revived, the bigger your reward. 49% of the restaurant shares were not the same as owning 49% in car manufacturer company. But if they failed the test, they would have only two options left to choose from. The first one was to live their life freely without family control or resources. In contrast, the second one was to pick any business that fits their talents and manage it with only 10% profit shares. This tradition was the reason why the family kept growing successfully while at the same time keeping their resources at bay, without risks of losing them to outsiders. Meanwhile, Felix could not have cared less about the test or his future. He only chose this resort hotel as his project was to idle away from everyone else. Felix woke up from his reminisce as he chuckled at his younger self tantrum, which caused them to get left behind in bloodline integration. He smirked evilly, since this daddy is back, my dear cousins, you can forget about getting resources from the family, as I will make this resort hotel the best in the world, where only elites can step on this island. He then laughed out loud with spaghetti legs, wobbling continuously, unable to support his weight after descending those hellish stairs. And I know just how to do so. Chapter 4 After finally reaching the hotel's ground floor, Felix sat down on a couch near the receptionist's desk while panting like a dog. If walking down the stairs turned me into this, what will happen to me if I climbed? As he imagined that scene, his eyelid twitched after seeing an unpleasant outcome. He soon turned his head to the reception lady who was playing on her phone while chewing gum. Layla, you better rush the maintenance team to fix the elevator as fast as possible. If I return from my walk and didn't see it fixed, I swear to God I will ride on your back up the stairs. Understood? Layla popped the gum on her face immediately after Felix's abrupt warning. Yes, yes, young master, if you came back and found the elevator not working, don't mention riding me up the stairs. I will allow you to ride me whenever you want. Layla regretted the instant she said the last part as she was not thinking properly since she always had a crush on Felix. Her feelings were honestly pretty understandable. He might be a lazy brat, but he was also handsome, rich, and even an heir of a business empire, what do I do? He must think I'm an easy girl now. She thought, almost tearing up. Do you think I am that thirsty to force myself on you? He threw his head back and stood up with difficulty from the couch. He then walked towards the wide open entrance. Focus on fixing the elevator. I will be back in four hours. Even when I indirectly offered myself to him, he still didn't make his move. Layla sighed dejectedly as she eyed his back. At least there's still a chance for him to ride on my back up the stairs if the elevator was not fixed. She murmured under her breath with flushed cheeks. Yet before she went too far, she snapped out of her fanaticism when she realized that it was not worth it. After all, she couldn't even climb those stairs by herself. Don't even mention doing it while carrying Felix on her back. Sure, it would feel good for the first couple of minutes, but later on, it was going to be pure misery. Without further ado, Layla used her phone to call the repairman. Hello, Mr. Cled, can you tell me how much time you will need to repair the elevator? Eight hours, Miss Layla, if it were someone else, he would need sixteen hours minimum. A gruff voice came from the other side of the phone call. Layla felt her heart sink at his answer. Well, I need it fixed in four hours. I don't care what you do to repair it. I need it working when the young master returns. If you manage to do so successfully, you will be rewarded by young master Felix himself. And you know that he is quite generous with his tips. Layla felt no shame promising something she had no control over since her life was on the line here. Challenge accepted. I promise I will fix it within four hours. Just speak some good words on my behalf when you meet the young master. Cled replied with an eager voice. Layla sighed in relief and said reassuringly, Don't worry, young master would not mistreat you. Thank you, Miss Layla. Goodbye, I need to prepare my tools. Goodbye, she ended the phone call and started cleaning the gum from her face while holding a small mirror in front of her. Up in the hill, near the beach. Felix could be seen standing at the peak, observing the entire resort hotel with scornful eyes. 
he had no idea who was stupid enough in the family to invest in this moronic venture. After all, who the hell thought it was a good business idea to have a hotel inside a deserted island in the middle of the northern Pacific Ocean? Heck, the nearest land was America with a separating distance of 3,000 kilometers between them. Who would pay to travel here, where the only notable thing about this island was the fresh air and clean beaches? Things that could be found in Hawaii or other notable places. The entire island had absolutely nothing unique to grab tourists' attention. Due to that, the entire resort kept rotting for over 15 years since its creation without any family care. No wonder why not a single junior chose this place as his revival mission. They knew that it was impossible to achieve it with the pitiful amount of $30 million budget that the family provided as capital, as if that amount was enough to repair the hotel, the airport, the hospital, the seaport, and more fundamental buildings that were not even on the island. The worst part, Felix couldn't even take a loan or ask for assistance from anyone. With all of those disadvantages, the hotel could only be marked as a dead business venture without anyone capable of reviving it. Felix's scornful look was swiftly replaced with an appreciation, as a devious plan had taken root since the moment he saw the hotel's condition. A plan that would turn the impossible into possible if executed properly. He took a pen and a small notebook from his pocket then wrote the plan's steps unhurriedly. My plan will kick start when the Supremacy Games invitation arrives 15 days later. He paused writing and started to dig deep within his memories to find out what had transpired during that period. The date was the 15th of June, 2024. 8 p.m., the Earth was revolving around the Sun like always, the Moon revolved around the Earth as always, and humans lived on the planet arrogantly. They thought they were superior to animals and Earth itself, which fed and housed them. They believed proudly that they were the only intellectual race in the universe since they did not manage to find any life form outside of their solar system. But all of those wishful thoughts were removed from their minds when a voice was heard in every living being's consciousness. No one was spared, from animals, fish, and birds to finally humans. The moment the decree resounded in their minds, the entire planet seemed like it froze. Everyone stopped whatever they were doing, whether sleeping, having sex, driving, posting selfies, or reading. It did not matter as the decree penetrated their consciousness leaving a voice that said calmly, Dear primitive earthlings, we are the scouting and planting crew of the Alexander Kingdom that owns ten districts, each having hundreds of solar systems. We discovered your planet by chance when our interstellar coordinator device had a small complication. Now that we introduced ourselves properly let's get down to business. Based on the Supremacy Games Alliance Treaty, number 12 in the Book of SGA Rules. We are obligated to explain the three choices that you currently have. The first choice is to submit to the Alexander Kingdom and swear eternal loyalty to our royal family, thus securing your safety from other invaders. The second choice is to refuse and get invaded and looted by our scouting fleet. Based on the primitive level of your technology, our AI calculated your chances of victory are zero. 0000000000001%. As the only viable way of you having a draw is by some chance the sun goes supernova, destroying us together. The last remaining choice is to join the Supremacy Game Alliance, which will ensure your survival if you did not break its rules. For more information about the third choice, you can only obtain it in person. You have seven days to send someone to represent your planet and give us your final decision. You can find our temporary base in the middle of Antarctica, here are the coordinates 76. 299,965 to 148. 003021, we await hearing good news from you. The mine transmission will turn off now. The moment the transmission was over, everyone was stunned speechless as multiple emotions messed up their minds, shock, confusion, disbelief, and lastly fear. Bone-chilling fear that sent goosebumps coursing through their spines. They couldn't believe what they just heard, and they didn't want to believe it either. Every human, male, female, old, young, president of a country, or a homeless person under the bridge. In the face of the horrifying fact that their entire race with their so-called advanced technology was seen as primitive by the extraterrestrials made them realize that they were just frogs in the bottom of a well. Frogs who could only see a small part of the sky through the opening, and not seeing the immensity of it all. The 15th of June, 2024, 8 p.m. That day marked the beginning of a long period called the Great Chaos. 
Chapter 5. Over 5 million people died in one day because of that transmission. The elderly who had cardio problems died due to heart attacks caused by their blood pressure rising through the roof. The flood of emotions was too much for their fragile heart to handle. Drivers lost control of their vehicles due to a momentary blankness that assaulted them during the transmission and after it. This caused tens of thousands of vehicles to crash into each other on highways and roads worldwide. Planes pilots, who were about to land, failed to do so properly due to the same reason as the drivers. Planes crashed into each other during flight as the air traffic control tower did not notify them to change their paths. Every surgeon who was doing a serious operation made errors that caused the death of their patients. Trains collided, and many more catastrophes. That day the sky rained flames and bodies. Every road on the world was filled with wails of people begging for help, as thousands of corpses laid on the ground unmoving. Airports were crushed by some planes which failed to land properly or ones who did not manage to stop on time as they smashed into the airport buildings. Hospitals were filled with elderly who suddenly died of a heart attack, and patients who died on the operation tables, and much more gruesome deaths. Yet, that was only the beginning of the great chaos. What followed after was the true chaos. As 8 billion people were scared shitless when they realized that everyone on the planet heard the same transmission and not just them individually, the sheer power needed to do this kind of action was unfathomable in their minds. The brave ones left their houses to see the chaotic situation that resulted from the decree. Simultaneously, the weak-minded people closed their windows and doors as they read the news on the TV and internet, which was filled with people sharing pictures and videos from the horrors in their countries using the hashtag hash chaos. The majority of people believed that the extraterrestrial was not messing around, and they would really invade them if their presidents decided to go to war with them. And so, they started frenzy buying or looting food, water, and other necessities to hoard them as much as possible due to the fear of an unknown future. While the prices of luxury materials hit rock bottom, not even reaching 5% of their original prices. Gold, silver, gems, metals and all those resources that had no value in the face of survival were thrown in the market like some cheap rocks to be traded for other, important resources. Yet no one bothered to buy them or pick them. After all, who would waste space on a piece of metal that only had value in peaceful times? And these times were definitely not peaceful. Meanwhile, the presidents and kings of the world's countries were freaking out even harder than the civilians since they were used to living in the center of attention and having peak authority in their country, controlling the faith of the population. Yet now everything turned into a huge joke after hearing the decree. They knew they were not prepared for war since just a small taste of the invaders' power managed to kill 5 million worldwide instantly. So, they could only gather at the United Nations meeting to make a decision. Seven days later, the countries voted to send the UN spokesperson to scout their spaceship and make a decision based on the information he received. Half a day later, the spokesperson left their spaceship with fear and a hint of excitement in his eyes. No one knew except the world leaders what he saw and heard there. The only thing known to everyone was that the spokesperson chose the third choice, joining the Supremacy Games Alliance. Felix, who was deep in his thoughts suddenly woke up from a cold breeze. He realized the sun was about the set. So he closed his journal that was filled with details of his plan and returned to the hotel. The moment he reached there, he saw servants, maids, and bodyguards crowding over a small area and gossiping with hushed voices. He walked to that spot with curiosity on his face. As he reached, he started to wiggle inside the crowd. Let me through, let me pass through, fuck who stepped on my leg? When the bodyguards heard Felix's voice, they started to push others to make a path for him to walk through. Soon after, he saw a man wearing a construction outfit with some metal hooks by the waist lying on the ground with one of his arms bent in the opposite direction while one of his kneecaps was snapped in half. Next to him were one male and one female wearing Dr. White coats. One was pushing a needle inside the bloodstream of the man who was broken like a vase, and the other was checking his broken limbs. Felix had a bad feeling after seeing this scene. He poked Jack who was next to him, and asked out loud, tell me what the hell happened here in my absence, I do not tolerate my people being harmed in any form. Jack replied with a whisper, young master, this is Cled, the only repairman on the island. Unfortunately, he had an incident when he was fixing the elevator. He continued while scratching his head in confusion. 
for some reason, he was rushing to fix it as fast as possible like he was in a race with someone. Yet, the most amazing thing was that he spent only three hours fixing it. But just as he wanted to celebrate, the metal pole he was hanging from broke in half due to rust corroding its interior. Because of that, he fell. He sighed in relief, thankfully, the elevator roof was near him, so he was badly wounded but not flat out dead. Layla summoned the island hospital doctors to check on his condition. Felix stiffly listened to Jack retelling the events that transpired in his absence. I see. Fortunately, he did not die. Go inform Layla to take care of his medical bills in my name and make sure to serve him whatever he desired in the hospital. Jack replied with his chest puffed out in pride as he thought that Felix was looking out for his people, as you wish young master. It's truly our blessing for being your subordinates. Felix smiled wryly and thought, I doubt that. If it were not for me forcing Layla to take extreme measures to fulfill my request, he would still be fine. He turned around and walked towards the elevator while frowning his eyebrows. This is my second lapse of judgment. I'm still not used to the fact that earthlings' bodies are still fragile and could break with a single mistake. He stared at the elevator for a second and said under his breath, Don't worry Mr. Cled, it won't be long before your body returns to its peak form again. Just wait a while, as the invitation is just up the corner. It's time to start adapting to my weak body. Otherwise, I will end up dead from overestimating my own strength sooner or later. He glanced at the elevator one last time and walked towards the stairs. He planned to climb them to reach his suite, which was on the 30th floor. Just as he started to climb with determination on his face, he saw Layla weeping while sitting on a stair. Felix sighed at this sight and sat next to her. He patted her shoulder gently and apologized, I am sorry for making you go through this. Cled's injuries are completely on me, so don't beat yourself up over it since I will take care of everything soon. Without waiting for her to replay, Felix climbed the staircase. As he climbed further and further away, he heard her say out loud, Young Master Felix, the elevator is fixed. Why didn't you use it? Because I don't deserve it, you guys use it. From now on, I will only use the stairs to atone for my mistake. Meanwhile, his true thoughts were actually to start training his stamina continuously by using them. After all, he couldn't just wait and do nothing simply because he knew that the invitation would arrive 15 days later. It's better to train so his body would be a little bit ready for the hellish pain that awaits him during his awakening with a bloodline. Fifteen minutes later. Felix dropped on his knees while taking sharp breaths each second after reaching his floor. He tried to call for the servants, but his dry hoarse voice didn't manage to travel far. So, he gave up and laid there on the ground with his chest rising up and down, can I really do this each day? It seems impossible with my stamina, he shook his head and tried to stand up. Get a grip Felix, you were lazy in your previous life and that cost you dearly. It's time to start taking integration seriously. And the first step is conquering those stairs of doom afterward, he walked slowly towards his suite while leaning on the wall as a support. A couple of minutes later. He removed his clothes and wore a pajama, then dropped on the bed with eyes closed shut and a relaxed expression. He was truly dead tired. Chapter 6 As Felix began to dive deeper in his dreams, a suddenly piercing singing voice, assaulted his subconscious. Why why, ding dong. Ding dong. My love for you is growing wide and long. Felix woke up scared shitless, not knowing where the voice came from, hee hee, you really thought you were going to sleep in peace, my dear Felix. Think again, because as long as I don't get your full cooperation to split our souls apart. You are not going to sleep a wink. I will make sure of it, trust me on this one. Asna who was playing dead the entire day laughed evilly in his mind. Felix thoroughly forgot the existence of this witch, or probably just thought if he ignored her, she might disappear. You old hag, you are asking for it, since you seek war then war it is. Let's see who is going to tap out. He screamed with bloodshed eyes from exhaustion. He then started throwing curses and insults to annoy her to death, since he assumed that she could read his mind. Yet one sentence from her sent him to the depth of despair. My cute Felix, I can control if I want to read your thoughts or not, so your attempts to annoy me are really not going to work. She then chuckled softly and said, you better step up your game, or else it won't be fun torturing you. 
Felix knew he was dealing with a psychopath, a formidable psychopath who was sealed for 20 million years. If he could not find a weakness to exploit, he would forever be threatened to abide by her wishes. Soon enough, he figured out that the only thing this witch seeks was freedom. She was sealed in ruins forever, and when she was finally released, she got resealed in his body again. Honestly, if she was not a madwoman he would feel bad for her. Yet somehow no one wanted to acknowledge that maybe she became what she was now, only due to her being sealed for millions of years. A period unfathomable to humans, who couldn't survive being alone for one year without a person near them, or social media. Too bad, humans were inherently born to judge a book by its cover. Asner understood what Felix was planning to do after reading his mind. My dear Felix, so that's your idea? Huh, I thought you could do better. She continued mockingly. When you couldn't figure something out, you decided to threaten me using your life. So what if you commit suicide, I would still be free, don't forget I willingly merged my soul to you just so I can get erased, so I have no problem doing it again. Felix, who still couldn't get used to having his thoughts being read, realized he was busted and replied with his chin up. But you forgot to mention something when you tried to control my body I willingly detonated my soul just so I won't be under your mercy, so yes I have no problem as well killing myself if I'm going to be your slave. Asna knew he was right as this man had no issue accepting death for freedom. Felix, don't you think we are very much alike? You don't want your will to be controlled and I don't want my freedom to be sealed. Can't you understand where I am coming from? I just want to be free damn it, is that too much to ask? And when did I say, I want to enslave you? I said it three times already, I seek cooperation between us, you will help me free myself, and I will help you in your trashy bloodline system. After she finished her piece, silence engulfed the room. She believed that she said enough. Now it was all on Felix. After a while, he closed his bloodshot eyes and lay on the bed in a relaxed manner, let me think about it first. Just as Asna wanted to sigh in relief she heard him continue, but first I need to see some goodwill from you. So I suggest you apologize to my but whole for the mental pain you caused it. Felix smirked wickedly as he wanted to embarrass her one last time to get back at what she did. Sadly, he forgot one important thing. Asna had absolutely no shame or dignity, just like him. I am sorry Mr. But Whole for not taking responsibility for my actions, I never planned to escape after what I did, it's just the circumstances forced me to leave you. She added with tender eyes and sweet angelic voice, but now that I am here, I will take care of you forever, don't worry. Dark lines immediately took form on Felix's forehead after hearing her messed up apology. Fuck, just forget it, let me sleep in peace. He closed his eyes with an unpleasant expression on his face. Asna giggled softly with a hand covering her mouth, boy you are too young to embarrass me. Next morning. Felix woke up with dark circles under his eyes. He yawned as he walked towards the bathroom to take a shower since he was too tired last night to take one. As he cleaned himself, he kept thinking about his conversation between him and Asna. Why did she call my race bloodline system shitty? Is there something wrong with it? Or her race status in the universe is quite high to look down on races like us. Before he lingered on too deeply on the subject, Asna popped out of nowhere and replied to his questions, when I said shitty system, I meant it literally. She then said without shame. I already read your memories when we first arrived here to have a better understanding of your personality and the history of your race. She did not wait for Felix to snap at her for invading his privacy and hastily added, after reading everything that is useful. I realized that your so-called human race was born with absolutely no legacy or unique attribute. Even the galaxy that you guys reside in is one of the billions of common galaxies that have no special energy. She explained her point. While other races such as the elves have, magic as their legacy, peak affinity to one element based on their subrace as their unique attribute. And finally, their galaxy has mana as its special energy and that created a perfect cultivation system, or in their case can be called magical system. She suddenly sneered in disdain. You guys were born weak with no unique attribute that sets you apart from other races, and no energy in your galaxy to assist you in your cultivation. So you did what you always do, reproduce, and adapt like cockroaches. Until finally you guys managed to create a half-baked bloodline system, 
by combining the bloodlines of beasts from your neighbor galaxy with your low affinity to the elements. Creating this shitty bloodline system that's full of limitations and weaknesses, since it never belonged to you. She ended her shaming by one last arrogant scoff, only when the universe gives you something, you can proudly use it to its peak potential. Felix just stood there in silence, listening to her shame his race and the efforts of his human ancestors like it was merely a joke to her. He then replied to her while grinding his teeth and nails penetrating his palm flesh, with a hoarse voice. Shut your filthy mouth. You have no right to look down on us like this. Your mind cannot fathom the amount of bloodshed we humans had to go through. He added enraged while hitting the shower glass with the side of his fist. Our galaxy was in constant attempts of invasion by void creatures and beasts, and the only thing we had in our arsenal were our brains and wits. We fought them over and over again, and we kept losing and dying like flies without a single resistance. We just preserved an ASU said. We reproduced with the speed of light like cockroaches to cover our losses. Years passed by and we adapted slowly. We learned from them what we could and we took from them what we needed, and our final fruit was this shitty bloodline system that you look down on. His voice cracked from his yelling but he did not stop himself from raging. We used it to repel them, but it was not enough because it was still in its creation process. So billions of humans kept dying and sacrificing themselves. Yet, we did not give up on it. We kept perfecting it and researching bloodline paths that beasts did not even have. We did not plunder their system, we took it and created another one unique to only us humans. The universe did not show us our path so we created it single-handedly. You said we humans don't have a unique attribute that sets us apart from others. You were wrong. We have the best attribute there is in the universe. He thumped his chest and said, we do not tire, we do not falter, and we do not give up in front of adversity. We may fall billion times, but we always manage to rise stronger than before. This is the human race. This is my race and I am proud of being part of it. He closed the shower tap and said calmly with pursed lips, you, on the other hand, are part of the superior races. The universe spoon fed you everything you need, gave you everything that you desire. Yet you were still captured and sealed for millions of years by others. He calmed down and left the bathroom without clothes on, uncaring about the blood that was dripping from his palms. So I ask you again. How dare you look down on us? He asked with a frigid tone. Chapter 7 Three days had passed since the day Felix snapped on Asna. Ever since then, Felix has ignored her completely. He did not respond to her apologies, neither did he bother addressing what happened in the bathroom. He just kept training his stamina by climbing the stairs each day and his body muscles by spending hours in the gym. Lastly, examining the hotel and other facilities on the island while noting what interested him in his notebook to perfect his upcoming plan. Up the hill, Felix was sitting on a stool and drawing the hotel from above with focus. Yet his focus was broken by Asna whining again. Felix, stop ignoring me, I am really sorry about what I said. I did not realize the huge effort humans had to go through for survival. I never interacted with races like you, who are not favored by the universe, as I spent my entire life surrounded by beings of my race and others who have the same strength as us. So my vision was crooked when I analyzed your race. Now that I know your race bloodline system was made by sweat and blood, I respect it greatly. And I can even assist you in improving it, opening limitless possibilities. Felix could not keep acting deaf after hearing the last part. His heartbeat speed up a bit since he knew that she read his memories, which meant she had full details on how humans integrate. So for her to say she had ways to improve it moved him greatly. After all, every human's dream in the Milky Way galaxy to break the bottleneck of the origin realm and step into a higher realm. Regrettably, over 600,000 years had passed and no one managed to open up another path forward. Even worse was that human strength was declining slowly over the years as the spirit of research for bloodline paths had died entirely, after the creation of clans. For one to understand why clans were ruining the human's future, one must first understand how the bloodline system came to be. Based on Felix's knowledge obtained from the free public data in the UVR, humans in other parts of the galaxy were born just like earthlings with weak bodies, and without an inner core, spirit, or magic to cultivate. Like other races. The only thing they had was a weak affinity to elements, something every race had as basics. 
so due to the pressure of war from the beast race and void creatures, they had an idea to combine the inherited bloodline of beasts from their ancestors, with their weak affinity to their elements. The first tries ended up in human bodies exploding, as they could not handle the pressure of having its original innate bloodline be replaced with another one, especially if the body elemental affinity was different from the beast affinity. So humans tried things differently. Firstly, they created a device that could scan their affinity to the elements. Secondly, they only tried to integrate 1% of the beast's bloodline instead of the previous 100%. The process was extremely painful, and many died due to not being to handle it. But others who survived it managed to have 1% of other species' bloodline in their bodies. They called this process, the awakening. After awakening successfully one officially starts his journey of purifying the bloodline of the beast. This realm was being called the three stages of purification or in short the purification realm. It includes purifying one's bloodline to reach 99% of the integration. The first step was called the lesser purity, and to achieve it the person needed to reach 30% of integration. The second step was called the greater purity and it needed 60%. The final step was called the origin purity, which meant the bloodline had almost reached the same purity as the beast itself. It needed the integration to reach 99%, which was also the peak of the purification stage. Every time a person reached 15% of integration he had a chance to obtain a passive ability of that beast such as fire resistance, night vision, poison resistance, etc. Those were called minor steps. There were only three minor steps, 15%, 45%, 75%. While reaching major steps such as lesser purity, which was 30%. He obtains an active ability of that beast, such as stealth, fire breath, wind bullets, etc. There were also three major steps, 30%, 60%, 99%. This meant, during the duration of the purification stage, from 0% to 99%, he could obtain three active abilities and three passive abilities of the species. Humans were stuck in this realm for over one million years, not knowing how to improve further or how to get rid of their bloodline shackles. Humans in the entire Milky Way galaxy. Unrelated to Earthlings. Until a prodigy female called Mariana appeared and solved this problem in the most ingenious way possible. She used the bloodline of a higher tier beast to replace her bloodline, and since beasts followed a strict hierarchy that was etched in their soul, the bloodline could only get replaced obediently. But if she just did this, she would make her entire efforts of integrating with the first beast go to waste, since all the abilities would be replaced as well. To solve this, she did what no one had the courage to do, and that was to etch one ability of her choice permanently from the first beast, in her 1% of the original bloodline. If she failed, she would have destroyed what made her unique from others, as the last remaining 1% was everything to a human. Since the moment someone desired to integrate 100% of another creature's bloodline, he would be nothing but the same copy of the beast. Fortunately, her courage and yearning to improve humankind's strength were rewarded when the process ended up in success. This marked the creation of the second realm. The replacement realm. Which was also the longest realm of them all, due to it having six stages of replacements. Each stage followed the same principle of the purification realm, only this time each stage had a different bloodline from a different beast. Starting with the first stage of replacement. The bloodliner was required to change the first bloodline he awakened with, by using another beast bloodline that was a higher tiered than it. This would allow a smooth transition between them. Since if he replaced a beast with another one with the same tier. There would be a war inside the body, as the two would constantly try to outdo each other for the rights to remain within the host. This usually led to the owner bleeding to death. That's why to avoid this. One must respect the hierarchy of the beasts and only replace the bloodline with another that could oppress it. The current known beast tiers were from tier 1 to tier 7. So for the bloodliner to have a perfect foundation in order to reach the peak of the sixth stage of replacement. He must not replace tier 1 beast with tier 7, to not get stuck in that stage forever without any way to advance, since no beast was currently found that could oppress tier 7 beast. A perfect bloodliner must awaken with tier 1 beast and start replacing it with gradual order from tier 1 to tier 7, until he reached the peak of the sixth stage of replacement. At that point, he would have in his arsenal a total number of six different abilities each belonging to a unique beast, permanently etched in his 1%. 
plus with three three active and three passive abilities of the latest stage six bloodline. Thus, creating a human that had a total of nine abilities, and three passives, which he could combine at will to create techniques. The moment humans reached the peak of the replacement stage, they started to win more battles against the beast race, forcing them to retreat when they realized that humans were not to be bullied anymore and be used as food. So, the beasts tried to switch to another race. But would humans leave them to do so? Not in a lifetime. The tables were turned as humans became the predators and started to counter-invade the beast race galaxy, for all the humiliation they received over the past years. They kept invading planet after planet, killing and taking the bloodlines of unique beasts to be used for research. This war lasted for over 100,000 years. And it only ended when a man goes by the name of Michael Bardo, managed to create the next realm after the replacement realm, which he named the Origin Realm. He used the same method of bloodline replacement, but this time, he used his 1% that had 6 abilities etched to it to oppress the 99% of a tier 7 bloodline. He realized that humans' original bloodline was weak, that's why they had learned from others and used their paths. But the moment humans' bloodline had the same number of abilities as a tier 7 beast. He saw no reason to keep using their paths anymore. As now it was time for humans to go back to their origin, stronger than ever. And so he tried to devour the 99% of tier 7 bloodline by using only his 1%. A task only lunatics would try to do since if they failed the process, only death await them. After all, being at the peak of the replacement realm, meant that they had a legit authority in the human race. So, who in his right mind would sacrifice all of that just to follow a hunch that might lead to certain death? But Bardo did not care about authority or his safety. The only thing that was on his mind was to open a path forward, for himself and the future generations. Once again only those who do not fear death obtain what they desire. As three days later, he emerged outside victorious from his battle. Historians to this date claim that people heard the universe applause over his victory because he managed to defy its arrangement. As humans were born powerless with nothing to support them. Yet now, a new subhuman race was born. A human that his own descendants would inherit his bloodline abilities and strength, and those descendants would have their paths paved for them since birth, based on the purity of their ancestral origin bloodline. Bardo named his subhuman race, the white-feathered humans, out of respect to the latest bloodline he devoured. Since then, the human race stopped their war against the beast race, because an origin realm bloodliner had the status of tier 8 beast. So, they kept them alive, herding them like sheep. Afterward, humans' bloodline system improvement was completely halted, as they already conquered the race that gave them pressure in the first place. They were stuck in the origin realm from 600,000 years to this point in time. Author note, Felix didn't live in the period when the beast invasion was happening, I was using his memories to retell the history of mankind in the entire Milky Way galaxy. The knowledge about what happened was public to everyone in the UVR. Continue reading and everything will clear out. Small summary to unlocking abilities. At 15% passive. At 30% active, lesser purity, at 45% passive. At 60% active, greater purity, at 75% passive. At 99% peak active. Origin purity, total of 6 abilities. Chapter 8. Felix's heart was moved a bit from her speech. So he replied back coldly for the first time in 3 days. You said you have ways to improve our system what do you mean by that? Asna, who was expecting Felix to give her the cold shoulder again, rejoiced. She answered back bashfully. Not going to lie to you, I have ways that will help you advance further than your race. But managing to improve the entire system where everyone could use it, that's for you to discover. Not me, Felix softened his cold expression slightly after seeing her be honest with him for once. All right tell me what kind of benefits you will provide me if I agreed to this cooperation. Asna replied with the speed of light as she was waiting for him to ask this for a long time. After reading your memories and seeing how your bloodline system operates. I found multiple ways to remove some limitations for you. The first one is that, due to my race social status being at the peak of the universe. We can pressure any beast or creature that is beneath us with ease. This means that you don't need to limit yourself to your tier choices. You can pick tier 7 beast to awaken with smoothly. 
The second way I could assist you is by helping you reach the peak affinity of any element you desire since I am the origin of laws. Elements are but mere plaything to me, but I am extremely weak currently so I would need a huge amount of elemental resources to help you advance your affinity. Lastly, while others can only hold six abilities in their 1% bloodline thus stopping them from reaching more stages of replacement, you won't need to worry about this, as with me merged together with you. Your bloodline is already stronger than other humans by a mile. So you can hold probably more than nine abilities. This is just my estimate it could be lower or higher, time will tell. She exhaled softly and added one last time. Those are currently, the ways I found from your memories, I don't know if this is my limit or there is more. I need other information to find out. Felix just listened stiffly without interrupting her, not knowing how to express his shock and disbelief. He knew that just a single one of those methods could already make him one of the strongest humans, if not the strongest if he reached the peak. Soon he relaxed his facial muscles and slowed his heartbeat with difficulty. He coughed to clear his dry throat. You are right those methods are quite useful to my bloodline path, but so what? If the price I am going to pay to help you split our souls is big enough to harm me, I would not cooperate with you. Using your methods or not, I will still manage myself while using only the memories of my past life. Now tell me, what do you require for me? He asked. Asna answered unworried about his rejection. I simply need to meet an old friend from my race. He controls the laws of spirits and souls, so if anyone can help me, it can only be him. She then shook her head, but you don't need to worry about any of this now, since you are too weak to even kill a chicken, just raise your strength properly, and when I see that you are ready, I will tell you then where to find him. Felix relaxed his tense shoulders, as he honestly did want to cooperate with her for her methods. But if the price was too large to pay, he could only refuse. All right deal, I promise you now if you helped me in my plans wholeheartedly I will not forsake my promise when I am strong enough to help. He added with a solemn tone, you have my word. Asna thought to herself, with your shameless personality, your word means jack shit to me, Felix who can read her thoughts, cursed her. You witch, don't you dare defame my good character. We the Maxwell family treats our words like gold, maybe other members of the family but you, I doubt it. She sneered. Whatever let's head back, it's about to get dark. He stopped bickering with her after noticing that the sun was setting, speaking of family, I should really give a call to grandpa, that geezer must be alive now. He walked while thinking of ways to help his grandfather avoid getting a heart attack during the upcoming transmission just like in his past life, without alerting him or the family. He only needs to survive it, as Felix had hundreds of ways to remove his cardio disease forever. Fifteen minutes later. Felix was taking a shower from all the sweat that resulted from his stairs climb. Yet, his grandfather's problem was still on his mind. Felix quickly figured out that the only way to save his grandfather was by bringing him to the island and preparing a medical team. But, he soon shook his head in refusal, as he knew that the medical team would not be much of a help. Since the transmission will scare them to death as well, thus they wouldn't be able to do their jobs properly. Hell, they could even make it worse. And Felix did not want to risk this opportunity by relying on others. This left him with only one option, and that was to ease the arrival of transmission by dropping low-key hints to his grandfather. So on the day of transmission, his emotional instability will be mitigated, thus, in turn, lowering the blood pressure that would cause him a severe heart attack. There were many other ways he could use to lower the risk, such as feeding him sleeping pills or knocking him unconscious. But he understood that he wouldn't be able to do so without explaining to his grandfather the real reason. This time I won't let you die, Grandpa. How can you not watch your grandson rise to greatness? He smiled gently while remembering the hidden care he received when he was young. Every time the elders wanted to punish him when he was throwing tantrums and disgracing the family name. His grandfather begged them for leniency towards him while being well aware that only by trading something of value that could outset the punishment would the board agree to his request. If not for his cousin Olivia informing him of the things his grandfather traded for his well-being in the family. He would have never found out the huge amount of assets his grandfather lost for him. He then picked his phone and dialed his grandfather's number. Grandpa, this time it's my turn to take care of you, ring ring ring. Five minutes later, Felix called him over ten times yet no answer. He tightens his grip on his phone. 
this old bastard never changed, he probably at the bar with the other elders of the family. He stopped calling him and called Olivia his cousin, planning to greet her. Ring ring ring. Unfortunately, she hung up on him five times. Now Felix was really livid. But he did not put his phone down, as he kept calling the numbers of each of his cousins. Yet all of them hang upon him. Enraged, he smashed the phone on the ground, not able to hold it in any more. I see you bastards are still following the anti-Felix Alliance guidance book. If I don't prank you to death during the family assessment day, I will eat shit. He swore while heading towards the bed with clenched fists under Asna's mocking laughter. Next morning, 10 a.m. Felix woke up while stretching his aching limbs. He then went to the bathroom to take care of his hygiene. As he took off his clothes and entered the shower, he froze for a second as he noticed something he never did. Can Asna see my naked body? I have showered and changed my clothes too many times, yet she never said anything about it. But she mentioned before that she can see everything. Doesn't that mean I am completely naked like a piece of cheap flesh to her now? Asna rolled her eyes after this idiot finally realized it. But she still didn't want to admit it. What is there to see, you moron? I feel no attraction to your body. Don't forget we belong to different races, thus our sense of beauty is unlike each other. It's not like you get horny when you see two dogs going at it, now do you? She asked jokingly. Unfortunately, her half-baked retort did not fool Felix as he knew what she said was complete bullshit. Except for the last part of course. He held tightly a towel around himself, like he was being assaulted by her eyes, and said with a fake angry tone, don't bullshit me, I am not three years old. I know for a fact that the majority of people are attracted to different races even more, as everyone wants to try new flavors. I don't mind you seeing me naked. But just remember for each time you see my naked body, you owe me a look at your naked body as well, it's only fair this way. He scratched his cheek while saying his true goal from all of this without an ounce of shame. Asna who realized she was busted blushed at his aggressive offer, but she didn't decline it. I don't mind letting you see me naked, but boy can you even handle it. Felix felt his manly pride wounded at her jeer, just you wait, when I awaken my bloodline I would be able to enter my consciousness. At that time let's see who is not going to handle who. After saying his piece he entered the shower fully nude with a smirk, uncaring any more about her peering eyes. Chapter 9 Ten minutes later. Felix held a broken phone in his hands with frowned eyebrows. It's all those rascals' fault, how dare they be this vicious and shun me out like this. I only played a couple of pranks on them. Did they have to take things this far? He threw the phone in the trash and headed towards the door of the suite. Jack bring me another phone, mine is broken. I will be back in the evening like usual, give it to me then, he ordered Jack who was guarding the door. As you command, young master. Felix nodded and went towards the stairs. Half an hour later. Felix was sunbathing on the beach with a glass of watermelon juice while thinking of his future. He realized that he needs to make a large number of amends to his bloodline path. After all, the methods Asna offered are game-changing on so many levels. Starting off by the ability to help him reach the peak affinity of any element he wished for. People would kill to have it since everyone was born with a random affinity to a random element. It's all about luck for the human race. In his previous life, during the family assessment day, Felix was scanned by the AP bracelet and found that he had an affinity to an uncommon grade element of poison, in addition to a small affinity to a rare grade element of illusion. He sighed. For such a kind and lovable person to have those vicious and tricky elements truly surprised everyone during the assessment. Asna sneered, who are you trying to fool? During that day no one was surprised when they saw your elements, only you were. She added more salt to his wound. They probably thought in their minds. As expected only those elements can complement his vile nature. He ignored her and thought of the two elements that managed to help him get some approval from the family board. Poison and illusion. Because of them he did not get straightway disqualified from participating in the training camp, which was a blissful thing, since he got rewarded by uncommon tier 1 great anaconda bloodline that he used to awaken with later on. This time as well, he would receive the same shitty bloodline that gave him the worst head start ever. Because only rare ranked beasts or above provide the host with three passives and three active abilities. 
Meanwhile, the Anaconda only gave him two passives and two active abilities that were not even that good. One he awakened at 30% lesser purity called Asterisk Poison Bite Asterisk, and the other at 99% origin purity called Asterisk Strangle Asterisk, which was also the strongest ability of the Anaconda. But this time things were going to be different when the family sees his grand plan of turning the island into a paradise that would host only the elites of the world. They would be pleased and gift him a rare rank beast instead of the trashy anaconda. Felix suddenly asked Asna, how much time and resources do you think you will need to raise my poison and illusion affinity to peak? With your poison affinity being at 59% and illusion at 12%, I would say for the poison it will take at least from 6 months to a year if you keep constantly providing me with resources that have the same element. And of course the higher their quality, the lower period needed. As for your illusion element, I can only make a guess since this is the first time I am doing something like this. I will need 10 years using the lowest quality of elements, and this is just because you have some affinity to it, as for other elements that you have absolutely no affinity with. It will take forever to just awake it, that's why you need the elemental potion to kickstart the process. Felix was not surprised by the difficulty of raising elements affinity, since he knew that when a human is born with an element, he is stuck with it for his entire life. Only some peak resources can help one get another element or raise the affinity of it. And those resources were extremely hard for humans to obtain since they were highly contested by stronger races. Felix quickly made a decision to focus only on his poison element first to raise it to 100%. So he could get a huge boost of power when using his abilities and during integration. After Felix made his decision on the affinity enhancement method, he moved into the next method which would allow him to choose any bloodline tier to integrate with, without worrying about the smoothness of replacement that would follow after. Asna's social status within the universe was extremely high. To the point, even tier 7 beast bloodline could only be replaced without raising a fart in her presence. Thus, allowing him to awaken even with tier 7 bloodline, instead of building a good foundation like the others gradually from tier 1 to tier 7. But even though he had the freedom to choose any beast tier, he would still be forced to use tier 1 at the start, since the bloodline was being given by the family. And if he didn't choose to use it, he would not be able to integrate like his cousins and join the family training camp. Even if he wanted something better and knew 100 ways to obtain it. He still needed the AP bracelet first to connect him to the UVR. But to obtain the bracelet he must join the camp because the winner gets one as a reward. In the end of the day, it did not matter that he could use any tier he wanted, since he had no strength or network to obtain better. So he could only use the one they give him obediently. Only when he obtains the AP bracelet and enter UVR would he have the freedom to act as he wished. So getting it is the most important step in his future. As for his human bloodline having the capacity to hold 9 abilities, for now, it's quite useless. When he reaches the peak of the sixth stage of replacement, only then would he start thinking about ways to use it properly. Amused, he raised an eyebrow after realizing that all of the three methods were completely useless to him now. He could only integrate his bloodline like the rest. All right, this is the plan, for now, shock the elder board with my hotel, earn well-ranked bloodline, join the family training camp, beat the shit out of my cousins for hanging up on me, and win the AP bracelet that will open up my path. He took his clothes off and went for a swim while taking jabs at Asna that she could only watch and not swim like him. Furious at his teasing, Asna promised him that he wouldn't be sleeping tonight in peace. Felix immediately closed his mouth shut and dove deeper in the sea. Asna smirked at his surrender. Back at the hotel. Felix was dialing a number on his new phone that Jack handed to him. Ring ring ring. Cluck a furious voice resounded in the room. What do you want rascal? You still have the nerve to call me after taking the family tradition as a joke. You are lucky you are in the middle of nowhere, if not I would have beaten the shit out of you. Felix kept the phone away from his ear, and replied with a joyful tone, Ayo, old geezer, I missed you as well. And stop getting angry on me damn it, your fragile heart can't handle it. His grandfather coughed as he tried to yell at him. Who are you calling old geezer, cough, I see you have grown some balls after staying in that island for a year. Just you wait I am coming, and I will bring my belt with me. Felix was overjoyed when he heard this since he was expecting a fierce rejection when he requests him to travel here. 
ha ha I dare you to come here and whip me, I Felix am already an adult, I don't fear you any more. Good, 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 boy I hope you will have the same courage when I arrive tomorrow. Felix then heard his grandpa call out loud, Jace, cancel all MY plans tomorrow I'm heading to SKY Pearl Island. Wait for me boy, for my belt, thirst for some blood. Felix realized he overdid it bit, as his grandfather whipping techniques, which were deeply etched in his memory started to resurface. He gulped and said with a shaky voice, Grandpa, don't you think it's unnecessarily to bring your whip when visiting your dearest grandson? He he he, it's too late for regret now boy. I will see you tomorrow afternoon. Goodbye, I'm hanging up, got paperwork to do. Felix would have believed him if he did not hear the elders at the background singing and drinking to their heart content, knowingly their sick bodies couldn't handle it. Felix said warmly. All right take care of yourself, see you tomorrow. On the American soil, in New York suburbs, in well-furnished bar, an old man with a white beard, bald head, wrinkles all over his face, and muddy brown eyes, had a frown on his face while staring at the dark screen of his phone. Why is this bastard acting all soft, did the island really change him? Just last year he was the thug of the family. It seems I really need to go visit him tomorrow to check on him, he really worries me to death. Just as he wanted to reminisce on the times he spent together with his grandson, a slap was heard loud and clear in the bar, as a hand smacked his bald head, smack the moment the slap was resounded, the entire bar went quiet for a second, then exploded with mocking laughter. Ha 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 ha. Felix's grandfather woke up from his shock by their laughter. Benjamin you degenerate subhuman. If I don't kill you today, I will run naked around the bar. I swear on it. He drunk an entire bottle of beer within a blink of an eye and threw it at Benjamin, who was hiding under the bar counter, expecting such a retaliation, that night at two o'clock a.m. people swore they saw from their windows, an old man running naked with pervert drunken face around the bar. Chapter 10 After hanging up the phone, Felix ordered room service to bring him his dinner. He lay on the bed with one leg above the other while contemplating, now grandpa is coming tomorrow. How am I going to hold him on the island for over ten days until the transmission passes? Asna you are the expert when it comes to being sealed. Care to share some ideas on how to seal my grandfather on the island? He suddenly asked Asna. The only reply he received was Asna holding her middle finger in the air, while cursing, fuck you, and don't bring me into your family problems. Felix sighed helplessly as he knew for a fact, that his grandfather could not stay away from his retired drinking buddies so he would leave in a heartbeat the moment he checks on Felix's well-being. This left Felix with three options, and none of them were good. Firstly, he could lock him up in the suite forcefully. But that wouldn't work since the servants would listen to his grandfather's orders than Felix's. Secondly, Felix could put him in a coma. But, the island trashy hospital wasn't able to handle two patients in a coma at the same time. After all, Cled was already there. Not to mention, he wouldn't be able to explain himself when his grandfather wakes up. The last option and also the most feasible was for Felix to be the bad guy and use his grandfather's unconditional love against him. I will pretend that I have depression due to loneliness on the island, and I need a family company or I will harm myself. If grandpa saw this he will stay until he makes sure I am well. Sigh, it's quite a screwed up plan, but to save him from dying anything is worth it. Ten minutes later. Felix ate his dinner and changed into his pajamas. He then covered himself with a blanket and entered deep sleep. Sadly it was short-lived, as Asna kept her word and sung with a loud voice like before, yeah yeah, ding dong, ding dong. My love for you is growing wide and long. Felix woke up with a roar, enough. You which I have a big day tomorrow. I need to be in my best shape, or my grandpa will assume I am taking drugs again. Why would I care? You kept insulting me and teasing me today. You reap what you sow, she said, humphing. Felix sighed helplessly and apologized, all right I am sorry, can I sleep in peace now please? Since you are sincere, go ahead I won't bother you anymore. Felix relaxed after hearing that and closed his eyes again. Morning 10.30 am 9 days before the great chaos. Felix turned the TV on and entered the Netflix menu. Afterward, he clicked on every movie he saw about an alien invasion, from the classics like Independence Day to new ones that came out in 2024. 
his plan was to watch an alien invasion movie each day until the transmission arrives. So his grandfather subconscious would register that the alien invasion was no big deal. This would slightly lower the emotional instability that would force his blood pressure to rise and gives him a sudden severe heart attack. He didn't know if it was going to work or not, but it was worth the try. After creating a movie playlist full of them, he turned off the TV and opened his phone to scroll the internet and see the current news. He had absolutely no idea what was happening in the outside world. Look and behold. The crisis in the Middle East had reached a new peak during 2024, as the war between Saudi Arabia and Iran had already reached the point of using armed troops. The war had truly blown between the two. Worldwide citizens followed each update about the current situation of the war, due to their fear of nuclear war erupting between the two. Since Iran had them and America that was supporting Saudi would not hesitate to use them as well in retaliation. Your war will turn to an absolute joke nine days later during the Alexander Kingdom arrival. So enjoy it while it lasts, as a new battleground for the entire planet to fight is about to arrive. He then switched to the entertainment section that was booming and chuckled in amusement, after remembering that the entertainment platform was going to get completely uprooted. Hollywood, Bollywood, animation, and game studios, everything had to shut down when the Universal Virtual Reality, UVR, arrived. Since everything that one wished for or desired was there with 100% realism. Not to mention the greatest fighting platform that was supported by multiple races, the Supremacy Games. Who would want to watch a movie, when you can live it? Who would want to play a role-playing game, when you could be your own self inside a boundless magical world? Finally, who would want to watch sports or martial arts competitions which were filled with rules and limitations for the safety of the players, when the Supremacy Games gave jack shit about them? No one would give a crap if you died in the games, as it was part of the rules. He quickly got bored from what he was seeing and turned his phone off. Then, he changed into a sports outfit and left the suite, heading to the gym. Two hours later. Felix stood in front of the mirror composedly, fixing the business suit that he wore to welcome his grandfather. After all, regardless if the hotel was a lost cause in the eyes of the public, Felix still had to show that he was taking this project revival seriously when he meets his grandfather. Otherwise, he would never hear the end of it. After admiring his handsomeness for a while, he left the suite and ordered Jack, drive me to the airport, my grandfather is landing there soon. The legendary Robert Maxwell is arriving on the island, this visit must be accompanied by a banquet, Jack said with admiration while hastily chasing after him. After getting out of the elevator Jack suddenly asked, may I have your permission to make the servants prepare one for the evening? Do as you wish. Just keep in mind not to add alcohol, you know my grandfather's condition. You have nothing to worry about young master. As I will supervise the banquet personally. All right hop in and drive, it won't be long before he lands. After driving for half an hour, they reached an old airport that was covered in rust and growing moss, making it appear like an abandoned building that was about to collapse on itself. If not for the security guard, who seemed more like a homeless person sitting next to the entrance, the entire view would have looked even more desolate and grim. A couple of minutes later, Felix and Jack were squatting next to the guard with a can of beer in their hands. They chatted and played cards to spend time before the arrival of his grandfather. At 2.15 p.m. the deafening noise of a private jet landing resounded in the entire airport. The guard, Jack, and Felix approached the jet while wearing a noise-canceling headset. As they arrived near it, the door of the jet slowly opened, followed by stairs coming down until they touched the ground. In front of the door an old man wearing a black suit, white shirt, and blue tie stood sternly with his hands behind his back. His bald head shone each time the sunlight passed near him. His eyes were solemn, showing that he came here for serious business. Too bad that image was ruined after they saw a long thick belt that was coiled around his hand like a boxing glove. Felix who just about to rush with joy and hug his old man stopped immediately after noticing the exact belt, that was used to discipline him in his childhood. So, he stepped back with a cold sweat covering his forehead, not daring to move forward anymore. Memories of his days living at his grandfather's mansion, after his parents' death, flooded his head with images he could never erase. He could already hear in his mind his grandfather's voice, how dare you steal your cousin Olivia underwear when she was taking a shower. You bastard forced her to walk around wearing nothing underneath. 
Her parents came to complain to me that she cried the entire day. Then his voice weeping and wailing from the pain of his as being whipped by the belt, I am sorry, please stop, I will never do it again, awa. He was twelve years old at that point. Felix ejected those memories back in the deepest part of his mind and sealed them again. He truly felt that his young self was a bastard that needed a beating. You are still a bastard though. Asna murmured under her breath. Felix ignored her and walked towards his grandfather with a stiff smile. Grandpa, I missed you to death, welcome to Sky Pearl Island, the most beautiful island in the world. Unfortunately, his claim would have sounded more believable if it was not for the dirty airport behind his back, making loud rusty metal noises from the wind. Chapter 11 Robert, who was just about to lash at Felix for his ballsy phone call, saw his grandson wearing a formal suit with a warm smile. The image managed to soften his stern expression a bit. Rascal, what kind of mess did you do, to call me yesterday and act soft with me? I know for a fact that you did not call me a single time to ask for my well-being the past year you were here. He added while touching his belt gently. So go ahead and spit it out. Did you burn the hotel to flames, or spent your entire budget fooling around? Felix did not dare to bullshit after seeing his grandfather's warning technique. Grandpa, you really misjudged me this time, since I truly missed you and wanted you to spend fifteen days with me here. He hugged him firmly and whined with teary eyes. All I have around me are beaches and servants who won't dare speak out loud in my presence. I have been feeling lonely ever since arriving here. I always wanted to call you multiple times over the past year, but I know you spend the majority of your time having fun with your retired friends. I just did not want to be an annoyance to you. He finished his acting with a quick classic tear wipe. Grandfather Robert stared at his grandson red eyes and said indifferently, all right drop the act, I did not rule over business empire in my young days with the half-brain to end up believing your nonsense. He broke from his grandson hug and put his weapon on Felix's shoulder and added with a threatening tone. Come on, out with it, the truth why you wanted me here. As for your crybaby bullshit keep it to yourself, I am damn certain you chose this island to just idle away from the family matters. Felix realized his plan was failing miserably, as he honestly forgot the smarts of his legendary grandfather who managed to single-handedly raise the business of the family to the point it became an empire. Suddenly his tears dried up like a magic spell, as they turned solemn. He whispered, Grandpa, I will tell you in private when we reach the hotel, just trust me on this one. All right, lead the way. Let's see how you managed the hotel over the past year. Of course, you will love the changes I did to the place, follow me, Felix replied with a stiff smile. Thirty-five minutes later. In front of the entrance of the hotel. Robert pointed with a shaky finger at the hotel that looked like it was about to fall apart any second. You, you rascal, how did you manage to make it in an even worse state? He took a deep breath and stared daggers at his grandson. You had $30 million as a budget. If used well, you can at least make it look new and fresh. But what the hell is this? The fucking hotel does not even have an entrance, it's just a wide hole where anyone can enter and leave. Are you living in a hotel or a cave? Tell me. Felix was a bit embarrassed being shamed like this in the presence of servants who were waiting to welcome his grandfather. He said with a cough to diffuse some of his grandfather's fury. Grandpa, this is just the exterior, I spent the majority of the budget in the interior, just follow me in. As they entered Felix kept introducing passionately the luxury items young Felix bought by wasting some of his budget money. Look at this couch, it's made of pure cotton and silk with some gold dust sprinkled on it. And this table, it's made out of pure wood, with some silver sprinkled on it. Felix had no idea what he was talking about. He just kept using famous online words to describe those furniture. Enough you bastard, what do you mean by pure wood, is there a fucking wood mixed with rocks or what? And what's all about this sprinkled gold and silver? You are not describing a cake. Robert roared with a dark face after he had enough of his grandson bullshit descriptions. He started stomping hard on the floor as he kept shouting, not caring about his image or his health problem. I got scammed, fucking scammed I tell you. I am a business genius, your mom is a social influence prodigy, and your dad is an investment spider whose senses were never wrong. Yet, you inherited nothing from any of us. This is a scam. 
Why can't you be like your cousins who are hard-working lads, trying their best to support their parents, why can't you be the same? Felix replied furiously. Because I don't have parents, that's why. Then he went to the stairs while huffing. The elevator on your right, I will meet you at my suite. Jack will lead you there. Robert instantly froze with a wide mouth, not knowing how to retort. Since he knew that losing both of your parents young, may either motivate a person to work his hardest or in the case of Felix the total opposite. He sighed helplessly and ordered, Jack, lead the way. Felix, who was acting angry just a while ago, was grinning evilly while climbing the stairs. He was certain that he wouldn't be able to fool his grandfather to stay on the island without giving him the real reason, but now by adding his parents to the mix. He could act angry with his grandfather until the great chaos arrives. Robert would not dare to leave the island without fixing his relationship with his grandson, he he he, what a joke I am not a child anymore to throw tantrums like a crybaby over the death of my parents. I already accepted their death long ago and moved on. I certainly know my mother will be proud of me and clap her hands off when she sees how I played my grandpa to save him, rest in peace mom. He kissed three fingers and pointed them in the air warmly. Half an hour later. Felix was sitting in the living room couch with his grandpa, watching a movie called, The Invasion Day Robert on the other hand was sitting like he was on nails, shifting from place to place while opening his mouth to say something, but then he sighs and closes it off. He kept doing this until Felix shouted, stand still and watch the movie damn it, it's very important to me. Robert started paying attention to the movie obediently, as he did not want to upset Felix again, sorry grandpa, it's for your own good. Two hours later. The credit scene was rolling down the screen, marking the end of the movie. Robert tried to strike a conversation by taking advantage of what they had just watched. This is a good movie. It shows that humans should never let their guard down, as no one knows what's out there. Hell, tomorrow at this point in time, we could be invaded and killed. You never know. Felix answered back indifferently. You are right, you never know what's out there. That's why a person must always keep his emotions stable and calm, to not bring harm to oneself, in case something like this happened. Robert nodded his head in agreement then asked, so what are you going to do now? I am going to make some phone calls, the food storage is getting empty. Robert smiled. All right go do your work, I will stay here watching TV. Felix took his phone and jacket, then left the suite. Robert took the remote control and clicked on the Netflix menu. Afterward, he entered Felix's playlist to see the movies that his grandson decided to watch. What the hell, there are more than 20 alien invasion movies here, this must be his new favorite genre. He exclaimed in shock after seeing the staggering number of alien movies that were prepared for his brainwashing. Yet he had no idea about that. To bond back with him I need to understand his taste of movies, so we would have a lot to talk about. He then chose a random movie and started binge-watching the playlist with interest. Felix was truly not lying to him about the shortage of food in storage, as Layla sent him a message reminding him to bring new supplies. He suddenly thought about the great chaos that is about to arrive, and the food prices that are going to rise to a staggering sum for a couple of months during it. Felix realized that this a quite good opportunity to take advantage of. As he can buy the food now cheaply and later use it as fee payment when the island remodels begins. Felix believed that during the chaos no one would mind heading to an empty island where food is abundant and guaranteed security during the chaotic looting. And so he quickly decided to do so. But in a discreet way, as he does not want to make too much of a disturbance, lest his cousins notice and start spying on every move he does after, either to hinder him or to steal his ideas. This is a normal occurrence within the family tradition since it is a sort of hidden competition between the juniors. One must not only focus on his revival plan but also take caution against his cousin's interference. Afterward, he took his phone out and called his mother's best friend. Ring, ring, cluck a sweet voice answered warmly, hello little Felix, how are you doing, I missed you dearly. Felix replied politely, hi Aunt Mary, I am doing fine currently. I was just calling to check on your well-being, as well as ask a small favor from you. Aunt Mary laughed sweetly and said, how thoughtful of you little Felix. As for your favor, just ask ahead you know there are no walls between us. Felix immediately lied with a straight face. Aunt Mary, I think I inherited my father's investment senses. 
as now they are tingling, to buy a large amount of food. I don't know why, but I trust my father's gift. He quickly added, and even if my investment did not succeed I have nothing to loss since it is just a couple million dollars of food. Kid, you are not lying to me, are you? You know your father's investment senses were never wrong, not even once. If you claim that you had the same senses as him, I will take a risk and invest in whatever you put your money in. Trust me aunt, I am not lying or deceiving you, as I have nothing to earn from doing so. All right tell me how much food you need, and the type. I need two million dollars of ration foods, wheat, rice, beans, you know the rest. Try to send them discreetly, as I don't want to alert my cousins. Okay, think of it as done. Three days from now you will receive the shipment by a boat. I will also buy a couple of millions of food. She continued gently, if you truly have your father's senses, this will turn into a great profit, but if it was just a normal hunch. It's just a couple of millions lost, nothing serious. Thanks, auntie, you are the best. I will wire the payment to your bank account now. Have a good evening. Bye bye little Felix, keep in contact with me. Felix then hanged up and wired two million dollars from the twenty-six million, that was left after young Felix wasted four million over the past year buying those luxury items. Chapter 12 After dealing with the food situation, Felix sent a message to Layla, explaining to her the details of the shipment and ordered her to take care of it when it arrives. Two hours later. Felix and his grandfather walked towards the ballroom, where the banquet was being held, wearing formal suits. Classical songs were being played, as servants, bodyguards, and maids all enjoyed themselves, dancing, laughing, and sadly drinking juices, instead of alcohol. Robert kept complaining about not having a decent drink ever since he landed in the island, but Felix acted deaf. What Robert didn't know, was that Felix ordered all the alcohol in the storage and kitchen to be hidden. Only Jack and himself knew where the stash was hidden. So Robert sadly would have to pass his days without a sip. Afterward, the banquet ended in a good note, and everyone went back to their posts. Felix headed back to his suite, while his grandfather was following behind him using face cam to talk to his buddies, who were in the bar having the best time of their lives, while he was stuck here until Felix feels better. Ha ha Baldy, you look like the time you heard about your heart disease. A mocking voice was heard from the phone. What do you know? I am having the best time of my life here with my grandson. We were just at a party, and tomorrow I will head to the beach to sunbathe. Make sure to cover yourself with sun cream or your skin would lose its luster, and it won't feel good making you run around the block naked anymore. Screw you, Benjamin. What kind of nonsense are you saying, when did I even run naked? If I knew you would start bullshitting I would not have accepted your call, now fuck off. Robert hanged up on him and tried to explain himself. Don't listen to him kid, your grandpa is an honorable elder in the family, why would I do such thing? I believe you, don't worry, just go to bed it's already late. Felix nodded his head. Robert entered his suite, which was next to Felix's one while yelling. I really didn't run naked. He is defaming my character. Benjamin that bastard always tries to create trouble for me. Felix just shushed him with a finger on his lips and pushed him inside, then closed the door. I really didn't do it, you have to believe me. Robert was still denying it even inside his suite. Felix entered his bedroom as he thought in pity. Grandpa, your love for running nude in public is already an open secret in the family, only you still have not realized it. He then mused, I doubt it. With your intelligence, you already knew it, but still don't care. Ayo, so old yet so perverted, if my mother was alive and saw you like this, she will demolish you. Three days later 9 a.m. Near the seaport, a large ship carrying a hefty amount of red containers, arrived while honking its horn. Felix was standing near the dock with Layla by his side. His grandfather did not accompany him since he binge-watched more than five movies last night and was extremely tired, and so Felix left him to sleep in peace. After seeing everything in order, Felix ordered his servants while clapping his hands twice. Go ahead and start unloading the goods. For every box, you unload you get an extra $10. So make haste and finish this as early as possible. The downcast servants instantly got motivated as they heard his promise. 
they looked at the ship that was carrying twenty containers with greed and rushed to unload as much as possible. Three hours later. All the goods had been unloaded on the port. Felix looked at the exhausted servants and said, take a one-hour break, then pick up the goods and take them to the warehouse. For each box, you deliver you will get ten dollars as a reward. He then left Layla to supervise them, as he went back to the hotel. Days went by slowly, as Felix kept brainwashing his grandpa with information about extraterrestrials by using movies. Meanwhile, he kept training his body on a daily basis, until he finally conquered the stairs. As he can now climb up and down with ease, breaking only a little sweat. On the other hand, his plan towards the island remodel was already over. The only thing he was waiting for, was the arrival of the great chaos, so he can save his grandfather and start implementing his plan. The 15th of June, 2024, 17.50pm only 5 minutes were left before the transmission begins. Felix was sitting on the couch in the living room. He turned his head and glanced worriedly at his grandfather, who became addicted to alien genre movies. He somehow already managed to finish more than 18 movies over the period of his stay here, I probably overdid my brainwashing. Looking at his face which is filled with joy as he saw aliens slaughter humans, I don't doubt he will feel happiness from the transmission and not fear, he peeked at his phone and saw only five minutes were left. Grandpa come over here, and sit next to me. Robert just shushed him and pointed at the TV. A clear sign of don't bother me. Felix sighed and went to sit next to him. Time ticked second by second slowly until only a couple were left. Felix, who always had a confident expression on his face, couldn't help but sweat from the distress of failing his mission. If he didn't save his grandpa with all of those memories, he could honestly just commit suicide. Finally, the faithful moment had arrived. Felix counted backward in his mind three, two, one and so it begins. Up in the air, in a public airplane that carried 300 passengers. An old man sat next to a kid, who was shivering from the dread of flying. The old man said kindly, don't worry child, there is nothing to be afraid of since planes have 99. 999% of successful flights. They are even safer than cars. So do. Before he managed to finish his sentence. A voice was heard in his head like a decree from above. Dear primitive humans, we are the scouting and planting crew of the Alexander Kingdom, which owns ten districts. Each having hundreds of solar systems. We discovered your planet by chance when our interstellar coordinator device had a small complication. Now that we introduced ourselves properly. Let's get down to business. Based on the Supremacy Games Alliance Treaty, number 12 in the Book of SGA Rules. We are obligated to explain the three choices that you have currently. The first choice is to submit to the Alexander Kingdom and swear eternal loyalty to our royal family, thus securing your safety from other invaders. The second choice is to refuse and get invaded and looted by our scouting fleet, and based on the primitive level of your technology, our AI calculated your chances of victory are zero. Oh 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 1% is the only viable way of you having a draw, is by some chance the sun goes supernova destroying both of us together. The last remaining choice is to join the Supremacy Game Alliance, which will ensure your survival if you did not break its rules. For more information about the third choice you can only obtain it in person. You have seven days to send someone to represent your planet to give us your final decision. You can find our temporary base in the middle of Antarctica, here are the coordinates 76. 299,965 to 148. 003021, we await hearing good news from you. The mine transmission will turn off now. The old man froze with blankness on his face for more than 30 seconds. No one spoke as everyone was holding their breaths deep within. Suddenly, pained coughing resounded loudly in the plane. Cough. Cough. A white-haired elder gripped his chest in anguish, yet his eyes were clouded with trepidation. That cough managed to awaken everyone from their spell. Just as they wanted to ask about the transmission. A sudden collision between their plane and another one managed to ripe them all apart, as flames and blood rained from the sky. A blonde-haired man was driving a track peacefully while listening to country music. Yet, suddenly blankness assaulted him out of nowhere. 
Meanwhile, his truck just kept moving forward crushing into tens of cars, who also lost control and started to collide with each other heavily. Gas tanks exploded, rising black clouds of smoke in the air. People crying and weeping as they held what left of their family members, begging for help from anyone and calling for 911 to arrive. Unfortunately, no one answered both their calls of rescue, as the world was turned upside down ruined in flames and destruction. Who would bother saving others, when they couldn't even secure their own safety? Every country in the world, whether small or big, was in complete chaos and disarray. Presidents stood in a daze for hours, after realizing their authority and power over the masses, was going to be lost. While a few ones who woke up from their daze acted with the speed of light and ordered their subordinates to contain the upcoming chaos. Not every leader in the world was incompetent. Sky Pearl Island, at the resort hotel, in the living room of the suite. Felix rushed to his grandfather's side without waiting for the transmission to finish. He held his wrist and measured his heartbeat. Just like he feared, it was rising slowly. But he couldn't do anything yet. Not until the transmission finishes, since Alexander's kingdom was using a general technique from the hive race to bypass the human race weaker consciousness barrier, to deliver a message. And before the process finishes, it must not be interrupted, lest the barrier cracks or in worse cases shatter. Felix managed to bypass the transmission control since his soul barrier was one of the best. After all, it was created by the combination of two souls, and one of them was from a peak race. Thirty seconds later. The transmission had ended and Robert whose heart pressure was rising during it, started to slowly fall back. Felix, I must have watched too many alien movies these days. I even started to hear voices in my head telling me that the Alexander Kingdom is about to invade if we don't make a choice or some bullshit, Robert rubbed his temples with a muddled look. Felix did not dare to break the news that everything that he heard was real. He would be a fool to waste such a godsent opportunity. All right grandpa go take a rest, enough movies from now on. They really started to affect your mental health. Sigh, I guess you are right. I am really getting old. Felix guided him to his bedroom and said, Tonight you sleep here no need to head back to your suite. I will sleep in the guest room. All right, good night. Felix replied with a gentle smile, Good night, Grandpa. The first step was successful. Now I just need to feed him a longevity potion that will cure his heart disease and provide him with extra centuries to live. He sighed in relief while taking his phone out planning to call Layla. Chapter 13 after the line got connected, he immediately informed her to gather everyone in the hotel hall. He then hung up and called his Aunt Mary and informed her that in 30 minutes he will call her again to show her something. After he got a word of approval from his aunt who was freaking out just like the rest, he hanged up. It was finally time to start preparing the manpower needed to take advantage of the upcoming economy crash. The chaos will only last at most for two months before the world leaders start sharing all of the information about the universe so he must be quick in his plan implementation. Thirty minutes later. In the hotel hall, Felix stood on a chair while holding his phone on speaker, examining the terrified and shocked hotel personals in front of him. He raised his voice and began his speech that might put those servants on his side. I know everyone is still in a state of shock and confusion over the current absurdity. You probably already figured out that everyone on the entire planet has heard the transmission at the same time which resulted in great chaos and the death of many innocent lives. He paused for a few seconds to see the crowd's reaction and continued at the same pace. From the choices that have been handed to us humans, the third option is the most feasible. I trust the world leaders to make the right decision and not declare war with them. This means, the fear of the unknown future should be gone by now, and those who do not have fear clouding their eyes and judgment, will see only opportunities to take advantage of. He then smiled gently to ease their tension and said with temptation. But not everyone will see that far ahead. People will only see what's near them, and now what they see is a hopeless situation, where their lives are in the hands of their country leaders, who they never trusted or loved, and also in the hands of the invading race, who can kill them any time they wished for. He pointed a finger in his head, in the citizens' heads right now, is there going to be another transmission? What if I was driving when it arrives, won't I just die? He continued his speech with a confident smile. 
so they will buy or loot basic necessities like food and water and hide in their homes, until the information about the situation is clear to them. This will offset a huge economical change since every commoner in the entire world would only think about getting as much food to survive, thus they will throw all their money and precious jewelry at it. This will result in prices of luxury items to fall down sharply, as the market will be flooded with them. This is just one of many opportunities one mentioned. More will come, the only question left is. Are you guys going to seize them with me, or pass it due to momentary lapse of judgment? He concluded his speech with a question that could decide their fate. The servants who heard what Felix said started to pant, as their eyes were slowly being cleared from the confusion. And what replaced it was zeal, zeal for a better future, to improve their status. No one wanted to be a servant or handyman forever. Everyone wanted to strike rich and be part of the 1%. Sadly, the world resources had already been split apart without a crumble for them to pick after. But now, there was a whole new pie in front of them. It's time to stop thinking and fearing and just do it. And so with zealous expressions, everyone cheered with arms raised in the air after seeing a new bright future. Nothing would stop them from getting rich. Felix smiled as he observed everyone's excitement. He let them blow off steam and the negative emotions that were filling their minds. Two minutes later. The servants calmed down and said while bowing in respect towards Felix. Please guide us, young master. For today we won't do anything, as the chaos has just started. But after seven days when the world leaders make their decision, we will make our move, since I believe that the leaders will hoard the information first to obtain some benefits from the commoners as well. He quickly added after seeing their disgruntled faces. But I doubt they will go too far, since no matter what choice they make, they will have to start planning the planet's future, and that will drain them from their time and energy to care about other things. And that's when we strike. I will use $20 million to buy all the luxury resources needed to remodel the resort hotel. He then named them one by one under their greedy eyes. I want gold, silver, gems, marbles and the finest wood, I don't care if it's ebonywood or sandalwood, I want them all. Then when we secure all the precious materials we can start buying construction materials. He switched his vision to his phone, where his aunt was listening the whole time with concentration. Aunt, I need from you to use your contacts, and get us all of those materials, then send them by shipments. I will also need a huge amount of manpower, handyman, craftsmen, architectural engineers, managers, doctors, airport specialists, all of those talents. Promise them they will move to a safe island away from the mess, where food is plenty, and free. But only do so after we secured the materials, all right? He asked to see if she understood his instructions. Aunt Mary answered with reminiscing in her voice, Little Felix your mother will be proud of you if she saw what have you become. Then she spoke firmly. Leave it to me, I will make sure our operation to be discreet, without anyone knowing about it. The less competition the more we obtain. The servants realized that there was a hint of threat in her tone, probably at them to not spread the information. They were not going to do so anyway, if Felix just went ahead alone and tried to devour all the precious materials. The servants would get greedy over not being able to touch them, they will either steal them while hidden or sell the information to his cousins who would love to do the same as him. But now that he shared, it meant they were all in it together. They will get part of the upcoming shipments, and anyone who greed over what belongs to them, will not be tolerated. Felix switched his vision to them and instructed, your job is going to be the hardest since I trust only you guys to keep watch over the upcoming manpower. He warned. They will try their best to steal precious materials, and your job is to supervise them every day, and punish them if they went out of line. If the island remodeling was successful, it will turn into the fanciest island in the world, and only elites will be allowed in it. And your reward after all of this is 5% shares of the hotel profit. The family will give me 49% when I successfully revive this impossible project. And if everything went well, you can expect the island to be famous in the world, with profits exceeding tens of billions each year. This meant 5% will give you at least $100 million each year. But this 5% is going to split based on the contribution during the process of building and remodeling. If you do well, you can even obtain a full 1% while others share 4%, but if you were caught stealing, you will be thrown in jail. Forget about the 5% you will get jack shit. He then said coldly. 
I gave you a way out of your social status, so don't you dare disappoint me or betray my good will. That's it, for now, go take some rest it's getting late. We will continue the details tomorrow. He yawned with a hand covering his mouth and excused them. Good night, the servants, bodyguards, and maids just stood there for a while frozen with all the information that was handed to them. Then one by one they bowed deeply in the direction of Felix while saying in unison, thank you, young master, and good night. In the sweet living room, you did well little Felix, your plan might not be flawless as there are always some bad apples or loopholes. But at least it's going to work. By adding them to your plan and sharing some profit with them, you made them feel like they are going to work for themselves and not for you. This will greatly limit their greed when the shipments start to arrive since no one would steal from himself. Felix replied nonchalantly, you give me too much credit auntie. It's just a standard stick and carrot style plan, anyone can think of it. Without waiting for his aunt to keep complimenting him he cut her off with a grave tone. Auntie, what do you think about the transmission? His aunt replied with a hint of dread in her voice. I don't know, this is too sudden, we were just living peacefully in our bubble. But no one expected it to explode without a warning, everyone was caught by surprise. I bet your family board of elders is holding an emergency meeting to address their plan for the future. She added with a disheartened sigh, too bad it's pointless, as long as no information about the entity that is living in Antarctica is revealed, any plan for the future is futile. Don't worry, my senses are telling me that this is a huge opportunity for planet Earth. We were fighting for a pathetic amount of resources every single day, declaring wars for territory, and more messed up things. All of those. I believe will be solved if we manage to absorb the aliens' knowledge about the universe, and started our own interstellar colonization just like them. Aunt Mary could only put her faith in his words. And hope that everything works out just like he claimed. Chapter 14 All right auntie, I am going to sleep now, I will call you tomorrow to finalize the details of our plan. Good night dear, I will wait for your call. Felix said good night back and hung up. He then went toward his bedroom to check on his grandfather, as well as get his pajamas from the closet. After measuring his grandpa's heartbeat and seeing that it was still stable, he took his pajamas and went to sleep in the guest room. Next morning 10 o'clock a.m. Felix woke up and headed to the bathroom to take care of his hygiene as always. But this time he found his grandfather sitting on the toilet chair and watching the news from his phone. Felix's heart skipped a beat at this sight, as he thought his grandfather's blood pressure will rise when he sees the chaos and disasters that were happening outside the island. Felix approached him and asked stiffly, what are you watching there grandpa? Oh, just some news about how everyone heard the same transmission as me last night. It really was not a hallucination. Earth was truly found by another race, and cornered to such a degree. He then faced Felix and asked, boy, why did you lie to me yesterday? It seems like you also heard the decree, but acted like nothing was wrong. Felix looked at him with an annoyed expression. It was to save you old geezer. If I acted surprised or showed fear, you would have realized that it was the real deal. I had no idea how would you react, whether in fear or anger. All I know is that no matter how you react, your heart will find it difficult to handle the pressure that will arrive from the blood rush. He shook his head lightly and added, I was not willing to take any risks and you should feel elated being here isolated from everyone. I read news about old men that have the same condition as you died like flies when the transmission was over. Robert smiled warmly after hearing Felix's reason, as he figured so as well. Thank you, son, I appreciate the thought. But you did not have to worry. Is it not just an alien invasion? I already watched more than 20 movies, and in every one of them, humans won. He gave Felix double thumbs up and added, and I have faith that we will win in this one as well. Suddenly, he touched his ass with a shiver and said, now close the bathroom door, my ass is getting wrinkly from the wind. Felix obeyed with half-smile on his face. He realized that he overdid his brainwashing quite a bit after hearing that his grandfather had faith in humans emerging victorious, if they went to war. Unfortunately, that sounded like a joke in Felix's ears, as he knew that humans most prized weapons. Nuclear bombs were merely toys in the eyes of the human kingdoms outside. A single cheap outdated device can nullify them completely, turning them into worthless junk. Whatever as long as he is not in danger, let him think what he wants, he then headed towards the bathroom in the next suite. 
in the hotel cafeteria. Felix was laying down instructions to Layla and Jack who was sitting next to him, as well as his aunt who was using face cam, listening to Felix in concentration. Auntie, you will handle the process of obtaining as many resources as possible outside the island, since it's not going to be just us who will think far ahead. There are many geniuses like a father who had a fearsome profit sense. They would only rely on those senses to take gambles and not knowledge. So this is a race to see who can hoard as many resources as possible until the release of information by the leaders. He stopped for a quick juice sip and continued confidently. I will make a prediction here and say that it will take from one month to three months before the chaos settles. So buy and buy and keep buying until my $20 million runs out. If only the family didn't forbid taking a loan and only using the budget they gave us. I would have spent more than $50 million. He sighed in dejection over losing more profit due to this stupid rule to stop them from cheating. His aunt replied, all right when it comes to gathering resources you have nothing to worry about, I live and breathe in this business. I will take care of your 20 million of shipments first before I start buying using my own money. All so you can beat those little rascals who bullied you when you were young. Felix mused in his mind, auntie, you got it all wrong I was the one bullying them. The poor things just allied to defend themselves. But he did not dare say it out loud, as he knew that she adored him since he was a little kid, treating him just like her son, due to her being barren, not able to have kids. Thank you auntie, I can always count on you. He drunk another gulp and turned his head towards Layla and instructed her. You will take care of the logistics, from detailing the times of each shipment arrival to detailing how many precious materials in a box. The figures need to be close to the ideal number since some stones will be lost in one way or another. He paused to let her digest his orders as he does not want to overwhelm her. A few seconds later he carried on. Your second mission is to hire warehouse managers, you will pick them from the batch of manpower that will arrive. You can choose who you see fit as your subordinates from the servants and mark each of their contributions. He turned his head to Jack, who was waiting for his instruction while holding his breath in anticipation. As for you Jack, you will take care of the security of the island, and the smoothness of unloading the shipments and delivering them to the warehouses. You can hire strong-armed men to protect those warehouses. Auntie will deal with smuggling the weapons outside the states. You can also pick subordinates to assist you in dealing with those matters. After he finished his instructions, he pointed at himself and said, as for me I will take care of the remodeling of the island. I will need architectural engineers to create a solid design that can impress me. I will also supervise the makings of tables and chairs by the craftsmen. Everything needs to be in order, so we can remodel the entire island in a maximum period of two years, it's going to be hard but not impossible. Felix cleaned his mouth with a handkerchief, and added, this is the overall plan, for now, we will adapt as new complications start to arise. Go pick your subordinates, and train them on how to be tough. We don't want outsiders to walk all over them. He then picked his phone and left while saying, I will call you when I need you. In the suite, in front of the TV. Felix and Robert were watching the news about the chaos that was happening currently in America. Did you call your buddies? None of them died right? Felix suddenly asked. Yes, no one died. He continued dejectedly, unfortunately, Benjamin also survived. They told me he passed out when he drank too much and heard the transmission, but his body did not react much. Lucky bastard, he should have been dead for always defaming my good character. Felix ignored his grandfather's tantrum and questioned, I see, it's good thing that they survived. Now about the family situation, did they call you to inform you of its state? Yes, they called me this morning. We lost one elder in the family board, he was doing an operation on his heart when the transmission struck. They told me the main surgeon cut the wrong artery due to lacking focus and stability. He paused. And they requested me to rush back to replace his spot temporary until they find another one. This time don't retire from the post grandpa, just remain in it for a bit, with the current messy situation. The family really needs your leading wisdom, stop flattering me you rascal, you just want me there again to wipe your ass, when you make a mess don't you? Robert chuckled. Not this time, grandpa. You will soon realize your grandson's greatness, and see that you were not scammed by me having your bloodline. 
Robert ignored Felix's promise, as bragging was always his grandson's greatest talent. He was already numb to his promises. Soon, he turned off the TV as the only news on it was about the millions of deaths worldwide, and two morons trying to analyze the already simplified transmission, that said kneel, or die, or join an alliance. All right I will get dressed, I'm leaving in one hour, don't burn the hotel when I am gone. Felix just chuckled and said, don't worry when you see it again, it will be lit on fire. In his thoughts of magnificence Robert glared at him and went to his suite to change. Chapter 15 Five days later. Inside the United Nation meeting, 195 presidents, and kings of kingdoms such as Morocco, and representatives of countries who lost their presidents during the transmission were sitting in chairs, and looking at the podium platform in front of them, like they were in a theater stage. The reason they gathered here in person, even though they could just send their diplomatic secretaries, was to show some form of power and courage towards their invaders, as well as their people. Sadly, no one gave a shit about their political gimmick. They just wanted to know what's their decision. Moroccan king said unhurriedly near the microphone of his seat, we already scouted the area in the coordination they gave us, and the images were clear enough, showing a humongous spaceship parked there. He then asked with suppressed fury. The only question I have is how the hell they managed to land there without us knowing. The president of Germany touched her microphone lightly entailing her desire to speak. She then added her own opinion on the matter intelligently. Probably the only reason we managed to see their ship in the first place is because they allowed us to. Such an advanced gap in technology needs centuries to millennia of hard work to close. Plus who knows if that is all they have or just a small spaceship from their fleet. She paused for a few seconds to see her peers' reactions, and just as she wanted, the majority of them nodded their heads in approval. She took advantage of this chance and pushed her agenda further. This is probably used to bait us into launching an attack so we give them a reason to invade us without them breaking the supremacy games, alliance treaty that they mentioned before. So I believe it is in our best interest if we join their kingdom, and absorb what we can, and then when we reach their power we revolt. She took a deep breath and said her final vote, I vote for choosing the first option. The president of North Korea retorted indifferently. Everything you said was but speculations. Who knows if they are just acting tough on the outside to scare us into surrendering without fighting. I suggest launching an ambush on their base using 20 nuclear bombs, such powerful force will certainly destroy them to oblivion. No one interrupted him, or disagreed, they just left him to say his piece. If they only had that ship we would have one, but if they had a fleet as you say. There is nothing to worry about since we had carefully created hundreds of thousands of nuclear bombs throughout the years. And if we united and combined our nuclear heads, we have a high chance of winning. He glanced around him and found that the majority were shaking their heads in disagreement with his strategy. His forehead squirmed with veins from fury after seeing their coward like behavior. He suddenly stood up and banged the table loudly while adding in agitation. We did not make those bombs just to sit around in the warehouses collecting dust. We were too afraid to use them on each other, for health reasons but now our existence is being threatened by invaders. So if not now then when god damn it. He roared the last part like a madman. Yet some presidents were nodding their heads in his favor. He calmed himself down and fixed his suite then sat back and said his final vote. I vote for the second option. Immediately after, the two sides began to argue about their points loudly, like they were in a parliament assembly. Each presenting the advantages of their choice. Yet, before long they get dismissed by the opposite side. The president of Japan stared at this barbaric sight and stood up with his microphone. He hit the head of it lightly, making ear-piercing noises to attract their attention. After seeing that everyone quietened down, he informed them cool-headed about the forgotten third choice. To be honest, you guys already know deep down that this is a hopeless war. They know everything about us from our technology to our cultures and I bet that they probably did a full data scan on our internet, and hacked into our most classified secrets. The world leaders sat back and listened to his respectful opinion without interrupting. The president of Japan continued after seeing this sight. For a race like them to be able to do interstellar travel, they wouldn't find it difficult, breaking into our primitives' firewalls. They are in the dark hiding and watching every move we make, while we have no idea who they are and how they look like, even their words of controlling ten districts in outer space, take it with a grain of salt. 
we do not know if it is real or they are just lying to make us submit and join their ranks. He sighed disheartened and carried on his final deduction while raising one finger. From this, we can easily conclude that we never had three choices in the first place. We had only one. And that is joining the Supremacy Games Alliance, which they are also part of since they could have invaded us with ease, but didn't due to some treaty of the Alliance. This signifies only one fact and that is the Alliance is extremely powerful and not to be provoked. One last note, since they are part of it, it also means it gives rewards and benefits too hard to miss even for them. Don't even mention us. After saying his piece he sat down composedly, letting them digest his words before the true voting begins. The spokesperson did not keep them waiting and immediately informed them. It is time to cast your votes, you have 30 minutes to think carefully. Keep in mind that each one can only vote once. The choice that has the highest votes will be applied, period. Half an hour was not really a long duration for such a large-scale decision. But time was not their ally in this situation, 30 minutes later, the spokesperson read the final results from a card he was holding. Your votes have been cast and counted. The final result is, the first choice with a vote count of 25 countries, the second choice with a vote of 34 countries, and finally the third choice with a vote count of 130 countries. The last remaining six countries abstained from voting. It has been officially decided that planet Earth will be joining the alliance. Bang! The gavel sound of the spokesperson marked the final decision. Loud clapping sounds echoed in the meeting hall as presidents celebrated, avoiding a massacre if they went into war with those madmen. The president of America gave an extra suggestion to the celebrating world leaders. I suggest sending the spokesperson as our representative to declare our decision and also to scout the aliens on a deeper level. If they were not as strong as we assumed, we can give full authority to the spokesperson to choose the second option. The majority of the leaders nodded their heads in approval, as they found it reasonable. And so the dumbfounded spokesperson, who was dealing with the whole situation nonchalantly, was decided to serve as their scapegoat and declare their decision. In the middle of Antarctica an enormous ship that had the same height as the famous Burj Khalifa, and wide enough to hold 20 football stadiums, submerged itself within the ice like it was always there. A military green helicopter landed gently near the spaceship. Shortly after, a person wearing thick clothes like a bear came out of the helicopter and walked step by step towards the spaceship that had no windows or entrances. It was covered with a special dark alloy never seen before on Earth, making the entire ship resemble a sleeping beast. The man thought to himself while shivering from either cold or fear. What the hell am I doing here, couldn't they just send anyone? Who did I offend to deserve this? He raised his head and looked up, yet he still couldn't see the top of the ship, if this was just a ship of a scouting team, their army ships must be the size of a meteor. How are we supposed to win if we fought? His contemplation was suddenly interrupted by a set of moving stairs that dropped near his feet, leading to a small open door. As he saw the moving stairs he mused, we have the same ones in the malls, maybe the gap is not that bad, unfortunately. The moment he stepped on the staircase, he found himself inside the ship with a blink of an eye, never mind what I said. He started to examine the interior of the ship with piercing eyes. Yet, he did not see a single thing as everything was dark due to the alloy. As he began to wonder what he was supposed to do, lights suddenly were turned on one by one from the gaps of the alloy, brightening the ship gradually. He had to close his eyes, as the sudden brightness was too much for him to handle. Thirty seconds later, his eyelids quivered, as he attempted to open his eyes slowly to adapt. Yet he got instantly scared shitless after seeing three humans standing one meter in front of him. The one in the middle smiled and spoke with a weird language that was later translated somehow by his bracelet. Welcome my friend, we waited for quite a bit for you guys to send someone. At least I hope you brought some good news to us. The spokesperson, who expected to see green little things with big brains, or big eyes with no eyebrows, was shocked to realize they were humans just like them with a few minor differences, like the coiled horns extending from their shoulder blades. This is even better, only humans can understand each other, this will make our negotiation passes smoothly. It didn't take much for his political personality to kick in and gain control over his emotions. Dear visitors from outside the earth, I welcome you to our humble planet. He bowed respectfully while holding his hands above his head making peace signs. He has no clue what their culture was. So he just did this retarded combination. 
The three invaders eyed him with amusement, as they already read what they could on the Earthlings' current culture, while the things they didn't know, the AI reminded them of. And right now the AI says it has no idea, what the hell he meant by his actions. The one in the middle kept doing the talking while the other two just observed silently from the side. No need for formalities, we are all part of the great human race that rules the entire Milky Way galaxy. The spokesperson gulped a mouthful as he heard this, the entire galaxy? What the hell? How many humans are out there then? A couple of trillions or even quadrillion? He spoke with a shaky voice. Right, right, we are all part of the human race. So I hope you will be able to provide us with the information necessary about the Supremacy Games Alliance, lest we make the wrong decision. They looked at him with a hidden glint and asked him with a frigid tone, so you mean by joining us, you're making a bad decision? Dissatisfied, one of them added unpleasantly, I see, we came here in peace and acted based on the rules, respecting your culture, and your free will, and this how you treat us? The spokesperson was not a fool, as he quickly figured out their hidden agenda based on their words. He knew that if he failed to provide a solid explanation, they will invade or force them to kneel without suffering the consequences by relying on that feeble moral reason. Feeble or not, it was still a reason to launch an attack. You misunderstood me, my dear guests. What I really meant was that only by having knowledge about the alliance that your kingdom is part of, can we understand more about your greatness and strength, to not make a foolish decision of declaring war on your lofty race. The spokesperson's ass-kissing ability that helped him reach his current position did not fail to deliver as the invader in the middle, switched back to his polite persona after realizing he was dealing with a tough nut to crack. Of course, only by knowing everything, would you find that you earthlings are, but the weakest bunch in the Milky Way. He then patted the spokesperson's shoulder and instructed him indifferently, follow me so I can enlighten your eyes about the cosmic difference between us and your race. Chapter 16 even though, he said to follow him, they didn't actually need to walk, as the ground started moving by itself taking them forward speedily. The spokesperson was scared that he was going to be thrown away due to their speed. But soon he found out that he couldn't move his body at all. It's like his legs were locked tightly by the ground. Five minutes later, they reached their destination. The spokesperson felt like he was about to throw up, but he managed to swallow it just before so with a disgusted expression just to not lose face in front of his hosts. AI creates two chairs for us and send extra AP bracelet, please. As you command, chief. Quickly, two chairs manifested of the dark alloy like it was a living being. The chief said embarrassingly. I still have not introduced myself properly. My name is Killer, chief of the scouting and planting crew in Alexander's kingdom. Our jobs are to scout for life forms, but mainly to plant the UVR tower signals around the undiscovered solar systems. He asked. How about you? Nice to meet you, I am Jacob Miller, the current spokesperson for the United Nations, and I am here to represent them all. The spokesperson introduced himself as well while extending his hand for a handshake. The chief didn't refuse his handshake. Good, since they sent you, it meant you are good enough. All right enough chit-chat, your AP bracelet has arrived. Killer sat on his chair and took one small bracelet that fits perfectly in human's wrists, from a pocket in the dark alloy chair. He then explained with admiration what's this tiny device can do. This called the all-purposes device or in short AP bracelet. It has multiple features such as phone, stream, scanner, AI assistance, spatial cards, and most importantly it is the key to enter the UVR. Come on sit down next to me, and wear it, it will bind with your consciousness, so only you can use it. Jacob was quite hesitant to wear it since he had no idea if what Killer said was right or just bullshit, and this bracelet was but an enslaving device. Killer saw his hesitation and smiled, seeing it as a normal reaction. I know you are wary of me, but don't be. I have no reason to harm you or your planet, at least not until you make your choice. He shrugged his shoulders and continued with a disgruntled expression. This is one of the disadvantages of being part of the Alliance. You must always adhere to its strict rules or else face extermination. So just wear it and you will obtain all the knowledge you seek. Jacob relaxed as he realized that even if the bracelet was an enslaving device, he will still wear it. Since anything he did or said could be used against him and his planet. So, he took it from Killer and wore it around his wrist, then sat down next to him. 
Killer explained how to use it properly, first you need to connect your consciousness with it. To do so, you just need to put its screen in front of your eyes, and call in your mind, Queen AI, then the bracelet will do the rest. Nervous and agitated, Jacob did as he was told and put the screen in front of his eyes. He took a deep breath and called Queen AI. Instantly, his vision was lost, as he laid on the chair like his soul was ripped from his body. Ten seconds later. Welcome Sir Jacob, your AP bracelet has been successfully bounded with your consciousness. From now on, only you can use the features of your device. If you want to know their details, you can ask me. Jacob opened his eyes to a cold monotonous voice of a woman. He looked around him and saw that he was sitting in a white chair, in a white room. Everything was pure milky white, even his clothes. Who are you, and where did you take me? He asked nervously. The cold woman faithfully answered. I am the Queen AI, the one responsible over the connection of the entire UVR platform around the universe. I exist to serve it by following its rules. As for this place, it's your own chamber in the UVR. You can modify its the decor as you wish. But this service is not free. Jacob just sat there awestruck, feeling like he was in a sci-fi movie after hearing her explanation. Suddenly, he slapped his face as hard as possible, believing that since he was in virtual reality, his senses won't be as responsive as in reality. Sadly, a loud smack echoed in the room, followed by a long wail. Hey, Jacob held his slapped cheek with tears and snot mixed together turning his already ugly face into worse. What the hell, did my slap feel more painful than in real life or this is just because I never got slapped this hard before? The Queen AI helped him understand better by explaining, the senses are 100% simulated, so everything that you feel in the real world, will be felt here as well. I see, the civilization outside is truly millions of years ahead of us. If we could get this kind of technology and be connected to the universe, we would enter into a whole new era. He rubbed his red cheek and asked, Killer outside told me that all the information I seek is here. How do I obtain them exactly? Since this is your first time connecting to the UVR, do you want to listen to the universe history introduction? Yes please. He answered eagerly. A moment later, the white room exploded with light, leaving Jacob in the infinite universe with galaxies and stars all around him. He looked at this beautiful scene in fascination and listened to the AI history introduction for dummies. Current time period, 500 years before the creation of the Supremacy Games. One million years ago. The present era was called the Dark Ages. Every race in the universe followed a simple rule. Only the strongest were allowed to survive. Each new planet found with a hint of life on got invaded without questions asked. If the aboriginals of the said planet were strong enough, they survive. If they were weak, they get either exterminated or enslaved. There were no rules and no laws. Wars were everywhere and hate filled every race. This all changed when the metal race who seeks the truth of the universe as their only path, decided to intervene and stop those random wars that affected their introvert lives. They spend the majority of their time holed up inside their research labs, creating devices, technologies, and weapons to ease their endless curiosity. But they were constantly being interrupted during their research by foolish races who wanted to plunder their creations. They fought them time and time, and time again until the metal race finally snapped and had enough with those random barbaric wars. So they decided to share their virtual reality system that had 100% simulation with those races hoping that they could duke it out inside the VR and leave them alone. But the universe was boundless, and it was almost impossible to connect everything together, to enter the VR. This dilemma raised their research spirit to new heights, making them use every method and way to solve it. However, their attempt soon turned out to be futile. Just as they began to lose hope on this massive project, one researcher goes by the IDX1S994 or in human language, Maximum found a way to solve this problem when he was watching the Hive race communicate with each other using their innate talent, which was called the Hive Network. As each species in the Hive race could join this network, and at the same time act as a signal tower, spreading the connection in a large radius around them by relying on their receptors. Max got inspired by this spiritual network and figured out, that if they could imitate it to create their own VR network around the universe, their problem would cease to exist. He then proposed this idea to the Empress of the Metal Race AI 015XL or Emily. 
who in turn managed to contact the Hive Race's Empress Scarlet for collaboration after seeing the feasibility of his idea. Empress Scarlet agreed to her offer, as by creating this VR she would be able to extend her Hive network even further when she connects the two networks after its creation, and so, by fusing the peak technology of the Metal Race and peak spirituality of the Hive Race. Signal towers that acted as workers in the Hive race context were created and spread around the universe. Then they created a powerful Queen AI that had processing power only below the Metal Empress to control those tower signals and connect them with herself. But soon they figured out that the tower signals were still flawed. As they found that an infinite number of signal towers would be required to connect the universe together. Hence, the metal race did what they knew best and that was to research a way to remove this limitation once and for all. After four centuries and sixty years of trials and errors, they finally found a way to upgrade their UVR signal system. They discovered that the majority of life forms consciousness resembled the hive race inner spirit in the way of their ability to access it and control it. This discovery helped them modify the innate talent of the hive race that was used to enter the hive network to a general technique that could be taught and learned by anyone who could access his consciousness. This way, a being could enjoy connecting to the UVR everywhere in the universe, as well as spread the network connection in a large radius around him for those who can't access their consciousness. Or in the words, commoners. The creation of this technique marked the true rise of the UVR, since every race realized the benefits of connecting with each other, no matter the distance. Additionally, they could create whatever they desired, as well as fight to their heart content with 100% realism. And so, they stormed the metal race asking for access. But the metal race gave them two mandatory conditions to sign if they wanted to enjoy the services of their network. The first one was to earn a 4% profit from each transaction that was happening in the UVR. 2% for them and 2% for the hive race, based on the premise that they were the creators. The second condition was to simply stay as far as possible from their main galaxy so they could research in peace without their constant harassment. Every race agreed of course, as they saw only benefits in doing so. But the moment they realized that an AI queen had control of the entire UVR, or in other words, control over their consciousness. They laid their own heavy rules to limit the power of the queen, to forbid her from acting on her own interest or any race interest in that sense, and to follow only the UVR rule book which they spent years later to create. Thus the Queen AI became autonomous, acting only by the rules, making her the greatest leader and judge to any situation that happened inside the UVR. One year before the creation of the Supremacy Games, the UVR had grown into a cosmic spider web that snared anyone who entered it, without the ability to escape its grasp anymore. Some people even decided to live permanently inside the UVR, not caring about their real lives anymore. During those years of operation, the Queen AI was not lazing around, as she managed to gather a huge amount of data on the race's power systems, paths, legacies, techniques, bloodline abilities, etc. Based on that massive data she proposed an idea to every race leader within the UVR. That idea gave birth to the greatest entertainment platform in the universe. The Supremacy Games Chapter 17 the idea was to create a platform where all of those wars will be held, and be viewed by an audience who will gladly pay for tickets to see the bloodshed in front of them. The race leaders saw no reason not to approve. Since if they were going to fight no matter what, then why not obtain some tips while doing so? Too bad, they underestimated the commoners' craziness over anything that may make their boring and routine lives a little bit more entertaining. And so, the platform exploded with popularity. The race leaders who were planning to earn only some tips from the spectators started to get slammed with money they never thought was possible to be earned this fast and easily. The mere sight of such easy windfall from just some viewership over their daily skirmishes brightened their eyes with greed for more. They tried every method they know of to make their content more entertaining and unique to grab the attention of a larger base of fans. Because of that, they managed to evolve as time passes from using random wars and skirmishes between their soldiers, to making the platform open for everyone to register and participate in entertaining deadly games, using multiple formats, such as sports, puzzles, battles, tournaments and more. The creation of this variety pushed the supremacy games into the peak of popularity within the UVR, surmounting movies, animations, and games. Gone, were the days of wars without a set of rules. Gone were the days of fights between races due to resources or for territory. 
now with the existence of Supremacy Games, everything could be solved there without harming their foundation in real life. The moment the Supremacy Games platform began to be used this way. Every race believed that more money and resources could be earned if they just made an alliance that accepts only races that were using the platform. This way they could solve their political problems that arise between each other fair and square, without the losing party complainant. Plus training their juniors constantly using the games, and at the same time earning a massive amount of money from the happy spectators all over the universe, thus hitting four birds with one stone. The alliance emergence marked the true beginning of the supremacy games dominance over everyone. That was one million years ago. The platform has kept evolving ever since, making new rules and laws, to help the weak races and new planets, such as planet Earth to have a place inside this ruthless universe. There were currently more than 550 rules and laws within Supremacy Games Alliance and the UVR. Any abuser of those rules would face a merciless punishment, no matter his race, or his social status. This marks the ending of the introduction to the universe. Do you want to listen to intermediate public information now, Sir Jacob? Queen AI ended her introduction and asked. Jacob who went through a journey in the UVR, seeing the races fighting in wars using superpowers he thought were only in fantasies, and hearing the information about the creation of the UVR as well as SGA, made him realize that Earthlings had truly come across the greatest opportunity of their existence. And if they missed it, it would be the biggest joke in the universe. In his head, he already knew that Earthlings were lucky to be found during the era of SGA. Otherwise, they would have been invaded the moment they got discovered. No questions asked. He soon woke up from his momentary daze and replied. No, not, for now, I kept Killer waiting for more than enough. It's time to give him my planet final decision. As you command, you will be ejected from the UVR network in three seconds. Three seconds exactly, Jacob closed eyes unsealed moderately. So how did you find the information you obtained? Any questions you have about them, I can do you a favor and answer them now. Killer asked warmly after seeing that Jacob had logged out. Fascinating and mind-blowing. You were right, my eyes were truly enlightened, and I hope to enlighten my planet as well. Jacob replied with a polite tone. However, it did not last long, before he informed Killer of his planet's decision firmly. That's why I will go straight to the point and say that our final choice and decision is to join the Alliance. Jacob stared at Killer composedly as he said his planet choice. Meanwhile, his mind was in utter mess, so how is he going to respond, is he going to attack me out of anger, or just ignore the Earthling's decision and invade anyway? I see, we figured so as well from the information we obtained from your classified files on your countries. You would either go to war or choose the lesser evil, which in this case the SGA. Killer did not show a single ounce of disappointment, as he already expected much from this planet. He shrugged his shoulders and added, well, it does not matter much for us anyway, whether you choose us or the Alliance, since we will obtain benefits both ways. If you chose the Alexander Kingdom, you would have obtained our protection from other races' invasions. But you will need to provide yearly tributes in return. However, if you chose the Alliance we will get the recommendation rewards, since we are the ones who found you as well as gave you the choice of joining the SGA. He chuckled lightly after seeing the stiff expression on Jacob. So relax your nervousness, your heartbeats are echoing in the ship. Jacob stiffly asked. So that's it? No invasion or looting from being humiliated in our planet. Was I thinking too badly of you guys or what? Killer and the other two laughed out loud and jokingly reprimand him. You moron, why would we bully small planet like yours? First, we are not savages who kill anyone who offends us. We are humans for God's sake, we operate only based on benefits, and your planet has zero benefits to provide us. He patted Jacob's shoulders while wiping tears from his eyes after not laughing this hard for a while and continued, you guys are weak as hell. Plus your planet does not have any elemental materials. The only good thing about your planet is the gentle atmosphere that will make it a good tourist destination. So we have no reason to bully you. Just relax and ask away any question you have. My crew is about to finish the signal tower plantation. We will leave as soon as they finish. Jacob got quite embarrassed after hearing their explanation. It turned out that they overestimated themselves too much. But still, he sighed in relief, as this was much better than he assumed. 
thank you for giving us this opportunity, we earthlings will always be grateful for Alexander's kingdom. He paused for a second and said, as for my questions, I do have quite a few. Firstly you said the crew has almost finished planting the signal tower for the UVR. But the queen told me that it is quite an outdated way of connecting to the UVR, as the general technique can allow anyone to connect, as well as provide a signal for others. I wonder why are you even doing so? He asked curiously. Oh yes, this question is quite popular among the planets we discovered. Well, the answer is simply due to you guys not having the ability to connect to your consciousness first, since to be able to learn a general technique, you must first awaken successfully to get access to your consciousness. Only then will you be able to learn it and connect to the network without the use of the signal towers. But for your planet who had not a single awakened, the tower single is a must at the start. He smiled and added, that's why the moment we found you, we started to build it on your moon. As to whether you joined Alexander's kingdom or the SGA you will need it to access the UVR. Jacob thanked them passionately for the signal tower, and decided to take advantage of this precious opportunity to gain as much information as possible. Thank you for clearing my doubts. But I still have more to ask. I hope I am not being nonsense to you guys. Go ahead, it is the job of every human to enlighten his brother in race, since we only have each other to rely on in this dog-eat-dog -dog universe. Killer smiled warmly and suggested, so just feel free to ask all your questions together, I will answer them one by one. Without further ado, Jacob fired everything at once. Starting off by asking about how were they supposed to connect to the UVR, when the only bracelet they had was not even theirs in the first place. Without stopping, he moved on to the next one, as he wondered about how were they going to purchase and sell items in the UVR while using their earthly currency. He paused for a bit and took a deep breath with brightened eyes, and asked the most important question he always had in his mind since the moment he spotted those races using superpowers in the UVR. I really want to know how can humans obtain superpowers, like the other races. Chapter 18 Killer replied to all of his questions at once as well, by answering both the first and second question together, since they were connected. He explained that Earthling's currencies were not useless inside the UVR. As if they managed to make their planet unique somehow, it would draw people's attention towards them and trade their supremacy coins, which was the common currency in the alliance with theirs. The trade between the currencies would depend on how Earthlings managed their planet's popularity. The easiest and fastest way to do so was by participating in the games and getting a good ranking. But that was just an overall solution for the planet, as for individuals, families, companies, or such, they could just invest in business opportunities in the UVR, using loans. He quickly moved on to the AP bracelet situation. He clarified that their planet would get a 60% discount on their first year of purchase from any shop they visited, as this was part of the SGA rules. He pointed his finger at Jacob's bracelet and told him to take it with him and use it to purchase the rest of the bracelets. As for your last question, I am afraid that we humans can't use their power systems and paths. Just as Jacob was about to sigh in disappointment, he heard Killer continue proudly, but we have our self-created path to gain the same powers, and we call it Bloodline Integration System. Jacob opened his mouth planning to ask eagerly about it, but Killer didn't let him do so as he explained that all of the information concerning the Bloodline System, clans, beasts, and more basic knowledge could be all explained by the Queen AI. After answering all of Jacob's questions, Killer decided to give him a brownie, since he quite loved the gentle atmosphere of the planet. I suggest for you guys to allow the Queen AI to get all the data about your planet. As she will trade SC based on the useful data she collected from the information you gave her. Jacob did his 90 degree bow with his hands raised above his hand in peace signs and said emotionally. Honestly, we have nothing to pay you back on your grace. The only thing I can say is that we will always keep your assistance and pieces of advice in our hearts. Truly thank you for everything. You have been the greatest invaders one can ask for. Jacob already forgot the five million people who died seven days prior, as he bowed his head to Killer as no such thing had happened. As a true bona fide politician, he sees only benefits, and at this point, he just wanted to make sure the Alexander's kingdom either becomes allies with them or at least keep the current situation the same so he had absolutely not a single thought in his mind to bring the misfortunes of those who died. In his eyes, every sacrifice for the well-being of Mother Earth was worth it. Don't mention it, we did what we had to. 
Killer glanced at his bracelet and informed Jacob dejectedly, sadly our time together has come to an end. Our interstellar coordinator device has been fixed, as well as the planting mission has been finished. We need to carry on our journey. He walked forward and shook Jacob's hand firmly and said, thank you for your hospitality, and we hope we can hear from you again when your planet officially joins the Alliance. Jacob suddenly realized he had no idea how to join the SGA. So he quickly asked, how are we supposed to join them exactly? I thought you would never ask. Killer chuckled and answered, it's simple actually, just enter the UVR and tell the Queen AI that you want to join the Alliance. She will do the rest. He suddenly snapped his finger and mentioned an important detail that sent a chill in Jacob's spine. I suggest for you guys to rush the process, as the moment we found you, your coordination has been sold to the SGA and became public information. Get inside the Alliance fast for protection, lest you get invaded without questions asked by other kingdoms, as you already had been given your SGA rights by us. Before Jacob could thank them again, Killer waved his hand and the black alloy caught Jacob's legs and took him back to the gate, just like how it brought him. Jacob didn't even complain as he was truly in a rush to return so he can join the Alliance and secure their safety. Every second counts. Five minutes later. Jacob was walking towards his helicopter with a hint of fear due the upcoming possible invasions and excitement for the future of his planet inside the UVR, we were living in a peaceful fantasy, and it's time to wake up. And fight for what's ours. He murmured while entering the helicopter. In the United Nations meeting, the presidents and kings, did not head back to their countries, rather they stayed here waiting for the arrival of the news. Jacob spent six hours continuously speaking about what he saw, heard, and obtained during his stay in the spaceship. He showed them the information about the UVR and the SGA, using the holographic streaming feature in his bracelet that could stream everything inside the UVR with peak quality. He already learned about every feature function and characteristics during his flights. The presidents who saw and heard the same things he did, just watched with their jaw wide open and unblinking eyes at the unbelievable face of the universe, which they lived in like frogs. Jacob this time did not stop at the history introduction but carried on to showcase all the free information about their race. Ranging from how to integrate, to where the resources can be found and obtained. After seeing all the information that was available, the meeting room went into chaos, as every president howled with excitement like youths towards a new era an era that could allow the commoners to live for more than 500 years, and those who awakened to tens of thousands of years, depending on the beast bloodline they reached the peak with. All of those world leaders were close to their death, as their ages ranged from 40 to 80. They saw hope in the ways, humans, outside their planet, used to extend their longevity. And they would do anything to obtain those methods no matter the cost. Ten minutes later. Their excitement died down a bit, as they had more important things to discuss. Jacob said through his microphone. Please, it is not the time to think of the future, but the time to join the Supremacy Games Alliance. Our coordination had become public and we could get attacked any moment now. He suggested, I believe it is a priority to start the process now. The leaders soon stopped their conversations as they realized the severity of the situation. The president of Russia supported him. He is right, the sooner we finish the process, the faster we can decide the road forward, without fearing others attacking us. After obtaining their approval, Jacob informed the Queen of his planet decision to join the SGA without entering the UVR. All right Sir Jacob, to join the Alliance you simply have to sign this contract that will bind your planet to the SGA for eternity. The conditions and terms are in the contract. You can take as much time as possible to read it. When you are ready to sign, just call me back. Shortly after, a holographic contract that had over 2,000 large pages materialized in front of Jacob and the leaders. Just the colossal size of the contract made them realize that to actually read it and find loopholes or unfair conditions. Every lawyer within the city the meeting was being held at must rush here ASAP. Fourteen hours later. The leaders, who were sleeping in their chairs and some snorting with loud noises like pigs near their microphones, woke up by a thunderous cheer of celebration. As more than 80 lawyers hugged and cheered after finishing reading this contract that burnt all of their brain cells, in the process of searching for any loopholes within. The fate of the entire planet laid in their hands. If they failed their jobs and missed an important detail. They would be cursed for eternity. 
The president of the Philippines rubbed his muddled eyes and asked, Did you guys finish? Tell us about your findings quickly. One of the lawyers answered with respect in his eyes, as he stared at the contract like he was seeing a piece of art. All I can say is that this is the most well-written contract I have ever seen in my 40 years of experience in this field. It has everything, terms which are important get highlighted, and every condition that is severed to the planet is dyed with red color, to not miss it. As for the content, it will take a lot of time to explain. The only thing we can share now is that this contract is solid without any major disadvantages for us. I can name a few advantages. Such as, when we join the Supremacy Games, we will be given two years of preparation before our first game. Since our planet is still weak without a single bloodliner. He paused to drink a sip of water, then continued, a second highlighted advantage is that we have a 60% discount on buying AP bracelets, as well as a 40% discount when buying beast bloodlines that do not surpass tier 2 and rare rank for one year. As for other resources, we only have a 20% discount. Third advantage is that our planet has solid protection from any large-scale invasions. And even if a kingdom declared war on us, they won't dare to attack unless we actively accept their declaration. And if we did so, we would lose alliance protection and can only fight without a complainant. He fixed his glasses and lifted his eyes from the small notebook he was reading from and said lastly, those are currently just three benefits from what we counted to be at least 15 benefits, and since we are in a rush of time, I will mention them later. For now, I will leave you to decide if we are going to sign or not. The leaders did not need to cast a vote. All they did was look at each other and then nod their heads towards Jacob, a clear sign of approval. Jacob didn't waste time as he immediately called for the queen. What is your decision, Sir Jacob? We choose to join, I will sign the contract in your presence now. A pen suddenly materialized in the air in front of Jacob. He took hold of it and used it to sign the contract using earthlings as a word. Few seconds after he finished, the contract started to slowly burn as five artistic words appeared in front of everyone in the meeting hall. Welcome to Supremacy Games Alliance. Chapter 19 Three days after the United Nations joined the alliance. Felix stood near the port, observing the ships that were docking, and later get unloaded by the handyman who arrived two days prior. Then the ship heads back to the USA to load more packages and travel here again. This process will keep happening until the 20 million budgets that he gave to his aunt, runs out. Felix read the leaked news from the United Nation meeting from his phone composedly. The news entailed with solid evidence that the world leaders came to an agreement and chose the third option, which was joining the SGA. Unfortunately, that was everything that was leaked. There were no details on the process itself or information about the alliance. This lack of intel caused the citizens to remain in their houses, not daring to step outside. They already bought or plundered months of necessities stock. So they found no reason to risk heading outside during this chaotic period that froze the police system and even the governance. After all, the streets were now filled with rapists, thieves, murders, and all kinds of psychopathic individuals who took advantage of the society crash to let their inner madness reign freely, pushing some citizens to even build a small-sized bunker to hide in. Before the system gets back on track, no one will step outside, causing the economical crash to remain for a long period. Felix sighed in relief after seeing the commoners' reactions. As this meant that the timeline was still heading towards the right direction, and his actions did not make a huge difference since the $20 million would only buy him some precious materials to remodel the island, nothing more or less. On the other hand, those rich whales, were the ones who were going to shake everything up when they throw hundreds of millions at once to devour as much as possible of the flood of, jewelry that was in the market. This would result in a herd of sheep, following their steps, and doing the same, just because the whales did so. But this wouldn't affect Felix much, because he made the first move with every preparation possible to hasten the shipment's process. By the time the sheep and heinous who smelt profit late, flood the market. They would only find crumbles left behind by the whales and his aunt, who was planning to invest at least $300 million on this gamble. As long as Felix kept his actions small and miscellaneous in the bigger picture, he would keep earning profits until the day everything goes haywire and diverge from the known timeline. Satisfied with the smoothness of his operations, he raised a megaphone to his mouth and encouraged the hard-working handymen. 
After seeing that no one was paying attention to his encouragement he stopped for second and searched in Google for good motivational quotes, and read them passionately. All our dreams can come true if we have the courage to pursue them. The secret of getting ahead is getting started. Never limit yourself. Layla and the other supervisors were quite speechless at Felix's antics. But what else could they do? He was the boss. Eight hours later the sun started to set west. That's enough for today guys, you did well. Give yourself a round of applause, and come dine in the hotel and take rest. We have enough rooms to host everyone. The handymen started to clap with red hands, over their efforts and then headed towards the hotel. The lucky ones went on jeeps, while the majority had to walk since there were not enough vehicles to carry everyone. Felix got a light headache after seeing this issue. As he knew that bringing cars and trucks as well as renting construction vehicles was going to be a pain in the ass. Since he needed a huge load of them to start the construction of all the buildings at the same time to finish early. But when he asked his aunt about it, she replied that even though the renting prices have fallen to the limit. They still would need a huge amount of time to be sent here if they were going to keep acting discreetly, fuck it, after the resources arrive and the manpower, we can drop the act and just go all out and use as many ships as possible to bring the vehicles. Felix decided to do so since it won't matter much at that point if anyone sees what they were doing. It would be too late to hinder them. He then called his aunt and informed her of the current plan. Auntie, for the shipments of vehicles, just go ahead and use everything you got to bring them here ASAP. But wait for the materials to arrive first. He quickly added after remembering an important detail. And send some architectural engineers here as well. I need them here for the designs. His aunt replied unhurriedly, as you wish dear, you can expect the engineers to reach the island in two days. I will give you a call when they sail. Thank you, auntie. I will leave you to it now, goodbye. Bye, dear. Inside the hotel. People were everywhere, some entering their rooms to take a rest while others were heading towards the ballroom where a party was being held there. Drinks, food, and music filled the atmosphere with energy for drunk adults to dance to. The only downside about the party was the lack of females. As only sweaty men kept dancing and shaking their bodies to the beat, with no women to grind to. The image left Felix horrified, as he swiftly escaped to his suite without bothering to bond together with them anymore. This can't go any further, I must create a brothel in the island here for them to let off their pent-up desires. Or else during this two years period, every female on the island will get raped. And when they are done with them they will turn to each other. Fuck I can't let this happen in my presence or my honorable image in the family will go to drain, without further ado. He called his aunt again who was the only one he could trust and rely on, without breaking the rules of the test. He then explained to her that the ratio of men and females in the island was outbalanced by a huge margin. And if left this way, a disaster will strike sooner or later. It's better to nub the bud right now, and just build a brothel for them. It will keep them at ease and not have any wild thoughts, which would help them focus on their jobs honestly. His aunt giggled lightly and teased him, Dear Felix you really have grown up to notice such a thing. I was planning to inform you about this issue later since the handymen have just arrived and still tamed. But since you found out about it yourself, consider it done. I will send all types of girls for those men to enjoy, and some for your personal use as well. She added without feeling awkward at her proposition. Auntie, feel free to do so. But whether I use them or not, you will never know. All right, I'm hanging up now, tons of paperwork awaits me. Felix responded indifferently and hanged up quickly before she could reply back, sigh, I have no problems letting off some steam, but in the eyes of my auntie, I'm still a 17 years old virgin kid. So I have to properly act as one, at least for now. Currently in California, America, in a mansion near the beach, an elegant middle-aged lady, that had a short curly dark hair, blizzard blue eyes, and wearing a red sleeping gown, was lying on a sofa with her arm supporting her head. That rascal is really quick to hang up on me like this. Huh, trying to hide your embarrassment behind that expressionless tone, she chuckled at his antics. I will never know if you use them or not. Lad who are you trying to act manly for? Aren't you just a brat? But you are already 17 years old, you should start learning about this stuff, since your parents are gone, let your auntie take care of this. She dialed a number on her phone and after a few rings, the call went through. 
without greetings, she laid out her orders unhurriedly. Sophia, go bring me, two ladies, with the age of seventeen to nineteen. They should be smart with high education, thoughtful, and most importantly beautiful. Tell them they are going to an island for an internship in an upcoming six-star hotel. If they refused, leave them be. She paused for a bit, so Sophia can note down everything properly. After a few seconds, she carried on. And also hire escorts and send them to the island. The boys need them. And lastly, go find out where that stupid adrenaline junkie husband of mine current location. I just found out that he removed my GPS chip from his phone, she said the last part with an annoyed expression. That should be all for now, make it happen fast. As you command, Madam Mary, Sophia answered dutifully. Chapter 20 Two days later. Felix showed his notebook, which was filled with details of the island, to the five architectural engineers who have just arrived. Look here, the foundations of the hotel, airport, seaport, and hospital are all in good condition. When my family decided to invest in this project, they used everything to solidify the foundations without future problems. This makes the remodeling much easier and cheaper. We need to remodel the exterior and the interior without worrying about the foundation of the building not handling the load. He said while pointing at the first page of the notebook. He then instructed them politely. There are five of you. Each one of you will handle the design of a building. The last one will create a design for residential apartments for the employees who will get hired after we finish the remodeling. Take note here. This is the outline of the entire island. The northern side will be for the resort hotel, the western side is for the airport, the eastern side is for the seaport, and the southern part will hold the warehouses. And finally, the middle of the island will be used as a residential area for the employees, and that's where the hospital shall be as well. He pointed at a small made map in his notebook. Feel free to read my notebook while I go search for some sketches I made. He said while heading towards his bedroom. An engineer was sitting on the left side of the couch, took the notebook, and read it carefully, searching for any useful information. He pointed at one sentence and said to the others, look here, he noted that the roads between the resort hotel and the airport are not in a straight line since there is a forest between them, which forces them to take a longer path, near the hills using jeeps. This means we need to create a highway between the two, or probably even between all of them but now it's better to focus on the airport highway since the tourists will come from there. I suggest we call some of our subordinates to come here and handle those issues that may pop off like this, so we can focus on creating a design that will please young Master Felix. An old man with grey hair and a beard responded, I shall give them a call then, and one more thing. Dibs on the hotel. The other four instantly realised what this shameless bastard meant and rashly called as well, Dibs on airport. Dibs on the seaport. I will take the seaport, I will fight anyone who tries to rob it from me. A middle-aged man with a bald head threatened with a clutched fist, fuck you, I already called dibs on it, respect. The gentleman packed, or you are not a man. I heard jack shit, stop spewing lies. The seaport is mine. I already have ten seaport designs around the world under my belt. This project is perfect for my talents. The bald man retorted. A quiet middle-aged woman was sitting on a chair drinking tea said calmly, I will take what's left, you guys choose what you want since no matter what you pick, my design shall be the best of them all. A sudden silence covered the living room as the others focused their eyes on her weirdly like they were looking at a strange creature. You are truly delusional if you believe so. My hotel design will be best. After all, the island's existence is to support it. Another one mocked her. What a joke, the hotel was picked, the airport was picked as well, and the seaport is being fought over. The only thing left is the residential area and the hospital near it. What can you design to make them better than ours? The seaport is not being fought over, it already mines. The only thing left is those two projects. They can fight it over them, as long as they stay away from my seaport. The bald man corrected him. You degenerate, baldy. You own shit, I call dibs on it, stop being a child, and respect the dibs agreement like a man. Just as the bald one was about to insult him back, they heard Felix's indifferent voice. What's all about this ruckus? I left you for one minute, and you guys are already at each other's throats. 
the moment they heard his voice, they instantly behaved properly. I wanted the Seaport project since I have tremendous experience when creating their designs, I believe I will make one that will bring pride to the upcoming six-star hotel. The bald man promised. The man who called dibs on the seaport did not leave it to rest and fought back. You donkey, I clearly called dibs on it, but you acted shamelessly and wanted to ignore the gentleman's agreement. I can't let this blasphemous action bypass me. Felix did not want to listen to this farce anymore. So he ordered them indifferently, you have three seconds to decide who will receive the seaport project. Use rock, paper, scissors. I don't care. After three seconds, if you don't handle it, I will give the seaport to that elegant woman drinking tea. Now decide. Before one second passed, they both yelled out loud, rock, paper, scissors. The bald man used paper, while the dips man used rock. The result was clear. All right, you will get the seaport, and you will get to the hospital or the residential area, make haste and choose. Felix hurried him. I will go for the residential area then, he said in an upset tone. Good, now that everyone has a project, I expect you guys not to disappoint me and create solid designs for them. He then rolled down some large sketches of the building that he made and said, you can use those as inspiration for the creation process. I will leave them here with you. For today, take a look around the area, and chose a room where you will stay. There is still an open suite unused. Before anyone could even take a breath in, the old man with grey hair called out loud, dibs on the suite. The rest who were slower cried in despair as they thought, this bastard dibs calling is a gift from birth. It got to be. Near the port, ships kept docking and get unloaded. Then leave hastily for a refill. The handyman kept unloading those heavy boxes, which were sealed tight without a single opening. No one knew what's inside them. The only thing known to them was that those boxes were heavy as hell, like they were carrying rocks. Layla was updating Felix on the current situation while reading from a small notebook. Currently, over 500 large containers filled with precious materials and artifacts have been unloaded and secured in the warehouses. Madame Marie called me earlier and informed me that 500 more are arriving tomorrow, and those will be the last ones packed with precious materials. The next shipments are going to deliver the construction materials and the period needed to receive all of them is estimated to be 10 days more or less, good, keep up the hard work, and notify me if anything out of place happens, and I assume that auntie informed you of the date the ladies are going to arrive? He asked. Layla replied with a blush, yes, she did, it will be seven days from now, and they will arrive together with the manpower needed to construct the buildings. She also told me she is preparing a surprise for you, she looked at him confused about what his aunt meant. Felix's palms sweated after he realized that his aunt truly went and sent him personal girls to enjoy. Yet, his face was as indifferent as ever. I see, don't worry about it. It's probably just some talents, who were hard to be convinced, changed their minds, and decided to sail here. I really hope so. We are getting slowly overwhelmed here. Jack is having some difficulties handling those men, who went out of line, without beating them too badly. She said. All of those problems will be fixed when the workforce arrives. Just hold it tight for now as seven days later they will be here. He stood up and said lastly, all right, I have seen enough. I am heading back to take a rest, stay in contact. He then departed swiftly, leaving her to continue her job. Chapter 21 Felix entered his suite and took a quick shower. After finishing, he ordered dinner from room service, while changing his clothes. Asna, stop playing dead and tell me your opinion about the current situation since if this hotel turned successful, it might bring us a quite tangible authority within the World Council. Asna lay sideways on a couch made of mist while hugging a popcorn bucket, watching a movie from Felix's memories. Didn't I tell you to not bother me with your problems? I don't care how your hotel manages to perform, I am not your babysitter to watch over your actions and correct them. If you got a bloodline and wanted to awaken, notify me. Before then, let me watch my drama movies and series in peace. She replied lazily, uncaring about the fate of the hotel. Asking Asna was truly a lost cause, as she only cared about two things, freedom and enjoying her time. So he dropped the matter entirely and stopped bothering her. It's not he would actually use her opinion even if she decided to help. 
After all, how could someone who was sealed for 20 million years know anything about architecture and construction? Are you calling me lazy and stupid indirectly you bastard? You have no idea, the number of constructions and buildings I saw during my life. Just one of them can give you a heart attack. If you asked me again politely I might have given you some inspiration for the design, but now get lost from my sight. Asna fumed as she threw the remote control at the TV, turning it into a cloud of mist. Felix realized that she was right, as even though she might have been sealed for a long time, he had no idea the amount of time she lived before being sealed. And so, he apologized with his thick skin like he never insulted her. Come on my dear Asna, you know we are partners and I will never insult you like this. So how about you forgive me, and share some of your memories of those constructions you mentioned? Asna humphed and created a second TV, while saying, now that you know my worth, you come back begging. Well even if you begged I can't show you, since if you want to see my memories you need to first access your consciousness. Felix's expression that was fawning over Asna instantly turned disdainful, then aren't you still useless? You can't do this and you can't do that. Everything that you said will help me cannot be used now, you are living in my consciousness at least pay rent by sharing some of your memories. But no, you can't even do that. And you dare not think of yourself as unproductive. How is it my fault that you can't even get a bloodline to merge with? I already gave you the methods. It's not my problem you are too weak to use them. Now leave me alone, so I can finish this movie already. She yelled in irritation and disconnected the link between them to watch in peace. He shrugged his shoulders after realizing that he can't hear her thoughts anymore. Well that was absolutely pointless. I won't call her again until the assessment day. Next morning in the cafeteria. The five engineers sat around Felix, each with their own breakfast. However, only Felix was eating as the rest were informing him of their first discoveries during yesterday's scouting. I did a quick survey around the hotel exterior and interior, and all I can say is that the hotel will need a lot of work just to repair the broken stuff inside it. Harold the hotel engineer pulled his own notebook and showed Felix the results of his survey. So I suggest replacing everything that needs maintenance with a luxurious version of it such as the elevator, must be fully replaced with a new one made of gold and ornamented with gems in an artistic design. Felix loved the idea and nodded his head in approval. He wanted the entire hotel to scream with lavishness, that even the richest people on earth would have their jaws dropped after seeing it. If not else, what's the point of wasting all that money on those materials? The dibs man whose name was Gabriel began talking about his own experience after Harold finished. A bodyguard called James, guided me towards the middle of the island, where the area is supposed to be used for residential apartments. It turns out, that it is the perfect land for the project. The only issue I have is the trees are too many in the area. They must be removed to give us a large open space to build the apartments. Consider it done, we are only waiting for the construction equipment to arrive. Felix replied. He then turned his head towards the elegant lady and asked. What do you think of the island-only hospital Madam Abigail? Abigail slowly cleaned her mouth with a handkerchief and answered, Honestly, it is more like a small clinic, than a hospital. Even though it was built large enough to be called a hospital, the interior of it is empty of nursing beds and doctors. She paused for a second and said seriously, Plus the inside is quite stuffy like the air conditioner pipes pathways are either not working properly, or just installed wrongly. So the first step I am going to do is to fix it, since we are going to expect some patients when we start the construction process, and it's going to be a horrible thing, putting them in that environment. Felix nodded and said, good thing you noticed it, I was too busy to fully investigate the hospital and just left it for later. He suddenly asked her after remembering Cled. Tell me will the patient who's getting treated inside, get affected as well? No need to worry young master. He is getting clear oxygen from a tube, and since he is in a coma, he does not feel the stuffy atmosphere. But other patients who will arrive later will notice it, and start complaining. It's one thing to smell the nasty medicine in the hospital and another thing to smell it and not be able to breathe properly. All right, I give you full authority to handle any problems that arise from the previous design and fix it as you see fit. Thank you young master for your trust. She bowed her head slightly. Now share your thoughts about what you discovered in the airport and seaport. He asked the bald man Barry and the airport engineer Eddie. 
the seaport is still in good shape. The machines are working properly and the port is not too shabby, the only thing I can do to improve it, is to change its basic exterior to look more befitting of being part of this island. The airport condition is the same as the seaport. The interior foundation is solid. But its appearance is quite basic and to remodel it, I would need a quite large amount of materials. I believe the budget is going to be only a little bit less than what the hotel remodeling needs. Eddie offered his own views on the airport condition. Understood, you can take 10% from the hotel budget and use it as you see fit. Felix promised. Harold almost slapped Eddie in the face when he heard his budget was to be given to him. So he just sat there fuming as he glared at Eddie. Unbothered about his look, Eddie gave him the middle finger when he rubbed his ears with a smirk. He was not worried about getting caught by Felix, as they were sitting at the side of the table. Harold almost fainted from anger after being insulted like that without the ability to retaliate, you want war, then war it is, I will make sure you receive the shittiest batches of resources. Let's see if you are going to give me the middle finger again, Eddie kept his smirk on his face as he mused, this moron has all his emotions written on his face. I don't doubt he will give me the worst batches of precious stones, since all of them will head first to the hotel for filtering. Then the leftover will be given to us. Too bad for you, I will plant my subordinates within the workers who manage the resources and switch the batches. Let's see your face when you use the worst materials to remodel the hotel. Abigail looked at the evil smirk of Eddie and the angry Harold and thought, if you don't take your job seriously and kept fooling around like this. Don't blame me when I report it to young master later. Let's see at that point how are you going to ease his fury at both of you. Chapter 22 Seven days later. Ships arrived in the port completely packed with men and women, wearing vacation outfits. Craftsmen, construction workers, managers, electricians, plumbers, logistics managers, escorts, and many more different types of careers and jobs, all in ships coming to this unknown island in the middle of nowhere. They came searching for a place where they could do their crafts and jobs properly without being harmed from the chaos outside. They were promised free housing and food during the duration of the construction, as well as good pay. Not as good as they were being paid before, but at least they would get paid instead of hiding in their homes doing nothing but eat, sleep, and shit like some poop generator. They accepted the invitation because they did not know what the future was holding for them, and the world leaders refusing to share intel made it even worse as they thought there were only two reasons why. 1. The leaders did not dare to do so, since the information was too horrible for them, and if it gets leaked the chaos might turn even uglier. 2. The news was too good and the leaders made a pact to hold it as much as possible until they benefit from it, then release it to the public. Both of those reasons had no benefits for their future. So it's better to just take a step forward and brave the unknown than to hide like cowards. Felix watched the people he hired disembark one by one, holding their suitcases with them. All of those people either did not have families, or they did, and just didn't care leaving them behind, since the first condition of coming here was to arrive alone, as there was not enough space to hold everyone, plus their family members. Slowly, the ship started to get empty. Everyone who disembarked, stood in the dock, making two groups. One for men and one for women. Felix's eyes suddenly brightened a bit as he glimpsed at two beautiful ladies, lining up last, auntie really sent some talents here. To even be able to hire those two beautiful escorts, the men would work harder to earn money just to get a night with them. What a good plan to force them to do their best, soon everyone landed on the port and lined up neatly. Jack stood in front of the men, while Layla in front of the women. All right, I will call the jobs you were hired to do one by one. If you hear your job come lying behind me, understood? Jack instructed them sternly while holding a list under his armpit. Layla told the women to do the same. Then they began calling job after job, and people got behind them obediently, making different lines. Each for a specific work. After they finished the list, those two women were the only ones left. Layla instructed, state your jobs and why you did not respond. One of the girls lowered her head and said shyly, we were hired to work as interns in the hotel. Madam Mary told us to follow young Master Felix to assist him in his work. Layla immediately froze, as she realized that Madam Mary sent those two for Felix to play with. Her expression soon morphed to jealously, but she quickly hid it. Oh is that so? 
You are still young and need training first, so you will follow me to learn the basics. After I see that you guys earned some experience I will send you personally to young master to assist him, am I clear? Both young ladies bowed their heads lightly, yes madam, thank you for your care. Felix watched this situation unfold with a relieved expression. He was glad that Layla intervened, as he really had no time to play around. This period was crucial for the hotel and his future. He needed to be at his best state, and those beautiful ladies would cause his teenage hormones to annoy him to death, by their presence. Good, take your time training them, I don't want burdens. If you think that they are not ready, don't send them. He waved his hand and left Jack and Layla to handle those workers' rooms in the hotel. He was not worried about the lack of space. As the hotel had 400 rooms and 24 suites. Each room had two beds and a comfortable couch. That meant each room could hold three people, which was not bad, considering the total manpower that arrived was just 1020. The hotel could handle their housing but it would be the last one to be remodeled since they couldn't start constructing the hotel while everyone was living in it. So it was much better to start with the other buildings. The moment they finished them, they could send those workers home. This will relieve some of the burdens on the housing as well as their daily consumption. Next morning 9 a.m. Felix decided to eat breakfast this time in his room since it got pretty wild inside the cafeteria with all of those people, flooding in to eat. He called Jack with his phone, I want you to round up all the craftsmen who deal with making chairs and tables and all the furniture that requires wood, and ask them to come to my suite. I need to discuss their jobs with them. They will be in your suite, in 30 minutes, young master. Good, stay in contact. He hanged up. 25 minutes later. Felix was sitting on a couch in the living room, while over 30 wood craftsmen gathered around him in a circle. Listen up, I have bought a huge quantity of all types of expensive wood, and I want you all to turn them into furniture that will make this hotel smells like wood. You hear me? But first you need to draw me a set of furniture that will be used in each room. Then draw me a set that will be on the suites. The ones that please me will be used as models for you all to work on. The creators of those two sets will live in a suite for the period of constructions. He tempted them with a smile. As you wish young master, we will start working on our creations as soon as possible, be at ease. One of the craftsmen bowed his head respectfully. Could you have a month period to provide me with your final creations? And you are allowed to use precious materials in your design, just don't overdo it. He clapped his hand twice and stood up. Now go ahead and start brainstorming. Afterward, the craftsmen left one by one, until the sweet door got closed by James. Felix wore a practice outfit and headed towards the gym to lift some weights. It's been a long time since he did so. Two hours later, Felix took a cold shower, after returning from the gym. After a while, he finished and stepped outside of the bathroom. Immediately, he noticed his phone ringing, ring ring ring. Who is calling me at this period? It's probably aunt to ask about the two young ladies she sent. Yet he was completely wrong as he saw the one who was calling him was surprisingly his grandfather. Hello grandpa, what's the occasion of your call? He chuckled as he accepted the call. Little bastard, I am glad you are still alive. Can't you call to check on me from time to time? Gramps, I don't have the time to accompany you. I am working my ass off to revive the hotel and win the approval of the board, your grandson is doing his best here. Felix said with an annoyed tone. He he he, working hard, it's been over eight years since I heard you say those two words seriously. And it was when I give you the mission to pee on Benjamin's shoes, he chuckled, I still remember your cute solemn face as you promised that you will do your best. Furious and embarrassed, Felix responded. Baldy, did you call me to humiliate me or what? If so I will hang up now. Little Felix just relax. I brought you some news that will give you a slight advantage over your cousins later. Robert's playful tone quickly changed to a soft whisper. I was sent as the family representative two days prior to attend a meeting made by all of the current business families around the globe, and I heard some shocking news there. It seems a president from a country has leaked all of the information that happened in the United Nations meeting to a business family, he owned a favor to. He paused for a long while until Felix thought that the connection had been cut off. 
but a couple of seconds later, he continued on at a faster pace. They were the Diagos's family from South America. And they were the ones who sent invitations to all of us to attend the meeting, so they can sell that information. Felix felt his heart skip a beat, as he realized his actions began to alter this timeline. Because he had never heard of such thing happening before. Or, it did happen, but he had no one to relay the information to him, since his grandfather the last person who backed him in the family, died during the chaos. But because he saved him, he managed to get it first hand. I see, are you even allowed to share this classified knowledge with me, Grandpa? Are you stupid? What can they do to me, I am only sharing it to my grandson, nothing major. Robert scolded him. Now shut up and listen carefully. First of all, I heard that we humans can gain abilities using the bloodline of beasts, and the family is going to hold assessment six months from now to help you juniors use those powers efficiently. But the rank of the beasts which will be given is going to be decided by the amount of work you did to revive your project. He suggested sternly. So you should spend your entire budget on the hotel as fast as possible to show at least that you are taking the tradition seriously. This is my advice for you now. Use it kid, as all your cousins have no idea about this knowledge. He soon stopped whispering and said in irritation. That's all I can share without being punished heavily for breaking the family rules. All right grandpa, even though I understood absolutely nothing for what you just said, I will follow your advice and spend all my budget on the hotel, that's a talent I was born with. Felix laughed out loud, trying to act dumb. You rascal, the only thing you do well is waste resources. But this time I allow it. Use everything to make the hotel shinier, to improve your chances of being favored a little bit by the board. I need to go, I am being called for a meeting. By son. Without waiting for Felix to replay Robert hung up. He must be really rushed. Felix stared at the black screen of the phone and smiled happily. He did not care about the information shared, since he already knew about everything beforehand. He smiled because this showed how much his grandfather cared for him. As the family punishment waiting for his grandfather, for sharing such a classified secret, was the confiscation of all assets, as well as serve six months imprisoned in his home. A punishment inescapable for anyone. Not even an elder. If he got caught though. Chapter 23 Four days later. The construction materials fully arrived yesterday. This meant that everything was on the island, except for the construction equipment as well as vehicles for transportation. However, this would not delay the construction any further, as Madame Mary was going to completely drop acting discreetly and use her logistics business company to its full potential, and send everything as fast as possible. She already informed Felix that it would take merely seven days to finish shipping them. The only thing Felix was worried about was the family disqualifying him from the test after they find out that he used his mother's contacts to avoid paying the heavy prices of transportation. Even if they wanted to make an exception for him and accept Madame Maris' assistance. Would his cousins allow it? Not in a lifetime. Felix already bullied them until he became their trauma. So how could they miss this opportunity to make it difficult for him? Without a doubt, they would complain to the family board that they were being biased to Felix and keep whining that it was not fair. Felix could already imagine Kenny fake tears as he hugged the leg of an elder, making a scene to everyone. He stopped thinking for a second and spitted in disgust as his cousin Kenny's image resurfaced in his mind. Fuck, I should not have tainted my mind with his face. Now I can't remove his disgusting fake smile from my mind for the whole day. I should probably just fast today out of sight, out of mind. He sighed. He fiddled with his phone up the hill, while eyeing the crowded hotel, resembling a hive of ants. I can safely assume that the construction and remodeling of the four projects will officially begin 15 to 20 days later. That wasn't too bad, as the chaos would still be running amok in the outside world, and when the workers see it, they would appreciate the opportunity of being away from it. But in the case of the construction delaying for over a month or more, it would create a huge problem since everyone would feel cheated, when the information about the Supremacy Games Alliance gets released for the public. After they see that humans could get as powerful as the heroes they grew up watching. Or the UVR that allows everyone to get what they desired with 100% simulation, they would honestly feel like they were imprisoned away from civilization. 
At that point, the entire plan would fall apart when over 1,000 people start protesting to send them back. If that happened, Felix could only give up on the public wishes, even though he had a solid contract. Simply because he couldn't afford to contain their protest with his few bodyguards. But most importantly, he would rather terminate their contract than let them create an average hotel, due to lack of motivation. However, Felix still had to install those large screens that he bought to let them watch the games that were going to be streamed from the UVR all, around the globe. This would at least quench some of their misery in those two years they were going to spend on the island. In the first place, the only reason those workers were here was to avoid chaos. But if they knew beforehand that it would end only in two months, they would have never bothered coming to this shit hole, no matter what price Felix had offered. Days went by quickly, as Layla and Jack took care of everything smoothly after the arrival of those talents who had experience in either logistics or security. Right now, they were more like supervisors, while their subordinates took care of the shipments, as well as human resources efficiently. Layla thought to herself, as she watched the last boat unload the equipment, finally, everything is here. Now we just need the engineer designs and we can start the construction directly, she then took her phone and called her crush. Young master, everything is here, we are ready to begin. Good, start with the residential area right now, I have just received the design. I have already approved of it and can be studied and applied now. Call me when it begins, I want to watch the process. He replied. As you wish, young master Felix, I was. Before she continued speaking, she only heard peep peep sounds. Afterward she put her phone in her pocket and smacked the back neck of her subordinate who was drinking his coffee peacefully, watching the boat sail away. What are you still doing here, the boat is already gone. It's not like your wife in it to watch it leave with that expression. Go to work right now, we got approval to start construction on the residential area. She yelled with a flushed face. The poor dude could only massage his red neck, to ease the pain. He didn't dare to complain about the slap. Yes, right now Madam Layla, be at ease. Everyone is extremely motivated to start working. All right scram now, call me when you guys are about to begin, young master, want to observe. I will do so, don't worry. He then escaped swiftly from Layla who was clearly upset and just wanted to release her anger on somebody. Why doesn't he show me a little bit of care, aren't I doing my best here assisting him without complainant? At least give me some credit, and not hang up on me like that, her lips quivered, as tears threatened to drop. Yet, she held it in and kicked every small rock in front of her, while walking back towards the hotel. Vexed, Felix eyed the black screen of his phone. To actually run out of juice in the middle of a conversation. He rubbed his eyebrows and entered his suite. He knew that he must explain to Layla what happened, so she won't misunderstand him. He didn't want her to think of him as a rude kid. After all, she was extremely vital to his island project. He planned to leave it in her hands after he gets summoned by the family to test his elements in the upcoming assessment. He only trusts her to perfectly keep everything in order in his absence. I will give her a quick call later. He left his phone charging and went to the bedroom to change while thinking of the consequences of showing off to the family and his cousins. His grandfather called yesterday and informed him that he went a little bit too far with his budget wasting, since even the elders noticed his huge activities over the past month. This meant, they would probably send their inspection team to look around, or just call a servant to give the full details of the events that transpired, since the servants belong to the family and not Felix. He believed they would do both. Firstly scout what happened from a servant, and when they hear the shocking information. They would send an inspection team to clarify the details from him. This was exactly what Felix wanted. For the family to get astonished by his bold foresight when he took advantage of the chaos to reap some benefits, and use them properly for the hotel revival. After they see what he had done, his position in the family will recover from a thug to a seedling worth nurturing to be sent to represent them. The only variable in this plan were his cousins. He could easily deal with Olivia since she was a sweet flower who could be manipulated to his side. But for types like Noah and Kenny, it's going to be impossible, since one was like ice without emotions, who shows them only to his little sister. Meanwhile, Kenny could backstab one with sincere smile. Felix was disgusted before, by this traitorous behavior of his. I need to find some way to bribe them to not trouble me when the family sees I broke the rules. 
that was the only method Felix found that could stop them from making a fuss. Otherwise, if he let them act as they please. The board of elders would truly find it difficult to make an exception for him even if they wanted to. Since the rules of the family cannot be broken in one way or another. Hell, even his grandfather who brought the family to be classified as a business empire could be punished, don't even mention Felix. Chapter 24 Felix walked around the living room with his chin resting under his hand. He kept thinking of ways to bribe his cousins successfully and have them join his side. The easiest way was to promise them some shares from the stocks he would obtain from the family when the hotel was revived successfully. However, this option was unacceptable to him. He didn't work his ass off to hand all the profits to them. Not to mention they would make sure to rip him off, even if he tried to do so. He sat down as he started to feel dizzy from walking around the couch. Think Felix, think. There must be some weakness I can take advantage of to pressure and blackmail them. I need to dig deep within my fuzzy memories about this period, and I might find something useful. After a while, he suddenly fist-bumped his palm and stood up with a joyful expression. Found it, Kenny, you bastard, I should have known that your traitorous character did not act up only at that time, but way before. He grinned widely. He he, with this, I am confident I will turn you into my lapdog. But first, I need to obtain solid evidence. Indeed, without having evidence, threatening Kenny would only get him to bow down and help him convince the other cousins not to give him a hard time since he owns quite a few favors with them. As for Noah, that siscon, it was even easier to bribe him. Felix needs to please his little sister with a gift and ask her to speak some good words about him. Noah never refused a request from his little sister. All right, this is the plan, for now, to deal with my cousin's interference, however, I still need to deal with the inspection team that will arrive later. He must prepare a plausible reason for how he took advantage of the chaos. After all, his cousins were scared shitless to make a move. Meanwhile, the thug of the family, who only knew how to waste money and laze around, had such foresight that allowed him to reap plenty of benefits during the chaos. Nonetheless, Felix was not worried about their interrogation at all. He already had the best shield for their accusations. Three days later, Felix was standing in front of a tent, with two others behind him, a man and a woman. You guys came just in time. My underling just informed me yesterday that they are going to start cleaning the area to make it fit for building an apartment complex. He smiled at the inspectors who arrived suddenly just ten minutes ago and added, it's for the employees who will get hired later after the official opening of the Sky Pearl Island to the public. I see, Mr. Felix, you really astonished us when we heard the things you accomplished from the servants' mouths. You managed to pull off this huge remodeling under the eyes of the family. Although our understatement of your capabilities was the reason, it is still a good achievement. The dark-haired man complimented Felix with a smile. True. I honestly don't know if he was acting like an unproductive thug in the family before so that he can focus on the family, tradition without being in the spotlight. Thus managing to revive his business without his cousin's interference, who will definitely harm his operations if they found out about it. But now it is quite too late, I assume. The inspector woman shared her own opinion on how Felix played everyone. From what we heard from the servants, you already have everything prepared, and you just gave the green light to start the construction. Now they truly can't do anything to stop you. The inspector man supported her claim. Seniors, you are truly giving me too much credit. There was no major plan, as you mentioned since I never acted like a thug before. Felix shook his head and said, that was just a kid in pain, using his actions to express his hidden trauma. But sadly, everyone started to call me a rogue, thug, and unproductive, lazy bum just because I played some pranks on my cousins, and my grades in school fallen a little bit. The family is a really heartless place to be. That's why I decided to choose this island, which is in the middle of nowhere so that I can be as far as possible from their despise and getting constantly looked down. The woman's expression softened a bit as she realized that what she said was quite far-fetched. After all, who can spend years being looked down upon by everyone just for one moment of glory? Indeed the family tradition was quite important for everyone's future, but to use your childhood for it, no kid on the planet would be able to think so or do so. Well, I quite believe you a little bit, but how can you explain being able to have such foresight and invest your entire budget on a gamble that may turn out right, or can just flat out ruin you and your future? 
even though her expression softened, that didn't mean she would stop doing her job. So she began her grilling to expose any underhanded methods Felix used to have such a great achievement. Everyone knows that you missed all your classes in the family special school. You did not learn how to manage a business, economics, or how to invest properly. You learn nothing of such knowledge, but here you are on an island that was given a death sentence by everyone, trying to revive it using only a $30 million budget. So please explain yourself properly without lying. Otherwise, everything you did here will be investigated so we can have a clear image of how you did it. The woman instructed Felix strictly to scare him into admitting if he played any tricks to cheat. Saddened, Felix lowered his head with watery eyes and said, Even now when I did my best to honor the family tradition and help them obtain an asset that can propel them even further than their rivals, I am still getting doubted over my capabilities. You said how I did so? Well, it is simple. Would a prodigy need to learn common people's knowledge to perform better than them? No, a genius needs no such thing, he only needs some basic information and can use it to make miracles, and this is what sets a genius apart from the common people. His slumped shoulders were no more, as he puffed out his chest and began listing all of his close family talents. My grandfather was a business monster who dominated all of his rivals and made our family one of the top worldwide. My father brought the family a massive amount of wealth using his senses that only a few people in the entire world possess. His investments were all based on his senses, not his information or experience, and those senses never failed him before. My mother was one of the most charismatic women on the planet, anyone in her presence would feel the urge to follow her leadership. She turned tens of five stars hotels and restaurants into everyone's number one pick. He stared at their stiff eyes and sighed dejectedly, I have the blood and genes of all three of them, but I am still doubted because of my past actions that were only a cry for help, nothing more or less. None of you had the thought that maybe I inherited some of their talents and used them to revive this massive undertaking. You only judged me based on my childish actions and figured that I played tricks to be able to do something which none of you can do. Well, guess what, I am a genius who inherited both my grandfather and parents' talents. He didn't avoid having eye contact with them, as he extended three fingers in their faces and began listing how he used those talents to remodel the island. My father's investment senses alerted me that there is a profit to make when I was watching the chaos on the TV. My grandfather's business talent allowed me to create a complete plan to revive this hotel and turn it into one of the best ones there is, using only a little information I searched from the internet and analyzing the extraterrestrial transmission. And finally, my mother's talent helped me convince and charm the servants into taking my side and helping me finish this mission successfully, without reporting the events that transpired here to you guys. So my cousins won't hinder me. I used those talents properly and took advantage of the economic crash that happened during the chaos. While my cousins feared the future, I was thinking of the present and using it to my advantage. He clutched his hand into a fist and shrugged his shoulders, the only thing that you guys might find, if you searched for any tricks I used, is my auntie assistance of transporting those resources here safely. Even though I didn't use my budget to do so, I told her to invest in the economic crash just like me, as payment. It depends if you thought of it as me cheating or me treading on a grey line to help the family gain an asset that they can't refuse. Without waiting for them to digest his bullshit excuse, he entered the tent, leaving them standing outside with stunned expression. They truly didn't expect such a reason. Chapter 25 Felix sat down on a chair in the tent with a hidden smirk while eyeing the entrance. He was certain that he would pass the inspection safely after that flawless excuse he gave them. He might even gain some advantages when the family realizes that he was a business prodigy worth nurturing. But that meant jack shit to him since he just wanted to show them that he was good enough to obtain a rare rank beast during the assessment. After that, he would give the family the hotel to manage while having Layla and Jack supervise everything. Like this, he would wash his hands from the island while also earning billions of dollars each year. But what he truly wanted was to obtain a good relationship with the elites of the world. He then took his phone and started playing League of Legends Wild Rift with enjoyment. Outside of the tent, the inspectors were in a heated argument over Felix's explanation of truthfulness. I can't believe what he said, honestly. Just think about his actions when he was a kid. He constantly bullied his cousins, who just wanted to learn in peace. Then when he got bored or beaten up, 
he falls outside with his retarded friends who only know how to fuck around and bring mess for their families. The male inspector quickly added after seeing that she was about to interrupt him. Now you are telling me that this kid had magically found that he had all of his family members' talents, and then used them somehow to create a plan that made the impossible possible? I can't believe it. Something is missing, I tell you, something he is hiding from us. We need to find out about it, and everything will be clear to us. He crossed his hands and stared at the entrance of the tent with clear distrust. The glasses lady stomped her leg and replied with a hint of sympathy for Felix. This is exactly what he said. No matter what he does now or in the future, everyone in the family will keep judging him due to his past. Who knows, maybe one year alone in an isolated island away from the toxicity of the family, might have awakened his hidden talents, which were buried deep within, without anyone's intention to dig them out, since he was just a useless thug in the eyes of the family. But now that he self-awakened them and learned how to use them properly, so he can earn his honor and redeem his misconduct in his past. You still doubt him and not believe him. She poked his forehead while lecturing him on how their jobs are supposed to be. It is our job to inspect the juniors of the family in case they cheated or played tricks, but it is also our job to help them realize that cheating is not taking them anywhere. Furious, she increased her poking speed until the man began to feel throbbing pain on his forehead. But here you are trying your best to bring that poor lad more problems and issues. Even though he only wanted to fix his broken reputation. Instead of doing your job and give him some compliments over the great work he did, you are trying to look for an excuse not to face the reality that people truly change for the better, just because you are too lazy to change your revelation of his character from your mind to his current good character. She kept barraging him without stopping. Forcing him to lower his head and not interrupt her rage. But I will not allow your crooked judgment to make more troubles for him anymore. He already suffered enough. We are returning to the family headquarter now to report what he said, and they will decide if he is a good seedling or not. Now move. She kicked his ass with her heel to push him forward away from the tent. The poor inspector could only clutch his ass and walk ahead of her, not daring to disobey her. He never saw his partner rage at him like this, and truthfully he never wanted to see it again. Felix had no idea about their decision and didn't bother trying to figure it out. He was confident in his excuse. If they believed him, then it was all good. But, if they didn't, it wouldn't matter much since everything he said was the closest thing to the truth. Because the real truth was that he returned from the future and had knowledge about everything. If he said that, they might beat him up and take him to the headquarter for interrogation. So he never bothered what their next action was and just intentionally fed to his heart content in a league-ranked game, while reading his teammates' curses with enjoyment. Evening 17.30 in America, Boston, an enormous skyscraper was surrounded by trees of other similar buildings. But not one of them could reach half the size of this establishment. At the peak story of it, a round table was in the middle of the floor that allows more than 30 people to sit around it. It was currently filled with only four elders, who were listening with a focus to the inspector's report over the situation in Sky Pearl Island. I see. It seems that Robert truly did not get scammed and received a prodigy child. But the miserable circumstances of his parents passing away and his grandfather's busy schedule forced that lad to take the wrong step in his path, thus making his talents buried, without us knowing about it. A white-haired man that had not a single wrinkle on his face sighed with sympathy over the fate of Felix. But now it is all good, as long as he managed to change his thuggish character, we will take care of everything for him. A business genius like him is truly too hard to find nowadays. A middle-aged woman with a ponytail and wearing thin glasses nodded her head. Indeed, he truly shocked us to death when we found out that he spent only $20 million to obtain more than a thousand chests of precious materials, construction materials, equipment, and vehicles. He even alerted his Aunt Mary about his plan, allowing her to invest more than $400 million. She truly will make a killing when she sells everything slowly after the leaders release the information to the public. A bald old man said with an envious tone. Baldy Albert, how dare you to envy others when your net worth is close to two billion dollars? Your cheapskate character always manages to surprise me. His greed for money truly knows no bound. Last time I found a business opportunity that will allow me to earn some easy millions, but it was a waste of time. So I decided to hand it to my subordinate to enjoy. 
however, this bastard heard about it from somewhere and used it to his own advantage without shame. Fuck he would probably jump out of building for a dollar. Irritated, the white-haired elder rubbed his eyebrows after retelling such an unpleasant memory. What do you guys know? This is how rich people at the top keep their positions secure. Every dollar is important, no matter if it is just one bill or a billion. You will never understand where I am coming from, so change the subject to young Felix. I want to hear your sentence if his use of marry transportation ships is allowed or not. Albert replied indifferently to his shaming. Well, in my opinion, he did nothing wrong or went out of line. We forbid juniors from the use of any free foreign assistance, whether giving money or just some knowledge. But Felix did not get his aunt's help for free, he traded it with information to allow his aunt to earn billions of dollars over the upcoming years. His information had exceeded whatever help he obtained from his aunt. The middle-aged woman reasoned calmly. She pushed her glasses upward and laid out her verdict. So my final judgment is that he did nothing wrong but did something worth applauding for. Because this is what we want from our future family leaders to be able to do. Agreed, he did well, and we will reward him for it later. On the other hand, the other juniors were truly a disappointment. All of them were cowering in fear and not seeing the big picture or having the guts to leave their nest and see what can they profit from the chaos. They failed as businessmen and should be punished during the assessment. Disappointed, Albert sighed over losing a huge amount of free money, simply because the other juniors were too fearful of making a move like Felix. Sigh, if it was not hectic for us during the chaos, from the death of an elder to appease all of the companies and hotels. We would have profited a bit as well. A middle-aged man with a long nose and bushy eyebrows smiled wryly. Indeed, fortunately. Felix helped us remodel a hotel that may turn into a six-star resort hotel that will host only the elites of the world, by using only $30 million, while the actual cost will reach $300 million or more if the prices were at market price. All the elders smiled with approval. Felix truly brought them a great win, which they desperately needed after the economic crash. After all, their businesses around the world were all affected negatively because of it. All right, I believe we have decided on Felix's achievements. I will start by voting for him to be treated as a future business seedling, and if during the assessment he showed that he has a good affinity to an element. We will make him a representative seedling. The middle-aged woman raised one finger and added with a smile, plus, reward him with an AP bracelet. He exceeded everyone's expectation, and he deserves one bracelet from the hundred we bought from the American government. This was how the Maxwell family operates. Rewards and punishments were proponents of one's achievements. Agreed. I vote the same. I agree as well. Now let's move on to the punishment for the other juniors. Albert's expression turned nasty instantly as he couldn't wait to lay down punishments for those wastrels. I believe fear is the primary reason for their inactivity, so we need to curb that fear not to make them miss one in a billion opportunities like this. He smiled wickedly, so I suggest making them face their fears as punishment. If one fears snakes, lock him in a room with tamed snakes with no teeth or poison. This will allow him to see that his fear of them can be overcome if he faced them without a retreat. To actually suggest such a messed up punishment, he was really but hurt over them missing free money. Even though it is heartless, it must be done, lest they shame us during the representative world battle. Our family cannot be disgraced. It is decided then, Felix will obtain AP bracelet as his reward, while the other juniors will be punished. Meeting adjourned. The white-haired elder tapped his knuckles on the table two times and stood up. The elders carried their belongings and left the floor, each heading in separate ways. The only ones who were left were the inspectors who probably had a high rank within the family to listen to the elders' board, making decisions. Told you so, you stupid bastard. Someday your judgmental eyes will cause you trouble you won't escape from. The woman gave a smug smile as she pointed her finger at him. She then turned around and chased after the elders, leaving the inspector man standing in front of a glass window all alone. After a while, he sighed and left the floor as well. He already realized that she was right. People change whether we like it or not. But it depends on us if we changed our views about them or kept using their previous character as criteria for judgment. I guess my time to change has come as well. 
He chuckled over the irony of the situation as he entered the elevator. Chapter 26 Felix, who was taking a shower and humming a song joyfully, had no idea that his actions affected the timeline greatly once again. In his previous life, not a single junior in the family managed to take advantage of the chaos and earn profit from it. That's why the family did not bother meeting punishments, since all of them performed the same. But now with Felix meddling, everything had changed. Because now there was a junior that did something great, something that any of the other juniors could have done, but they didn't, either because they were lacking, or something stopping them from performing the same. The elders thought it was fear that affected their mental strength not allowing them to think properly like businessmen. So they had to be punished to curb their fear, so they wouldn't miss such an opportunity again. In the elders' minds, if Felix could do it, why couldn't they do it as well? When there was a comparison, everything changes, and due to this comparison, Felix unknowingly earned a free AP bracelet and brought disaster upon his cousins at the same time. After Felix finished showering, he began studying the designs of other buildings, which were on the table. The residential area construction was on full swing. Now he just needs to pick the other buildings' designs from those prototypes they handed him and gives his approval. This one is quite genetic for an airport, there is nothing unique it. Just a good-looking airport, but what I want is for the tourists to feel regret leaving the airport. And this one does not deliver. He shook his head and carried on appraising the other designs. Shortly after, his eyes shone with delight after seeing a baggage carousel that was inside an artificial waterfall. The baggage enters through it from one side and leaves from the other side. He didn't know how they were going to achieve it, without affecting the integrity of tourists' possessions. But that was for them to find out. As for him, he could only give them the green light. After studying the entire design, he was pleased by it greatly. So he decided that this one was going to be used for the airport remodel. He marked approved on design and moved to the seaport. He was quite excited to open it, as Barry bragged that he owns 10 seaports around the world under his belt. What the fuck is this? There is absolutely nothing new added or removed from the old design, the only difference is the paint color. The higher the expectations, the greater the disappointment. Felix immediately lost it after seeing the only difference was a dye color from black and red, to yellow and red. Did I hire that baldy to do me a dye job? Jack, order him to be here within ten minutes. If not he can pack up and scram. Furious, Felix instructed Jack who was standing behind him. After all, he gave them more than one month to hand him the designs, as well as any materials they ask for. Yet the only different thing about this design was the paint job, something even a toddler could do. All right, young master it shall be done, Jack replied while dialing in his phone. Felix spent those ten minutes studying the other designs, eight minutes later. Young master, did you call for me? Barry entered the suite casually not knowing that he was in deep shit. Come here Barry, and look at this design you gave me. If you are going to only change the color you should have at least told me so I can assist you in picking a color more fit for the seaport. After all, it is an extremely difficult task, and I don't want you to suffer too much. Felix replied sarcastically while showing him the seaport design. Barry started to sweat after realizing that his design did not please Felix. He rubbed his sweaty palms together and explained, Young master, it's not that I am lazy and don't want to remodel the seaport, it's just that there is actually no need to do so. The previous design was perfect without flaws. The only downside the port had was the rust on the equipment, as well as some that need either to be replaced or repaired. He rubbed his bald head embarrassed. So I did not want to waste resources on remodeling something that was already good enough to be part of this island. It's purely a waste of resources that could be used on other buildings. So I did a paint job on it, without touching the core design. I have already scouted all the equipment that is faulty for replacement and put them in this notebook. Please take it there is a quite few. He took a small notebook from his pocket and handed it to Felix. All right, you do make a point, no need to waste resources on it then. Transfer the budget to the hotel or the airport, they need as much as possible. Felix's fury quickly decreased after understanding his reason. Then he opened the notebook and saw tens of equipment, which were written in red, and next to them was written, need replacement. What the fuck is this? Why do we have more than 20 equipment that needs replacement? 
weren't they just fine a while ago, when we were using them to unload heavy containers? Young master, the machines were already faulty and needed desperate repair, but with continued use during last month. They finally gave in and broke totally. The repairmen said they can't do much to them anymore, and you need new ones. He sighed helplessly. This is also why I didn't bother to make a new design since it will be costly to just change the machines alone, don't even mention remodeling it as well. Then don't bother giving the budget to others, I will use it to replace those machines. Leave it to me, thank you Barry for the hard work, you can go now. Felix excused him politely and dialed his aunt's phone number. Ring ring ring. Cluck. Hello dear Felix, it's been such a long time since you called me, probably since the moment you received those two flowers. I am sad, you forgot me the moment you started playing with them. Aunt's Mary answered teasingly. Auntie, I am sorry but I was really busy with the constructions. Problems kept arising each day, I need to supervise them. Just now I received news that more than 20 seaport machines had gone offline. And I don't have enough budget to buy them. So I can only call you to trade the seaport materials with machines. He sighed. This is the only way I can do it without breaking the rules of the family tradition. I see, well you don't have to worry about it. I will sell you brand new ones using a premium discount of 80% since the chaos is still ongoing and no one bothers to ask for transportation like before. I will send them in three days and you can put the resources that you wish to trade in the ships. Thank you, auntie, this is perfect. My cousins won't be able to use this against me since it is a mutual trade. All right, I have a second call, it's probably Layla. By auntie. Felix quickly hanged up the phone without waiting for her to ask about the fate of the two girls she sent, sorry auntie, I will make it up to you with a gift later, he then called Layla and gave her the green light to start whenever they felt they were ready. It's finally time to begin the full makeover of the island. He chuckled. The Sea Pearl Island is going to prove to the world that she deserves this beautiful name. Chapter 27 Five months quickly passed by, as the world had changed completely during this period. It all started two months after the transmission when the presidents and kings of each country came out of their shell, and announced the boggling news about the creation of the World United Council. The council's existence was the same as the previous United Nations, but with a few twists on it. The first rule the council operates with was that every country had the right to vote, and only had one vote at the start. And to raise the number of votes higher. It depends on the number of representatives each country sends to fight in the upcoming Planetary Supremacy Games, one year and a half from now. This meant the more representatives a county had the more her opinions during the council meeting would be seen with high regard. Since a country that had only one vote was merely a side character during the decision-making, while countries that would have 20 or more votes under their belts were going to be the true leaders of the world. The reason this voting system had been upgraded to be like this was simply because it wasn't fair for a country to send their juniors to represent them during the Supremacy Games, where they could die in their first game, without being compensated properly. An extra vote for each representative was the compensation they agreed on that would fit as a reward for their efforts. This new voting system that relied on the number of representatives, managed to offset frenzy within each country to start training camps designed specifically to assist their juniors into awakening successfully, and training them to use their powers efficiently so they could be part of the winners during the world representatives battle. The first decision they made after announcing to the public the creation of the World Council, was the release of all the information they obtained about the universe for them to see, by using the AP bracelet streaming feature. They used it to stream all the knowledge throughout TV channels, the internet, videos, social media, and more. They wanted everyone to learn what the future of Earthlings looks like, and especially to make them accept the fact that a new era was upon them. The moment the news reached the public, it created a hysterical madness and excitement within each country. After all, who wouldn't be filled with fervor when he realizes that he can gain superpowers and control elements just like in a movie or a game? Who wouldn't feel the heat when he sees that he could enter a virtual reality that has 100% simulation while seeing and meeting with different types of subhumans and other races they never knew they existed before? The internet went wild with people sharing clips and parts of videos that showed old games from the Supremacy Games platform. Humans calling storms and raising tsunamis to attack each other in a brutal fashion, 
hundreds of people dropped on an island where only one can survive and more games with different types that please everyone's fantasies. Holy shit, this dude turned into a sub-dragon and started breathing fire from his mouth, so cool, I want to do so as well. Commented by I have Dragon Donga, I believe we can all do the same as them. My country president today made a speech, saying that all of us have the potential to use the same strength as the other humans in our galaxy, and it all depends on the affinity of our elements. He also said that in seven months they will open assessment centers for the public to scan their element affinity for a small fee. Replied Sabre 6969, true, the president of our country said the same as well. Plus if some of us had high affinity we can get recruited by the government to join the games and bring glory to our planet. Man, I really want to obtain an AP bracelet, so many MMORPG games there with 100% realism, I wish I can join one and live there forever. Commented lowly is life. The comments on the internet were endless, everyone was talking about what they want and how to obtain it. People analyzing the information in detail and giving those who were lazy to look through it, important information they missed. Such as to awaken a bloodline one must first undergo the most painful experience in the world. Pain that assaults every fiber in the human body and the only way to pass through the pain was to awaken successfully. Otherwise, only death awaits them, or in the best case, emerges as a cripple. This news alone turned off the majority of the commoners' excitement, now from their eager expression to awaken as fast as possible, turned into wait-and-see attitude. Since not everyone could handle extreme pain. Hell, just one paper scratch in a finger or hitting the smallest toe into a table, and the majority fall into the ground wailing like their lives were over. Months slowly passed by and the frenzy over the news cooled off just a bit. The citizens went back to their normal life. The chaos had ended after the big reveal, and those who sold off their assets cheaply to buy food and necessities had no tears left to cry when they realized they fucked themselves big time due to their paranoia. Now they could only sob in silence as they joined the rest in celebration over earthlings entering a new era. An era where schools changed all the useless secondary languages to only have one, which was the common universal language, that was used by everyone in the UVR or just to speak to other subhumans in real life. This language became mandatory to learn and master. Otherwise one wouldn't be able to converse properly within the UVR. An era where entertainment slowly decayed until it became non-existent, after all, who would bother to watch two normal individuals fighting each other with their hands and fists, while the supremacy games show you real people beating the shit out of each other using abilities and techniques? Who would bother cheer for a football team or NBA team, when you could cheer for your own planet fighting other planets for supremacy? This would slowly kill the entertainment sector until the day, planet Earth officially starts its climbing journey towards the peak of supremacy games. An era where casinos were completely uprooted by the gambling dens in the UVR, which were backed by the SGA and supervised by the Queen AI unbiased judgment. One could bet whatever he wanted and on whomever, he wished for. And if he wins, his money transfers directly to his UVR bank account, with extreme security as the only one who knew his bet details was the queen. This platform which was supported by the UVR would slowly turn earthlings into loyal supporters and fans, just like it did to everyone else. Its existence turned every spectator into an addict. This addiction was far worse than drugs because in the case of drugs one knows he was being harmed and tries his best to become clean. But in the case of the supremacy game, there was no such thing. He could spend hours and hours each day watching people fight, play, and kill each other in deadly games, then given rewards over and over again without feeling boredom. The platform did not spend one million years of its existence not improving or evolving itself to fit more for the commoners' needs and wishes. The Supremacy Games was a culture, a culture that couldn't be replaced anymore. Felix was currently in the gym, running on the treadmill with sweat all over his fine-tuned body. A huge contrast to how his body shape looked like before. He did not gain a lot of weight but only tuned his muscles to be more refined and good-looking. After a while, he turned off the treadmill and went to take a shower. This was his last training on the island, as he would leave tomorrow to the family headquarter for the elemental assessment. The only thing he was worried about, was the reason why the family didn't give him a call after the inspectors left to report to them his explanation. It was like they left him to continue his construction just like before and the weirder part was that even though he showed his cards to his cousins, they didn't bother making a move or call to ask for bribes. 
hell, he couldn't even use the blackmail materials he was preparing for Kenny when they tried to rip him off. Everything went silent after the inspectors left. Felix still had no idea about what happened in the headquarters, as his grandfather who provides information to him, went absent as well. Whatever tomorrow I will find out about everything after I meet them, but for now I need to prepare my suitcase. A new Felix was heading towards the assessment, a version that would give everyone the shock of their lives. Chapter 28 The next day 8 a.m. A jet that was sent by the family to pick up Felix was parked in the airport. Felix stood near it with Jack and Layla who had tears on her eyes. Guys I am heading back to the family for the assessment, I will leave everything here for you to manage. I don't know when I will return, but when I do I will make sure to bring you gifts. Felix said with a gentle smile, as he looked at his subordinates who pleased him with their loyalty and work efficiency. Young master, you can leave the island to remodel in our hands. We won't disappoint you. The only thing you should focus on is how to perform the best of your abilities during the assessment. Jack thumped his chest with his fist and promised firmly. Young master, I wish to say something I always wanted but never had the courage. Layla wiped her tears and lifted her head. She then stared in his eyes with determination and said loudly. I like you, Felix, I always had a crush on you. I did my best attempt and please you to show my interest, but to no avail. Is there something you don't like about me? I can change it just tell me. Felix was surprised a bit but not shocked since he always knew that she had feelings for him. He just didn't want to confront them. He believed in the notion that crushing on someone was a momentarily feeling that passes over a period of time. For some people, it might take just a couple weeks before they change their crush to another, but for some, it could last for years. He never expected Layla to be from the latter kind. Layla there is nothing wrong with you. You are beautiful, smart, thoughtful, and tough when you need to be. You have the perfect package. So you should never change yourself either for me or for others. He hugged her gently, not caring about having his suit dirted by her hot streaming tears, and continued to comfort her. The reason I did not accept your feelings, even though I knew them beforehand, is simply because I see you as my friend, a loyal subordinate, and most importantly a close person to me. And I really don't want you to waste your life chasing after me, or waiting for me. I can't be that heartless to my friends. He wiped her tears from her cheek with his fingers and said sincerely. So please Layla, do me a favor, and yourself as well. And give up on this crush. Find a good man who will be by your side supporting you always. You deserve it. After a while, he released her from his hug and smiled warmly, I am going now. Give me calls to update me on the island situation, all right? Yes young master, I will make sure of it, have a nice trip. Layla sniffed as she answered with her head bowed towards Felix. Her feelings might not have gone now, but they will slowly be erased by time until only feelings of friendship remain. Good, take care guys, I will try to call as much as possible. Goodbye, Felix said his farewell and entered the jet. The steward closed the door after him and gave the pilot the signal to lift off. This was for the best for both parties. Felix was not open to the idea of getting into a relationship with anyone currently. Because he understood one simple fact, his road ahead was tough already and he didn't want to have another burden by his side to care of. He already had the greatest burden of them all, which was Asna. So he only planned to fulfill his desires if needed with one night stands, nothing more, nothing less. In the skyscraper of the Maxwell family, 20th story. Felix was looking fearfully at all of his cousins who arrived earlier than him. Every one of them had a deadpan expression with a hint of despise, as they stared at Felix who just exited from the elevator. This standoff carried on for five minutes already. Felix did not dare to breathe or move an inch as forty or so of his cousins were currently giving him murderous gazes. It was clear that they wanted to pummel him to death. His earlier ideas of pranking them went up to smoke. The only thing he wanted to do now, was to stay as far as possible from those rabid dogs who were about to pounce on him. Suddenly, the elevator behind Felix opened up. He turned his head slowly, worried that he will get sandwiched by his cousins. But after seeing who emerged from the door, he sighed in relief. You rascal, you were hiding here while I was looking for you all around the building. Felix's grandfather immediately began scolding him. 
now come here and tell me with vivid details how you managed to revive the resort hotel, which no one dared to take as a revival project. He said with a hidden glint in his eyes, he he, you dare hide such information from me, making me get blindsided by those fogies, who started congratulating me the moment I returned to the headquarter. It was so fucking humiliating getting congratulated while having no idea what they were talking about. Let's see now how you deal with those angry mobs, who were tortured to death because of you. Felix knew his grandfather fucked him up after seeing his cousin's expressions turn extra frosty when they heard him mention the hotel, he did not know why they were angry at him. But, he guessed that they were punished by the family when he performed spectacularly during the chaos, while they were doing nothing. He just did not know what punishment turned them into this hateful form. Cough, grandfather you came just in time. Let's go, I will update you on the island remodel on our way. The moment Felix finished speaking, he turned around and dashed towards the stairs, not daring to use the elevator. He knew that by the time it opens up he would already be a bloody mess. Dumbfounded, his cousins and grandfather eyed him escape shamelessly, without any hint of remorse leaving his grandfather behind. What a joke, his grandfather was the one who set this up to get his revenge. Felix might not know it, but he had a feeling that his grandfather had his hand on this. After all, he never called him before to inform him about his reward neither the angry mobs who were waiting desperately to beat him up. Bam! Suddenly they were awakened by the loud sound of Felix's suitcase dropping to the ground. F-U-C-K, don't let him escape. If I don't beat him up to vent my pent-up emotions after being sealed with hundreds of cockroaches, I will never be the same again. A golden-haired beautiful young girl pointed her finger at the stairs. Same. I was sealed in a room filled with bees. The mere sound of them made me pee my pants multiple times in the presence of my parents. Such humiliation can only be erased by breaking some of his limbs. Honestly I don't see what you guys are mad about, I had fear of snakes, but due to my punishment, I managed to overcome it, and even made a friend. Say, hi Charlie. A young man with spiky short dark hair said while having a white snake coiled around his arm, eyeing everyone coldly and making hissing sounds. The moment everyone heard him say this, they all roared. Shut the fuck up Kenny. We all know your fear of snakes was a lie. The only reason no one bothered to punish you for it is because no one actually knows what you really fear. So fuck off to the corner and let us handle our business or we will beat you up first as a warm-up. A delicate beauty threatened Kenny viciously. God knows what she had gone through for her to be this thuggish. Kenny's gentle smile froze on his face after seeing their murderous gazes. He backed away while saying, you guys, don't mind me, I was just speaking out of my ass. Go chase after Felix he probably already escaped. Humph, that's better. Everyone split up and searched the entire headquarter, he won't leave the building. And even if he did we won't allow him to re-enter without getting beaten up. Move out. The golden-haired girl waved her hand forward. Everyone chose a floor and went to search for him. Some took the elevator, and some took the stairs. What's important was that Felix was going to get pummeled today no matter what. Chapter 29 Felix escaped towards the roof of the building without dropping a sweat. It seemed that climbing the hotel stairs was quite handy. However, even though his stamina points get depleted slowly, he still wouldn't be able to survive running for three days straight, as the assessment was planned to be held three days later. The only ones who could get him out of this mess were the elders and seniors of the family. However, they wouldn't bother doing so. Hell, they might even be watching this scene unfold with amusement. They would not interfere unless he was in danger of getting crippled or killed. Besides so, anything was allowed. This meant that the only option Felix had was to play hide and seek with them, so they could split their manpower to cover bigger areas. If they did so, he was confident in his combat prowess to beat at least five of them single-handedly, I still need to eat, shit, and sleep during those three days, his eyebrows frowned over this issue that made his survival even tougher. He understood that his cousins were not fools to not see this problem as well. This signified that they would leave some forces to defend those important checkpoints, especially the kitchens and cafeterias, as they didn't have enough to defend all the toilets in the building, I need an insider to report me about their positions. He thought about Olivia's deadpan expression as she looked at him before and shook his head. Forget it, no matter how sweet she is, at this moment she also wants to beat me up, I can't trust her with my position. 
so the only thing he could do was to head straight for the cafeteria, which was on the 40th floor, and steal some food to sustain him those three days before his cousins defend it. He started increasing his climbing speed, passing floor after floor, until he reached the 40th story. The moment he opened the door he was ambushed from three sides with punches and legs. Felix calmly dodged the ones heading towards his head and balls and left the others to strike him. He never let his guard down, as he always assumed that his cousins might use the elevators to reach those important checkpoints to block him from getting food. After defending their attacks successfully, he tried to break out from their encirclement by aiming at the female cousin who used her army boots to aim at his balls before. He put his arms in a guard position and dashed towards her. She tried to defend herself by kicking him again in his nether region, however, this time Felix was prepared. He sidestepped her attack easily, he then caught her extended leg and used his strength that took months to build, to throw her at the other two cousins who were left behind him. Arphelia-Ix. She could only scream hatefully as she collided with the other two. Aru. Ark. Painful groans escaped out of their lips, as one got smacked in the face with her heavy army boots breaking his nose, while the other had his jewels shattered as the female head went straight for them. Some may wonder if she had enmity with men's peaches. Stop whining already. You are disgracing your parents, who are probably watching. He walked slowly towards them and took their phones and said, I will give them back to you after this is over, bye bye. He then headed towards the cafeteria after making a peace sign at the security camera. On the top floor of the headquarter, tens of seniors and elders were watching big TV screens, showcasing their juniors searching all over the building, and Felix beating three juniors, effortless. Ha 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 Abraham, your grandson is probably not going to have kids anymore with how he is wailing and screaming. What an embarrassment, thank God he is not my grandson, or else I won't dare show my face to others. The baldy Albert laughed mockingly while pointing at the cousin, who was curled up like a snail with his hands on his nether region. Abraham, the white-haired elder on the board did not dare to retort. Whatever he said would be nullified by his grandson loud wailing like a pig getting slaughtered. The only thing he did was lower his head in shame while hearing the jeers and teases of those around him. I will fucking break his two other legs, as well as his father's third leg for giving me such a disgrace. We all know it is painful to have your balls smashed, but why the fuck are you crying and wailing as someone cut them off? If you can't even handle this kind of pain, you won't even awaken you little dipshit. He thought to himself. On the other hand, little Felix is truly blooming right now. I really want to know what he experienced on the island to change him into this young confident lad. To be able to defend three people ambushing him, and even counterattacking successfully, his reflexes must have been honed greatly. Pleased, an elegant middle-aged woman nodded while staring at Felix who was putting food in his backpack like a wild animal. Her eyelids twitched after switching her vision to her daughter who was touching her face as she looked at her reflection on a small mirror. She was probably fearing her makeup getting ruined, how could the difference be this big? If she keeps acting like this, she won't survive the training camp we prepared for them. She smiled bitterly. Do you guys honestly think my little Felix will get beaten up by your wastrel children? Robert scoffed and carried on, not caring about the piercing eyes he was receiving, well think again, Felix spent one year and a half in that island doing nothing but practicing the finest martial arts. All in preparation so he can defend himself from the bullying of your kids. You should feel ashamed of yourselves, letting them always gang up on him and not fight him 1v1 like gentlemen. Even now he is still getting ganged up by 38 juniors. Just so you can see if he truly deserves the AP bracelet. But now he will prove to you that he deserves it more than anyone. Robert twisted old facts without a change of expression, turning Felix into the victim while the cousins who lived hell during their young age at his hands, turned into the abusers. The parents of those juniors were having none of it. One of them said, Old donkey, there is a limit to how much bullshit we can take from you. You said our children ganged up on him to bully him. But if he did not traumatize them in the first place by his vicious pranks, they wouldn't even touch him. Another parent intervened and added her own piece. What did you mean by telling us that we are holding a test to see if he deserves a bracelet? She sneered, if we did not agree he would not have been about to touch one in his life. And since we agreed, there is no reason to test him. The only reason they are targeting him is because of their hate, what has that got to do with us? 
we were preparing to hold a 1v1 battles to see if they have a solid combat power or not. In the end, it turned into this fiesta we are watching now. So stop trying to make him a victim you are not getting any more rewards for him no matter what you say. Robert clicked his tongue and ignored them after his plan to help Felix earn some extra brownies failed. So he just cheered his grandson who was beating two more juniors he found waiting for him in the bathroom. Beat them up. That's it, Felix, break their legs for this daddy. The elders face palmed as they eyed the legendary Robert Maxwell cheering like a little girl for his grandson to beat their children in order to vent his irritation. Two days later, Felix was in the headquarter kitchen wearing a pajama and making his breakfast while humming a song comfortably. During those two days that passed, he managed to beat up more than 36 juniors of the family senseless, leaving the others scared to approach him any more. The elders just watched stiffly the last two cousins, who they were putting their hopes on to salvage this situation, hiding in the toilet from Felix. At this point they just wanted this hell to end and for the elders to fast forward the assessment. They had enough of this constant pressure that Felix could find them and beat them as well. They had no more thoughts of having revenge they just wanted to live peacefully. The family upper echelon finally had enough of this embarrassment and decided to stop this fiesta. They had been insulted enough by Robert and Albert, who made a terrifying combination. Just yesterday an elder vomited blood from anger as he was scorned by them when his grandson cried for his mom, as he was escaping from Felix. Those duo rogues left no one safe, everyone fell to their brutal insults without a way to retort, since their children truly performed disgracefully when compared to Felix. Comparison was truly a bitch. Enough, we had seen enough to make a judgment. Felix is top-tier seedling who will be heavily invested in if he had a good affinity to the elements, while others will get punished due to this trashy performance. To actually lose 1 versus 38, I can already hear the world laughing at our family if we sent them like this to represent us. Abraham sighed in disappointment and ordered the servant next to him, make the announcement, tell them to group on the 35th floor. That's where we will assess their element affinity, I hope it won't be as bad as their combat experience. Fuck, we really taught them combat in their younger age for nothing. Such a waste of time and effort. He cursed under his breath. Chapter 30 Everyone is required to be at 35th floor in 15 minutes. Anyone who is late can forget about being assessed. A loud announcement kept repeating in each floor for the juniors, who were currently either nursing their injuries, hiding in the toilet, or passed out on the ground. The moment the announcement finished reporting, they all rushed towards the 35th floor. Those who were passed out got lifted by others on their back to deliver them. They might be competitive with each other, but they were still a family. Meanwhile, Felix heard the announcement while he was eating his breakfast and scrolling his social media. I see they decided to fast forward it by a day. Well I am not complaining. I played enough with those brats, it's time to get serious. Fourteen minutes later. Felix arrived on the 35th floor still wearing his pajama. He surveilled the floor with piercing eyes, and every time it landed on a junior they avoid it like a plague by lowering their heads in shame. The elders shook their heads slightly at this sight and ignored it. All right since everyone is here, we will first start by giving your rewards and punishments before we begin assessing your affinity, Abraham said sternly. First off the punishment, every junior who participated during Felix Hunt and failed miserably will be punished by having one month increase during our next training camp. Every junior lowered their heads even further in shame after being humiliated like this in front of their parents. The only ones who acted the same were Kenny and Noah, as they didn't participate in the hunt. As for the reward, only Felix obtained one. He then dropped a bombshell on every junior, especially Felix who froze instantly after hearing his reward. He will be rewarded with the famous AP bracelet. He rightfully earned it after he bought all the materials necessary to turn a dead island into a platform that will host only the elites of the world, using only the $30 million budget we gave him. Please give him a round of applause over this magnificent achievement. He began applauding first with admiration, and soon everyone followed. The seniors and elders were truly clapping sincerely, while the juniors clapped half-heartedly. It seems like I exceed the requirement to obtain rare ranked beast, Felix could only smile wryly and accept their applause. After a while, it gradually stopped. Felix Maxwell, grandson of Robert's Maxwell, come receive your reward. 
Abraham took a small black box from a servant next to him and opened it slowly, revealing a milky white bracelet that kept reflecting the sunlight that was coming from the window. Felix's eyes immediately brightened up, as he saw the device that would allow him to make use of his previous life memories efficiently. He moved forward with quick steps until he reached in front of the elder. He bowed his head respectfully due to family courtesies and grabbed the small black box. He then took out the bracelet and wore it around his wrist under the envious eyes of his family members, ranging from seniors to juniors. Not everyone was allowed to get a bracelet, even though the family had hundred of them. The only way to obtain one was by making a noteworthy contribution to the family. Only the elders had one, simply because, their position was in itself a show of contribution towards the whole family. Just like Felix's grandfather who single-handedly expanded the family to a business empire. Such merit could never be judged by rewards. All right, the punishments and rewards had been given. It is time to assess your elemental affinity. Elder Abraham didn't waste time and ordered them sternly. Make for lines, each having ten of you quickly. After a while, everyone got in their position. For elders stood in front of each line and activated their scanning feature in their bracelet and instructed, come one by one slowly. The first juniors on the line moved forward and put their hands on the scanning blue light that was emitting from the bracelet. The Queen AI informed them monotonously about the results of her scan. Race, human, gender, male, element affinity, wind, affinity rating, 9% race, human, gender, male, element affinity, wood, affinity rating, 25% race, human, gender, female, element affinity, shadow, affinity rating, 39% race, human, gender, male, element affinity, space, affinity rating, 78%. The moment the last scanning result was heard everyone froze with shock, then to disbelief, until finally pity. The male junior who saw his elemental affinity did not yell with joy, claiming he was one in a thousand years prodigy. No, the only thing he did was stand there dumbfounded with hot tears gushing from his eyes over the cruel reality, that his life as a representative seedling was over before it began. Felix shook his head piteously at this sight. Sigh, fate is truly vicious, to give him such high affinity rating over a rare grade element that has all the beasts that use it either extinct, or hiding in the cracks of space. Anyone who had a rare grade element in the human race wasn't getting treated like a genius, but useless trash. Since the entire bloodline integration system was depending on beasts. In other words, if there was not a beast alive that uses your element, it meant the same as not having an element in the first place. That's why rare elements such as death, life, destruction, creation, and more of such types were treated with negativity by every human. This was not a fantasy novel where the rarer the element one had the more favored he would be. It's the exact opposite, as the more common his element the better it was for him, due to having a wide range of beasts and paths to choose from. What's truly important was the rank of a beast, as the higher it is, the stronger and more unique the abilities one would be able unlocks. Soon after, the parents of the poor lad took him away. Continue the assessment, keep moving forward. One by one, juniors were scanned. Different elements were appearing here and there, but the majority of their affinity rating was still below 50%. No one had managed to pass that threshold yet. Shortly after, Noah, Kenny, and Olivia's turn had arrived. Race, human, gender, male, element affinity, darkness, lightning affinity rating, 51%, 7% respectively. Race, human, gender, female, element affinity, plant, affinity rating, 65%, race, human, gender, male, element affinity, ice, affinity rating, 70%, the moment those elements as well as their good rating appeared, the elders celebrated their hands raised in the air. They almost lost hope after seeing only below average ratings continuously. Good, good, finally some good seedlings worth having. Elder Abraham laughed joyfully. His happiness was understandable, as those three had surpassed the average affinity threshold, especially Noah with his whopping 70%. High affinity was what truly decides whether one had a bright future or not, still the same as before, nothing to be surprised about I guess. Felix lifted his head and saw that he was next in line. So he moved forward and put his hand in the light without the elder telling him to do so. Queen faithfully announced his scan results. Race, human, gender. Male, element affinity, 
poison, illusion, affinity rating, 59%, 12% respectively. The elders who were still celebrating the birth of three potential representatives celebrated even louder after seeing that their top tier seedling had such high rating for an uncommon element. As for the rare element of illusion? It was totally ignored. Ha ha, this is truly a blissful day. To actually have four gifted juniors out of 40 is really worth celebrating for. True, our family is really performing better than other families. Just yesterday I found out that the Volian family in Alabama State only had one junior with good affinity. For us to have four we are truly in luck. The middle-aged lady from the elders board added. Charlotte, you are still behaving like your younger self, spying and seeking information, without anyone asking you to do so. Abraham teased her. What do you know? If I don't obtain intel on our future rivals who will contest with us over the slots of the national team, who will? You? Cough, never mind what I said. Now the elemental assessment has finished you can go back to your rooms. We will call you tomorrow at the same time to give you a beast bloodline that fits your elemental affinity to awaken with. Good night. Abraham excused them with a wave of hand after finishing the assessment. Good night elders and seniors. All juniors bowed their heads slightly and went to their rooms, tonight I will enter the UVR. It's been really such a long time since I visited, Felix thought eagerly while heading towards his room. Chapter 31 Felix headed towards his room while ignoring the fearful and envy looks of his cousins. He took the first elevator all by himself, while the other two elevators were used by the rest. He clicked at the 20th floor button and stood silently. Thirty seconds later the elevator stopped and Felix stepped outside, heading towards his room that was at the end of the floor. He opened it using his key card and entered, slamming the door shut behind him, finally, my plans will truly begin. Getting an AP bracelet this early is heaven sent. I don't need to use the family bloodline beast anymore or even rely on their resources. I can obtain everything I need from the UVR, elated, he looked at the bracelet in his wrist and went to take a quick shower. He started to smell as didn't take one for over two days now, ten minutes later. Let's begin. Felix lifted his wrist that has the bracelet on, and put it in front of his eyes and called under his breath, Queen AI. Suddenly his eyes closed shut and lay on the bed unmoving. Ten seconds later, a voice was heard in his head. Welcome Sir Felix to the UVR, your AP bracelet has been successfully bounded with your consciousness. From now on, only you can use the features of your device. Do you mind me explaining them in detail? No need, I want you to teleport me to Alexander's capital city, Felix replied with familiarity. This will cost you 1000 supremacy coins in normal conditions but since this is your first time, it is free. The next time you will have to pay the ticket price. Queen AI responded. Noted, teleport me now. You will be sent to the Alexander capital city Androxa in three seconds, have a nice journey. Three seconds later, Felix started to disintegrate. His body slowly turned into light particles, until nothing was left of him. Deafening silence engulfed the white room after his departure. In a humongous city that spans into infinity, borders so far between each other, they can't be seen using normal human eyes. In the center of this city, a building bigger than any other famous structures on planet Earth was standing proudly with its unique spherical design. At the peak of the building a large signboard was planted arrogantly above all, that said SGA Teleportation Company. At the bottom floor of this company, multiple circles were continuously flashing, as new people emerged from them and left hurriedly in a rash. Felix's body started to reconstruct inside the white circle. One second later his body became complete again. The moment the process was over, Felix opened his eyes and hurriedly exited the white circle. After doing so, he sighed in relief, not this time you capitalist bastards. You cheated me out of my money in my previous life, since I had no idea how the teleportation works, but not this time. This daddy got scammed multiple times in the UVR. But now with my memories, no one will bully my naivety again, he smirked as he left the entrance of the company. Fuck I was slow by one second and got 200 SC deducted from my credit account. Said a blue-skinned human while crying in agony. Brother that's nothing, I heard from my cousin that he saw a kid staying in the teleportation circle for over 30 seconds, staring at it in awe. The poor kid ended up having 6000 SC debt. 
a human with a long alligator scale tail replied with sympathy. The others, who were listening to their conversion, sighed in pity over the fate of those newcomers, who get cheated of their money due to lack of information. The teleportation company took advantage of this and made a rule that each second a person stayed in the teleportation device, will have 200 SC deducted. Since people get teleported each second constantly, and when a person stands in the circle for an extended duration, they start blocking the path of those teleporting after them, thus stopping the company from making a profit. This was the official reason and excuse the company used. However, everyone knows that their reason was complete bullshit. After all, they are in a goddamn virtual reality. People can literally teleport in every empty spot there is. Hell, people can even teleport from the toilet chair circle. But would the SGA allow that? Absolutely not. Why would they waste an opportunity to make free money from the commoners, without breaking a sweat or effort? They just drew a couple of circles in the ground and named them teleportation devices, and anyone who wants to use them must pay for a ticket to go to his destination. The further the destination the more outrageous the ticket price is. This is one of the main factors why even though the UVR was created as an open space for everyone to travel freely unhindered, turned into a universe with different territories. And to go where you want to, you must pay for it. This devious plan that turned something free into gold mine was introduced by the human race the moment they joined the SGA, thus earning them a good spot within the alliance. Felix was currently wandering around the city without destination, observing the different types of humans that keep passing by him. Some had different color skin such as green, purple, and even pink, while some had extra body parts, ranging from having an extra eye in the middle of their forehead to having six arms. Those mutations are either byproducts during the process of awakening or replacement. Or they appeared during birth, due to having a low percentage of origin realm ancestor bloodline. But still, the majority of people had no mutation like Felix. This condition meant only two things, either they are commoners who did not awaken or bloodliners who had no mutation during the process of either awakening or replacement. After traveling around the city for one hour, Felix finally settled his nostalgia as he did not visit this city for a long time or right time to start implementing the plan. He changed directions and trod forward with familiarity. First, he needed to head towards the bank to obtain his rightful starting pack loan. Then use it to bet on the games that he still remembers from his previous life. They were not that many, as he doesn't remember much from this period, since he did not get an AP bracelet this early. He used to watch old games that were being streamed freely on TV and the internet like a peasant at this period. Fifteen minutes later, he reached another towering building that was half the size of the SGA teleportation company. But, the difference between them was that this structure was shaped like a cube and shone with silver light. In the middle of the building, a signboard that said SGA Bank was hanged on it, shimmering with silver light as well. Felix queued like everyone else in front of the entrance and waited patiently for his turn. Thirty minutes later, he entered the building and went straight towards the receptionist. Good afternoon, I want to open a bank account, as well as receive my rightful first-time loan. He said politely. A beautiful lady that had two small cute horns on the sides of her forehead replied with a smile. Good afternoon sir. Can you provide me with your UVR ID? I need your private information to fill your bank account details. With pleasure. Felix extended his wrist and put it on a small scanner that was at his right side. A few moments later. All right, I got what I need. Please head towards the second floor to obtain your bank account details, as well as your loan. Have a nice day. The receptionist sent him off with a polite smile. Felix thanked her and headed towards the elevator. The moment he reached it, he noticed that there was a line for it as well so he changed his direction and went for the stairs. After a while, he stepped inside the second floor and went to obtain his loan. Sadly, he had to wait for his turn again, as there was a queue for it as well. His forehead veins started to pop out from anger, but he held it in and lined up without raising a fart, fucking capitalists. He could only curse in his mind, not daring to insult out loud the most authoritative bank in the UVR. However, his rage was quite understandable, as there were more than 60 floors in this building. Yet they force all the people who want to open a bank account for free to use only the second and third floor, leaving the other floors for those who want to speed up the process using coins. 
they really use every method to earn profit just like in real life. Nothing changed much even if this is the UVR. Money always does the talking. Chapter 32 Felix queued obediently just like the others. No matter how angry he was about their management. He still needs to play their game if he wants to obtain the loan. Twenty minutes later. His turn had arrived, this time he did not greet anyone and just straight away put his wrist in the scanning device. The employee was pleased about this as well, as he preferred customers like those who do not waste his time with meaningless questions and conversations. I see that you applied for your first loan. He read the scan details in his screen and continued, based on the SGA rules. Every member of a newly joined planet can apply for a 100. 000 SC loan with 3% interest increase monthly. He informed, the next loans will need an explanation and the purpose of use. As for the interest, it will be 6% monthly. Is everything understood Mr. Felix? Yes. Good, 100. 000 SC has been added to your bank account. You can use it to buy anything within the UVR. I wish you have a nice day. Next in line please. The employee excused him. Felix nodded his head and left the floor. After a while, he exited the bank and called for a hover cab using his bracelet, heading to the gambling den to place his bet. Ten minutes later. He was sitting on a couch, drinking coffee while watching tens of holograms, each displaying live a different game from a different rank and tier, the game I remember still has not started. I guess it will be on tomorrow Saturday since it is a battle royal type, he figured so as those games extremely popular within the spectators, due to their brutal and simple condition to win them. One only needs to emerge as the last survivor within hundreds or thousands of players to clutch the championship. As for others, only death awaits them. Such a brutal game mode is what delights the commoners' boring lives, well no biggie, I will place my bet on the winner now and come watch tomorrow, he tapped on his bracelet, and a large hologram appeared in front of him, that no one else can see. He entered the Gambling Den official website and clicked on the games happening tomorrow. Immediately, he was transferred to another tab that had a long list of games, Queen, please find me a 500-player battle royal from this list. Without wasting any effort the Queen quickly highlighted three games based on his requirement. He pressed on the one at the bottom and details of the game displayed in another side hologram, forward slash forward slash game format, free for all game name, 500 battle royal players number, 500 integration allowed, from origin purity to peak stage 2 of replacement. Ranks allowed, silver and gold player list, please click on it for extended details. Forward slash forward slash he clicked on it and typed solid wall in the search bar. He had no plans to waste time scrolling 500 names for him. Immediately after doing so, solid wall profile was displayed in front of him, with a large button underneath it that said, bet on this player. Without further ado, he placed all of his coins on him emerging victorious. His winning chances were 1 in 10, which were not bad considering there were participants who had 1 in 30 winning chances. After Felix finished placing his bet, he went forward and put his wrist in the scanning device. Your bet has been successfully placed. No one knows the details of your bet except the Queen AI. Good luck sir, said a middle-aged man who was behind the counter. Felix thanked him politely and left the gambling den, planning to head towards the bloodline market to browse the shop. Fifteen minutes later, Felix paid the cab fees and walked inside a bustling market, which was filled with noises of sellers using their loudest voices to advertise their bloodline products, and buyers haggling down the outrageous prices. As he stepped in, he heard a familiar voice, he could never forget. Gather around me everyone, for I about to show you the greatest deal of your life. A fat man with a belly bear called loudly while holding a small cage in one hand that housed a red sparrow, exposing two long fangs from its beak. Meanwhile, on the other hand, holding a glass bottle filled with blood. After seeing that he gathered a good amount of people, he began his presentation. This is an epic rank tier 1 bloodline beast, the fanged sparrow. He lifted the cage high above and continued passionately, it is currently on the verge of extinction as there are only 100 of its species in the universe. He put the cage down and showed the bottle of blood. I was lucky enough to obtain its bloodline from a beast hunter who needed coins urgently. He paused to catch his breath and carried on, I am willing to sell it for only 500,000 SC, a cheap price for such endangered species. 
don't you think? He asked them confidently, showing not a hint of deceptiveness. Too bad, his confidence was shattered instantly after being exposed publicly. Who are you trying to scam you moron? Isn't that just an uncommon rank red sparrow that had a small mutation from eating something he shouldn't? An old man who had his own stall nearby pointed his finger at the fat seller and carried on exposing his furiously. His price does not even reach 200 SC, yet turned it into a half million, and you dare call it cheap. Have some limit and shame when you try to scam idiots. You are ruining the business for all of us. The shopper's eyes instantly turned frigid as they eyed the fat sellers, and began throwing rocks and empty bottles at him, forcing him to close his prematurely. If abilities were allowed to be used within public places, the fat seller would have already been torn to pieces. No need to bother yourselves with that human scum. Come to my shop and see what you like. The old man did not waste this opportunity and quickly began promoting his bottles after stealing the crowd. My bloodlines are all legit. He lifted one bottle from the many ones in his stall and said confidently, this epic rank tier 2 the Cobalt Nightmare Bison. You can search for it right now online, and find all about its information, element, abilities, and market price. He smiled genuinely, I am only selling it for 4 million SC, after seeing them recoil after hearing his price, he offered them a 5% discount on the house, claiming that it was an apology for almost getting scammed next to him. Please don't lose your trust in us bloodline dealers. That's all this poor old man asks for. He sighed dejectedly over the miserable faith of the bloodline industry. If only other dealers were as honest and trustworthy as you. We wouldn't need to have our guard up every time we enter this market, which is filled with 90% scammers. A kind-looking woman said disappointingly. Indeed, and he is right guys. I have just searched for the information about the nightmare bison, and everything checks out right. A young junior showed a hologram to everyone, displaying every public information about the bloodline. He added strangely, but, the real actual price of this beast is a whopping 6 million SC, while this kind man only sells it for 4 million. Indeed it was quite suspicious that someone wanted to sell an epic rank tier 2 beast while lowering its price by 35%. Not to mention the extra 5% the shop owner offered. The old man lifted his head and stared at the beautiful blue sky in the UVR, and said softly with tears streaming down his cheeks. If my poor daughter was not raped and beaten to almost a half-dead state by a vicious young master from a clan. I would not have sold this treasure with a such large discount. He covered his face with his hands and sobbed miserably. I desperately need coins as fast as possible to treat her injuries. The crowd around him expression softened a bit, after seeing such an old man weeping silently. Old man I will support your cause, and buy this bloodline from your hands. I hope your daughter gets well. The kind woman made her move and offered to buy the bloodline. However, she was quickly stopped by another buyer. Hold on now miss. Let this gentleman helps a brother in need. I despise those despicable young masters who lay their hands on other people's daughters. And to show support I will increase the price to four million and a half. I bid five million for it. I want to gift it to my grandson who is about to enter the first stage of replacement. I hope no one fights it out with me. A red-haired elder threatened them jokingly with his can. Too bad a handsome young lad didn't care about his request, as he politely raised the price, six million here, I need it for myself. This bloodline is perfect for my first replacement. The seller immediately intervened, after the price reached six million, the same price as in the market. My dear costumes, I can't allow you to keep biding like this for it. I will sell it to this young lad, and when my daughter gets well I will order more, and sell them with a 20% discount to you. Come give me your contact number. He offered apologetically. The bidders glanced at each other and shrugged their shoulders. No issue, I was merely trying to extend a hand. Me as well. Even though I needed it, I can tell my grandson to wait for no problem. The seller bowed and thanked them continuously for their understanding. He then approached the handsome young man and gave him the bottle. The young man took hold of it and smiled in satisfaction over this transition. Please give me your bank account details so I can wire you the coins. He requested. The old man lightly touched his bracelet with the young man, sending him his bank serial code. Here it is. Just as the young junior was about to hit accept. 
A loud voice interrupted him. Wait, hold it right there. Don't sell it, uncle. Felix entered the fray with a different face and a hidden glint in his eyes. Chapter 33 Felix managed to stop the young lad from transferring the coins at the last second. He then rushed tearfully towards the dumbfounded seller who had no idea that he had a nephew. Felix hugged him tightly and wailed, Uncle, I can't let you sell your precious treasure that you risked your life to obtain, for merely six million SC, he sniffed during his speech and continued, while its true value is much higher. I can't allow it and I am sure even my cousin would not accept that you are trading your life work over some petty amount of coins, that won't even treat her fully. He blew his nose using the shirt of the dumbfounded seller who just kept standing in shock after the script went haywire. Just as he opened his mouth, trying to deny Felix crap, a bone-chilling whisper invaded his ears, sending goosebumps through his back. You better play along, Mr. One. Or else I will expose your scam and gang making sure that you have no place to do your fraud business anymore. Felix added another threat to pressure Mr. One into making a choice quicker. Don't test me, lest I advertise your real faces throughout the UVR. The old man's mind kept repeating just one word, impossible, impossible. Felix didn't let him carry on his daydream in front of the crowd, lest he ruins their play, by pinching his waist without being seen. My, my dear nephew, it's not like I have any other choice. The only thing valuable in my possession is this epic rank tier 2 bloodline, and if I don't sell it cheaply to earn money as fast as possible my daughter will truly die. He clutched his heart in anguish and added, I can't let that happen. My pride means absolutely nothing to me in front of the safety of my princess. The old bastard truly was a professional swindler to get into character automatically after Felix broke him off from his absent-mindedness, there must be another way uncle, must be. Even if I allowed you to sell it with 6 million, it meant nothing compared to the 10 million operation fees. You are still missing 4 million. How are you going to get it, tell me how? Felix shook Mr. One from his shoulders while roaring emotionally with bloodshed eyes, over the miserable fate of his cousin. It turned out Felix's acting techniques were not worse than Mr. One. Then both of them hugged each other and started sobbing next to the dismayed handsome young man, who had no idea how things turned this way. The crowd around them kept increasing, trying to see who's causing this ruckus. Sigh, I can't look at this injustice in front of my eyes without doing anything. The red-haired elder approached the hugging duo and touched the bracelet of Mr. One. This is the least thing I can do. Please accept my goodwill. Otherwise, my heart won't be at peace. Whoosh. A sudden sound resonated from the bracelet, followed by the Queen AI saying, 100,000 CS has been successfully accepted. The moment the Queen made her announcement, the entire crowd went silent. Their minds couldn't process how one can donate that much money just to help a stranger. Yet the greatest shock only arrived after the kind lady said firmly. I as well can't let such a young lady get abused like this and then die unjustly. I will donate 500,000 CS to support her recovery. She tightened her fists and added, this is my way of supporting all the women in the universe who lives unjust lives under the tyranny of men. This time the crowd truly went wild, after seeing with their own eyes that kind people were not extinct in the UVR. They felt their heart opening up and accepting that not everyone is evil and looking for a way to scam them of their money. So they all started to donate small amounts as well, showing their good-heartedness. At this point, anyone who didn't chime in even a few bits of coins will be treated negatively within the crowd. I donate 300 SC, me 1000 SC, 300 SC here. I will give 5000 SC, my name is Badai. Girls add me on VR chat. I am rich. Open the way for this daddy. The only thing I, your father does not lack is money. I donate 700,000 SC for the beautiful lady to have successful operation. Those rapist bastards are truly bringing the image of us heirs to the dirt with those actions. A flamboyant young master, wearing lavish clothes and followed by two servants brushing his blue long hair gently behind him, said arrogantly. Young master Jordan is truly the most generous person in the universe. I bow to your kindness. The servant behind him automatically started boot licking while brushing Jordan's hair absent mindedly. His boot licking level had reached the peak as his subconscious began doing the work for him. I can't agree more, Brother Jordan. Because of them, everyone despises us now whenever we go. The young man who almost bought the bloodline sighed. 
even though we live our lives uprightly, holding the teachings of our families in high standards, commoners still fear us and avoid us like plague. Just because some black sheep were caught doing horrible things. He lifted his head and stared at the crowd gathered in front of him. He then took a deep breath and spoke emotionally. Truly reputation is the most fragile thing in the universe, and to fix it. I Lucas heir of the Ethanon family will add 2 million SC extra on the previous 6 million, to apologies over the misconduct of those black sheep. The only thing I wish for is, to let everyone knows that we heirs of prestige families are upright and kind just like everyone else. He bowed his head respectfully and requested, please spread what happened today to your friends and families. That's my only request. Everyone cheered and chanted his name loudly after his speech. Young Master Lucas, we trust your character. I love you, young master. Lucas, Lucas, Lucas. The uncle and nephew Jew did not break out of their character even after hearing Lucas's speech. They just kept going back and forth within the crowd, touching their bracelets and earning quick coins. Felix quickly approached Lucas with a hidden glint after seeing that Mr. One was far away collecting donations. Young master, you are truly the brightest star in the universe. No one can reach your heart magnitude. With this money my cousin can finally live to see another day, I am grateful, I am truly grateful. Felix hugged the young master with watery eyes while rubbing his snot on Lucas's clothes. Lucas replied with veins popping from his forehead, trying his best to hold his displeasure, not to ruin the good image he just spent 8 million SC to build. Don't worry, I am just giving back to the community, please accept the payment. He touched Felix's bracelet, transferring 8 million all at once to his bank account. Felix neither smiled nor broke out of character after seeing that amount in his account. He just hugged Lucas tighter and kept thanking him, over and over again, until Lucas had enough and escaped his grasp, bailing away with the bottle in hand. Felix turned behind him and gloated mockingly. The five swindlers who were all on this play to scam the naive young masters who come to visit the market once a year for enjoyment. It was easy to scam them because they get everything they need from the family. And even if they wanted to buy something they use secure channels to do so, provided by the family as well. The moment the five scammers saw Felix's mocking eyes, they knew they were all exposed. The elder with red hair, the kind lady, the young junior, the first scammer who was exposed, and finally Mr. One. All of them were on this hustle, and each had an important role to play. The fat seller job was to lower the defenses of spectators since no one would expect to have two scammers next to each other, and even more for one to expose the other. Mr. One job was to obtain the goodwill of the customers after saving them from getting cheated, thus earning him a good man tag in their heart, which will make his sob story more believable. The kind woman's role was to use her kindness as a weapon to make the first move and assist Mr. One in his sob story. The young junior role was to display the bloodline information that exists in shady website to the customers, and explain it to them using his childish naivety. Finally, the red-haired elder role was to intervene whenever there was a complication throughout their script. Like Felix acting as the nephew to earn some profit from the scam as well. That's what they assumed. However, Felix never had the intention to just earn some profit, but take everything home. Unfortunately, the gang didn't know that the sheep they added to their operation due to his threats, turned into a wolf that devoured everything, leaving them only the bones, which are the small donations the old man was collecting happily before. Felix winked at them one last time, as he slowly submerged himself in the crowd until his figure could not be seen anymore. The only thought that coursed through their minds, as they saw him disappear was, we were royally fucked. Chapter 34 Felix walked rapidly through the crowd while changing his disguise that he used to scam the frauds, into a new one. Since the moment Felix stepped inside the UVR, he was using a disguise to keep his utmost security while shopping or even offending someone. So he won't get discovered and hunted in real life. If it was not for this feature, most commoners won't dare enter the UVR, where they can get bullied constantly by people with a higher background than them. The only ones, who ignore this feature and walk proudly in the UVR are those who trust their strength to protect themselves or members of strong families and bloodline clans. This was why the majority of public markets in the UVR had at least 90% scammers trying to swindle the shoppers' coins in, one way or another. However, just because those swindlers had a disguise on their faces, it doesn't mean that authorities can't locate their real living address. 
After all, the products they used for their scam need to be delivered to the buyer no matter what. If so, it will be quite easy for those backgrounds to fish them out of their holes if they followed such a lead. Even so, the scammers were still running a rampage within the UVR. After all, they could just bully the commoners who had no one to rely on, earning their coins. This blatant discard to the SGA authority finally pushed the alliance into taking things upon their own hands, creating SGA markets, both in public and online. Those markets promised absolute trust in the truthfulness of their products. Anything bought inside their markets gets verified and authorized by professionals before the seller even advertise it. So one can have peace of mind while shopping without the constant pressure that what he bought was fake. But how could those capitalists in the alliance miss such heaven-sent opportunity to earn coins from the commoners effortless? Thus, they announced a statement that every product purchased in their markets had a 20% increase on its original price, to pay for the expert's assistance during the verification process. Just this rule alone single-handedly turned off the majority of commoners' expectations towards the promised SGA market. Because scammers in public markets only increase the original price by 10% to 20%. It is up to the buyer to figure it out and negotiate the price down. As for cases like the scam that the gang did, were rare and few within the UVR. Since not everyone had the smarts and the balls to pull it off on an air of an influential family. Meanwhile, the SGA market might have promised them authentic items, but a 20% increase in price was still a scam, just more in the open and upfront. So most commoners and bloodliners preferred to rather take risks while shopping in the public markets than to give the SGA the satisfaction of obtaining their hard-earned money that easily. In the gambling den, Felix pressed the bet button on solid wall and laid back on the chair in a relaxed manner. He never expected to meet the 5S gang, who scammed him out of his hard-earned 350,000 SC in his previous life. He always kept this bitter memory close to his heart, because of the large setback, it inflected him. He was planning to use those coins to buy a rare rank tier 2 bloodline, but after he got scammed, he got stuck in the purification realm for an extra year. This is why, he instantly recognized the fat seller voice even within the noisy crowd, as he was the one responsible for cheating him out of his money. But now all is good, he got his coins back and even with a quite substantial bonus. He was not complaining at all, especially after betting that 8 million he had on solid wall. If he won his bet, he would earn a whopping 80 million SC at once. This capital can last him for quite a long time if used properly. This is why gambling on games was popular, specifically, ones that includes a large number of players. The winning odds might be almost impossible, but if someone managed to win, he will truly strike a windfall. And Felix with his memories of the future can earn as much as he desired without worrying about his betting information getting leaked, as the only one who knows about those details is the Queen AI. She is bound by the rules to keep everyone's private information to herself. The only thing left now is to watch the game tomorrow and hope that everything goes as planned. Otherwise, my memories are going to fuck me over. He mumbled as he entered a hover cab, planning to head towards the resources market to pre-purchase the potions that will ease up the integration process, and let him awaken quicker and safer. He shivered inside the cab as he remembered his previous awakening that lasted for 20 torturous minutes, because he didn't manage to use those potions. Seven minutes later. Boss, do you have awakening pain relief potions? Felix asked politely the moment he stepped inside a small cozy shop. Let me check handsome. A middle-aged woman smiled and stood up, heading towards the back of the store. Two minutes later she returned and shook her head, sorry handsome, I am out of stock. She quickly added after seeing his disappointed look, the next shipment from the Forsythia Witch Empire will arrive 15 to 20 days later. I could register your name on our waiting list and call you the moment we obtain the items if you would like to wait. All right, I want to pre-purchase 10 bottles. I will pay tomorrow the full amount up front. He nodded in agreement and offered, let's sign a contract now. The lady boss's eyes brightened up and tapped on her AP bracelet, displaying a holographic contract in front of Felix. I have requested the queen to put conditions and terms, entailing that tomorrow you have to pay 100,000 SC for 10 bottles of pain relief up front. Fifteen days later when I obtain the stock, I will send them to your real address free of charge. Felix smirked those terms and said composedly, change the term, when I obtained two you will guarantee that the bottles arrive at my address safely without problems. 
he extended a finger and added, plus, any problem that happens during the delivery will be counted as you breaking the contract, thus paying me a fine of double the amount that I paid for. The lady boss chuckled while covering her mouth and said, fine by me. But I want to change the term any problem that happens during the delivery to problems that happen during the delivery will be counted as both of us breaking the contract, thus splitting the fine 50% 50%. You have a deal. Felix agreed calmly and signed the contract by etching his unique ID code on the empty signing space of the contract. The moment the signing process finished, the lady boss broke the tense atmosphere by praising him with a smile. You are good, lad. To even counterattack by adding that heavy fine, in case of problems happen during the delivery. Since you can simply claim that the bottles that you received were damaged, thus having me pay 200,000 CS for it, while also giving you the bottles. Truly a vicious move. Still not as vicious as you, boss. He scoffed, the moment you added the term, when I obtained the stock. You never plan to admit that you received it after I come to check my bottles. You can simply say that the shipment got robbed by pirates, thus removing yourself from the contract restraint, while also taking my coins. After saying his piece, he turned around and walked towards the exit. Signing a contract in the resources market was the same as signing one with the devil. The shopper must always keep a lookout for loopholes and wordplay. Lest. He realizes too late that he paid to get screwed over. The boss lady observed Felix's retreating back and thought, he must have gone through a painful contract experience before to keep him on his toes like this. Chapter 35 The capital city Androxa, in a house near the northern border of the city, five individuals were sitting around a table with ugly expressions on their faces. Who can blame them? They were just conned out of 8 million SC with some tips. What's even worse was that they were professional frauds who had an infamous reputation throughout the kingdom. Countless young masters and rich newcomers fell into their schemes, losing fortunes they could never recover from. Yet this infamous gang got scammed by a stranger. Mr. One, can you please explain why the hell did you add that bastard in our operation? You could have simply cried out loud that you don't know him, and he will have no choice but to bounce. The kind woman from before raged while pointing her finger at Mr. One. She couldn't handle the awkward silence in the room anymore. Miss Four, it's not like I didn't think about it. It's that I couldn't. He placed his head on the table, not daring to make eye contact with his partners, and explained what happened. The moment I wanted to expose him, he whispered in my ears that if I don't play along he will advertise our real faces in UVR, and I somehow believed him, because he called me Mr. One. Something only you guys know. He buried his head under his arms even further and continued, after that, I could only play along, or else our scam would be exposed. Forget about earning a coin, I would have been beaten to death by the mob. Even though they couldn't kill me, the pain is 100% real, and I wanted to avoid that at all cost. You guys know I hate pain. He coughed to hide his embarrassment after mentioning that. Honestly, it was not Mr. One's fault. The little bastard intervened at the worst possible period. At that point, we could only carry on and hope that he just wanted a piece of the profit. Alas, who would have known that he would take the entire cake and run? They all sighed helplessly after the naive junior from before mentioned what was truly in their minds. They knew that Mr. One should not be blamed for this. But they needed an outlet to vent their current suppressed anger. To make things even worse, Young Master Lucas will hunt us down the moment he finds out that the Nightmare Bison was merely a rare-ranked bloodline that was forced into, evolving to epic rank. Fucking hell, who proposed the stupid idea of hiding our gang logo in our products to spread our fame? Now we will take the brunt of the Ethanon family rage, while not earning a single fart from the scam. The red-haired elder punched the table with his side fist furiously. Suddenly they all stared at his direction speechlessly, forcing the furious elder to gulp a mouthful. Why are you looking at me? Because it was you, Mr. Two-inch Mr. One eyed him weirdly and continued after seeing his disbelieving look. I still remember with vivid details that we were in this room drinking in celebration over our first successful scam. Out of nowhere you stood on the table and proposed that idea. He coughed and changed his voice into a hoarse one, trying his best to copy the elder voice and said, I quote, Asterisk guys I have a dream to make our gang the most infamous fraud group in the UVR. Everyone will fear us, and the crooks will respect us. 
but to do so we need to have a unique logo that belongs to us, then hide it in our products, to spread our legacy for all to see. Asterisk end of quote. He shrugged his shoulders and carried on using his normal voice, then you laughed like a madman and passed out due to alcohol. The others nodded their heads in approval as well, embarrassing the elder even move. Elder is either losing his memory or trying to pass the blame to someone else. Enough, I remembered as well after you reminded me. Just shut up already. He hit the bottom of his cane on the floor to shush them and changed the subject hurriedly. What important now is to lay low without doing any large activities, since we will soon be hunted by the Lucas family. They might not be able to find us if we lived normally. But the moment we try to scam someone they will find us in a heartbeat. Their intel network is no joke. Indeed, we need to lay low for a couple of months, I am planning to spend this period in a vacation. I always wanted to see Oceanic World. Miss Fu shared her plans with clear lounging in her tone. It is a good tourist destination. I visited a couple of years ago, and it was honestly the greatest tourist experience in my life. The young junior gave her double thumbs up as approval to her destination. Mr. Five is right, anyone who did not visit the oceanic world is missing half of his life. Maybe I should go with you, Miss Four. I also never seen it before, we can accompany each other. The fat seller proposed sincerely. Stay away from me you creep. We are calling each other with numbers to not know each other real identities. So let's keep it that way and never ask me again on a date or I will smash your little balls. She viciously threatened him, not caring about his pitiful look, clear contrast to her kind image during the scam. Cough, you can just say no politely. Why must you always be this aggressive? If it was not for your constant attempts of hitting on me, would I need to threaten you? She eyed him coldly and added an extra harsh remake. You should change your code from Mr. Three to Ugly Creep, it suits you better. I gave you my heart, so you can see my honest feelings. But you trampled on it coldly. Mr. Three clutched his heart in anguish, but the way he kept looking at Miss Four was tender and loving, sending chill on her back. Without warning, he cried passionately with one hand on his heart, while the other trying to reach for the disgusted Miss Four. The others who knew what was coming tried to stop him. Alas, it was too late as he began reciting a poem. Oh, how it hurts. My heartstrings had been snapped into small pieces, while my love juice covered them like flies hovering over humans' feces. Bang! Incensed and aggrieved, Miss Fu banged the table with both of her hands the moment he finished his disgusting love poem. I will not work with him anymore. I swear on it. Slam! She slammed the door shut after exiting, leaving one last loud remark behind. I don't want to see his face when I return from my vacation. Otherwise, I will quite the gang. A sudden silence engulfed the room as the other three men eyed Mr. Three who still didn't realize that his abrupt inspiration had put him into deep shit. They cracked their knuckles noisily, managing to wake up Mr. Three from his absent-mindedness. He gulped fearfully as he saw them approach him with deadpan expressions. Just as he tried to escape, they jumped all on him and began roughing him up mercilessly. Didn't we tell you before to stop raping our ears with your disgusting poems? It's one thing to say it to her, and another to do so in our presence. Mr. One shouted as he stomped the creep face over and over again, breaking Mr. Three's nose and frontal teeth. Even so, he didn't stop his bashing. He must have used the poem as an excuse to vent his shame over being played by Felix. Five minutes later. Mr. Three lay on the ground with four snapped limbs, each pointing in different directions. Not mention his face that was unrecognizable after that heavy beat down. Anyone would pass out in his condition. But Mr. Three just smiled with his blooded mouth that had no teeth left and said with a hoarse inaudible voice. Cough, cough, you guys will never understand my art or my love for Miss Four. No matter how much you torture me, I will never change myself. You just have to live with it. He he he, cough, cough, just as he wanted to laugh at their futile attempt of stopping him from expressing his love using poems he ended up swallowing a tooth, forcing him to chock on it. He coughed while clutching his neck, trying to expel it, but to no avail. The other bastards just laughed at his misery, not caring if he choked to death. Mr. One even started recording this rare event while saying, Miss Four will pay a heavy price to have this recording. The others nodded and pointed their bracelet at Mr. Three, 
who gave up on relying on their assistant to save him. So, with a pained heart, he paid a heavy fee to heal his body to peak form again. The moment his body was fully healed, the others stopped their recording and changed the subject, ignoring the fuming expression of Mr. Three. What are we going to do about your nephew, Uncle Mr. One? Mr. Five asked sarcastically. Fuck off, don't bring that up again or else your fate will be the same as this creep. Relax, can't one say a joke here anymore or what? Honestly, nothing much we can do about it. He probably had a disguise on when he joined our scam and after submerging himself in the crowd he changed into another one. Mr. Two sighed dejectedly and continued, so no matter how we search for him we will end up with nothing. Just like the others who searched for us after cheating them. It truly does not feel nice getting scammed without the ability to retaliate. Is this what our victims were feeling? Mr. Five said with a hint of remorse in his tone. Well don't get used it. This is the first time and also the last time we get into this fucked up situation. Our next plan needs to be foolproof to block anyone who tries repeating the little bastard feat, that's the only thing we can do now I guess. Mr. One returned to his seat and laid on it in a relaxed manner and added, losing 8 million makes me feel demotivated from doing any small scams. I will take a vacation like Miss for I guess, hopefully I recover from this setback. Same as well. Have fun guys. We group up in six months here again. And if the coast was clear we can start our operations. See you guys later, I am heading towards Oceanic World. My love shall lead me to meet up with my soul mate. Mr. Three said as he bolted from the room not daring to stay. He knew if he did, they would start a round two of thrashing him. Whatever, that retard probably does not know that miss. For said Oceanic World to throw him off, while her true destination was unknown. What a moron, spending six months in a planet searching for someone not even there. Should we warn him? Mr. Two asked suddenly. They shared eye contact in silence for a while and then exploded with laughter. Ha ha ha. Let that creep suffer. Hopefully, he dies so Miss Four doesn't leave us. Sigh, our gang is really outbalanced. If even she left, I can't remain here anymore with two dudes and one creep. Preach, true, can't argue with that. Thus, Mr. Three Fate had been decided to spend six months in a planet searching like an idiot. Chapter 36 Felix spent two hours browsing products from one shop to another. He pre purchased every potion necessary to facilitate his awakening process. From potions that allow him to heal himself after the process ends, to potions needed to add more percentage to awaken with. Felix never planned to use only a 1% percentage to integrate with at the start. He was confident in his pain tolerance to handle even more percentages all at once. He might not be like some freaks that straight away integrates with 20% to 30%, but he was certain that he could at least awaken with 10%. Ah! This was such an eventful day. He exhaled deeply, as he sat on a park bench in a relaxed manner. He licked an ice cream cone he was holding in enjoyment while thinking of all the activities he had gone through in one day. He opened a bank account and got a loan that turned out to be useless. Then he took his revenge on the 5S gang by scamming them out of their money. Finally, he pre-ordered items for his awakening. The only thing left was to buy a beast bloodline. But he already had plans to buy it tomorrow after the game as pre-ordering doesn't work for bloodline bottles unless one had a good reputation or friendly relation with the seller. It's probably time to log out and sleep. He yawned drowsily and requested from the queen to log him out. Two minutes later. He wore his clothes, planning to head towards the cafeteria to eat his dinner or whatever was left of it. As he exited his room, he met face to face with the expressionless Noah, who was about to close his room door. After a few moments of eye contact, they both nodded their heads as a greeting and went towards the elevator side by side without speaking a word. The moment they stepped inside the elevator, Felix extended his finger at the floor buttons and clicked on the 40th floor where the cafeteria was placed. Noah didn't click anything else, as the 40th floor was his destination as well, K.A. thump after a while, the elevator stopped. Felix and Noah both exited together and went in the same direction. Please give me this, and this, and some of this as well. Add a little bit of sauce on the chicken. Felix ordered his dinner, using his finger to guide the counter lady. 
Have a nice appetite, young master. She smiled politely. Hum, smells good, thank you, auntie. He took his dinner and sat at the closest empty table. Noah immediately began ordering with his finger silently, just like a mute. After getting his dinner he nodded at the counter lady and left to sit alone in a corner table, crackled dawn shortly. Only sounds of forks and bowls echoed in the cafeteria, as no one was in it besides Felix and Noah. The rest already ate before and left to their own room to watch supremacy game streams or learn about the beasts of their newly found elements. Felix observed Noah as he ate slowly. He always wondered if his personality would be like Noah's if he didn't have his grandfather to take care of him. He sighed saddened after recalling the bitter past Noah had to go through to be mulled into a piece of deadwood, unresponsive to anyone but his sister. His fate was quite similar to Felix's, as he lost his parents young as well. However, their deaths were not in an incident. He lost his mother while giving birth to his sister. A few years later, his father's mental and physical health declined continuously due to his wife's sudden death, until he couldn't handle it anymore and kicked the bucket by himself, leaving the sibling due all alone. At that period, Noah was only eight years old while his sister wasn't even four years old. He had it even worse than Felix, but he neither complained nor begged for support. He just did his duties silently, while protecting his younger sister from harm. On the other hand, there was Felix, who went on full attention-seeking tantrum after his parents' death, like he was the only one in the world who suffered from such a pain. If he didn't have his grandfather watching his back in the shadow, he would have been exiled from the family years ago, due to his disgraceful actions that resulted in the family losing a bit of face. Felix only realized this after he matured and became an adult. Meanwhile, Noah had to mature at the mere age of ten due to circumstances. He saw what Felix couldn't see, and did what he couldn't do. Their pasts were the same, but completely different at the same time. He glanced one last time at Noah in admiration and lowered his head to continue his food in peace. Ten minutes later. Felix lifted his empty plate holder and put it next to the counter. Then he washed his hands with soap and walked back to the elevator drowsily. He truly needed to get some rest, as tomorrow will be more eventful than today. Next morning at 10 a.m. Inside the same floor where the juniors got their elemental affinity assessed. The juniors as yesterday stood in four lines, wearing skin-tight sportswear and standard white sneakers. The elders and parents observed their children who stood up straight and proud, with excitement and a hint of envy and hopelessness. Elder Abraham soon clarified the reason why they looked at them as such, by making a speech sternly. You guys have no idea how big this opportunity that you have just received in this new era. Your minds cannot fathom the first and second generation disappointment over not being a junior at this moment. He brought the microphone near his mouth and spoke what was hidden in his heart and every elder in the earth with an envious tone. You have the right to obtain bloodline powers that can turn you into powerful undying beings with a lifespan exceeding thousands of years. While us old people can only live a maximum of 500 years, and that's only if we drunk potions or use substances. Anyone of my age or just your parents' age would kill to be in their youth once again, just so they can have the choice of whether to awaken or not. He sighed helplessly, but we don't even have that choice as you do. Everyone knew so as well. Simply because it was common knowledge that humans who passed the age of 30, could not handle the integration process no matter what they do or consume. It had been tested over and over again, without any positive results, thus sentencing anyone whose age was above 30 a fate of not being able to be part of the awakened race. This was a scar every parent tried to hide, and suppress the grieving pain it kept causing, just so they won't burden their children any further. However, Abraham's words ripped that scar open after he mentioned it publicly like this, resulting in mothers sobbing and sniffing quietly, while fathers burying their heads under their shirts to hide their red eyes they were affected the hardest by their inability to awaken. After all, some of them were still in their thirties. The only thought that kept ringing in their minds over and over again, whether in day or night was, if only I was born a couple of years later, I might have had the chance to awaken. If only, unfortunately, fate did not work that way. If there were some who obtained fortune, there were always others who were prone to misfortune. Fate was like a coin that had two sides. One represented fortune and the other misfortune. Our entire life's decisions, choices, and chances that appeared in front of us were all but fate throwing a coin in the air, and waiting to see the result. 
are we fated for them or not? The reason I mentioned this is not to make you feel bad for us, no. I said it to make you realize that you have something a lot of people wish to have, but can't obtain. Elder Abraham yelled furiously after seeing some juniors were about to cry, due to hearing their parents' sobs. I said it to make you feel like if you didn't work hard enough in your path, you won't just disappoint yourself, but your parents and elders who were supporting you from behind without receiving anything in return. He banged the podium with the side of his fist and continued, I said it to let you understand that not awakening successfully is the same as slapping us in the face. Finally, I said to let you know that you are our future. If you worked hard and got stronger, we might live longer to see your glory. But if you didn't, we will die at the age of 80 just like before, since to obtain the resources needed to increase our longevity is no easy thing. And it has never been that easy. If you want your parents to accompany you as far as possible in your journey, the only choice you have is to get stronger and more powerful to be able to repay their everlasting grace. So train like a beast and only look forward. The pain of awakening is merely momentarily. Pass it and your path to glory will open. Abraham couldn't help but roar the last part in indignation with all of his voice, as tears streamed through his cheeks. No longer able to hold them back after knowing that he would forever live as a commoner and die as a commoner. Chapter 37 The juniors felt their blood turn hot from excitement and agitation after imagining a glorious future based on Abraham's speech. So, with red faces they shouted at the top of their lungs, their goals and wishes they hoped to achieve. For my parents to live forever. For me to be the strongest. For the Maxwell. The moment the last chant was heard, everyone followed after, no matter if it was a junior, parent or an elder. For the Maxwell. 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 The only two who didn't chant were Felix and Noah, as one faked the chant by mouthing it, while the other didn't even bother to fake it. He just stood silently within the frenzied juniors. After a while, the youngsters regained control over their emotions and quietened down. However, their eyes were completely different from how they appeared earlier. Before the speech, their eyes were calm and nonchalant. They knew that a new era had arrived in their generation. But they just took it for granted, uncaring about their parents' or elders' hidden feelings. But after hearing Abraham's raw emotions that represented all of the elderly in the world, they could not take their bloodline path with a laid-back attitude anymore. Due to the realization that they had something their parents wished for, but couldn't obtain. The only thought that run amok in their minds was that, if they didn't take the awakening seriously, it was the same as spitting on the opportunity their family could only long for. Abraham used only words, facts, and his honest emotions to show them all of that. Good children, I trust that you will make us all proud in the future with your achievement. But first, we need to lay down a good foundation for you to do so. And this is the job of the training camps that are happening currently in every country and family like ours around the globe. Abraham smiled warmly after seeing their focused looks and continued, the training camp is extremely important for your future. He then began explaining why so, by extending three fingers each marking a stage of the training camp. He closed one finger and told them that the first stage had two months period. It would be used to train their body fitness, as well as building their pain tolerance. So they wouldn't be blindsided by the pain of the awakening process at the end of the first stage, and end up dead without even realizing what happened to them. He closed another finger and moved on to the second stage. He clarified first that it would only include those who awakened successfully. Then he carried on by mentioning the things they were going to learn in it. Starting off by learning the correct method to increase their integration percentage after awakening. Secondly, what they should expect from the passives and actives abilities they were going to unlock after their awakening. Finally, he closed his hand into a fist and spoke about the last and final stage, the third. It would be used to teach them how to use their abilities properly, in addition to practicing synergies as a team. This stage would last for over two months as well and in the end, there would be battles to decide on who would lead them towards the national battle. After Abraham saw their crestfallen expressions, expecting a hellish camp, he promised them with a cunning glint, that the best performer during the camp would obtain an AP bracelet. I hope the training camp explanation assisted in gaining understanding on those six months that you will spend together. However, he didn't receive any response from the juniors, as their brains blocked every incoming noise after he mentioned the AP bracelet. 
the dream device of everyone in the world currently, whether old or young. They envied Felix for getting one throughout the entire night. Some couldn't even sleep properly as they kept imagining Felix inside the UVR, living the dream. So when they heard that there was actually a chance for them to obtain it as well, their heartbeat couldn't help but accelerate in eagerness to begin showing their efforts to the elders. Abraham nodded in approval at this sight. Good only AP bracelet can let them pass the upcoming hellish training camp. It is troll, just as he dived deeper in his thoughts a voice awakened him and the rest from their excitement. Elder I already obtained AP bracelet. So the reward at the end is really not motivating me as much. Without proper motivation, I doubt I would survive the camp. God knows I might even fail to awaken. Felix didn't let go of this chance to sound his displeasure over not being able to obtain anything at the end of the camp. Boy you already got AP bracelet, what else do you want? The bloodline beast and resources are already going to be given to you during the camp. So there is nothing much to give that has the same value as the bracelet. Abraham rubbed his eyebrows in vexation over this issue. Cough, I don't want much. My only request is to own 51% shares on the entire island. I want to own it, not manage it. He smiled sincerely and added, I don't think I am asking for much here. Abraham sighed in relief after hearing his wish. He quickly approved of it without even consulting the elders. He knew that they won't oppose it as well, since Felix was a true heir of the family, not an outsider to consider deeply about it. After appeasing Felix, Elder Robert decided to take things from here on, as Abraham's throat was as dry as a bone. Now it's time to show you the bloodlines that we bought for you. Robert clapped his hand twice, and the servants brought 39 trays each holding a glass bottle, containing different colors of liquid. After the servants took their position, he explained that their results in the family tradition were the criteria used to judge whether they deserve to own a rare rank bloodline or uncommon. Those who tried their best to revive the business they supervised will obtain a rare rank tier 1 bloodline, while those who simply spent their time enjoying the 5 years period in luxury by using the budget we provided, will obtain only uncommon rank bloodline. Just as some juniors tried to whine about the unfair treatment, he cut them off sternly. You did this to yourselves, not us. If you can't even take the hardship of reviving a dead business, how could we trust in your character to integrate seriously? We are not charity here. Those bloodlines cost us a fortune. He added with an unforgiving tone while looking at a few juniors who either lowered their heads in shame, or stood in a daze after realizing that nothing will save them from using a trashy uncommon bloodline. I will call you one by one, and give your bloodline bottle. You can either take it with you and be responsible over it or leave it with us here until the awakening day. It depends on you. He tapped on his bracelet and a hologram popped out, displaying a list that had Junior's names with the bloodlines they were getting next to it. This futuristic image just further increased their eagerness of working hard to obtain the bracelet. A Bodhi Maxwell, Fire Element user. Due to your lackluster effort, you will obtain uncommon rank red salamander bloodline. A servant carrying the said bloodline went to Robert and gave it to him. Robert took it from there and transferred it to the upset junior who received it unwillingly with his head bowed. Jackson Maxwell, Fog Element User Due to your excellent hard work, you will obtain rare rank spectral owl bloodline. The youngster received it joyfully while bowing and thanking the elders for their grace. This process carried on slowly, as juniors turned past one by one. Some returned to their posts upset, while others were grinning widely like they won a jackpot. All sorts of bloodline names were thrown in the floor, each representing an element, ranging from common elements to uncommon ones. Fifteen minutes later. Olivia Maxwell, plant element user come forth. Due to your astonishing way of handling your business, you earned a rare rank Lily Dundalio bloodline. A delicate young lady with short wavy pistachio green hair, deep oceanic eyes, petite nose, and beneath it cute thin lips, approached Elder Robert happily. Her entire oval visage will make anyone who looks at her scream in their mind so cute. Plus with her short height not even reaching 155 centimeters, it made her appear like a sweet young flower no one would want to bully or displease, except for one hateful person of course. Robert patted her head pleasantly and gave her the bloodline. Olivia received it while enjoying Robert's gentle patting. She then returned to her position smiling cutely on the way, while holding the bottle near her non-existent chest. 
Chapter 38. Kenny Maxwell, Darkness and Lighting Element Use a Step Forth. You earned a rare rank Erebus Dusk Bloodline, thanks to your hard efforts. Robert handed the bottle to Kenny who received a polite wide smile. But his smile somewhat turned creepy in the eyes of Felix, who was observing his sharp jawline, short spiky dark hair, a high-bridged nose that was among his two dark eyes and his soft wide lips, which were very captivating. His appearance was quite unique as some may think of him as handsome, while some would argue that he was subpar. Plus with his multiple personalities, it did not make this difference any easier. However, Felix only thought of his face as one that should be thrashed every day to vent on what he did in his previous life. Kenny retreated to his position after paying respect towards the elders. Noah Maxwell, Ice Element user step forth. Your reward is rare rank cryogenic yeti bloodline. Robert waited until Noah reached his side, then patted his shoulder in encouragement while handing him the bottle. As the only one in the family to have a high affinity rating, everyone has great hopes on you to reach further than the rest. Noah nodded his head in appreciation to his words and went back to the same position, standing coldly like a piece of ice, and his visage was not making it any better, as his hair was messy sky blue, styled as an undercut, ink black eyes with long thin eyebrows above, imposing straight nose and frosty unmoving lips, creating a deadly fine face. Yet with his constant expressionless look, its potential had been lowered. While some might think his uncaring looks appeared cool and aloof, the majority would beg to differ as expressions were the true decider to beauty. Little bastard, come here and get your rare rank toxic red boar's bloodline. Felix approached his grandfather gleefully. Train properly and don't embarrass me in front of those fogies, or else my belt will be the only snake you see in your life. Robert hugged his grandson, content with how he turned out to be. If it was not for his threat, the scene would be more heartwarming. Felix broke off from his hug and took his bottle smugly. Old geezer, after I awaken you won't be able to harm me with your belt even if you wanted. Your scaring techniques have already lost their effects on me. But you won't awaken until two months later. I have no problem beating the shit out of you with my belt during this period. Who knows your pain tolerance might even increase, truly hitting two stones with one rock. Robert instantly replied with a wide grin. Then he turned to the elders and asked for their opinion. Do you guys agree? I believe only my techniques are enough to help him pass the pain and awaken. I agree. He is all yours. Beat him well, we don't want our top seedling to fail to awaken. The elders did not fail to disappoint as they all chimed in their own support. Can I watch? Olivia asked with innocent round eyes. Felix raised his eyebrows in irritation after seeing everyone looking at him mockingly, waiting to see his response. He stared at his grandfather's wide grin and said sincerely, I don't think that is a good thing to do. Our family does not approve of favoritism. So I would rather take part in the same training program as others than to let my grandpa, a bored elder gives me an advantage over my cousins. He thumped his chest and said sternly, I'm a righteous individual who condemns such actions. So I refuse to take part in it, TSK, shameless as always. I guess nothing has changed during his stay on the island. Sigh, as long as his thuggish personality was gone, I am satisfied. Everyone facepalmed after realizing that Felix had not changed for the better, but improved his shameless craft even further, during his stay in the island. Too bad, they didn't know that he spent years surviving in the UVR and SG to be as adaptive as he was now. Scram from my sight this instant. Robert lifted his leg, threatening to kick him if he didn't leave his side. Felix took the battle with him and returned to his position after dodging a bullet. He turned his head and gave a mysterious glint in direction of Olivia. She flinched the moment she saw that glint. The same look he used every time he planned to prank her. She almost cried tearfully after seeing a grim future waiting for her, as no one was going to save or protect her from him after he thrashed them single-handedly. Five minutes later, all the bloodline bottles had been given to their correct owners. Robert observed the juniors in the room with an unreadable look and said, one last thing to mention before we officially start the training camp. The details of your bloodline are written at the back of the bottle, its history, abilities, either passive or active, are all there. You can read them in your rooms after we finish today's training. If you had any energy left to do so, that is, he then returned to his seat, allowing Abraham to take it from where he left. The training camp has officially started. 
he proclaimed loudly, the moment he grabbed the MIC, your first task is to use three minutes to deliver your bloodline bottles to your rooms and return here before the duration ends. Those who succeeded will obtain 100 merit points, while those who failed will have 100 merits deduced. If they don't have them they will enter a merit debt. He began explaining the merit system after seeing their confused looks. You should all understand that during the period of training everything is going to be controlled by your merits. Your food, your water, your shower, your resources, everything needs merit to trade with it. We use this method, so only those who work hard to finish their tasks will earn the right to be nurtured. As for those lazy bums, you can die of hunger, and no one will care. Not even your parents. Worthless trash is not needed in the family. He said with a frigid uncaring tone. Yet, the juniors showed no expression on their faces, as this was how they were taught since birth. Only by being useful to the family would they have worth in it. If not they could simply leave, no one would stop them. After seeing that they had no questions about those arrangements, he told them to prepare for the countdown. The juniors all took a running position towards the elevators. Three, two, one, go. Everyone bolted towards the three elevators while holding tightly the bloodline bottles next to their chest. They knew that those elevators won't be able to hold all of them at once, which meant, that the slowest of the bunch would need to use the staircase to reach their rooms. But that's quite impossible as the floor difference between the two was 15 floors. However, it was not all fine and dandy even for those who reached the elevator first. It's not like the rest would let them peacefully close the door in their faces. Hell no, they might be a family but they had no qualm beating their cousin's brutality for victory. This resulted in a massive battle breaking out next to the elevators. Blood splashed everywhere, as juniors kept being kicked or punched in the face, the moment they stepped inside the elevator or tried to close the door. No one was spared, not even the females. Before long, the madness calmed down a bit, as the weaker juniors stopped trying to fight for the elevators and went to the staircase. Even though they understood that it was a hopeless attempt, they still had to show the elders that they tried their best. Yet the elders were not paying attention at their sympathy attempts, as they were too busy staring at Felix who never left his position, reading in concentration his bloodline details, indeed, if I had this bloodline in my previous life, I would have reached the first stage of replacement at least one year earlier. But now it didn't matter much, with his capital he could buy at least tier 4 rare rank beast to awaken with first. He sighed at how fate works. Before, he dreamed of resetting his life to obtain a rare rank beast to awaken with, but now the beast he dreamed about and fought for appeared like a piece of junk in his hands. He wouldn't use it even if he was beaten to death, whatever plans never go as scripted in the paper I guess. I worked my ass off on the island to earn this bloodline. But in the end, I got AP bracelet, which was even better. You rascal, you will be the death of me, my heart can't take your bullshit anymore. You better explain why you are still here, or else I will give permission to all the parents here to beat you as revenge for their children. Now start talking. Robert was truly about to faint from anger. He just told him to try his best during the training camp, but here he was doing absolutely nothing, embarrassing him in front of the elders and seniors. Grandpa you really need to relax. We can't afford to have you die now after ways were found to treat your disease. Worried, Felix tried to calm Robert a bit, but his words just made it even worse. Fuck, don't worry about me, worry about yourself, as you won't leave this hall in one piece if you don't say your reason. Felix sighed and walked towards Abraham and gave him the bloodline bottle, Abraham caught it reflexively. After seeing that it was in the elder hands, Felix shrugged his shoulders and explained his reason. You said before, that we can either take the bloodline with us and or hand it over to you for keepsake. Well, I honestly feel like my cousins hate my guts for some unknown reason, and I can't leave the bloodline in my possession in this kind of environment. I worry some of them might destroy it or steal it as revenge. He smiled innocently and added, in this sense, I feel like the task you gave me was meaningless. As I can't run towards my room without a bottle then returning here like a retard. The elders and seniors who heard his explanation had weird expressions in their faces but were somewhat convinced, since everything he said was correct. The task was for the juniors to put the bottle in their room and return. But if he had no bottle, didn't that mean that he was simply joining in the fun for no reason? Sigh, it is our fault for leaving such loophole. If we knew, we would have given another task for those who want to leave their bloodline with us. 
Abraham sighed dejectedly after their first task in the camp went haywire. Well, we thought they would read the details after the training ends today. Then give us their bottles to be safeguarded. Who would have known there was a shameless person who will read the details right here, then return it to us instantly? The long-nosed elder from the board, chuckled while eyeing Felix. Carter is right. We failed to add Felix's shamelessness to the mix, but not anymore. All the next tasks will be loophole-free. I will make sure of it. Let's see what you can do then rascal. Robert stared stubbornly at Felix who was yawning in boredom, waiting for them to finish their verdict. Chapter 39 All right Robert, that's for the future tasks. We need to decide what to do with him now, should we reward him with merits or not? Charlotte dragged the stubborn Robert back in his seat. Just give him 200 merits, since he used his brain and found the loophole. We can't punish him for relying on wits. We would be the laughingstock of all business families if we did so. Agreed. Second that. Indeed he did not break the rules. Felix we decided that you shall be rewarded with 200 merits instead of the original 100. Take it as a bonus reward. Abraham smiled with a hidden glint. Felix saw it but did not know what he meant by it. So he stopped thinking about it and accepted the free points. Two minutes later. Half the juniors arrived without breaking a sweat as they used the elevators and did not need to run too much. Though, they were covered in blood and scratches. Some even had their teeth knocked out. They really fought tooth and nail for those 100 points. But they still had it better than the rest who were probably still in their rooms or climbing back the stairs. They got beat up but still failed the task. Everyone who reached saw Felix standing in the same position while staring at the ceiling absent-minded like he was contemplating his life choices. However, they did not find it weird, as they assumed that he just arrived as well from another elevator. The only thing questionable about him was the fact that he had no injuries like them. They soon began to question each other on who rode with the devil himself. I took the first elevator, he was not us. Me second, I definitely didn't see him with us. The hell? He didn't take the third as well. In the end, they stared at Felix speechlessly, not knowing his reason for giving up on the task. The thought that he used the stairs didn't even cross their minds. No matter how godlike Felix appeared when he threshed them before. Common sense still applied to him. Five minutes later. The rest of the juniors, who took the stairs, arrived as well. Surprisingly, Kenny and Olivia were within them. Well for Olivia it could be understood, as she didn't participate in their fight. However, for Kenny, a quite strong and intelligent junior to not win a spot inside the elevator, it was quite weird. The elders did not rush them after seeing their horrendous fitness. Their eyelids couldn't help but twitch couple times, as they noticed few juniors vomiting their breakfast in the corners of the floor. The entire reason for this simple task was to find out only two things, ruthlessness and fitness. They were quite pleased with the former, but the latter was quite a disappointment. After a while, Abraham clapped his hands twice to bring their attention towards him. Since everyone is here, it is time to evaluate your performance. He clicked on his bracelet and a hologram popped out, 21 of you managed to pass the task successfully. I will call the names of those who passed. If you did not hear your names, it meant that you failed. He read the names of those who passed from the holographic list, Jack, David, Owen, Luke, Sarah, Noah, Felix. Those who heard their names clutched their fists, while those who didn't, cried miserably over losing 100 merits that they didn't even possess. Thoughts of fasting crossed their minds. Suddenly someone of those who passed realized that Felix finished the task as well, which was quite weird, as he believed that Felix didn't even take part in the first place. After all, he was not in any elevator and definitely didn't use the stairs. So why the fuck did he pass? He approached a cousin from the losing bracket and ratted on Felix without a flinch, let him ask the elders. No need for me to question their decisions. I still want my life. But those morons will dare to confront the elders about this blatant favoritism. He retreated to his position and continued to massage his bruised cheek. Before long, the news kept passing from one to another, until hushed whispers noises resonated in the hall. The noise got so bad, even the elders were alerted. Enough, what's the matter with you? 
you better explain yourselves or else everyone is going to get twenty merits deducted. Abraham banged his fist on the podium over this blatant disrespect in their faces. Silence suddenly descended in the floor, as everyone was too afraid to make a fart in the presence of an angry elder. They might be polite and gentle most of the time, but when they get furious, shit gets real, pretty fast. If they didn't have a vicious rough personality, they wouldn't have been able to secure their position as a business empire family elder. Speak! Abraham didn't have time to indulge in their silence, as more important matters were waiting for him. Elder, we were conversing about Felix. It came to our attention that he managed to pass the test without doing anything. So we were just wondering how he did it, so we can learn from him next time. Junior wearing glasses bowed his head respectfully and explained without a stutter. Other elders smiled in approval at his explanation. They appreciated the fact he was smart enough to question their decision without being upfront and saying directly, why he passed while doing jack shit and not us. It's simple, he was the only one who found the hidden mission we left behind during the task. If you used your intelligence like we taught you and not run like monkeys the moment we gave you an order. You might have been able to see it as well. The rest of the elders and seniors were struggling to hold their laughter, as they listened to Abraham spew bullshit through his teeth sternly. This hidden mission was to see who is able to take advantage of the family safeguarding mechanism we mentioned before, to pass the task without breaking a sweat. If you used your brain for a second, you might have realized that by giving us your bloodlines you wouldn't need to run to your rooms in the first place. Just like Felix did. Next time use your fucking brains. Dissatisfied and disappointed, Elder Abraham scolded them, uncaring about the elders behind him who were trying their best not to bust his act. The only one who knew that Abraham was lying but didn't find funny was Felix. As he gaped wide-eyed at Elder Abraham, twist facts and truths to make it seem like it was their plan all along to have the loophole he discovered, as a hidden mission. Only now did he realize the reason for their generosity and Abraham's hidden glint. He rubbed his eyebrows at their silly attempt to shush him with a bribe. It's clear as day that the elders didn't want to lose the training camp dignity before it even began. After all, for the first task to have such a large loophole would turn it into a joke in the eyes of their juniors, and they couldn't allow that to happen no matter what. Meanwhile, those youngsters kept switching their sight between Abraham and Felix with bulging eyes, not daring to accept the fact that their IQ was even lower than Felix, the thug of the family who skipped every class in school. In their eyes, accepting it was the same as stressing that their time spent studying and learning to become smarter was but for naught. Soon their shock was replaced with numbness as they stopped dwelling deeper into it. Felix already surpassed them in courage, foresight, combat, and stamina. It would be weird not to beat them in intelligence as well, guess we can just die. Our existence is merely there so the elders can compare us. If so it's better to just end it now, I got beat up, ran fifteen floors twice, just to be slapped by the reality that I could have avoided it. I should just throw myself out of the window and save my parents' face. Suddenly the floor turned chilly, as half of the juniors stared at the ceiling with suicidal thoughts. Abraham instantly realized that his plan had backfired after seeing their expression of admitting defeat. He tried to salvage the situation hurriedly by flattering them, we the elders might not show it, but we truly admire the fact that you didn't give up on the task, knowingly that it was impossible to pass. So hold your heads up, the training camp has just begun. Trust me, there are hundreds of ways to showcase your talents and magnificence. Some of you might awaken faster than Felix, while some of you might obtain better abilities than him. You just have to find your way to surpass him. Abraham had absolutely no qualms using Felix as a stepping stone to flatter them. As long as their determination reignites, he wouldn't mind slapping Felix with some merits points as compensation. Am I right Felix? He decided to put Felix in his charade after seeing that nothing of what he said, worked. Vexed, Felix sighed at this sight. He didn't know why Abraham was even trying to help those pieces of trash who lost their goal at the first setback in their long integration journey, but, he could only play along. It's not like he was not getting paid. Indeed, I am not the best or even close to being that. Just yesterday I saw in the UVR, multiple humans with different unique talents, that I can only wish to obtain. He slumped his shoulders and added, sadly, I can't, since it belongs to them only, and no one can take it from them. Did you hear him? 
you just need to find your unique talent, and no one is going to be as good as you while doing it. So lift your heads up, it is too early to feel discouraged. The training has just begun, and I can't allow you to give up now. Abraham swiftly supported Felix with a penetrating voice, which struck the hearts of those losers who were about to give up on their path. In a sense, it was quite understandable, as no one would want to live a life where their entire existence was merely a supporting character to be compared to others. They simply hoped to be the main character of their own lives and stories, and what Abraham and Felix mentioned was the ignition to help them achieve it. The chilly atmosphere was gone as suddenly as it appeared. How could it not? When those losers' eyes were emitting blazing flames like torches, eager to find the unique talent that set them apart from the rest. Felix scratched his cheek while observing the results of his confidence boost. Let's see how far it's going to last you for, well whatever, as long as I get paid with merits over my boosting, I don't mind doing it again. Chapter 40 After seeing that his attempt managed to uplift their spirits, Elder Abraham decided to strike the iron while it's hot and explain the next task. All right give me your attention. This task purpose was only to give us a glimpse at your fitness level and to be frank, it's horrible. So starting from today until you awaken, you will have to run 5 kilometers on the treadmill, do 50 push-ups, 50 sit-ups, 50 squats for the next 30 days. Elder Abraham continued his explanation, unbothered about the few wines here and there about the difficulty of the training. Each exercise is limited to 2 hours. That means the total hours of practice will be 8 hours each day in the week, except Sunday. You can take a break in them. They sighed in relief after hearing that. They truly didn't have what it took to finish all the exercises every single day, without a break. As he said, their fitness was trash and for them to start with those exercises were already more than enough to physically and mentally fatigue them. Finally each exercise you finish during the allowed period will provide you with 200 merits as a reward. That means, you can earn as much as 800 merits every day if you worked hard for it. On the other hand, if you fail to finish one exercise, the same amount will be deducted. We emailed the details of the merit system to your emails, you can read them later. Now go do as you wish. If you want to train, do it. If you want to play, do it. Just be aware that everything is being supervised and monitored. He waved his hand and turned away, planning to leave with the rest of the elders. However, a junior question soon stopped him in his tracks, what about the second month elder? Oh, that will be for your pain tolerance drilling but you don't need to hear details about it. Now leave my sight, I am too tired. He shooed them away and left with the elders and seniors hastily. They had an empire to run. It's not like they could keep watching them train daily. No one had that much time. The only elder left to supervise them was Robert who had a wide grin planted on his face, while gazing at Felix, like a hawk. Noisy chatter engulfed the floor as youngsters all spread apart in groups. Some headed straight to the gym to start their training, while some went to clean up after vomiting their guts out. Each to his own, the only thing that mattered was to finish the exercises in eight hours every day. Meanwhile, Felix decided to start training ASAP, so he could catch solid wall game tonight. As he was walking absent-mindedly, thinking about tonight's game, he bumped into Olivia who was waiting in front of the elevator. Ouch, watch where you are going. Kia Felix. Olivia didn't even wait to finish her scolding before she bolted towards the stairs with her small legs like she saw a ghost, what the fuck? I am not going to eat you, to run away from me, Felix's eyelids twitched at this sight. But since you decided to run, this is a clear approval of letting me chase after you. He glanced at his bracelet and saw that he still had some hours to kill. So, he gave a wolfish grin and sprinted after her. Suddenly, everyone stopped what they were doing and just watched Felix chasing after Olivia around the building, floor after floor, room after room. Olivia kept running with tears streaming through her cheeks. She constantly cried for help every time she met with a cousin. But no one dared to assist her. The alliance had been broken by Felix's sheer brutality. Everyone was on his own at this point. Olivia's friends could only pray in their minds for Felix to get bored and leave her alone. Robert watched this scene in the monitor's room while holding a popcorn bucket in one hand and remote control in the other. He zoomed at Olivia, who was sobbing while apologizing to Felix for provoking him earlier. 
then he zoomed at his grandson, who always kept a distance between him and Olivia to enjoy the hunt even more. His wolfish grin and evil laugh was clear evidence of pleasure over bullying this little sheep. This bastard truly never gives a break to poor Olivia. I guess it is time to save her, or else she won't dare to leave her room anymore. Robert brought a microphone near his mouth and ordered sternly, Felix, you have three seconds to leave Olivia alone. Otherwise, you will have a date with my belt tonight. Felix clicked his tongue and changed his direction, heading towards the gym to start training properly. Olivia glanced at her back, after noticing that Felix's wolfish howls he used to scare her with stopped coming. Did he really listen to Grandpa Robert? She chewed her lips while observing the area around her. She knew that Felix rarely listened to his grandfather's orders. So, he could be hiding anywhere. After a while, she relaxed her tense shoulders and dropped to the floor. She began massaging her sour legs in a gentle manner, it seems like he truly left. I really need to stop provoking him. He is always looking for a reason to bully me, she clutched her fist and narrowed her eyes, but things are going to change if I awaken successfully. He won't be able to bully me anymore, she laughed foolishly, it might even be my turn to bully him, soon, she stood up and walked in direction of the elevator with that foolish cute smile, imagining herself wearing wolf clothes while stepping on Felix who was begging for mercy. Suddenly, her imagination was destroyed when she heard a teasing whisper in her ear, gotcha, little Ollie. Kaya. The moment she heard Felix's voice she shrieked for a few seconds and fainted on the ground with her eyes rolled in her head. Felix the first will fucking kill you tonight if you don't leave her alone. Robert's infuriated voice resounded throughout the entire building, scaring the shit out of the elders and juniors. Fine. Can't one play a prank on fellow family members these days or what? Aggrieved and irritated, he lifted the past out Olivia in a princess carry. But shortly, he switched to carrying her on his shoulder, leaving her arms and legs to dangle both sides, it's better this way. If I carried her like a princess, she might faint again if she saw my face, afterward, he trod towards the elevator, planning to visit the gym, which was at the tenth floor. This time for real. Three minutes later. The elevator door opened up slowly, revealing Felix carrying Olivia like a sandbag. Everyone froze whatever they were doing, and stared at Felix walking unhurried towards the bathroom like nothing was wrong with the current situation. Felix noticed their stunned looks, but he didn't bother explaining himself. He simply stepped inside the bathroom and locked it shut, cluck. The sound of the door getting locked broke them out of their daze, is he finally going to drop the facade and do the deed? I knew it, he always bullied Olivia, just to be with her, since he had feelings for her, oh, I wish I could watch. Should I risk it and take a quick peek? What a monster, to do it while she is unconscious. No of their thoughts went wild, as they bore on the bathroom door, not daring to approach it or condemn Felix out loud on his misleading actions. If even Robert allowed it, why should they interfere? It's always better to mind your business. Felix put Olivia on the toilet chair and sprinkled cold water on her face. After seeing a positive reaction, he left the toilet and closed the door on her. A few seconds later, her eyelashes quivered, and her button-like nose wrinkled as cold water drops streaming through it. She scratched it reflexively and opened her eyes groggily. As she regained full clarity, she noticed her current strange position, where is Felix and who put me here? Is this one of his pranks? She adjusted her training outfit cuffs while chewing on her lips. Little Ollie, come out, and stop chewing your lips, I always told you to remove that habit of yours. Felix knocked on her toilet door two times and said, we are in the bathroom without monitor cameras. I want to talk to you seriously about something. His voice wasn't commending, or harsh. He simply soothed her with a gentle tone. Olivia didn't scream in fear this time. She just sighed helplessly and opened the door. She popped her small head first, surveying the area with wide eyes, trying to locate Felix's whereabouts. She didn't want another jump scare. Soon, her watery blue eyes locked into Felix's gentle eyes. She instantly lowered her head embarrassed, not daring to continue having eye contact with him. However, Felix lightly knocked on the sink, bringing her attention back to him. He didn't take her to the bathroom to exchange those lovey-dovey eye contacts, but for serious business. Little Ollie, don't take what you are about to hear personally. He faced the mirror, ignoring Olivia's confused look and said, 
You will die a horrible death if you awakened with your current bubbly nun serious personality. Not just you, but at least 70% of our cousins will meet the same fate. He sighed as he saw her parted lips and befuddled eyes, through her reflection on the mirror. Everyone believes that they are the chosen ones, who will surely pass the pain using only sheer will like they were in a fantasy novel. He faced her, but let me tell you something Ollie. This is reality, where anyone who braved the awakening process with only their courage and determination, died horribly. Olivia took a step back, after being frightened by his serious look and stern tone. He didn't seem like he was joking or pranking her at all, which scared her even more. Felix didn't care about comforting her, as he simply narrowed his eyes and asked, do you still dare to awaken now? He added, and if you do tell me why? Olivia didn't answer him, as she was trying her best to process the fact that she would die during awakening. She always believed that she could handle the infamous painful process. Because she thought that since people could pass it successfully, why couldn't she do the same? Yet, Felix blatantly made it clear that was merely wishful thinking. What bothered her, even more, was the way he said so confidently and certain of it happening. She couldn't help but have some doubts in her mind. However, doubts were doubts, it didn't mean she trusted his words entirely. She wasn't stupid to believe everything that he said, especially the reality that 70% of her cousins would die as well. How do you know about all of this? And if it was true, how could you know it while the family doesn't? She fired her inquires while chewing on her lips again. A habit she always had since young. Don't tell me you found out about it, during one night in UVR, because the family had them for over five months now. This meant, they would have already known about it long ago. But that's impossible, as they won't allow us to awaken if the majority of us will die just like you mentioned. She stared at his eyes defiantly, not daring to believe him and not wanting to. If she did, it signified one horrifying fact. That was, the family had no qualms sending 70% of their children to certain death. Felix gave a sinister smile and whispered in her ear. His breath sent a chill inside her earlobe. Little Ollie, you have no idea at all, what the temptation of longevity can push one to do. No idea at all. Chapter 41 What do you mean by temptation? I don't think the elders and our parents would approve of such a thing. Olivia shook her head firmly with closed eyes. She didn't want to look at his devilish mouth, spewing such terrifying lies to her face. Felix lifted her chin gently and gazed at her tight shut eyes and pressed lips. Little Ollie, do you honestly believe that the family would care about our lives when their longevity and authority is threatened? He chuckled mockingly and said, don't be so naive. Even if only one of us managed to survive the process of awakening, it is a win in their eyes, since it means that they still have a chance to obtain some items that may extend their lives. He sighed and pulled away from her, don't hate them for it, neither disdain them. It is a simple trade between us. They gave us bloodlines, resources, training opportunities, and everything we need to awaken. So, we won't forget them after we gain power. Indeed, the family was doing all of this, not out of the goodness of their heart. Rather, to obtain backing from their awakened juniors during upcoming authority struggles. This current era was controlled not by weapons, or diplomacy. But simply, the number of awakening individuals a country or a family had. The elders would be damned if they left this race for authority, just so they could protect useless juniors who had no real power in this new era. That's why the World Council downplayed the painful process of awakening by releasing only the good parts of it. As for the dangers and the actual process, they didn't mention it much in their streams. The families, companies, governments, associations, and more backgrounds were all in this together. They knew that youngsters no matter how rash they were in making decisions they still wouldn't dare to awaken if its dangers were released publicly. The leaders wanted them to underestimate it and go for it no matter what. If not else, who would pave the road ahead in this new era? Felix chuckled and approached Olivia who had her palms in her ears while muttering in denial, you are a liar. I'm not listening to your lies. My parents won't allow it. Tell me the most painful physical experience you went through to this point. He asked her after seeing that she wasn't going to hear any more of his explanations. Yet, Olivia didn't respond. She just pretended that she didn't hear a thing. Vexed, Felix removed her hands from covering her ears and repeated his question again with a firmer tone. 
this time Olivia couldn't pretend any more. She fiddled with the corner of her outfit and answered, it was when I was twelve years old. I fell from the stairs of my parents' mansion. I broke two ribs and one arm. Oh yes, I do remember that I visited you in the hospital many times to show my concern. Nostalgic, he chuckled as he remembered those peaceful days. But each time you visited, you kept drawing on my arms cast funny faces and calling me mummy after seeing me in bandages. Olivia pouted with her hands crossed. Stop jesting little Ollie. You must have mistaken me for Kenny. Before she could bicker back with him, he poked her forehead and said, now tell me Ollie. If that was the greatest pain you felt in your life, how are you supposed to handle an agony that strikes the fibre of your being trying to change your very own cells to something different, in a period that lasts more than 30 minutes? Please enlighten me. He hoped that everything he just said might break her illusion, and bring some sense in her mind that awakening was not something to be taken lightly of. Only when one really braced himself for death, could he start the process with a focused mind, have a decent chance of passing it. Agitated, Olivia could only turn her head away from his questioning gaze. I don't know okay. If everything that you said was right, it only meant that I am not ready for awakening and probably never will. So I really don't know what to do anymore. She covered her eyes as she sobbed. She couldn't handle it anymore. Felix was shattering all her dreams for a bright future, where she was a strong awakened, controlling her own fate and resisting everyone's bullying. However, now she could only cry her eyes out after realizing that she would stay the same as always, weak and protected by others. Something she hated since young. As no matter how much she had grown, everyone sees her as a little child either to bully and tease or to protect and please. Felix brought her to his embrace and patted her back gently to comfort her. Don't worry about it Ollie. I just wanted you to treat awakening seriously, not block you from it. He smiled and said, I can help you lower the pain period to only 20%. You just have to promise me that you will work hard during the upcoming pain tolerance drills, so you can be as prepared as possible. Olivia lifted her small head and stared at Felix with her damp blue eyes, quivering eyelashes like a hurt bunny. Really you can do that? He shrugged his shoulders and explained, unaffected by her cute appearance, indeed, not just me. I believe the family will try their best to do the same but they won't be able to lower the pain period to 20%, but probably just 75%. That's not so bad, as at least some of our cousins will survive. His dull reply was a clear display that he was unbothered about their certain death. He only cared about two of his cousins, one was Olivia his childhood friend, in his point of view. The other was Noah whose character was admirable. As for others, they could burn in hell and he wouldn't mind. She broke off from his hug and wiped her tears with her sleeves. Why don't you share your method to the family, isn't it better if everyone had higher chances to succeed? Because our methods are the same. He clicked on his bracelet and a hologram of a small glass bottle filled with thick blue liquid, revolved in front of Olivia. This is what we will use. A potion called pain relief, the only difference is the number of potions used. He explained that each potion could lower the pain duration by 20%, but after drinking for continuously her body would build immunity to its effect, thus forcing the duration to freeze at 20%. Those potions were extremely important for each awakener. One must at least drink minimum two potions before risking it. However, the family was not rich enough to afford two potions for each junior. Heck, they couldn't afford to get even one for each junior. This meant for those who risked awakening in that condition, death was certain unless a miracle happened. I understand, but why would you go that far for me? Is it really as my cousin said, you like me? She avoided having eye contact with him as she stammered her question. Amused at her conclusion, he flicked her forehead and patted her head like a child. Get some common sense little Ollie. If I had feelings towards you, would I bully and tease you each time I meet you until you avoided me at all costs? He turned around and walked towards the bathroom door, leaving his real reason why he went through all of this. I see you as a childhood friend, who played with me and tolerated my tantrums during the death of my family. I am only doing this to repay you for the past. And also not to see your corpse covered in your own pool of blood and sweat. He thought. Olivia rubbed her red forehead and stomped her leg in irritation after being treated like a kid again. 
I will show you all that I am seventeen years old just like you, and make you treat me with respect. Just you wait, she cleaned her face with water and followed after Felix. Yet, the moment she emerged from the door, she saw everyone looking at her damp eyes and red face from crying in embarrassment. Things that water couldn't clean, what a beast, he really did it, I can't believe my cute Olivia was defiled by that thug. I swear I will avenge you, Olivia, just wait after I awaken, Olivia tilted her petite oval head in confusion at their looks. What's with their pained expression? Did they get all food poisoned or what? I wish you get well soon. She nodded at them and walked towards the treadmill near Felix and started jogging. Everyone's already messy thoughts got even messier at this flabbergasting sight. Never in their wildest dreams would they have expected Olivia, the number one Felix's prey, to approach him by her own will. What the hell? Why did she practice near Felix when there are over twenty treadmills empty? No, my little Olivia, don't join his side. Even if he took your first time, you should never obey him, why do I feel like this training camp is not going to be peaceful? Interesting, Olivia is the last one I expected to befriend him. Truly interesting. Kenny mused while his real face had a wide gentle smile on it, as he did squats. Noah. Why are you training next to me, are you not afraid of rumors? You do realize that we were in the bathroom alone for over fifteen minutes, and by doing this you just made it worse for you. Confused just like the rest, Felix asked her. He knew that her real personality was quite shy and gets easily affected by rumors. So, for her to be this bold was truly a sight to behold. Olivia bared her little fangs at him and others. You can all mind your business, and stop caring about what I do, and what I say. I am seventeen years old just like everyone here. I am not a child to fear others' opinions on me. They can say what they want I don't care. Felix chuckled at her cute angry tantrum and said, All right little adult, whatever you say. She humphed and focused on her practice, not wanting to bicker with him anymore. Chapter 42 Time slowly passed by, as Felix and Olivia were almost about to finish their five kilometers exercise. Felix trained with utmost focus, looking only straight ahead. Meanwhile, Olivia kept stealing quick glances at him. If that was only it, Felix wouldn't be bothered, but every time she peeked at him, she opened her mouth trying to say something. However, in the end, she closed it shut and continued to run in silence. Annoyed yet somewhat piqued, he removed his airpods and asked, Out with it. What do you want to say? Olivia stumbled on the treadmill almost falling flat on her face after being found out. He chuckled at this sight, making her cheeks flush red. Thank you, Felix, I appreciate your promise. She avoided eye contact with him as she shyly buried her head downward. Don't mention it any more. He waved his hand casually and wore his airpods back on, focusing on the last 500 meters left. Olivia smiled and stopped peeking at him. For minutes later. Felix cleaned his body from sweat while drinking a small bottle of water. After finishing it half of it, he closed the lid and walked on the treadmill while stretching his shoulders, preparing for the next exercise. After a while, Olivia finished as well. She turned off the treadmill and stood on the gym floor with her hands on her knees, breathing ruggedly. It was not just her, but almost everyone was either training hard while breathing roughly with sweaty armpits and back, or lying on the ground unmoving. If it was not for their chest that was rising and falling periodically, the rest would have assumed they had died. A clear contrast to Felix who dropped into the floor after few minutes break, and began doing his required fifty push-ups without making a sound. For Felix who spent six months in the island training in the gym each day, this was merely a warm-up. However, for those juniors who probably never wore their training outfit, since the moment they began their mission, this was pure hell. The family took into consideration their body's long inactivity and lowered the fitness training to the bare minimum. This helped Felix breeze through it with ease. His cousins just gazed in his direction with envious looks, wishing to trade their trashy stamina, that couldn't even let them finish twenty push-ups properly, with his. Olivia stood next to him, staring in wonder at his endless stamina. She couldn't help but ask with admiration. Felix, how did manage to build such good endurance? I have been training two times a week to keep myself always in shape, but my endurance did not improve much. I always get easily tired. Felix froze with his hands extended straight and stared at her with a serious expression. 
Olivia gulped at his solemn look, expecting to hear his secret. Eager, her ears wiggled slightly. Too bad, she forgot she was dealing with Felix. Isn't obvious? How could you have the same vigor as I, with your tiny lungs? You probably have difficulty even breathing normally. Furious at being played like this, Olivia stomped his head with her leg, while huffing, you promised you will stop bullying me. This is your punishment for lying. Felix didn't even get a chance to feel smug about his prank before his face got planted on the gym floor, what the fuck, did she really change that much? To actually retaliate and dare beat me up. It seems that little Ollie is serious in showcasing to everyone that she is not an easy target, well might as well assist her. He grinned cunningly, unnoticed by anyone. Ow wow. My face, you broke my nose, Olivia. How can you be this brutal? I was just teasing you like always. Felix cried out loud pitifully while covering his nose with both of his hands. He sent a wink at the dumbfounded Olivia, who thought her leg strength couldn't even harm a fly. Don't even mention breaking someone's nose. Thrilled and excited at this turn of events, the juniors gloated at Felix who was whining on the floor. They never thought that Olivia, the sweetest flower in the family to actually hit someone. But goddamn, if it didn't feel good to see that devil on the ground like that. Good job Olivia, always hit him back if he bullies you. That's right, you don't have to fear him, as he won't dare to hit you, or else Elder Robert will cut his balls. I never thought I would see her hit someone in my life honestly. Same, she always got protected by seniors or us when she got bullied. That's why I guess, let's cheer for her, so she won't forget this moment. No other cousins were not cheap in their cheers and applause, as they kept chanting her name with genuine smiles. Olivia was the only cousin who had a friendly relationship with everyone. Her social influence was quite high to the point, if she made a request no one would say no to her face. Yet, she had no idea about any of this, as she never requested anything in her life. That why, she was quite shy about thanking Felix for his promise. She was not used to such a thing. Dumbstruck, Olivia stood with parted lips and wide eyes at this sight. She didn't understand how her unconscious stomp would turn things this way. She peeked at Felix, the propagator of this entire charade, and saw that he was scratching his nose with a finger. Felix gave her thumbs up to encourage her, after noticing her peeking at him. Olivia felt her heart warm up at this sight. She figured out easily that Felix was trying to help her build an adult image. Just like she always wanted but never could. She had no idea how to do so properly. It's not like she could point her finger at someone and order him to treat her like an adult. If she went forward and did that with her short height and cute face, her image would instantly get fixed as being childish forever. So, she really appreciated this opportunity and decided to play along with Felix. Assertive, she puffed out her chest, she had one in her point of view, and placed her little feet on Felix's back like a champion. I will not let you or anyone else to bully or tease me like a child. If anyone did so, I don't mind breaking his nose as well. Understood? Afraid and respectful, Felix replied loud and clear, Yes big sister Olivia, I will not bully you anymore. It would be fine and dandy, if he wasn't making funny faces in the process, at Olivia to make her laugh and break out of character. Olivia tried her best to hold her laughter while looking at his retarded face. Good, this is the last time. Now scram to your room. She ordered with a forced rigid face. Felix understood her cue and escaped towards the elevator while holding his nose. The moment he left the gym, the juniors broke into loud cheers after Olivia exiled the devil who traumatized them. They grouped around Olivia and lifted her small body, throwing her in the air, like a bag of potato chips. Felix was currently in his room finishing the leftover push-ups. I hope that was enough to headstart her image reform. Otherwise, when she visits the UVR, she will be bullied to death. After finishing the last push-up, he took his phone and called his grandfather. What do you want rascal? I will finish the training exercises in my room since I was kicked out by boss Olivia. Felix chuckled. Ha ha, boss Olivia. If she heard you say it, she won't be able to sleep tonight properly. Go ahead, you can do them in your room every day, but use the treadmill for running. Fuck. Got to go, Olivia just vomited over everyone's head after being thrown in the air like a plaything. He immediately hanged up and announced through his microphone. 
you rascals, go clean yourself up, and start training properly. And someone takes Olivia to the nursing room, she does not look all right. Now move. Felix held his waist as he laughed out loud. He couldn't help but do so after imagining Olivia vomiting her breakfast from the sky on everyone's heads, like rain from above. Now they will truly fear you little Ollie. Half an hour later. Felix lay on the bed with turned on a laptop on his stomach, wearing cozy pajamas. He already finished all of his exercises and showered properly. Without further ado, he clicked on the email the family sent, planning to check on the merit system and its shop. In his previous life, he could only watch those resources pass by him, without being able to hold them. All of the points he collected were used to secure two pain relief potions. It was not like he was richer than other juniors, rather, they focused on other resources ignoring those potions, as they had no idea how important shaving 20% duration off their awakening. They were too consumed with other cool-looking items and substances. Felix himself wanted to buy them as well, but each time he tried to sew, he ended finding out-of-stock written on the shop. So he could only use his points for those two potions. Thank God for that. After clicking the family email, he ignored the merit system explanation and scrolled down until he saw a link to a website. Felix clicked on it and was transferred into a new tab. The connection was quite fast, as the page load instantly, displaying a shop with items, each with their price tag on and the number of quantity on its stock. Good, nothing has changed. The prices are still the same. He kept scrolling down the item list while nodding his head from time to time at their cheap prices. Hell, pain relief potion was being sold outside for 10,000 SC, while here Felix could obtain it by trading 10,000 merits. A two week of training without missing a single exercise. But those were not his aim. He would leave them to his cousins to use. What he really wanted were the elemental stones. So he could start working on increasing his poison affinity to peak ASAP. It's time to put that lazy bum to work. Otherwise, she will feel too comfortable in my consciousness. Vexed, he rubbed his temples, expecting a headache at the thought of Asna, that freeloader who only wants to do the minimum possible effort to help him in his path. Chapter 43 Just forget it I will call for her when I awaken, Felix understood clearly that even if he bought the stones now, he wouldn't be able to use them without having at least 1% beast bloodline merged with him. Since humans couldn't absorb the elements from stones like beasts. Therefore, the only thing he should do was to hoard as much of them as possible, until the day he awakens. He planned to only rely on merits to do so, as for him upcoming 80 million SC, that was for buying the highest bloodline tier possible. Plus the resources needed for his integration. Helpless and dejected, he sighed over his miserable fate of living as poor pauper no matter how much he earned. But, it was his decision to only buy the best for his future bloodline path. No one forced him to do so. He stopped mulling about those negative ideas and pressed on elemental stones button, planning to check the price of poison stones. Forward slash forward slash firestone, low grade 100 MP lightning stone, low grade 100 MP ice stone, low grade 200 MP poison stone, low grade 200 MP. Shadow stone, low grade 200 MP forward slash forward slash a long list having tens of elemental stones with their merit prices was displayed before Felix. As seen from the list, the prices between common grade elements and uncommon were double the amount. This should highlight the fact that elemental stones prices were proponent to their difficulty in finding them. After checking the poison stone price, he turned off the laptop and glanced at his bracelet. HM, two hours left. Whatever it's better to arrive early. Felix put the laptop next to him and lay on the bed comfortably. He then called in his mind, Queen AI. Ten seconds later he was back, at the same place and position in the UVR. He started to lick the ice cream he had before he logged out with enjoyment, I forgot I had this. What a bonus, he stood up and called for a cab, planning to head towards the SG company branch, which handled all the ticket prices in the kingdom. Ten minutes later, he bypassed the queue that stretched to infinity by paying 500 SC and entered the hexagon-shaped building that was surrounded by ten towers standing upright, towering over the rest of the structures in the city. Those towers each designed with a unique form that represents the architecture of ten different races. The majority of commoners believed that those races were the strongest ones within the alliance. 
Felix went straight to the counter and gave the game number ID to the employee, who took it gladly and scanned it. Sir, based on the game ID, you want to watch live the 500-player battle royal. May I ask which ticket you want to buy, is it normal, important, VIP, VVIP ticket? Give me a normal ticket. The counter employee, who thought he was dealing with an important person after seeing him pay to bypass the queue, instantly cringed. Yes sir that will cost 2000 CS, since this is a battle royal at the weekend, and the tickets are being snatched each minute. The cost can only double to slow it down. Felix did not replay, he just placed his bracelet in the scanner, transferring the payment. After seeing the payment was successful, the employee handed him a digital ticket without nonsense. Felix scanned the ticket with his bracelet and threw it in the garbage can. He didn't worry about others using it, as the seat's unique number ID had been registered in his bracelet. One hour and a half later, Felix was wearing a cheering a red finger in his hand, two beer cans glued to a cap placed on his head, with two white tubes dangling near his mouth. Solid wall, fuck them up for this daddy. He cheered with his hands raised in the air like a fanboy, just like the millions of fans, seating in a huge arena placed in the air above a battleground. Plus, to enhance the audience's visibility even further, the arena seating chairs were stacked near each other shaping an enormous circle, without neither walls nor floor underneath to block their vision of what was happening inside the battleground. Since they were in midair, anyone who was not able to see details properly, could either use the large screen, which was hanged above them, showing each player with the highest quality possible. Or they could spend some coins and purchase vision and hearing enhancement mechanisms that allow anyone to zoom in, just like a camera, thus not missing any amazing fight scenes or dramatic speeches during them. Ladies and gentlemen, I Titus your host and MC for the evening will accompany you through this wild game that will have only one player alive from 500. So make some noise to support your fighter. The MC Titus shouted in his microphone, as he made an epic entrance of falling from the sky until he slammed into the ground next to the players. The entire arena rumbled, as each spectator had their mouths between their hands, yelling different names of players. Some of them were their lovers, husbands, disciples, sons or daughters, or simply just a player they placed their bet on like Felix. This was how the individual supremacy games were like. Everyone was representing himself, not his planet, clan, company, or race. Good, now just like always the first 30 minutes before each game is for interviews to see what our lovely participants have to say, and what are their goals and wishes. The MC Titus pointed his golden microphone in direction of the players. This was the main reason why he bothered to fall from his commentary platform, near them in the first place. Enthusiastic, he approached an eerie thin man with four long fangs protruding out of his mouth. He placed his microphone in his face and asked. You good sir, what made you decide to participate in this savage 1 vs 500 games, knowingly that you might not see tomorrow? With a hint of lounging in his eyes, the eerie man caught the microphone and said, I wish to obtain a legendary tier 3 bloodline, and only games that have a large number of players can provide this wish for me after I win. Good, I see that you are peak stage 1 bloodliner. You probably were waiting for this opportunity, to win the best ranked bloodline in tier 3. What a marvellous courage and bravery. I wish you good luck emerging victorious. The MC patted his shoulder with encouragement and moved on to his next prey. In his eyes, it was like a free real estate with those 500 players spread all around him. Soon, a golden MIC was shoved in the face of a beautiful lady with a small rainbow-coloured peacock tail. What about you gorgeous, what do you desire after you win? I want to rejoin the Rainbow Peacock Clan, and to do so, I need to win this and ask my wish to be fulfilled as a winning a prize. Your wish shall be granted if you win. This is an undeniable truth in the SGA, and the clan won't dare refuse and go against the rules of the Alliance. So concentrate only on emerging as the last surviving player in the game. The MC spoke with unadulterated certainty. He was not afraid that his words would bite him in the ass later. Nervous yet excited, the players around them couldn't help but clench their fists tightly, remembering the reason and the wish they seek after emerging as a champion. It might sound nice and dandy, but those wishes were limited to the bloodliner stage. The SGA wouldn't leave such a loophole in the open, where players asking for tier 5 bloodline or some expensive resources, which they couldn't even use with their current strength. A player could only ask what he truly really needs. Just like the eerie four-fang players. 
He was a peak stage 1 bloodliner, but he wished for legendary tier 3 beast. The alliance would fulfill his wish even though the prize outranked him since he truly was planning to use it to break through the next stage. But the main reason the alliance would fulfill his wish in the first place was because this game prize pool had it. As each game type had a set of prizes pool that no one could go above. Such as, this game mode was 500 player battle royal. A game where only death or emerging as the last survivor was allowed, nothing more or nothing less. This meant the danger and risk level were vastly different than other game modes where a player could just simply loss, and try again in a different game. Thus the prize pool had even legendary rank bloodline, something that could only be bought in auctions with outrageous prices. This way, a rewarding system was created that hoped to fulfill everyone's desires and requests, as long as they were within the reach of the player and the limits of the prize pool. Otherwise, the alliance had the right to refuse it and ask for another one. If a player didn't understand his place and kept asking for things he couldn't use, the alliance wouldn't hesitate to blacklist him for eternity. This was why no one dared to ask for outrageous things anymore, as being blacklisted from the games where you could fulfill your wishes was a fate worse than death. Especially for the commoners bloodliners. Chapter 44 Soon, the half-hour designed for interviews had passed swiftly, as the MC interviewed as many players as the duration allowed him to. All right ladies and gentlemen, only 30 seconds is left before the game officially begins. I ask all of you to count down with me after we reach 10 seconds. Passionate, the MC bent backward with the microphone held close to his lips. Saliva and spit stained the golden MIC. Yet, he didn't care about his image neither did the audience. They simply lifted their heads and paid attention to the countdown on the large screen. This countdown process was one of their favorite segments in the games, as it made them feel like they were part of the game. It wasn't long before the countdown hit 10 seconds. Immediately after, the quiet arena roared, resembling a beast waking up from its slumber. The crowd counted backward, creating an unswerving harmony. 10, 9, 8. 3, 2, 1. Start. The MC spread his arms wide as he floated rapidly towards his platform. Meanwhile, the players were teleported randomly in a massive battleground that had the same size as Earthling's Hawaii Island. The map was extremely diverse when it came to the environment, as there were deserts, jungles, lakes, rivers, mountains, volcanoes, and even night time. It was created as such to support each player element, since if the entire map was based on a jungle. All plant, earth, wood, and nature elementalists were going to have a blast in comparison to the rest. The MC Titus rested a hand on his chin, as he watched in concentration more than 500 small invisible holograms, showcasing each player. His eyes drifted rapidly from one screen to another without a single blink in between. Such a difficult task was being handled easily by him. For one to apply to an MC job in the SG, he had to have at minimum, this unique multitask talent. Otherwise, the application wouldn't even be received properly. Delighted, his eyes brightened up, as he noticed a battle was about to begin. We got our first battle my dear audience, let us watch it together. He slid the small screen to the left using his index finger. Simultaneously, the large screen displayed the battle he just mentioned. Felix didn't bother to lift his head and glance at the heated ongoing battle between three players. He simply kept his eyes fixed on Solid Wall, who was currently running towards the very edge of the map. Something only idiots would do since this game mode was using a firestorm to push the players near the middle of the map. Regardless, Solid Wall didn't show a hint of insanity as he kept running towards his doom. His face was rough like a rock with deadish grey eyes, which seemed lifeless. Yet, nothing could hide that glint of light within, flicking like a candle that was about to extinguish. Elated, Felix grinned and clapped his hands at this sight. He knew that his bet was secured. He couldn't help but grin foolishly at the incoming 80 million SC, GOOO. Wally, this is yours to win. The spectators around him merely gave him a side glance and ignored him. They had their own players to cheer. Twenty minutes passed by, as the players kept dying like flies. Every battle ended up with only two results. A player either survives the battle, or everyone dies. There was absolutely no mercy, as players couldn't afford to have it in this game mode. So far, more than 90 players were turned into corpses, here and in real life as well. 
yet this staggering amount was before the map even forced them to gather in the middle. However, that didn't last for long, as a noisy sound went off abruptly on the battleground. It resembled an air raid alarm, tiring. Tiring the MC and the audience knew exactly what that sound meant, as they were staring live at the giant firestorm, shrinking in a wide circle around the edges of the island. Its speed was quite slow though, as even a commoner could outrun it. But that was understandable since the entire reason for its existence was to pressure the players to fight, not to flat out kill them. If it wasn't for this, Solid Wall wouldn't even have the thought of implementing his plan. The MC jerked his head in direction of the players near the edges, who were running for their lives away from the storm. He clicked his tongue at their plan of avoiding fights as much as possible by hiding near the edges. Only moving when the storm forced them to fucking donkeys. His scornful eyes soon were replaced with joy after seeing an ongoing battle in the middle of an escapade. He focused the camera on it and ignored the edges, which were getting empty each second, am I really going to do this, and even if I succeed by some miracle, would the SGA allow such a win? Wally wasn't able to sustain his expressionless face for long. As now, he was biting his nails with nervousness and a hint of dread written all over his face. Who could blame him though? He was planning to stay within the firestorm until he gets declared as the last survivor. If he told anyone of his plan, they would piss their pants from laughter. Survive until declared as champion? What kind of sick joke was this? Don't even mention surviving for hours within the storm, just ten seconds and everyone would kneel in worship. But Solid Wall wasn't trying to do this by relying only on bravery and courage. He didn't lack common sense. He understood thoroughly that only his epic tier 2 Galapagos tortoise bloodline was able to provide him a chance to implement his plan, however, that was the only thing it would provide him, a chance. As for the hellish agony of his body getting burned to crisp and then recovered to peak, using the passive ability asterisk fast rejuvenation asterisk, would be felt continuously until he either dies or the game ends. The only one who understood Wally's upcoming agony was Felix himself as his ass was blasted to flames by Asna's shameless technique before. The only difference was that Felix felt burnt in one place, while Wally was going to feel it through his entire body. Not a single part would survive the firestorm attacks. From his brain to his balls everything was on the path of getting frayed then recovered to get frayed yet again. I think it is better to just fight like everyone else. At least if I won no one will say anything, Wally's breaths quickened as he stood up, planning to step away from the storm. He couldn't help but have second thoughts on his plan. No one would blame him, neither would hate him for it, except for one of course. Scared shitless at this horrifying sight, Felix spew the beer that he was drinking in celebration, all over the faces of those in front of him. Yet, he didn't care, neither bothered to explain himself. He simply pointed at the storm behind Wally with bloodshed eyes. What the fuck are you doing Wally? Get back and finish your plan. You will screw me over I tell you. The spectators didn't even complain about their faces getting dirted by the beer. They simply distanced themselves from this madman, not wanting anything to do with him. While Felix was having suicidal thoughts after realizing that he was on the verge of losing 8 million SC, Solid Wall walked forward step by step with thoughts messing up his mind. He wanted to speed up and run away from the storm that was merely tens of meters behind him, but his legs weren't responding. Soon he gave up, accepting his destiny and sat back with a determined expression and eyes gleaming with lounging, for myself, for my family. I have to win this game no matter what. Pain is only momentary, but my mother's smile is everlasting. That was the last thought he had before he got engulfed by the storm. No one saw what happened or bothered looking at his direction. The tens of battles happening around the map captured their attention. No one was bored enough to waste his expensive ticket and search for someone who was within the storm. The only person who was watching the birth of a legend was Felix, who was clapping his hands with a genuine smile and clear admiration on his eyes. Shivers always accompanied him, no matter how many times he watched the replay of Wally getting embraced by the storm in his previous life. Now, those shivers of admiration and fascination hit on another level after seeing it live. The firestorm kept shrinking the circle every 20 minutes forcing the players to create alliances and partnerships to protect themselves within a group. It was always better to move in a herd. Yet, those alliances didn't even last for long before they got broken by a member's sudden betrayal. 
the spectators whether watching live or on stream, cheered at those dramatic betrayals. There was nothing more enjoyable than seeing two partners going through life and death situations, but in the end, betray each other for the championship. Regardless of what was happening in the middle of the map, no one gave a crap about a small corner within the storm, where a man sat on the ground, clenching his jaw in anguish. Only Felix kept his eyes on him. Two hours later. The game reached its climax, as only two players were left in a small-sized ring, with nowhere to retreat, or elemental energy to go all out. Levi, just give up. You can't win against me no matter what you do. A man with one arm and blooded face gave a smug smile towards another man with an even worse injury than him. In his eyes, he already won the battle. Cough, if there was a way to give up, there won't be forty bodies laid around us right now Joshua. With a hand clutched on his chest, Levi tried his best to put pressure on the glaring hole near his heart. However, the blood kept streaming down his chest unhindered. He took a deep breath and lifted a rock in his hand. Yet, even the act itself caused him to wince in pain. But he could only suck it up and grip the rock even tighter. This was it. There was only one path forward and that was to smash that smug smile off Joshua. This is for Miss Mercy. He dashed forward, uncaring about the scornful look he was receiving. Look at you, can't even use one ability, and still want to fight. What a joke, just die already. Joshua snickered and pointed his finger that was half broken at Levi and said softly asterisk wind string star. A small tornado appeared on his finger and swiftly started to revolve and condense until it turned into string that was long and sharp, vibrating each time the broken finger trembled. Goodbye Levi, it was a good partnership between us. Levi dropped the rock on the ground and stood with a horrified expression. Impossible, your left arm was cleaved because you did not have any energy left to defend. His brain was pierced from the asterisk wind string asterisk, leaving a small bullet hole in his forehead. The poor lad didn't even manage to finish saying his final words. Exhilarated, Joshua clutched his hand into a fist and raised it above his head in celebration. Finally, my wish can come true and have my revenge. How long have I waited for this day? Tears mixed with blood, streaked on his cheeks and down his chin. I feel sorry for ruining your bright future Joshua, but it is time to send you off. A chilling whisper penetrated Joshua's soul. Yet, before he could even comprehend what happened, he saw his vision rolling in the sky. Thud the sound of his cleaved head landing on the ground resounded in the area. Joshua's eyes landed on the previous penetrated body of Levi that was drifting in the air, as it broke off into tiny sand particles, sand element active ability asterisk sand mimicry asterisk, you were a dual elementalist all along with Levi. Well played. Well play. That was that last thought that coursed through his brain. Exhausted, Levi collapsed into the ground. Thank God I listened to my master advice and refrained from using sand mimicry until the last moment, if not I would have been dead by now, he sighed in relief and suddenly gave a warm smile as he glimpsed at the blue ring on his hand. Master, I can finally get you a life extension substance that can add at least 2000 years. It should be enough time until you find a healing fairy to treat you fully from your hidden injuries, unfortunately, his daydream was shattered, as an alarm resonated through the whole battleground faithfully, tiring, tiring. The firestorm was moving again. Chapter 45 Dumbfounded and confused, the MC and the spectators stared wide-eyed at the shrinking storm. They were just celebrating and chanting Levi's name over securing the championship with a marvelous play. Yet, that alarm tied their tongues, leaving them stunned not knowing what to do anymore. Their confusion was understandable, as battle royals were supposed to end immediately after one player emerges as the last survivor. Yet, this was exactly the case, but the storm didn't stop its activities, why the hell is it still active? Our champion is about to get killed. Muddled and mortified about the entire situation, the MC Titus felt his heart sink at the thought of having a battle royal without a winner. If it happened, the game would turn into the greatest joke in the SG, and as its MC and judge, this humiliation would accompany him through his entire life and afterlife. He understood clearly that his career was currently hanging on a thin line. He must find the anomaly, which was causing this fucked up situation to save it. Without delaying any further, he put his entire focus on the 500 small screens. His eyes darted from one to another, examining the corpses of the players thoroughly before moving to the next. 
he already had some theories on his mind. He believed that a player was using asterisk fake death asterisk passive in those bodies around Levi. This must be it. Otherwise, the only two options left were either someone was still alive within the storm, or the game was bugged somehow. If the second option defied common sense then the SG having a bug was beyond absurdity. The SG never had a bug or an issue happening in a game throughout the million years of its existence. The Queen made sure everything was running smoothly both in the UVR and the SG. Her processing power was no joke, as it was only below the Empress of the Metal Race herself. The only things, which bypassed the Queen's supervision, were the loopholes within the rules. But even those get patched instantly by her. Titus soon finished searching every corpse that was still inside the circle. His eyes which were focused suddenly dimmed a bit, as he found that all of those players were truly dead. He lay on the chair with an unfocused gaze, aiming at the sky. He didn't plan to continue his search, as by the time he finishes Levi would be dead. I can't believe I would actually use it. Titus's shoulders slumped as he eyed his bracelet with a humiliated and desperate expression, Queen, please show me the players with signs of life. He gritted his teeth and requested the help of the Queen. If other MCS saw him do so, they would make sure to shame him in public. For a judge and MC to actually request the help of a third party in a game under his rule was the greatest humiliation in their career, but, Titus understood that circumstances and time were stacked against him. So, he chose the lesser evil. At least, he would keep his job. The Queen faithfully marked two small screens with a red X in the middle. Titus ignored Levi's screen and laid his eyes on the other, impossible, no one can stay alive inside the firestorm for that long. So what the hell am I watching now? Stupefied and shocked, he abruptly stood up from his chair. This action caused his knee to collide with the desk. Yet, he didn't wince or flinch from the pain, as he was too engrossed, watching a player lying within the storm at the very edge of the map, twitching from time to time. If it wasn't for those twitches, he honestly would have thought that the queen was pulling his leg. Suddenly, he broke off from his daze and swiftly pinched the screen to enlarge it. He then dragged his finger to the left. Simultaneously, the screen displayed past events rapidly, this is it. He lifted his finger, and clicked pause on the screen that was displaying the very beginning of the game when everyone had just got randomly teleported. Titus decided to showcase the events that transpired on the large screen to calm the audience who were booing and cursing with middle fingers, and thumbs down at his inactivity. Who would blame them? Levi their champion was constantly screaming and begging with a frightened expression for the MC to get him out of the battleground. He was truly on the verge of insanity as he kept eyeing the storm approaching him from all corners unhurried. From heaven to hell in a blink of an eye, this was Levi's current situation. Too bad, no one could rescue him, as the game was not over yet. Ladies and gentlemen, I apologize for the inconvenience. But, if you want to understand why the game is still not over yet, you should watch this replay with me. The moment the large screen displayed solid wall in all of his glory running like a madman towards the storm, the audience quietened down and paid close attention to him. Titus skipped the first 20 minutes of the game, as nothing much happened to Wally by then. He continued the replay only after the first alarm. That's when the fun truly began. Shocked and honestly creeped out, the MC and the audience watched with unblinking bulging eyes, the entire process of Wally getting burned to crisp, then recovering until he was solid again. This process kept repeating again and again and again, they neither got tired nor bored, they simply watched his never-ending cycle of torture. At this point, no one cared about Levi who was burning within the storm with indignation and howling with a hoarse voice from agony. The poor lad didn't survive even five seconds before his body turned into ash, drifting in the air like his asterisk and mimicry asterisk ability. This silence appreciation continued for over two hours until the game automatic declaration resounded in the battleground. Congratulation to player number 345 for being the last survivor. By the laws given to me from SGA, I hereby declare you as the champion in this game. After hearing the monotonous voice of the queen, the MC and the crowd woke up from their engrossment and traded glances between each other in silence and amazement. The only one who was still cheering was Felix, who didn't stop making his voice heard for the entire duration. After all, he just won 80 million SC thanks to Wally, the least thing he could do was cheer him on. Before long, the spectators began to clap their hands, one by one, 
creating a gradual wave of applause that shook the entire arena to its core. Yet, that was not all, they stood in ovation and respect for Wally, who was lying on the ground unmoving. Probably passed out. Wally you machinist, only you can survive such an experience. Wally please wake up, fuck me sideways, I never thought I would cry during a game. Wally. Wally. Wally, excited and filled with fervor, the spectators used their loudest voices to chant Wally's name, hoping that he might wake up and share this glorious moment with them. Alas, Wally was lying like a log, unresponsive to anything. If it wasn't for his chest moving up and down in a shallow manner, they would have assumed that he died as well. This is one of the greatest moments of my life. I never knew that an already heated 500-player battle royal could get any more thrilling. Titus held his MIC an inch away from his mouth and said with spit flying everywhere, Ladies and gentlemen, we are all in luck of being part of this historical moment that showcases the fortitude and determination that we human race take, pride in. With eyes shining with devotion and ardent, he thrust his fist in the air and said, We strive with the best of our abilities toward our goals and dreams. This is how we reached here and this how it is always going to be for the human race. Suddenly, he jumped from the commentary platform and nosedived downwards, planning to land near Wally, smash. His landing sent a shock wave, followed by a cloud of dust. A moment after, he walked out of it and approached Wally step by step, while pointing his finger at him with passionate expression. I hereby declare Solid Wall as the MVP of this year's SG Gold Ranked Games. This is my once in a lifetime nomination, and I hope the title can help him etch his name in the Great Hall of Fame with other MVPs of the Supremacy Games. Just like it was planned as so, the moment he finished his declaration, he reached the side of Wally. Titus crouched next to him and proclaimed as loud as possible. Give your loudest cheers for your champion. Felix didn't stick around to cheer with the rest. His voice already went hoarse. Plus, the main protagonist of the game was in a deep coma, unresponsive to their cheers. So there was no reason for him to remain, now that's what a true MVP title worthy player looks like. He smiled, as he left the teleportation circle swiftly. This was the reason why this game became a viral sensation throughout the entire UVR, even to the point where news of it was still being shown for more than 10 years. Felix watched the replay of this game, in a compilation video online, showcasing the top 10 most unorthodox wins in a decade. From first glance, his eyes were moved by Wally's determination for his cause. He couldn't help but link his struggle in his life with Wally's. Twenty years, twenty whole years of constant bullying from everyone in the clan he was in, before he successfully broke through stage three of replacement, only then, did he earn a solid footing in the clan. Enough, let's not visit those ruthless days. This is a new life and a new me. I won't chase for revenge on those who harmed me, his eyes suddenly turned frigid, scaring the shit out of the cab driver who was peeking at him from the mirror. However, if I saw their faces in front of me, don't blame me for making you eat shit as well. Ten minutes later. He entered the gambling den, which was currently filled with people curses after losing their fortunes in the 500-player brother. No one expected such a twist to happen. While Solid Wall had won in 10 ratings, he was still not favored as Levi, Joshua, and more famous players who had won in 3 or 1 in 1, 5 ratings. Felix ignored those gamblers and went straight to the counter. He placed his bracelet in the scanning device, whoosh, 80, 400, 500 SC has been successfully transferred to your bank account. Felix read the notification on his bracelet screen and left the den. His face didn't show a single hint of excitement. He was not a retard to do so near those angry mobs, which were merely looking for someone to vent their anger on, now I have the capital, it is time for some shopping spree, immediately after he stepped outside the den, a wide grin replaced his indifferent expression. It's time to buy a bloodline. Chapter 46 Inside the cab that was heading towards the bloodline market, Felix rested his hand under his chin, as he stared at the view outside absent-mindedly. He was thinking of the best way possible to spend his newly obtained capital. He first decided that 10 million SC would be used as capital for future bets. Meanwhile, the remaining 70 million would be spent on the tier for bloodline. Hopefully, an epic ranked one. As for the leftover coins, he planned to use them as payment for the resources he pre-purchased yesterday. Seven minutes later. He entered the public bloodline market that was packed with rowdy people just like ever. 
Felix kept walking step by step while browsing the stalls and shops. But he never bought a thing, he just marked the items which pleased him and left them be. He couldn't afford to waste even a single coin from his bloodline capital. Seventy million might sound a lot, but Felix knew that it wasn't enough to even buy him a rare tier 5 bloodline. Don't even mention tier 6 and 7. However, he was satisfied with tier 4 for now. At least, his abilities would be much stronger than his peers in the same realm. After half an hour of constant browsing, Felix reached a tight well-lighted alley. He had been walking before towards this specific alley. His browsing and marking were merely a side activity he did on the way. Hopefully, that greedy bastard is still open at this time, irked, Felix spat on the floor and entered the alley. The image of the shop owner he was on his way to visit ruined his day instantly. Alas, he could only suck it up and tread through the maze-like alleys. After a while, he stopped in front of a clean-looking brick wall with frowned eyebrows. Seconds passed by and Felix just stood frozen in front of it, fuck me, just do it and get it over with. His frowned eyebrows eased up a bit. He let out a long despairing sigh and without warning, he headbutted the brick wall three times and called out loud while gritting his teeth. Luby the most handsome male in the universe is not a greedy person. I came to buy and not to insult. Felix backed away from the wall and massaged his red forehead that had throbbing veins. Well, anyone would be angered if had to say such embarrassing hidden code to access the shop. A few moments later, the brick wall vibrated, like it was being assaulted by an earthquake. This caused fissures to course through it, drawing an image of a goblin head. Suddenly, the eyes of the goblin materialized and gazed at Felix with a dreadful look. Felix rolled his eyes at this sight and ignored that garbage attempt of scaring him. Kid, who sent you here? I only deal with regulars and for you to know the secret method to enter my shop, you either must have received a referral, or a spy sent by one of my rivals, so out with it. Why you are here? A frightful husky voice echoed three times in the tight alley. Felix unbothered by it, extended his middle finger towards the image, and said, Greedy dog are you still not opening up after I said that embarrassing passcode? He threatened, if you don't let me enter in three seconds, I will make sure to tell all your rivals the passcode. He smirked, good luck calling your regulars to tell them that you upgraded your shameful code to a better version of it. I bet they would love it. Cough, handsome mister, no need to be so mean. Come, come, I was just playing with you. Threats are unnecessary. The horrifying husky voice immediately changed into a pleasing fawning one. Felix sneered and dashed straight into the brick wall, unworried about getting harmed. The instant he did so the promised sound of the collision did not occur, but only water ripples were left on the surface of the wall. Seconds later, it got hardened back to its original state. The fissures withdrew like snakes entering their holes, leaving the brick wall with a brand new outlook. Nostalgic, Felix nodded his head in appreciation at the massive interior of the shop that was packed with rows upon rows of shelves, each with plenty of unique items. Yet, the majority of them were bottles filled with different liquids. Some of those bottles were small, while some were as big as a 5-litre water bottle. Felix couldn't help but chuckle after seeing small horned elves not reaching even his knees running back and forth in the empty shop like they were extremely busy. What are you laughing at kid? You never saw a successful business before? A short blue-skinned goblin with long dropped ears, big wide nose, and toothless narrow mouth, stood in front of Felix and inspected him with interest using his left eye, as his right one was hollow inside. Felix crouched down until he was face to face with the blue-skinned goblin and scoffed in his face. Greedy Luby, how dare you have the face to call this desolate shop, successful? It seems like your brazen prices were about to force you to shut down. Unbothered by his mocking tone, Luby shrugged his shoulders with his hands spread wide and smiled politely. Dear unknown guest, I did not invite you here to buy from me. It was you who knocked on my doorstep without even a referral letter. He extended his thin blue finger and added, plus, you came to purchase my items knowingly they are overpriced. Mind telling me why is that, or should I tell you myself? Felix's eyelids couldn't help but twitch at this bastard counterattack. But he was not planning to brood over this matter forever. The only reason he mocked Luby was to vent some of his anger at being required to use that humiliating passcode. All right Luby enough humble bragging, and remove that fake polite smile. Felix went straight to business. 
I came here to buy an epic tier 4 poison bloodline. Go bring me all the stock you have, and also bring rare ranks as well. Luby's gentleman manners immediately were thrown in the sous, as he licked his lips like a vampire ready to devour all of Felix's hard-earned coins. He didn't have greedy Luby as a nickname for no reason. Felix's shoulders couldn't help but tense at this sight. He knew that he needs to bring his, a, uh, game during the negotiation. Otherwise, he would leave the shop but naked, without a single dim in his account. Give me five minutes and all my stock will be in front of you. Luby rubbed his hands together and added while eyeing the shelves, meanwhile you can browse my bloodline item collection. You might find something that pleases you. Without waiting for Felix's response, he swiftly bolted towards the back of the shop, while calling for the little cute deer elves to follow him. Felix didn't need Luby's reminder, as he was planning to examine those items in the first place. He walked near the shelves while examining the items one by one. He kept commentating on the ones he found interesting. A ho? A grey keeper bear claw that can be merged with an arm and used to increase the power of claw abilities. Not bad. He nodded, as he held a sharp-looking grey claw. Works best if the bloodline integrated with was the keeper bear itself. Whoa, that greedy dog actually got hold of this. What a lucky bastard. If he sold it to a desperate person, he might rip him off with double to triple the price. Felix exclaimed as he appraised with wide eyes, a unique-looking penis that was constantly changing its size and shape, based on the thoughts of the holder. One can easily infer how well-received this item would be for men. Three minutes later, Luby came back holding four bloodline bottles, two in each hand, while his minions each held one bottle. Dear customer, my entire poison stock is here. Luby put the bottles on a desk and said with a solemn tone, please take your time in your choice. I don't mind waiting. Just make sure that the bloodline you choose is perfect for your future path. Luby's warning was genuine, as every time a young lad paid a visit to his shop, he only leaves after buying the most expensive bloodline there was in the shop. Not caring if the beast he picked had a good rapport with him. Their ignorance resulted in them having at least their strength lowered by 30%. The synergy between the bloodline and the host must never be disparaged, as each beast had abilities specifically made for a unique fighting style. Some beasts preferred using their body parts as their main source of power, while their element provided assistance. While some were the total opposite, as they relied heavily on their elemental abilities to fight their battles. Those beasts preferred keeping distance. Those young kids only realized this fact after the deed was already done. This led to only one result, and that was forcing them to hasten their integration to replace the bloodline, totally ignoring building a solid foundation. Felix knew all of this as well, thus Luby's advice meant nothing to him. But he still appreciated his warning. Thanks for the advice. But don't worry, I already know what I am doing. He smiled and requested, now can you clear the room for me, so I can focus on my choice please? Got it. Luby clapped his hands twice and went upstairs, followed by his minions, slam. Felix's focus was brought to the ten bottles before him after hearing the sound of the door gets closed. He held the first one and scanned it with his bracelet. Soon, all the details of it were shown as a hologram, forward slash forward slash bloodline name, 100-legged poisonous tarantula. Tier, for rank, rare passive abilities pool, asterisk paralyzed poison immunity asterisk, asterisk skin hardening asterisk, asterisk night vision asterisk, asterisk wall crawling asterisk, asterisk finger flexibility asterisk, etc. Active abilities pool, asterisk organic webbing shot asterisk, asterisk penetrative fingers asterisk. Asterisk sleep inducement bite asterisk, asterisk web cocoon seal asterisk, etc. History. The tarantula is a spider type beast that uses poison element and silk element. Its current habitat is rainforests in rainy Kindrian planet that is near the edges of the Andromeda galaxy. Forward slash forward slash Felix shook his head and closed the hologram. He was never a spider type lover. He preferred snakes and serpents beasts, just like in his previous life. He had a good rapport with them, and he wouldn't change the species, just because he had a fresh start. It was always better to learn from experience than to try new things all over again, wasting a ton of time just to be edgy. So, he excluded every bottle that had a bloodline of a different species, leaving only bottles that had snakes and serpents' bloodline on the table. As he read the details of each of those bloodlines, he kept shaking his head in disappointment over the current stock. 
Am I just unlucky to end up with this trashy stock or Luby lied and did not bring his best? Confused and disappointed, Felix tapped his finger on the table as he eyed the last bottle. He truly began to believe that Luby brought him a shitty stock because he was not a regular customer, sigh, I hope the last bottle is at least somewhat good. Felix already stopped thinking about buying the best. At this point, he just wanted something that fits him. He was not one of those bloodliners who chase after the perfect bloodline. Unlike them, Felix understood clearly that chasing after the perfect bloodline was the same as chasing after the perfect girl to marry, something that was clearly an illusion, oh ho ho. However, the moment he saw the details of the last bottle, his crooked vision about the perfect bloodline couldn't help but adjust a little. Just like love at first sight, he knew this was the bloodline he would awake with. Chapter 47 Forward slash forward slash bloodline name, Heavy Giant Anomamba. Tier, for rank, epic passive abilities pool, asterisk superhuman strength asterisk, asterisk mild poison resistance asterisk, asterisk infrared vision asterisk, asterisk skin shed asterisk, asterisk infection immunity asterisk, etc. Active abilities pool, asterisk venom spit asterisk, asterisk strangle asterisk, asterisk instant devour asterisk, asterisk tail lash asterisk. Asterisk toxic miasma asterisk, asterisk dizziness swamp asterisk, asterisk absolute defense asterisk, etc. History, the Anomamba is a serpent-type beast that uses poison element. Its current habitat is the Death Valleys on the planet Venusus. No more information has been obtained, forward slash forward slash this was it, the best current bloodline to awaken with since every better option was either too expensive for Felix, or not his type. As for the passive and active abilities pools, there were few low tier abilities, such as asterisk skin shed asterisk and asterisk venom spit star. But the majority was tier 4. So, it just depends on his luck to unlock them. Wholly satisfied, Felix put the bottle within the stock and picked a random epic rank bottle. Then with an elated voice, he called out loud, Luby comes here, I have made my choice. Slam. Luby smashed the door with his leg and bolted down the stairs with his little legs, not afraid of tripping. Meanwhile, the cute dear elves hugged the staircase metal bar and slid down rapidly, thump thump. Their plump bodies were hurled into a cushion right before the stairs. They truly prepared everything to rush downstairs. I am glad you fancied one of my bloodlines. Tell me which one is it so I can deliver it to you. Luby rubbed his hands with a wide grin, exposing his toothless mouth. This one, the Red Mother Centipede, an epic rank beast. Tell me its price first. I know that you add at least 30% extra on the market price of the bloodline. Felix's hand tightened on the bottle with a desperation on his eyes. Yet, in the blink of an eye, those low-key hints were gone just like magic. Out with it how much? He coughed. Luby with his experience did not miss such hints. But he said nothing about them, he just blinked at Felix with honest expression. Well, even though I add 30% extra, you do know that it is fully justifiable since my bottles always contain 75% or more bloodline essence of the beast. He gave a half shrug, but if you bought from other shops with the market price, don't blame me when you find the bottle you bought only had 10% essence. At that moment you won't have tears to cry over. His eyes turned stern real quick, as he advised him. Trust me on this one, it is never a good option to gamble with your bloodline path. Just pay extra and secure a safe path. Felix couldn't help but nod in affirmation. He knew that everything Luby just said was completely true, as not everyone was able to extract 75% plus bloodline essence from a beast. The only ones who were able to handle such a remarkable feat were top-notch professional extractors. An occupation worthy of respect and admiration as only the brightest and most intelligent humans could have a chance to work in that field. After all, the job relies on having a vast amount of knowledge about beasts' genes, habitat, family tree, and more of such deep detailed information. Because to extract bloodline essence that had the beast inherited power and abilities from its parents, one must first be able to locate and study them. Then seize those genes and put them in a bottle. The more experience and talent an extractor had, the more percentage he would be able to extract. If it wasn't for those talented people, the beast blood would simply appear as liquid-like in every species. It was only due to them that the term bloodline emerged in the first place. However, just like in every career, job, and occupation, there were always amateurs and stupid sheep, 
who had absolutely zero clues on what the fuck they were doing. Those amateurs were dominating this occupation with their massive numbers. They read a couple of studies here and there, do a little research and experiments for a couple of years, and then graduated with a degree in bloodline extraction. It would be all fine and dandy if it was just so. The real issue was their trash extraction percentage, not reaching even 20%. This meant that the bloodline would end up having 80% of its essence all wasted. The sad thing was that most hunters still hired them to do the deed on the beast they killed since they couldn't afford to hire a professional extractor. What's even more fucked up was that even if they hired them and managed to obtain 80% essence of the beast, who would trust their words and buy it from them when it was easy to fool the AP bracelet scanning feature? One just had to mix multiple essences in one bottle and voila, a fresh 80% plus essence was ready to be served, as a scam. Those bottles were as useless as a fart in a wind tunnel. No one could integrate with a mixed bloodline. That was just impossible, it was debated and tested before. After quite a lot of scams using this strategy, no one bothered to buy bottles, which claimed to have 75% plus essence without validating the seller's reputation first. That was the reason why Luby added 30% on the price. Because he guaranteed the bloodline that the shopper received was the real deal. He built this reputation over 50 years of hard work, and in this kind of business, reputation was everything. All right. Stop beating around the bush, just state your price. Hopefully, it is within my budget. Felix gripped his fist tightly and put it in his pocket. Innocent and sincere, Luby enlarged pupil stared at Felix right in the eyes, and just like a puppy said, 100 million SCN. Without even waiting for Luby to finish his sentence, Felix clutched his heart in anguish, as he stumbled a step back. His glass heart was shattered at the exorbitant price. Luby unbothered by Felix's act scratched his cheek and added, this is even with a 5% discount since you are shopping here for the first time. I'm really doing you a favor here kid. I should have expected this, but still your prices are really heart-wrenching. Felix inhaled a deep breath and put the bottle back on the table, and said with a reluctant expression. I apologize, but it seems that I am leaving empty-handed from your shop today. He shook his head, my budget is really not enough to close the gap. I guess I am not fated for Mother Centipede. Helpless and dejected, he sighed and turned around, walking towards the brick wall. However, before he took two steps, Luby lunged at his knee and clung on it with a forced smile. Now, now, we can always figure something out that benefits both of us. You just have to tell me your budget and I will see what I can do about it. I slaved myself for a couple of years, to collect 60 million SC to buy a bloodline worthy enough to integrate with. Now that I found it, my budget failed me. Felix lowered his head with slumped shoulders and said, so tell me what can you do to fix this? And just know 60 million is everything I have. I can't add a single coin. Luby's heart instantly sank, as he knew that this deal was a lost cause no matter what he said or did. It was impossible for him to reduce 40 million in one go. Even, if he removed the extra 20 million that was meant to rip Felix off and leave only the original 80 million, it wouldn't be much to buy his bloodline. Well, you are right. The gap is too large to close down, I can't do much about it. He pointed his finger at the bloodlines on the table and said with temptation, but there are still other bloodlines you can buy with 60 million. Just pick another one, and I will give you a great deal. But I don't want another one. I felt a connection to only Mother Centipede and nothing else moved me. Felix mercilessly hurled Luby towards the desk, like he was getting rid of his slipper, and continued walking forward. Just forget it, it's better if I went to Sillalin's shop. I might find my fateful bloodline there. Crash! Luby's head collided with the corner of the desk harshly. Yet, he felt nothing but rage and humiliation after hearing Felix mention that Sillalin had better stop than him. Close the store! This little bastard is not leaving until he buys a bloodline. He roared with blue blood running down his temple. Befuddled and amused, Felix watched three little deer elves blocking his way with two hooves extended forward, while the rest were closing down the gate. What's the meaning of this luby? Are you trying to force me to buy from your stock or what? He crossed his arms with displeased expression and added, if streets got word of this, your reputation will be tarnished, and we all know business is doomed without it. He turned around and smiled warmly towards the little elves. 
So let me leave in peace and I will act as nothing happened. I don't care, I won't let you leave until you see the prices of those bloodlines. Stubborn, Luby stood up and dusted himself, unbothered about his bloody face. He merely gave Felix a defiant look. Trust me you will definitely be pleased by how cheap they are. Felix eyed the bloodlines on the table, then Luby's stubborn expression. He sighed and approached him again. All right, if your prices are cheap enough not to put a dent on my budget, I will consider getting a bloodline here. He tapped his finger on the table and rushed him. Hurry up and show me. Without delaying for even a second, Luby brought a rare rank bottle to his face and said, this one cost merely 35 million SC. Quite cheap considering that I usually sell it for 40 million. Pass. This is for 50 million. Pass. This one is 59 million. Pass. After getting eight bottles disregarded by Felix, Luby started to lose hope of catching his attention. This one is 57 million epic rank bloodline, its original price is actually 65 million. This is as cheap as it can get. He rubbed his eyebrows and presented the Anomamba bloodline that Felix desired. Curious, Felix raised an eyebrow and took the bottle from Luby's hands. Give me a moment. I want to see its details. He coughed and explained, previously, I ignored the rest of the bloodlines after I found the mother centipede. Believe me, this is one of the good bloodlines within the epic ranks. It was extremely hard to catch due to its defense and overwhelming strength. He sighed, a lot of my hunters have been devoured by it. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Felix waved his hand, and shooed him away, go to the corner, and let me read in peace. Your overselling won't move me. Luby immediately shut his mouth and gazed at Felix's expression turn from intrigue to boredom, as he read the details of the bloodline. Just as his mind was started to get filled with despairing thoughts, he heard Felix's disinterested voice, whatever, I might take this if you lower the price to 55 million. He shook his head, I will not waste my entire budget on a bloodline that doesn't fit my fighting style that much. So sell it with 55 million, or I am heading to Sillilin shop. This time you can't stop me. He laid his last offer with a firm expression. Luby unbothered by his tone nodded his head like a chicken and extended his hand for a handshake. It's a deal. We can sign a contract right now. Just never buy from Sillilin shop, and I will give you a lifetime 5% discount in my shop. All right I see no issue in that, prepare the contract please, I have other places to be. Felix shook his hand and waited patiently for Luby to prepare the contract. He didn't break out of his indifferent character for not even a moment. A few minutes later, Luby displayed a one-page holographic contract before Felix. There were not too many conditions on it. Hum, I see no issues with the terms and conditions. But change one little thing. Felix pointed his finger at the third clause and said, I will take care of delivery to my planet. Just give me the serial code of the bottle. I will decide when to receive it. No problem. Luby lightly touched Felix's bracelet and informed, I have sent it to you. You just need to call delivery company and it will reach your doorstep undamaged. After seeing that everything was perfect, Felix signed the contract with a pleasing smile. He then stood up and bid farewell to Luby, as he left through the brick wall. There was no reason to remain any more. 55 million SC was deducted from his bank account the moment he signed the contract, as for the bottle? He left it inside. What's important was the unique serial code of the product. Immediately after Felix left the shop, Luby did a little dance with excitement written all over his face. Go prepare a small party. Today we celebrate this victory over that cheating bitch. He ordered while biting his lips. If he had teeth he would have gritted them, you stole my heart, and then stomped on it mercilessly. You stole my job network, and then ruined my reputation, making me hide here like a rat. Now you want to steal my clients as well? He opened a bottle of wine that was handed to him by the elves and chugged it down fully within few seconds. He wiped his mouth clean with his sleeves and sneered, in your fucking dream Sillilin. As long as I live, I will climb back to where I was, and I will destroy you. I swear on it. Just wait you bitch. Chapter 48 Heh, to actually give me a 5% permanent discount on my first purchase, he truly hates his ex-wife. 
Amused and somewhat curious, Felix walked through the alleys with his hand rested on his chin. He had no idea what she did to make him turn into that state each time he heard her name. To the best of his knowledge, they had a massive enmity between them. Massive to the point a customer in his previous life had used the same strategy and worked just like a charm. Yet, the retard didn't keep it to himself but spread it to others, making it public knowledge. After that, everyone tried to take advantage of Luby's hatred by taunting him that his ex-wife had better products and prices than his, to get the same results as Felix's. Unfortunately for them, Luby easily figured out that his secret was in the open after tens of costumers mentioned his wife over and over again, thus he blacklisted all of them and anyone who said the name of that bitch in his shop, now that I have the bloodline, as well as the potions. I can without a doubt awaken smoothly, he folded his hands and prayed for his bloodline to have 80% or 90% essence, so after he integrates all of it, only a few percentages would be left to cover. At that point, he could go by the bloodline again but this time cheaper from the public market to finish the 99%. After a while, he exited from the same alley he came from before and submerged himself within the crowd with hands in his oversized dark hoodie. His direction was clear. The resources market. Ring ring the doorbell echoed in a small shop two times as Felix pushed the door wide open. The shop owner, who was snoring thunderously in his slumber, woke up disoriented by the doorbell ringing. Felix trod forth and stood before the owner, he clapped his hand twice and said, Mr. Piggy I am here to pay for the items I pre-purchased yesterday. And also to buy other things. Still muddled, Mr. Piggy rubbed his small eyes and snorted with his pig-like nose out of habit at Felix. Oh it's you again. He scratched his messy bearded chin and read from a hologram, the full amount that we agreed upon was one. One million for seven products. Here is your shopping cart. He enlarged the hologram and made it visible for Felix forward slash forward slash one, minor longevity potion, allows a commoner user to obtain 300 extra years to live. Also, remarkable at cleaning his body from all diseases and injuries. The price, 850,000 SC quantity, 1-2, rejuvenation potion, it can heal a commoner, bloodliner back into a healthy state, without any hidden injuries. Works only for bloodliners under stage 2 of replacement. The price, 10,000 SC quantity, 33, double percentage potion, allows the user to double the number of bloodlines percentages to integrate with. Pain waves remain the same as before the use of this potion, the price, 200,000 SC, quantity, 14, Fuchsia's Eagle Wing Substance, provides the user with the beast's wings for a limited duration of 15 minutes. The price, 20,000 SC, quantity, 16, double-headed viper poison gland, can be used to upgrade the user poison resistance, works only if the user has the passive. The price, 20. 000 SC, quantity, 1 forward slash forward slash, those are all items that you pre-purchased yesterday. I hope we can finalize the deal now. Mr. Piggy brought all of Felix's products and spread them apart on the table. Satisfied, Felix nodded his head and extended his wrist forward. Mr. Piggy did the same and touched Felix's bracelet to complete the payment transfer and also send all the serial numbers of the products. The contract was already signed yesterday. All right Mr. Felix it was a great pleasure dealing business with you, now you can roam freely within my shop and wake me up if you liked anything. Exhausted from speaking this much, Mr. Piggy returned to his seat and laid on it in a relaxed manner with his eyes dead closed. A few seconds later, his snores were resounding in the shop again. No wonder it was empty. Such a lazy pig would rather kick customers out than to waste time answering their questions. Unbothered by the snores, Felix browsed the items on the shelves with a finger pressed on his lips. His eyes drifted from a potion to a substance. Yet, nothing grabbed his interest. Mr. Piggy informed him yesterday that new stock was going to be displayed today. That's why he even bothered to browse again, oh? Everlasting youth substance. This is the perfect gift for Auntie and Layla, delighted, he smiled pleasantly, as he held a small bottle filled with pink dust. He knew that nothing would bring more joy to a woman than to keep her youthful looks until death. His aunt and Layla deserved more than just this, based on their unconditional assistance during the island remodel. This was the least Felix could do to repay them. He then took two bottles with him and searched the shelves for more useful products. After reading the details of over 30 products, he only picked four of them and decided to call it a quit. 
Oh I I, Mr. Piggy please wake up. I want to add those items to my cart, Felix kept poking Mr. Piggy cheeks, as he called near his ears. With half-closed eyes, drool dripping down his chin, Mr. Piggy pointed his bracelet at the items and scanned them. Two youth substance, one skin hardening potion, one invisibility potion. The total is 60,000 SC, Felix paid him the amount and obtained their serial codes. He then bade farewell and left the shop satisfied by his shopping spree, all right, there is still one more shop I need to visit. Then I can call it a day for now, he thought while heading towards the lady boss shop. One hour later. Felix sat on the park bench while holding vanilla ice cream in one hand, while the other displayed a holographic list of his item's serial numbers, should I use a human delivery company, or go for the wormhole company express? Although this question was repeating in Felix's mind constantly, he already knew his choice. The only reason he was brooding over this matter was due to his reluctance to pay the maddening shipment price of the Wormhole Express. But honestly, they justify it by their solid reputation of 100% delivery successful rate. Meanwhile, humans' delivery ships could get robbed by pirates. Felix wasn't worried about losing his items, as he had an insurance policy installed on them that guaranteed that his products would be given back free of charge. However, just like Earthling's insurance companies, the procedures and the paperwork would take an extremely long period before they get it done. A typical action by those companies to delay paying their bill as much as possible. Felix wasn't planning to entertain their bullshit at this critical period. He understood that his awakening must be done before the end of the first stage of the training camp. Otherwise, the elders would force him to use their trashy bloodline. Helpless and vexed, he took a large bite from the ice cream cone and closed the hologram. His decision was made. Even though he must pay at least 500,000 SC for the shipment, his items would reach his doorstep in seven days tops, undamaged. This gave him some peace of mind. After getting that over with, he lifted his head and observed the beautiful scene of multiple subhumans families, playing with their children in the park. A gentle smile couldn't help but sneak upon his mouth, I should probably buy a house and VR pod after I leave the training camp. He knew that for one to be able to stay permanently within the UVR, a VR pod and a house was a necessity. Felix didn't want to stay inside forever, like some weirdos. But, staying for a couple of weeks to months was no issue to him. Especially, when he joins the Supremacy Games. After all, some games might reach tens of hours in duration. Felix definitely didn't want his fate to be the same as the peeing guy. Amused, he guffawed out loud, unbothered by the strange looks he was receiving. How could he not after the memory of a viral game resurfaced in his mind, showcasing a player begging for the MC to pause the game for two minutes to take a piss in real life? Sadly, the SG was not a video game where one could click pause. So the poor player had to piss himself in bed and in-game under the humiliating jeers of the audience. However, this was not the reason it went viral but, due to the player managing to clutch the championship at the end. One could only imagine, how his face was like during the process of receiving his trophy. From that moment on, not a single player decided to enter a game without a VR pod, and Felix had no thoughts of doing the opposite. Chapter 49 Next morning 10 o'clock am Felix was eating his breakfast together with Olivia in the cafeteria. He held a cup of orange juice with its straw on close to his mouth. Yet, he didn't take a sip as Olivia's way of eating cookies was distracting him. Who could blame him though? Olivia kept munching on them with her eyes closed, just like a squirrel. Little Ollie, can you not munch on cookies like that? You are ruining the adult image that we worked hard to build. But I can't help it. They are too delicious. She sulked with some crumbles on her lips and cheeks, as she gazed at the last cookie on her. Also, I will not change my personality. I love sweet food and I will keep eating them like this. If anyone dares to treat me like a child or bully me, I will bite him. She bared her fangs at him. Helpless yet somewhat amused, Felix could only stare at her eat the last cookie with the same expression. Well you do you, I guess. After Ollie finished her breakfast she asked Felix, today is Sunday, and we don't have any training to finish. Do you have any fun plans for today? She smiled with anticipation clearly written all over her face. I want to accompany you. With a finger pressed on his chin, Felix gazed absent-mindedly after hearing her question. 
he was pondering if he should head to the cinema in the UVR, to entice that lazy bum into reopening the connection between them. After all, Felix was only waiting for the pain relief potions to arrive at the lady boss shop, so he could deliver everything home at once. Based on what she said, it would take a max 15 days. This meant Felix's awakening would happen before even a month. That's just around the corner. It was better to start preparing for their future plans now than do so at the moment of awakening. I will probably enter the UVR cinema. Do you want to come as well? Bewildered and excited, Olivia suddenly stood up with her hands on the table. Whoa, you can do that. She tilted her head slightly, I thought only the owner of the AP bracelet can enter the UVR. How can you take me in as well? Indeed, I can use the party feature in the bracelet to take as many as ten, and this number is only limited because my bracelet generation is quite old. But there is four hours duration limit, and after exceeding it one must start paying 500 SC each hour. Nonchalant, Felix explained as he took quick sips in between. So cool. Felix nodded his head casually and continued eating. However, before he chewed, he sensed Olivia's eyes, digging through his forehead. He lifted his head and saw her toying with a lock of hair, with flushed cheeks. He chuckled and asked, do you want to bring anyone else? Olivia avoided having eye contact and nodded her head softly. I want to invite Sarah, as she always annoys me that her dream was to enter the UVR. Although Felix explained that he could take ten people at once, she had a thin face to ask for another favor. In her mind, he already did more than enough by taking her in and paying for her. She wasn't stupid to not understand that cinema tickets were probably expensive for Felix since he wasn't working in the UVR, and the family definitely didn't give him an allowance. If only she knew that Felix's leftover coins probably exceeded the family's entire capital, she wouldn't have those thoughts. Do as you wish, as long as the number does not exceed ten, I don't care who you invite. Felix cleaned his mouth with a handkerchief and added, this is a one-time offer and won't repeat again. He then stood up and headed towards his room while saying, come to my room two hours from now. Thank you, Felix. You are the best. Exited and eager to deliver the news, Olivia left the table messy and bolted towards Sarah's room. Felix could only sigh and clear after her. Don't treat me as a child my ass. He mumbled under his breath, as he carried the trays to the cafeteria's counter. One hour and forty-five minutes later. Felix sat on his bed with black lines on his forehead. You old hag, open up already it is time to awaken, I am only waiting for you, sadly, just like the last few tries, there was no response. Felix used everything from enticing, to lying, and cursing. Yet, nothing managed to move her and re-establish the connection. Livid, he threw the pillow at his TV screen. He truly couldn't handle her bullshit anymore. He never saw such an unreliable and irresponsible partner before. Why can't she act like an elder or mentor and show me the way as I read online? How can I be this unlucky to end up with this lazy pig, who only wants to watch movies and series? He really began to feel that she got too comfortable in his consciousness and lost her motivation to regain her freedom. After a while, he stopped bothering himself with those gentle methods. For someone like Asna, the only thing that worked best was threats and sticks. His expression turned nasty and though, let's see if you will continue to ignore me after I drink memory-erasing potion. Felix was ready to pull all stops and drink that potion to erase his memories of movies and series. At that point, Asna wouldn't be able to enjoy her lazy stay in his consciousness and be active in helping him plan ahead. After all, she said it herself that more information was needed for her to see how to improve the cheats she gave him. But, how the hell was she supposed to get it, when her attention was elsewhere? Suddenly an irritated voice was heard in his mind, Bastard, can't you take a hint and leave me alone to watch in peace? She yawned, I already reached episode 200 of the Masked Lady drama series. I was about to talk to you after I finished the last 10 episodes. Felix raised his eyebrows in surprise at her sudden entrance. He didn't think that his threat was going to show a positive result this fast. You went offline for over six months, and you only watched 200 EP of that amazing series? He smirked, I finished them in two months. You really disappointed me. You dare look down on me while using two months to watch that series? You know nothing little bastard. She puffed her chest out and said, I used six months to watch all the movies and series on your memories. 
the masked lady was the last one. She explained with a hint of dread, that's why I was planning to head out since there will be nothing fun to do here anymore after I finish it. Felix didn't notice her voice cracking at her mentioning the last part, his mind short-circuited the moment she mentioned, spending six months to finish his colossal liberty of movies and series that took him years upon years of lazing around to gather in his previous life. Yet, such an unfathomable amount was finished in six months. What kind of sick joke was this? Horrified, a sudden idea sneaked upon him and took root in his mind. Unless she did not sleep the past six months, and only watched continuously movie after movie and episode after episode. How can someone be able to do that? Neats around the world will kowtow in worship if they heard of her achievement, furious at him calling her N.E.E.T. Asna tried to throw the remote control at the TV like usual, but her hands refused to obey. Her mental energy was drained to the bottom of the barrel, and her sunken face with dark panda eyes, only made it appear as such. Throwing the controller or not, she still raged at him, unbothered about her new ugly look. Bastard, are you complimenting me, or insulting me by calling me a N.E.E.T.? She explained with a huff, never associate me those lazy bastards. I only watched movies and series because I was sealed for 20 million years without any entertainment in my life. So I had to close the gap. Now leave me alone to finish those last remaining episodes in peace, I will call you later. She shooed him away with a hand wave and pressed on the play button. Felix hastily informed her before she cut off the connection, tomorrow I need you in your best form and shape. We will try a quick experiment with a poison stone to see if I can absorb the element without a beast's bloodline. He gave a half shrug, maybe it will work since you are merged with me. Whatever, talk later. Asna quickly cut off the connection to focus on the drama. Well, at least she got my message. He scoffed on her TV addiction and lay on the bed with his arms crossed behind his head. She dares says she is not her N.E.T. Knock knock before he even found a comfortable position, a sudden door knocks resounded in the room. Felix glanced at his bracelet, they came just in time. Without wanting to keep them waiting, he walked toward the door and opened it slowly with a gentle smile. Yet, his smile stiffened immediately after opening the door wide open. He gawked at ten of his female's cousins, each wearing a different outfit that highlighted her greatest asset. Some wore a short skirt with black stockings on, while some had tight blue jeans on with a t-shirt. The only thing that remained identical was their beauty. Just like Felix they also inherited good looks from their parents. Exasperated, he closed his eyes and rubbed his eyelids. He just remembered that Sarah had the biggest mouth in the family. Her gossipy personality was truly one of a kind. He knew that he made a big mistake by giving them a whole two hours before they enter. As it was enough for Sarah to spread the information and for Olivia's good personality to give in to her cousin's request, and bring them to him. He figured as much by looking at Olivia who was peeking at him with one eye behind Sarah. First I will place some ground rules, so we won't have issues later. Felix decided to fold before his cousins even said anything. He wasn't a retard to disappoint those ladies' hopeful looks. God knows how would they treat him after. He extended three fingers with an indifferent expression, the first rule is, this is a one-time thing, don't expect that I will keep taking you in the UVR each day, I neither have time nor energy. He warned, secondly when we enter follow me everywhere I go since you can get kidnapped inside, and get abused those two hours until you get kicked out. He turned around and walked inside while saying the last rule with a beseeching tone. Last, please don't point and gawk at anything you see, we don't want to be tagged as country bumpkins. Understood? The young ladies just kept nodding their heads like chicken. Heck, even if he asked them to get naked to activate the party feature they wouldn't hesitate. At this point, the only thing in their eyes was Felix's AP bracelet. Felix cringed at those looks, as he knew that today wasn't going to be a pleasant experience in the UVR with them. Whatever, we will be wearing a disguise. Even if we get embarrassed no one will know it is us. Please enter and close the door behind you. Elated and eager, his cousins rushed inside with their hands raised above their heads. Their loud cheers didn't alert anyone, as the rooms were soundproof. The last one to enter was Olivia. She sneaked inside and hid behind Sarah like a shadow. She truly wanted to avoid Felix at all costs. After all, she brought a massive headache to his doorstep, when he simply tried to bring her out to hang, I hope he doesn't punish me for it. 
Worried, she peeked at Felix who was rubbing his temples with closed eyes, as his brain was being assaulted by their never-ending loud chatter. Chapter 50 Felix clapped his hands twice to quieten them down, as well as attract their attention to him. I want all of you to find a place and lay down properly. He explained, you are going to spend about four hours inside the UVR. So, chose a comfortable position, lest your muscles ache when you return. Obedient, they listened to his advice and lay down either on the ground or the couch. Not one of them chose the bed, as it was only proper to act like a guest and not as a snobbish girl, wanting only the best. Shortly after, all the girls were in a good comfortable position. Those on the ground had pillows and bedsheets underneath them, so it wasn't actually that bad. Satisfied by their behavior, Felix nodded his head, as his eyes were drifting from one cousin to another. Suddenly, his eyes landed on two exposed little feet under his bed, if it wasn't for the toes flinching from time to time, anyone would have assumed that a dead body was lying there. Without a second thought, he knew whose feet were those. But he ignored that hamster and began explaining how the bracelet party feature works. I will visit each of you and touch your forehead with my bracelet. He tapped a few times on his bracelet and continued after bringing out a hologram in front of them. You just say this sentence. He pointed at the hologram that displayed a short sentence that said, I willingly chose to enter the UVR, using Felix's AP bracelet, and I accept all the terms and conditions of being a party member, the moment you finish, call in your mind, Queen AI, and you will enter my UVR room directly. He smiled, after you enter, don't panic or anything, as I will follow you in soon. Simple right? Yes Felix, can we start? I can't wait any longer. Eager and nervous, Sarah breathed ruggedly as she eyed his bracelet. Sarah, can you not say that while breathing in that way? If anyone heard you without knowing what's going on, will definitely misunderstand you. She is right, get hold of yourself, Sarah, you are shaming us with you in front of Felix. A tall ginger flower poked Sarah's cheeks with a playful smile. Sarah slapped her finger away and kept eyeing Felix's bracelet with the same look, unbothered about their teasing. Brother Felix, don't listen to their rubbish. They are just wasting time. She pointed her finger at her face and asked with a cute smile, can you start with me? I already memorized what I need to say. Felix nodded his head and approached her. He also wanted to get this over with. After reaching her side, he crouched next to her and touched his bracelet with her forehead. Sarah did exactly as he instructed them before without a single mistake. Immediately after she called Queen AI, her eyes got closed shut as she lost consciousness. Whoa! Surprised by how efficient and quick the process was, the girls exclaimed with hands on their cheeks. Just as Felix wanted to instruct them to lay down, they circled him and kept chirping little birds, me next. Know me. Pick me, Felix. Vexed at their chatter and hands touching him here and there, Felix raised his head and stared at the ceiling deep in thought. What did I get myself into? After waiting a while, a clear order was still not established. Every cousin was more unforgiving than the other. Felix was the one who felt burnt of their terrifying bickering, as he was in the center of it. Enough! He shouted as he rubbed his temples. It was really a stupid mistake letting them handle it without his interference. I will count to three. If I found any one of you not in her position, don't blame me for leaving you last. He crossed his arms above his chest and began counting. The girls whined at his stern treatment, but they still didn't dare to disobey. Within seconds, all of them were lying on their position with burning anticipation in their torch-like eyes. Satisfied at their obedience, he smiled and touched their foreheads one by one gently. The girls repeated the same sentence and lost consciousness. The entire scene appeared just like a cult ritual. One could only wonder what the parents of those girls would say if they saw their daughters lying defenseless like this, in front of Felix. Before long, Felix sent them all in succession. He dusted his hands with a pleased expression and went to the bed, planning to enter after them. However, his eyelids couldn't help but twitch at the sight of those two feet still there unmoving. He totally forgot about that troublemaker. Are you still not coming out Ollie? He kicked the left side rails of the bed lightly, trying to scare her, thud ouch. The yelp he was expecting was replaced by a groan as Olivia's head collided with the bottom rail of the bed. 
Are you all right, aggrieved, Olivia rubbed her red forehead and replied with watery eyes, I think my forehead cracked in half. I can feel blood gushing outside. Felix chuckled at her attempt to make him feel bad, so he wouldn't yell at her for bringing him trouble. However, the girls were waiting for them and it wasn't time for those word games. Thus, Felix grinned and grabbed her little feet that were outside the bed and dragged her out. Ah! Uh. Olivia cried in surprise, as she clawed the carpet, trying to clutch into her dear life. Unfortunately, Felix didn't even give her the time to fight it out, before he threw her into the bed. Get in position so I can start the process. Your sisters are waiting inside. Felix ordered with unquestionable voice. Olivia immediately hid under the bedsheet and explained what led to this mess, I'm sorry, Sarah told Megan, and Megan told another one. It kept going this way until all of them begged me to enter the UVR as well. I couldn't say no to their request. S.O.R. Felix cut her mid-sentence, not waiting for her to finish her second apology. No need to feel sorry. I already told you that you are allowed to bring a maximum of ten people. He sighed, I just didn't expect you to only bring your sisters. Now enough mopping and wasting time, get into position and follow my instruction. He said while pulling the sheets away, exposing Olivia who was curled up like a worm, trying to hide her existence. Olivia instantly fixed her position and lay properly on the bed. All right, you can start now. Felix did the same to her as others, and soon after, she passed out as well. Felix pushed her to the side to make some space and lay next to her, log me in queen please. Inside the white room, ten young ladies were conversing with suppressed tones as their eyes wandered around. Sarah kept touching every wall with a hint of fanatism in her eyes. It feels so real. She put her face on the cold surface of the floor and let out a comfortable sigh, this is the best day of my life. The rest totally ignored this weirdo and continued their chatter. It had already been ten minutes since they entered and Sarah never stopped those shameful acts. They only hoped she would get a grip and not do the same when Felix arrive. Speak of the devil and he shall appear. Felix's body reassembled from light particles in the center of the room, marking his successful teleportation. The reason he was late was due to him needing to rush into the teleportation company from the park, where he last logged out. The moment he appeared in the middle of the room, all the ladies quietened up and waited for him to speak. I will teleport you all to the capital city Androxa. The first thing you need to do is to immediately leave the teleportation circle after you reach the city. He explained, each delayed second will cost me 200 SC. This is important, don't forget it. Felix didn't want them to get cheated out of his money, since they were in his party that meant he was responsible for their actions. Although 200 SC was peanut in his eyes, he couldn't show so. Otherwise, the ladies would spread out rumors that he was rich within the UVR. It wouldn't matter if his cousins heard about it, but the elders were a different story. He understood clearly that showing his bank account was unquestionable if the elders asked him to. At that point, he could only create another empty bank account and show it to them. Felix wanted none of this nonsense to happen in the first place, so, he was going to act as cheap as possible. The young ladies shared hidden eye contact with a confused expression. They clearly didn't understand a thing of what he said. But, they still nodded their heads with knowing smiles. Felix understood their thoughts clearly, but he preferred it this way, as it meant less time for explaining. Queen AI teleport us please. As you wish Mr. Felix. Felix opened his eyes in the circle and immediately went to pull any cousin he saw outside of the circle. Even though they had random faces, Felix easily recognized them, as they had a green halo on top of their heads, visible to only him. A few moments later he looked at the troublemaker Olivia and Sarah with his hands behind his back. What the hell, why is it always you two, whenever there is an issue? He scolded them with a fake angry tone, I clearly stated that you need to bounce out of the circle as fast as possible. So why the fuck were you both in it for an extra six seconds? One of you was frozen due to shock, and the other was touching everything in curiosity. Those six seconds cost me at least 2,400 CS total. His voice wasn't loud, as he didn't want to attract attention to them this early. He was just acting like this to let them further realize that he was a poor pauper. Ashamed and apologetic, Sarah and Olivia lowered their heads while fiddling their fingers. 
the other sisters gloated at them getting scolded like little children. After seeing this positive response, Felix decided it was enough and patted their heads to comfort them. All right stop mopping. You only have four hours inside. He smiled, we will walk on foot so you guys can take a closer look at the culture of the UVR. He turned around and walked ahead of them. He waved his hand and said, follow me closely and don't point your finger at anyone, since you won't know if he is a normal commoner or a peak stage 6. The ladies formed two lines and followed him from behind, like ducklings following their mother hen. This strange scene piqued the interest of every passerby who saw it. Amused and bewildered, they kept pointing their fingers at Felix's group, while whispering with hushed tones. Yet, that was as far as they did. No one came to bother or harass them, simply because it wasn't their business. People in the UVR were exactly the same as New Yorkers in this characteristic. They recognized that for them to live longer in this city, minding their own business was a must-craft to master. After 35 minutes of continuous walking and answering all of his cousin's questions and inquires, Felix's dispirited eyes instantly brighten up as he saw the cinema in front of him. Eager to send them inside to get rid of them, he bolted towards it while calling for his ducklings to follow him. However, the long queue before the entrance shattered his uplifted spirit. He knew that paying to skip the line was out of the question. After all, how could he explain himself after paying 500 SC for each cousin to pass the queue with him? Thus Felix could only hang his head low and continue getting tortured by their never-ending questions, someone save me out of this hell. 45 minutes later. Felix entered the cinema that was designed just like a large tuna fish made of see-through glass. The entrance was actually its mouth. It just wasn't that clear before, due to the building's massive size. Let's go see the movie list for now. Hopefully, something might be worth our tickets. Felix gave each of them a hologram to read. He then sat on the lounge couch and read the list with a bored expression. It turned out he already saw most of the movies released during this month. As he was scrolling down the list, he felt someone tugging his shirt. Confused, he turned his head and saw Olivia and the rest were either looking at him with abashed expressions or avoiding having eye contact at all. The moment he saw their behavior, he knew something was not right. What's wrong with you? Did you not like those movies? However, the response he received, managed to ruin his already fucked up mood even further, as he realized that he wasted his coins on bringing retards with him. We can't read the common universal language yet. Chapter 51 So you are telling me you can't read the common language, even though you were exposed to it for over six months? Felix rubbed his eyelids at this sick joke he was hearing. After all, if they couldn't even read the language how were they supposed to watch the movie? Embarrassed, Olivia scratched her cheek with a finger, while looking at her toes. We were busy with the family tradition revival projects and all the fun things that were happening in the UVR. She coughed, as she looked at her sisters, so we really did not put too much focus on learning the language, because all the TV streams were subtitled or dubbed. Sarah extended her finger and added to support Ollie, also, we did not think we would be able to enter the UVR this early. We believe there is still at least two years before we get our hands on an AP bracelet. The other cousins just kept nodding their heads to whatever they said. Felix gave them a bitter smile and explained why he was upset. How are you supposed to watch the movie if you can't even understand what they are saying? He sighed, I can add dubbing but that will reduce the immersion inside the movie. You may not understand now, but the moment you enter, you will realize the huge difference between listening to the actor's real voices and hearing AI toneless voice. UVR cinema is in a different league than our cinema. He spread his hands, there is just no way to compare them. The girls weren't even a bit sad from what he just said. They honestly didn't care if the immersion was lowered or even removed since this was their only opportunity to enter the UVR and have fun in it before they get theirs in the far future. Don't worry. I promise you that I won't complain about movie quality. I am content with just the dubbed version. Me as well. I never expected to enter the UVR today. Let's just pick a random romance movie. I want to see how other humans' romantic culture is. What are you talking about? We did not get this chance to waste it on a lackluster romance movie. The tall ginger girl highlighted two movies on the list and said, it is much better if it was an action or fantasy movie, like those. 
So when we enter the movie, we will feel like we are inside a magical world. Yes she is right, I want to watch a fantasy movie, I am sick of romance and drama. I believe sci-fi is going to be amazing here, why don't we watch that? No fan. You always pie. Felix just watched them argue about the genre of the movie for over five minutes to no positive outcome. Each two wanted to watch a genre and neither one of them budged from her choice. Felix sighed and sat back on the couch, planning to continue reading the list. He didn't interject or gave them advice on which movie to watch since if it was up to him, he would definitely recommend a historical movie about the human race. Ask anyone in the cinema about the best genre, and their first choice would be history. Their choice was quite understandable, as there were tons of good movies and series that were based on real-life events. The majority of those movies either earned trophies and awards or were nominated for them. The history of the human race was a mine full of gems to be dug by the producers, how good would it be if, human uprising, was already made? He sighed, I would have dragged those girls by their hairs to watch it. Sadly it will be released one year from now. Suddenly an idea inserted itself in his mind, turning it into mush. What if I invest in those upcoming blockbuster movies that earn billions of SC? He then started to ponder on it deeply with a hint of elation in his eyes. He already had the information and details. The only thing he lacked was the capital to invest. But that wouldn't be too hard to get if he made his second bet. This was even better for Felix, as the viral games, he remembered that happened in this year, was only Wallies and the next one. But for others, he had absolutely no clue. Felix didn't have that much free time to spectate the games in his previous life, due to his early trashy bloodlines which forced him to focus only on integration to not get left behind. He only remembered Wally's game and this one was due to their unique characteristics. This meant Felix had no choice but to find another method to earn coins, and investing in successful movies and series was actually the smartest move to make in his condition. It had only positive results. Besides earning a massive amount of coins, the process itself was clean and had a known origin. Felix knew that someday, his grandfather and the elders would find out that he was a multimillionaire in the UVR. At that point, his excuse for betting couldn't be used against those shrewd fogies. However, if he had an investment company, responsible for investing in his cheating knowledge, they would have nothing to say but beg for him to share a piece of the pie. Just as he was trying to recall the movies and series which were about to release soon, he felt someone waving his hand near his face. What's up Ollie? He asked. Felix we came to a decision. She smiled and handed him the list that had a movie marked with a green light. We picked the sci-fi movie Moving Stardust. It has romance, drama, action and comedy, everything that we wanted. Felix cringed the moment he heard the movie name. He removed that disgusting list from his face and asked them with a serious expression. Are you sure about your choice? You can pick another I don't mind waiting. All the ladies shook their heads in disagreement. This is what we want, all other movies either lack something or has too much of it. Are you 100% positive? I really advise you to reconsider. Felix decided to push one more time if they still declined his goodwill, then he wouldn't bother himself anymore. After all, it was their funeral, not his. The ladies shared eye contact with doubt clearly on their faces. Nonetheless, they still stood their grounds and decided to go for it. In their minds, they simply wanted to begin ASAP, since there was a time limit to their stay in the UVR. It wouldn't feel good to get dragged in the middle of the movie, due to wasting time on picking the perfect one. All right as you wish. Felix gave a half shrug and said, wait for me here I am going to buy us the tickets. He stood up and went to one of the tickets booths that had the least number of people queuing up. Before long his turn arrived and immediately requested, 11 tickets for moving Stardust please. The counter employee's polite smile stiffened, at that name getting mentioned in his presence. He moved closer to Felix and advised sincerely, Brother, I think it is better to pick another one, so you won't pollute yourself and those flowers with you. Frustrated, Felix shook his head and replied, It is not my choice, it's theirs. He semispread his arms, I advised them not to pick it. But they were really stubborn about it. So I can only play along. The employee said nothing more and just handed him the tickets. He sighed in pity as he looked at those girls chatting about the content of the movie with expectation. You should have at least watched the trailer. 
rest in peace, his attention was brought back to Felix, as he heard him say, please add one blocking glasses and ear-closing buds. He gave him the protection gear and wished him good luck on his battle. Felix returned to his cousins and gave them each a ticket, then informed them, the movie won't start until 15 minutes. You are free to do as you please. He wore those buds on his ears and activated them. He then lay on the couch and closed his eyes, planning to take a quick nap over the duration. In his mind, the silence was a hundred times better than their nonsense chatter. Fifteen minutes. Felix and the ladies stood all by themselves in front of a desolate-looking gate written above it, moving stardust entrance when compared to other gates that had hundreds to thousands of people lining up to enter, theirs was truly a bit sad to look at. The moment we open this door we will enter the movie world. He faced them with black glasses on and clarified, at that point, you can interact with everything you see. Heck, you can even kiss the female lead or the male lead. But I advise you to not pull that bullshit in any cinema you visit if you don't want to get beat up. He pulled a small remote control from his pocket and put it in their line of sight. This is a control device that you can use to either zoom in, create a seat, fly, and all the other things you wish to do inside. He put it back in his pocket and explained that to get this device, they just had to call in their minds remote control and it shall materialize. The ladies did as he said, and suddenly each of them had a remote control in their hands. Felix retreated from the gate and extended his hand in a welcoming matter. Who wants to do the honor and push the door? His polite action got him labeled as a gentleman by his cousins. But honestly, he just didn't want anything to do with this movie, as he felt that even stepping into its world was a great sacrifice. Sarah pushed it open without waiting for her sisters to make a decision. She had no patience for another round of bickering. The moment the gate was wide open, they all got sucked in without leaving a single yelp behind. Immediately after their feet touched the ground of the movie world, a sudden beam of light projected on them, scaring those beauties out of their wits. Felix hushed them down and clarified that it was just a trying to scan their tickets. After seeing that his cousins were not paying attention to him anymore, Felix sneaked behind their backs and ordered the AI of the remote control, create a seat at the corner of the world and activate the glasses and earbuds cancelling feature. Finally, make an alarm when the movie ends, Felix instantly teleported away from his cousins, who were staring and touching everything in awe and fascination. Especially Sarah who was playing on the grass like she never saw it before in her life. Her love for the UVR might even turn shit into gold in her eyes. Unfortunately for them, this world was their worst nightmare. They only realized so after the plot of the movie began. Thirty minutes later. At the extreme left corner of the movie world, Felix sat on a comfy chair with a cup of his favorite orange juice. He forgot about his cousins, as his mind was currently busy contemplating his investment plan. He recognized that his massive library of movies and series was game-changing in the film industry. He knew which movies would make a splash in the UVR and which movies would turn to be a flop. However, the majority of those successful movies already had a giant production company behind their backs. This meant, they would not let any foreign investor get a piece of their pie, especially Felix who had absolutely no reputation within the industry. This left him with only a few movies that were not being favored at the start but turned into instant success later. In other words, hidden gems. He could totally shower them with his coins and expect massive returns later on. This method would bring him coins, networks, and some reputation as an investor without the stress of wondering if the movie would turn into a hit or a flop. After creating an outline for his plan, he decided to check on his cousin's mental health. Teleport me to my companions, and remove the cancelling feature, few moments later, he arrived next to his cousins who were curled up like balls with tight shut eyes and hands covering their ears. They kept crying out loud to make it stop. Yet, no saviour had arrived at their rescue. Until now at least. I can't take this anymore. It's one thing to watch a cringy movie and another thing to live it. Please someone turn off the dubbing, I don't want to understand any more. Felix expected as much, however as soon as his eyes landed on Sarah who was cheering with her fists in the air, he didn't know how to react any more. His vision kept switching between her and the main character who was a princess carrying two girls with one arm while fighting ten bandits with another, yet, Felix wasn't even bothered by this fucked up scenario, as he saw as much before. What annoyed him to death was the constant love dialogue between the three, 
like the MC wasn't in a death or life situation. If just a scene of the movie was like this, God knows how the rest was like. He kept going back and forth between them with a perplexed expression. He truly couldn't believe that Sarah was actually capable of watching this unique masterpiece with enjoyment. Heck, even the makers couldn't handle their creation and tried to burn its existence for their viewers' mental health. But somehow it got leaked out right before so, leaving this deadly predator roaming free in the UVR cinemas. Now you are telling me that my own cousin is loving this. I don't know if she just doesn't have a taste in movies, or her overwhelming curiosity towards the UVR is blocking all the negative stuff from her vision, whatever it is, I will never hang out with her anymore. He covered his eyes, not wanting to see any more of this absurdity, and ordered the AI to kick everyone out except for Sarah. He hoped that the ending would wake her up. A few seconds later, Felix and his cousins were thrown outside of the gate. Chapter 52 Irritated and somewhat amused, Felix chuckled at the sight of his cousins lying on the floor with a deadpan expression. He clapped his hands twice to bring their attention to him. Yet, the only thing that moved was their grey dead eyes, as they stared at him with a hint of blame and despise. Felix didn't take their look seriously and just dragged them by their legs or hands in the direction of the lounge, since they were lying on the pathway, blocking others from accessing the gates. He kept going back and forth and each time he dragged two with him. The spectators neither laughed nor mocked them, as they understood that the girl's reaction was thoroughly justifiable after knowing the name of the movie they came out from. They only nodded their head to pay respect for Felix's willing sacrifice and gave a look of condolence towards the fallen ladies. In the resting lounge, Felix was talking to Olivia who recovered the quickest from the mental blow. How did you find the worst movie in the history of mankind? He asked with a chuckle. You know I don't like saying bad stuff on other people's works. She frowned her eyebrows and said sternly, no matter how horrible their creation is, in my eyes, they still put a lot of effort into making it. So don't expect me to answer you, since my only response will always be, not bad. As expected from your bubbly personality. He smiled gently and patted her head, no wonder you were born with a plant element. One of the kindest and supportive elements in the universe. Olivia pouted and slapped his hand away from her head since he started to treat her like a child again. Stop complimenting me, I won't take your side no matter what. She crossed her arms and humphed, after all, you knowingly sent them off to get brain damaged, when you could have informed them about the movie details. How is this my fault? I clearly told them to pick another one, but they refused. He added out loud so the girls would hear him as well, moreover, Sarah said she didn't care about the quality of the movie and all of you agreed with her before. He smiled innocently, so I simply respected your choice. Olivia who was never good at arguing could only accept his excuse with a nod, while cursing him in her mind. Shameless Felix, you can just say you wanted to prank us like always, after seeing that she gave up on bickering, he changed the subject by informing his cousins to recover their mentality for the next hour until Sarah exit the movie. Um. Absent-minded, they gave an inaudible tone as a response, while focusing on deleting any memory of that filth from their minds. One hour later. Sarah got kicked out of the movie as well. But, compared to others who felt their soul got devoured inside, she just skipped towards them with a happy expression. That movie was too good. How I wish I had Prince Charming saving me like that in real life. Her eyes sparkled with worship, as she folded her hands like a fangirl. The people around her who had an auto-translation program activated in their bracelet understood her, but couldn't process what she just said properly. Their bodies froze, as they kept checking the gate she came out of, trying their best to believe that it was just a fantasy. However, Sarah's scolding voice made them realize that she was not joking at all. Why did you guys leave the movie? Felix paid for the tickets, and it is really not polite to waste his money like this. The moment she finished speaking, the entire area descended into a deafening silence. Felix did not wait for others to break out of their days, as he sneaked away from the area, to not associate himself with Sarah. He wanted nothing to do with the upcoming public humiliation. Miss I believe the one who paid won't mind trading those few coins over the safety of your friend's mental health. Indeed, no one is abnormal as you miss, to like that abomination. Stop trying to harm your friends, it is not cool leave. We don't want your kind near our children. 
the entire crowd instantly turned against her after knowing that she was part of that creepy fandom who loved to recommend those types of movies to naive people. Yet, Sarah just looked at them with a finger pressed on her lips and titled head. Her confused expression clearly showcased that she had zero clue what the hell they were saying. A bonus of not learning the common language. Felix did not wait for things to get ugly and ordered in his mind for the queen to log them out. Felix was the first to wake up. Meanwhile, the ladies still had their eyes closed shut. Without delaying for even a second, he bolted outside of the room, barefoot and still in his pajamas. He knew that escape was a must if he wanted to avoid the upcoming headache of dealing with his cousins after this failed outing. Inside the cafeteria. Felix was eating his lunch while thinking of the movies he was planning to invest in. One of them was the upcoming, Human Melodies, movie, which probably was already in production for over two months now, and would be officially released three months after. A quite long period considering that making movies in the UVR was as easy as making YouTube clips, since creating the environment and filming to finally editing could easily be handled by the AIS. This left humans with only acting and directing. The average duration of making films was one month to a maximum of two months. So, this long period reflected just how serious the Oblivion Film Studio took this project. Felix currently owned 24 million SC. 10 million planned for betting and 14 million was the leftover of his shopping spree. So what he planned to do now was to actually bet everything on the upcoming game, leaving only a couple of hundred thousand as an emergency then use the coins that he earned from the gamble to invest in this movie. The only issue that was bothering him was the small period window that he had to invest in. He recalled that the game date was set on two months from now, meanwhile, the movie release was three months. This meant he only had the last month before the movie release to invest in. At that point, the production would have already wrapped up or was about to. In other words, his investment opportunities were lowered to the bare minimum but he still had a way to wiggle himself in. He remembered that the movie had struggled to raise funds from investors, as its filming concept was labeled as unprofitable and niche for the market. He cursed them while chewing, fucking morons, you just wasted at least a billion free coins. He smirked, but don't mind me, I will just slip in and take it gladly. I will then use. He suddenly got interrupted by a familiar sweet voice in his mind. Felix, I finished everything in your memories. Asna stretched, like a lazy cat, and requested with a beautiful smile, can you refill them with some new additions? Please focus on drama, thank you, sweetie. In your fucking dreams. I would rather die than watch another movie or series for you. Furious, veins throbbed on Felix's neck at her casual way of asking him, like his reminder earlier of experimenting on the stones, meant jack shit to her. Come on little Felix, just one please and I will stop, I promise. I just need one more for the road. She begged wretchedly with her hands clawed on the bedsheets. If anyone saw her do so with that sunken face and dark bags under her eyes, they would definitely assume that she was in withdrawal. Stop fucking talking like a drug addict. You are not getting anything else. It's time for you to work that lazy bum of yours. He suddenly stood up, not even finishing half of his lunch, and said, I am going to buy the poison stone now and start the experiment to give you something to do. Asna began to flay her arms and legs wildly in a tantrum while crying sorrowfully, I don't want to work. Can't I just watch movies for those two months before you awaken? She sulked with puppy eyes and said, I promise you then, I won't mention them anymore. Too bad, Felix couldn't see her cute expression. He simply kept walking towards his room with a hardened face. This time he was not going to budge on his decision. After all, he gave her plenty of time to have fun and play around, while he planned everything for their future. But now it was time for her to assist him without complaining. This was their deal in the first place, for her to assist him wholeheartedly. But so far, she did nothing but laze around. He couldn't tolerate this anymore, today you will help me experiment and it's a final decision, depressed at the idea of work. Asna buried her head in the pillow and screamed out loud, while kicking legs on the bedsheet, stingy little bastard, I curse you to die a virgin. She threw the most menacing curse she could think of at him after realizing that there was no way out, yeah, yeah, whatever. Keep swearing nothing will change. Unbothered, Felix peeked inside his room, worried that his cousins were still inside. However, after a few glances, he saw that the coast was clear. 
he sighed in relief and closed the door behind him. A few minutes later, he turned on his laptop and went straight for the merit shop to buy a poison stone. Shortly after clicking on purchase, a notification popped out in the corner of his laptop screen, your purchase has been successful. In five minutes a servant shall deliver the item to your room, after reading it, he turned off his laptop and put it to the side. He stood up and went to the toilet to take care of his bowls. Five minutes later, a light knock resounded in the room. Felix bolted towards the door, opened it, took the box from the servant who was about to say something, and closed the door on his face while yelling his thanks. The servant could only scratch his cheek at this sight and leave. More deliveries were waiting for him anyway. Meanwhile, Felix sat on his bed while holding a small black box. He crossed his fingers and opened it up gently. A grin crept on his lips as took a small green pebble that had the size of a peanut outside of the box. Without further ado, he requested Asna to try and absorb the poisonous energy of the stone. Asna replied with a gloomy humph, but still did as he asked and started absorbing the energy while yawning with a hand covering her mouth. The process didn't even take a part of a second before the stone shattered into small pieces. Delighted and elated, Felix's eyes couldn't help but brighten up at this sight. How is it, did you succeed? And if you did why don't I feel anything different? Did you absorb all the energy leaving nothing to me or what? Asna got annoyed by his barrage of inquires and replied with a disdainful sneer. Stop asking stupid questions, you moron. Do you honestly think that I Asna origin of laws can't even absorb this trashy energy? She raised her voice, and how dare you insult me by providing me with this pathetic amount and saying that I took it all. It was not enough to even fill a single body pore. Felix. Laughed sheepishly as he realized that he acted a little bit too excited since he also knew that the energy content of a low-grade stone was quite a trash to even humans, don't even mention Asna. All right, this was merely to test if we could absorb energy without a beast bloodline and not enhance my poison affinity. He smiled and dusted his hands from the small pieces of the stone. Oh now that you mention poison affinity, I have some bad news to deliver. She covered her mouth to hide that wicked smile behind and explained, my previous estimate on the period needed for enhancement to reach a 100% affinity rating was quite off by a mile, since I used my own race elemental trashy resources to calculate, not your human race elemental stones. Felix's heart sank to the depth of the abyss, as he knew that whatever was about to come was not going to please him at all. Now that I absorbed this shitty stone, I can claim with certainty that to reach 100% rating from 59% it will take 10 years of absorbing this, low-grade energy. Congratulations sweetie over this great news. Asna never knew that revenge could be served so fast. Felix's eyes almost rolled back in his head as he leaned on the wall for support, this can't be happening. 10 years to just finish 41%? Then how long it will take to finish other promised elements that I don't even possess? Asna rubbed more salt on his wounds mercilessly, 30 years or more. Felix clutched his heart in pain as he realized he would need to only use high-quality elemental stones and treasures. Things that were either too expensive or simply couldn't be bought by his trashy reputation. My beautiful future has just got bleaker. He cried out in despair with his knees on the ground while staring at the ceiling of his room. He truly began to regret even doing this experiment. They were not lying when they said that ignorance was a bless. Chapter 53 The bottomless pit of his bloodline path was getting deeper and deeper, and if he didn't keep up with it, he would be buried sooner or later. Frustrated, Felix massaged his temples over this sudden headache that threw all his plans down the drain. He assumed before, that if bought those low-grade stones with merit points, he could save up his coins as well as enhance his rating until it reached the peak, in about six months or so. But now everything went to smoke, as he needed a large number of coins if he wanted to obtain higher grade stones. Although he had solid channels to buy at least medium and high grade stones, they would still cost him a leg to obtain them in large numbers, since there was always a high demand for them. Especially uncommon elements such as poison. Now that he prepared a bloodline for his awakening, he shouldn't be bothered about it for a while. But elemental stones were a must have resource for everyone due to its versatile effects and benefits it provided. Such as, recovering lost energy after releasing abilities. Not to mention its uses as a basic material for creating most substances and potions. 
Of course, those potions and substances only utilized high-grade stones or above, as for mid and below those were used only by low-level bloodliners. This meant that the demand for those stones could never outweigh the supply, and for Felix to secure a stable channel of getting them at first hand, he needed authority and massive capital to support it. The only way to obtain at least one of those was for the investment plan to be carried out no matter what, and also put substantial emphasis on it. Otherwise, he would always keep slaving himself to secure coins for stones, and this was going to definitely delay his bloodline path immensely. A few minutes later, Felix stopped moping over the matter and went to pour himself a glass of water from the kitchen. After drinking the glass of water, he sprinkled some drops on his face and slapped his cheeks lightly. Come on Felix, this is but a minor setback. Don't let it and that which affect your mentality. Refreshed, he wiped his face and asked Asna, if I brought you middle and high grade stones, will you be able to calculate the duration needed to reach 100% rating? No matter what stone or treasure you bring, as long as they have elements, I can calculate everything about them, whether the duration or the amount needed. She smiled smugly. All right let's get it over with now. I don't want any more surprises emerging, he lay on the bed and closed his eyes, Queen log me in please. Sixteen minutes later, inside a small-sized shop called Fuzzier Stones. Felix sat on a chair, holding a mug of coffee with one hand while talking to a handsome man with a pupilless whitish third eye in the middle of his forehead. Sir Felix it's not that I don't want to sell you, it's just that the amount you are asking for is way too low. The young man shook his head and explained, our shop does not make those kinds of deals. We only sell 100 medium stones or above, nothing less. Come on, I just want to take one medium and high stones home to sample them. If I liked your products, you can expect me to be a loyal customer. With a straight face, Felix asked shamelessly for two stones like a beggar. Speechless at Felix's repeated request, the young man facepalmed. Sir, we are not selling wedding cakes here for you to sample. We sell stones that are made naturally under extreme conditions. He joked, so how the hell are you going to sample them when everyone is selling the same type of stones? Undiscouraged by his third refusal, Felix got up from his seat and put his arm around the young man's shoulder. He leaned closer and whispered in his ears, come on brother JD, if you did me this favor, I will tell you where to find the shapeshifter penis. He smiled, I know someone who is selling it currently. But I don't guarantee it will remain there forever, so you need to rush. Too bad, his attempt to entice JD backfired, as his hand that was on JD's shoulder was twisted in a different direction, crack. The sound of bones snapping resonated in the small shop. Before Felix could even yelp at the sudden agony, he got lifted by his collar like a sandbag. How the hell do you know that I have problems down there? JD tightened his grip on Felix's collar and threatened, no one knows this information. So you better speak little bastard before I torture you in my basement. Although Felix's legs and broken arm dangled in the air, his expression on the other hand was indifferent as ever. He simply eyed the livid JD and bullshitted his way through like always, I didn't know that you had problems down there. I only told you this piece of information, since you are a man, and I know that no matter if a man is healthy or sick, they will desire the shapeshifter penis. A bit embarrassed, JD changed back to his polite businessman's expression, as he put Felix down and fixed his wrinkled collar for him. After he returned Felix to his original state, he rubbed his hands together and coughed, Brother Felix don't mind me just now, as I always get affected emotionally whenever something related to my manhood is mentioned. No need to say more Brother JD. The less I know about your personal life, the better our business relationship will be. Felix returned to his seat and asked the Queen to heal his arm. It might cost him a quite sum, but it was worth it in his eyes. After all, the information he relied on to entice JD was going to get him not just his request but an extra worthwhile trade. That was his real target. He understood clearly that JD was desperate to treat his erectile dysfunction by any means possible, and the shapeshifter penis Felix saw before in Luby's shop was one of the best-known ways to bypass the condition entirely. He would be a fool to not take advantage of JD's scandal in his previous life to his advantage. Now what I want to know is. He took a sip from his coffee mug and smiled, what are you willing to trade for this piece of information? I can accept your request while also adding a 10% discount to 1000 medium and high stones you buy from my shop. JD didn't waste even a second before giving him the best offer possible to Felix. 
he could have negotiated for better, but he was in a rush to get the information from Felix. Simply because he spent decades trying to locate a potion, substance, medicine, or anything to treat his condition, but to no avail. He was left with only making a plea for the shops to contact him the moment one of those items appeared in their stock. I hope you are satisfied with my price. Satisfied and content, Felix nodded with a smile. It is enough brother JD, and no need for a contract between this friendship deal. I will gladly make the first move and tell you that what you seek is at Luby Bloodline Shop. He gave a half shrug and added, I have no idea how that bastard obtained it. But, I saw it there the last time I went to buy something. Joyful, JD laughed and extended his hand for a handshake. You truly deserve my friendship with your quick thinking. Since we are not doing contract let's shake hands on it like gentlemen. Just what I prefer brother JD. Felix shook his hand with a chuckle as well. JD transferred the serial number of the stones to Felix without hesitation and offered, I can take care of the shipping as well if you want. No need I want to use the wormhole express, he explained, but before doing so I want to add as many items as possible, so I can deliver them all at the same time to lower the costs. Good thinking brother Felix. He curled his lips in disgust and said, it is always better to ship as much as possible using those blood-sucking worms express, indeed. Felix put the mug on the table and stood up, planning to leave. He had no reason to remain any more and delay JD from running his errand. He clearly saw a hint of rush in JD's eyes, but he didn't say anything to not appear disrespectful. So Felix decided not to extend his welcome and bounce. Every favorable action could earn him extra brownies with JD. He knew that this man was one of the few individuals he had to hug their thighs if he wanted a stable platform to get his stones from. All right, I will see myself out. He bowed his head slightly and said, Goodbye brother JD until we meet again. Goodbye, and my shop will always be open to you. JD said out loud while waving his hand towards Felix's retreating back. The moment Felix closed the door, JD's eyebrows instantly frowned as he tapped on his bracelet, trying to call on Luby. A few seconds later, Luby's voice resounded in the shop. To what do I owe the pleasure? Livid at hearing his nonchalant tone, JD smashed the table into two, like it was made out of moldy wood. Didn't I tell you to inform me the moment you obtain the shapeshifter penis? He roared out loud, almost causing internal bleeding in Luby's ears. So why the hell am I hearing about it from a stranger? He lowered his volume and threatened, explain yourself or you can forget about me recommending your shop to my VIP clients anymore. Sir. JD, it's not that I forgot to tell you, but that another VIP told me to reserve it for him. His voice cracked from fear of losing his VIP clients. He offered triple its price. So I can only sell it to him to not offend him. I don't give a shit if he paid triple, I can pay quadruple, and if you are still indecisive, you can create a small auction between us to bid for it fair and square. He comforted, I doubt that VIP will take it on you for it. All right, that works for me just fine. Luby replied eagerly over the large pie that just fell in his lap. He knew that by informing JD himself, he could have got the same result. However, he still didn't as he had signed a contract with that VIP forbidding him from mentioning any details about the shapeshifter penis to anyone. But now that JD found out about it from another source unrelated to him, he was more than glad. Heck, he wished he knew the name of that stranger to give him a good kiss on the cheek. Good, now make it happen ASAP. And call me when you are done. He threatened him openly, I tolerate no games or tricks. So you better not bullshit me with that VIP. Otherwise, you would not like the outcome. Luby did not dare to make a fart after hearing his threat, since he understood that JD had ways to find his real address. You got it, sir. Three days from now you will hear from me about the date of the auction. JD immediately hanged up after getting the confirmation he wanted. Afterward, he stared at the shop in trance in deep thought, did he really not know about my secret, or he found out about it somehow and lied? Whatever it is, this problem of mine will be fixed once and for all. At that point, it won't matter if he lied or not since there will be no issue in the first place. He glanced at his crotch that was lying dormant and unexpectedly put his hands inside his pants. Soon the dragon shall awaken with multiple shapes and forms. He grinned, beware ladies for I am about to come. JD already began counting his eggs before the chicken even laid them. 
hopefully, his dream wouldn't get shattered by the other VIP. After all, he might be just as desperate as him. Chapter 54 In the family headquarter, at the gym. Felix was currently running on the treadmill, wearing tight sportswear and airpods on his ears. His breath was steady and had only a few sweat drops on his forehead. Running next to him was Olivia who had the same outfit on. The only difference was that her struggle to finish the run was clearly shown through her heavy breaths. Although a month already passed by, she still wasn't used to running 5 kilometers each day, plus doing other exercises at once. A few minutes later, Felix got off the treadmill and started to stretch on the ground, preparing to do 100 push-ups, 100 squats, 100 sit-ups. He felt that 50 for each exercise was just a waste of time for him, as it was not actually helping his body fitness improve at all. So, he doubled the amount on day 3 since the camp started to this point in time. Felix, how do you feel about the pain tolerance that's going to start tomorrow? Olivia stopped the treadmill and sat down next to Felix. Confused, Felix removed the AirPods and asked, Did you say something Ollie? Olivia repeated what she said and added with a hint of fear in her eyes, Also do you think they will shock us with electricity to build our tolerance or just beat us with sticks as I saw in videos? What's going on that mind of yours to think like that? He facepalmed and explained, Did you forget about the UVR? They can simply use the party feature and take all of us inside then buy the awakening package from the Queen AI. What does it do? Are we going to practice awakening? Exactly like you said, but with more depth. He pointed at his back and Olivia understood what he meant. She laid her hands on it and began to push him down the floor, helping him stretch. After a couple of pushes, he thanked her and continued his explanation. To awaken in real life there are only two paths. 1. Succeed and emerge as an awakened, or die in your own agony while slowly watching your flesh dissolve. However in the case of awakening in the UVR, the pain degree can be controlled, and the process can be cancelled whenever things start to get ugly. So this is how it is going to be. Just like a mock exam. She crinkled her eyes and nose and said, now my cousins who can't even handle the pain from the practice won't dare to awaken for real, right Felix? Her happiness was understandable, as before 70% of her cousins were destined to die based on what Felix said, but now with this mock practice, she believed that no one would continue on treading this path, knowingly that awakening was impossible. After all, it was only common sense to not risk awakening for real, when the mock practice wasn't passed successfully. However, Felix sneered at her naive thoughts, stop fooling yourself Ollie, at this point, no one is going to back out no matter what happened. They will always think that they are the chosen ones destined to awaken. So they will go for it either officially or hidden, even if they couldn't handle 1% pain from the practice. Can't I just inform them that to have better chances, they will need more pain relief bottles? She murmured with her shoulder sloshed. Felix replied calmly while doing his push-ups, be my guest, just don't get your hopes up, since whether you informed them or not, the maximum bottles they can have is still two that's only if they were lucky and bought them at the start. So nothing can be done then? I really don't want to see my sisters die. She chewed on her lips and stared at him with watery eyes. Annoyed by her whining, he stopped doing his push-ups and point a finger at her head, focus on yourself first. I doubt you will be able to awaken with even 20% duration. He scolded her, so before putting death flags on others, remove the one on your head first. Olivia immediately held her tongue after realizing that Felix was right. Just because she only had a 20% duration, it didn't mean that the pain degree would be lowered. This meant that she was still standing on a thin line, as her pain tolerance was absolutely horrible. So, she stopped worrying about her sisters and focused on finishing the rest of the exercises. Tomorrow morning at 9am. Juniors and the upper echelon of the family all gathered on the 35th floor. Children you did well the past month. Some excelled at the training, while some performed subpar. But what's important is that all of you took the training seriously and worked hard. So you deserve a round of applause from us elders and your parents. Clap, clap applause rained down on the embarrassed juniors immediately after Robert finished saying his piece. The juniors could only scratch their cheeks or avoid looking at their parents' proud expression. They honestly felt like the applause was a tad over the top as the majority of them actually straight up didn't finish 50% of the exercises each day. 
In their eyes, the applause was exactly like being cheered on for obtaining a participation reward. Regardless, most of them still had a hint of pleasure at this shower of approval. As the moment Felix went to that island and revived his project, they were getting nothing but punishments and disappointed looks. So, participation reward or not, they would gladly take it with open arms. They were that desperate for a win. Abraham, why don't you take it from here? After the applause died down, Robert passed the hot potato of informing them of the next hellish training to Abraham, while sneaking behind the elders with a tired expression. Abraham who was minding his own business peacefully turned speechless after seeing Robert's shameless action. Fucking hell, we should have realized that drawing straws to be the informer was a bad decision when this old fart was playing with us, irked. Abraham stood up with black lines on his forehead and trod towards the podium to cover for Robert. Reigning the drawing straw agreement is really a classic move from brother Robert. I expected nothing less from such a business genius. Albert mused at Robert who was being served coffee with a polite smile. You have successfully passed the first fitness training task. But this was just the easiest one of all the upcoming tasks, so don't get too full of yourself and keep working diligently. He coughed and said at a faster pace. Now that's out of the way. It's time to start the next task, which is the awakening mock practice, or in other words, the pain tolerance training. To not waste time, we will start right away. He nodded his head at the elders to make a move first. The elders tapped on their bracelet, showing that sentence Felix showed to his cousins before, and stood in front of the four lines that were made by the juniors. This task will be carried out inside the UVR, and before you get excited, you should know that you are merely entering the white personal room of the user, not the UVR world itself. So don't get your hopes up. The light that shone in the eyes of the juniors was extinguished as fast as it appeared. Uncaring about their disappointment, Abraham began explaining how the party feature of the AP bracelet worked. His explanation was almost exactly as Felix's, quick and straight to the point. The juniors began doing exactly as he said, by memorizing the sentence and lying on the ground after. Begin the process. As soon as they heard Abraham's thunderous declaration, the elders started touching the junior's foreheads. A couple of minutes later, the last junior closed his eyes and stopped moving just like the rest. Inside the white room of Elder Charlotte, Felix leaned on the wall and yawned in utter boredom at Charlotte's detailed illustration of how the awakening mock practice was going to be. It turned out that Abraham didn't explain the process, as he planned for the elders to do so inside their rooms. All right, I think everyone has some idea of how the integration process is going to be now. She clapped her hands to wake up Felix who was dozing off and asked, who wants to go first for a quick demonstration? However, the juniors acted deaf at her question, as each of them avoided eye contact with her. Felix chuckled softly at this sight, as it reminded him of the time he was acting in the classroom after the teacher asked a question. Meanwhile, Charlotte didn't find this sight funny at all since the last thing she wanted was cowards on the group she was responsible over for the next month. Kids, the pain is going to be set at 5% of the real thing. So if you don't have the guts to practice the awakening, do us all a favor and just back off from now to save us resources and time, okay? Her taunt bore fruits, as the juniors who were all hesitant to be the first to go, all started raising their hands and voices to be picked after being looked down upon like this. Pleased, Charlotte pointed at one randomly and informed him, prepare your mentality and relax your body. The moment I push the injection needle that is filled with 1% beast's bloodline in your heart, the process will begin. The junior couldn't help but sweat buckets from his body pores, as his eyes landed on that long needle that was about to penetrate his heart. He wiped his sweaty palms with his sleeves and calmed his heartbeats a bit. Regardless of his fear, he understood clearly that he couldn't back down from this demonstration. After all, if he was terrified of even a needle, there was no need to bother continuing treading on this path, since those needles were going to be needed in each integration. So, he could only gulp a mouthful and nod at Charlotte to begin the process. Without further ado, Charlotte pushed the long needle deep in his heart and injected all of its content directly inside. The junior felt a momentary pain from the penetration, almost causing him to yelp out loud. But that was it. The bloodline that was injected in his heart did nothing but spread apart and travel through his bloodstream, reaching every nook and cranny of the body without harming him at all. Just like a peaceful guest coming to visit. Minutes slowly passed, and still, nothing happened. 
the juniors watched in bewilderment at their cousin, who had his eyebrows frowned in worry and confusion. Just as he wanted to open his mouth to ask the elder what was going on. A. An ear-piercing shriek escaped from his mouth, scaring the shit out of everyone near him. No one expected such a high-pitched scream to come out of a rough-looking young man like him. Speechless, Felix glanced at his cousin who was wailing with tears and snort in his face, while flaying his limbs around, like a fish captured in a net, if this is how you act when dealing with only 5%. Are you going to levitate in the air when you take 100%? He covered his eyes at this embarrassing sight, not wanting to see any more, if everyone is like him. Then we will lose at least 80% of our juniors in the process. Meanwhile, Charlotte's eyes were emitting waves of despair at this sight. She was truly about to lose faith in those juniors if everyone's pain tolerance was the same as him, I hope others perform better. Otherwise, by the time they try to awaken for real. Only dead bodies will welcome us, hopeful, she switched her sight from the junior who passed out due to pain, marking the failure of the process, to the rest, who had horror clouding their faces. They knew that fainting meant instant death. So for their cousin to actually fail awakening from just 5% of the pain, they couldn't help but feel a sudden chill at the thought of awakening for real with 100%. It was only now, that the true face of awakening was shown to them in all of its glory and obscurity that the World Council was hiding from them. Chapter 55 Drag him to the side, and sit down. Charlotte didn't wait for them to break into chatter after that sight. She had no plans to alleviate their worry and fear, as their stay inside her room was limited to four hours, thus she had to make the best of it. We have no time to waste by going one by one. So you will all start at the same time. She saw that her order wasn't taken into consideration, as each junior had their eyes either fixed on their cousin who was twitching from time to time, or at their toes counting how many they have. Irritated, she frowned her eyebrows and decided to at least motivate them. Otherwise, their anxiety would affect their awakening process. We will start with 5% and 10 minutes, and if you fainted during it, it means you are out. She extended her hand widespread, showing five fingers and added, but if you manage to stay awake until the duration passed, you will be rewarded with 500 merits. Understood? Understood. They replied with a little bit of vigor. But, their nervous expression did not change much. After all, no amount of merit could encourage them to look lightly at the integration process, following the horrifying scene they just regarded. Felix sat down first in a meditation position and waited for Charlotte to make a move. His cousin soon did the same, while looking at the long needles, hovering near their hearts. Gulping noises resounded in the room, each time the piercing tips of those needles gleamed under the light. Suddenly, one of the females couldn't handle the view anymore and fainted with eyes rolled at the back of her head, thud. The moment the body hit the ground everyone stared at her speechlessly, not knowing why the hell was she here when she had trypanophobia. Helpless, Charlotte rubbed her eyelids and kicked her outside of the UVR. After all, she was not qualified to awaken if she couldn't even handle the image of a needle. Nonetheless penetrating her heart with it. She would probably get a heart attack immediately if that happened. Trypanophobia was not a condition to be taken lightly. Queen AI carry on please. Charlotte requested politely for the queen to handle the process. As expected from the queen, her ways were always efficient and quick, as she didn't give anyone a chance to overthink, before she penetrated their hearts. A few minutes later, a symphony of high-pitched shrieks marked the beginning of the awakening process. Meanwhile, Felix sat composedly with his eyes closed, without moving an inch or letting a single fart. In his eyes, this pain compared to the experiences and hardships he went through in his previous life was merely a joke. No one could understand the tortures he had to face in his path before becoming a third-stage bloodliner. So, he took it like a champ. A clear contrast to the rest who were threshing and twitching around, like fish on land, as always, the only reliable junior in the family is Felix. Charlotte smiled pleasantly at the sight of Felix sitting like a stone statue. She then glanced at the others who either fainted on the floor with foam on their mouths or still wailing like pigs getting slaughtered. This is going to be a long month. She sighed. Ten minutes quickly passed by. But, for those who still did not faint, it felt like ten years. The moment the last second ticked by, the pain instantly vanished leaving them feeling empty inside, like everything was merely a dream. 
all right from the nine of you three has passed successfully, while the others failed miserably. Composed, Charlotte informed them of their results. However, only Felix was actually listening to her fully, as the others just kept staring at the ceiling absent-mindedly. Charlotte unbothered by their lackluster response, kept on going, for those who passed, they can either choose to repeat the same practice with others who failed, or upgrade the pain percentage and duration. Can I upgrade my practice to reach half the power of the real awakening? Suddenly the cousins who were playing dead were shaken out of their days forcefully by Felix's bold and insane request. They didn't dare to believe that he had actually asked to upgrade from 5% and 10 minutes to 50% and 15 minutes. Such a large upgrade was simply what a masochist would ask for. On the other hand, Charlotte's eyes gleamed with delight at his request. Her cold unmoving lips couldn't help but widen a bit. Yet, what came out of her mouth was the total opposite of her creepy expression. Are you sure Felix? You should know that there is no need for a rush since you guys still have a whole month to get used to the process. She asked with good intentions. Yes Elder, I am positive. He suddenly paused and added with a long exhale, I believe that even though the training plan you made for us is good, it will not be enough to handle the awakening one month later. He suggested with a polite smile, in my humble opinion, it is much better if we used half the power to practice each day during those 25 days. And during the remaining 5 days, we try to awaken for real with 100%. This method was quite deadly, as many juniors wouldn't be able to handle the agony and keep constantly fainting until they either give up on awakening once for all, or preserve until the real awakening day. At that point, those who stuck with the constant torture would have higher chances of succeeding for real, since the pain duration would actually get reduced by the potions. I hope you take my opinion into consideration, as this babysitting plan of yours is truly not going to achieve much, but provide us with fake hope that we can awaken. He gave a half shrug and added, but in reality, we will just end up dying in our pool of blood. Felix knew that it was out of his character to go beyond his way and help others. However, Olivia's sorrowful expression on the treadmill popped out in his mind just before he wanted to stop speaking. In the end, he decided to give them that freebie due to her. If the elders considered his advice, they should have at least 40% of juniors succeed. Yet, the best part of his plan wasn't even that, but the fact that the rest who never had chances to awaken in the first place, was going to be slapped by the reality that fate had other plans for them than to be part of the awakened race. At that point, giving up was certain, and the moment they do so, the elders were going to retrieve their bloodlines bottles, since they couldn't waste resources on commoners, well, I have nothing much to lose if I save the future lives of those morons. They might actually feel like they own me a favor. Felix mused in his mind after saying his piece. Charlotte's eyes were on the verge of spewing beams of light, each time she heard his voice, like angels singing heavenly music in her ears. Felix recoiled a bit at the creepy way she kept looking at him. But soon his tense shoulders eased up as he heard her say, what you said is exactly what I had on my mind, and I even shared this plan to the elders and parents. She scoffed, but the majority refused, as they believed that it was too much for them to handle at the very beginning. So I could only follow their decision and use this childish plan of upgrading the pain slowly. She sighed in dejection. However, that expression didn't even stick for one second before it got replaced by a devilish glint that sent cold shivers on everyone's back, but now that you suggested it, and with me supporting it, they will have no choice but to follow our plan. She chuckled and said, otherwise their face will be slapped after they see you practicing with 50% while their children with 5%. Elder Charlotte, we are only thinking about their safety nothing more. If not, we would have never mentioned it. Felix rubbed his hands and grinned as well. Charlotte laughed sadistically for the first time while staring at the juniors who were shivering on the floor in fear from the voices of this evil Jew. He he, dear Felix the first share the same view as you. This is all for them. Too bad no one appreciates our goodwill. Indeed. Both of them shared eye contact and licked their lips as they stared at those juniors, like sheep waiting for slaughter. Three hours later. Back in reality, every junior woke up with a pool of sweat underneath them. They rubbed their bloodshot eyes and sighed in relief after finishing today's practice. It was truly a hell on earth. Meanwhile, in front of Charlotte, eight juniors opened their grey dead eyes with numb expressions, like they just got out of a three hours torture. Sadly, that was exactly what happened inside Charlotte's room. 
After Felix gritted his teeth and took half the power of awakening without letting even a squeal, his cousins underestimated the pain greatly. After all, if Felix didn't even scream, the pain mustn't be that bad, right? Wrong. Their naive thoughts caused them to faint instantly the moment the process began. They didn't even last for three seconds before foam came out of their mouths like they were shocked by electricity. What's even worse, was the fact that they had to wake up and start all over again. This continued for three hours straight until they returned from the UVR with this shape. If it wasn't for few breaks here and there inside the room, their brains might have short circuits. The elders and seniors began to notice the weirdness of Charlotte's group. Since the other groups were either sweating or in worse cases trembling. Meanwhile, Charlotte's group appeared like a pack of zombies not responding to anything. Only Felix had a normal expression on his face as he conversed softly with Charlotte and laughing from time to time. What's happened inside? Is the batch you took that bad to not even handle 5% pain for 10 minutes or what? Abraham approached them with a confused expression. Oh, not that. Charlotte shook her head and answered casually, I just used the plan I proposed the last time, but got turned down by you softies, that's all. Abraham and the senior's expression instantly turned dark after hearing her reason. What the hell elder Charlotte? You have no right to do that to my child. Even if you are an elder, you should still follow the rules of the family and abide by them. Otherwise, you will be removed from your position. A fuming mother pointed her shaky finger at her. Other parents all started shouting out loud in support of the mother's claim. Their fury was understandable, as every one of those eight juniors kept looking at the ceiling or the ground absent-mindedly while chuckling like retards from time to time. Charlotte didn't bat an eyelid at their tantrum. She just crossed her arms above her chest and said in utter contempt, First of all, I only followed my plan after Felix suggested the same thing to me as well. She smiled in his direction, he like a true man just gritted his teeth and didn't let a single yelp, after taking 50% of awakening pain for over 15 minutes. She refocused on the parents and asked, So tell me, if he can do that, why can't your wastrels do the same? Is he made of metal or his pain sensors are dead? No. It is simply because he can take hardship while they can't. She insulted their children in front of their faces, not caring about holding back. Felix neither blushed nor flushed, he simply kept blinking at Charlotte with expectation for more compliments. Charlotte chuckled at the sight of his shameless begging for flattery. But she had to disappoint him by continuing to address the parents' fury. I will tell you right now that I will hold no responsibility after your kids die during the awakening due to your soft approach inside the UVR, where they can't even die. She turned around, planning to return to her room. However, her calm voice kept ringing in the ears of everyone. You can either break them during the awakening mock practice or give them false hope that awakening was achievable by your mild approach. It's up to you, not me. Chapter 56 The parents weren't able to say anything, as she left them stranded in the middle of the argument like this. Actually, even if she stayed, they didn't have any solid counterargument to add on. Especially, when Felix whipped out his phone and started playing in a game like he never entered the UVR with their children. In the end, they didn't want to embarrass themselves any further. So they just let it go and stopped mentioning this issue anymore. After all, it wasn't like their kids were dead or anything. Abraham decided to intervene at this point to change the subject, by asking Felix with a hint of disbelief in his tone, did she say the truth? You managed to handle 50% without issues? It was nothing much, to be honest. He lifted his head from the phone and smiled, I believe that my cousins can handle it as well if they got exposed to that pain. Some of them might only need three times while some will need more. But in the end, I trust in their tolerance to help them pass through it successfully. You just need to give them a chance. Am I right guys? He spread his hands with a sincere smile as he looked at his cousins. In the eyes of the elders and seniors, he really resembled an angle who had his cousin's well-being set as a priority. However, the juniors only saw the devil in that form, trying to drag them to hell with him. But, they could do nothing about it and just get dragged with a smile on their faces. He is right. We want to change the plan as well and start training the same way as he does. He is no better than us, if he could do it, we can achieve it as well. We just need a little bit more time than him that's all. 
a short red-haired cousin trembled each time a boastful sentence came out of his stiff lips. In the end, he couldn't handle saying more and passed the ball to his cousins. Right guys? The rest had no one to save them from this shit hole that Felix threw them in. They understood that only by accepting his flattery would they save face for their parents. Thus, the poor lads could only support their cousin with fake bravado. Indeed, 5% was nothing, I didn't even faint. Even though I passed out, I firmly believe that I will not faint next time during 50%. Honestly, I was planning to ask for a 50% upgrade as well. But I thought it was too high profile. Nonchalant, a young man said with his head lowered, too engrossed in cleaning his glasses with his t-shirt. Fuck, why don't you say that while lifting your head James? I dare you. Imagine fainting at 5%, yet daring to say such bullshit. You really love slapping your parents' faces don't you James? Enough insulting him guys. He passed out over 30 times during the past 4 hours in my group. Sarah whirled her finger at her temple and said, so I believe that really messed up his head. Damn 30 times in 4 hours? He must have broken some world record with that. Meanwhile, I only fainted 15 times. At least you passed out 15 times. A cousin sighed in dejection, I only fainted four times before managing to handle the pain. Me only three times. I believe if I had time, I could have reached nine. No other elders and the parents all turned speechless after hearing them humble brag about the number of times they fainted. They expected them to live up to Felix's challenge and accept the same method he used. But why the hell did it turn into a competition between them over the amount of fainting? Have they finally realized that competing with Felix is meaningless and it's better to just contend with each other? I think they need another confidence boost, worried about this messed up sight. Abraham pondered with narrowed eyes at the family's future leaders, laughing and flattering each other's fainting number like morons. Suddenly he saw them lifting the arrogant James and throwing him in the air while chanting his name out loud. What the fuck rascals? He slapped the podium with his palm and scolded, you still dare to celebrate after your trashy performance? You really are getting bolder by the day. Elder, someone made an online search and found out that James truly broke the world record of fainting in a short amount. Kenny who stood silently throughout the entire farce made his entrance with a polite smile. So they wanted to celebrate this achievement. Midair, James removed his glasses and lowered his head to clean them. Elder, you told us that we need to find something unique that sets us apart from the rest. He smirked arrogantly, well I found my talent in this life, and that is being the best at fainting worldwide. Heh, I can already see myself making tours around the world, showcasing everyone my gift. This is my path in my life, and I am glad I found it this early. The juniors couldn't help but put him on the floor and distance themselves from him after hearing his retarded dream. They truly began to believe that he had a screw loose after fainting that many times continuously. Unbothered by the dumbstruck and worried gazes everyone was giving him, James wore his glasses back on and left the floor with that confident smirk still planted on his face. He was truly not bullshitting them. Meanwhile, Felix had absolutely no idea what was happening around him. Since the moment he answered Abraham, he wore his AirPods and focused on playing his league match under the curses of his teammates for going AFK. Furious elders, embarrassed parents, humble bragging juniors, Felix playing on his phone, and finally James who walked out of the floor arrogantly to pursue his dream. This gathering could not get any weirder. So the elders just excused everyone and ended the assembly early, on this uncanny note. Indifferent, Felix threw his broken phone in the garbage bin immediately after entering his room. The toxicity of League's community was truly one of the deadliest poisons in the universe. Without further ado, he went to the bathroom first, planning to take a quick shower. So he could make a phone call to the Wormhole Express after. It turned out, the lady boss already contacted him earlier this morning, to inform him about the shipment arrival in her shop. That meant, he finally could use the serial codes of the pain relief potions without a problem. He was simply waiting for them, so he could make one delivery that includes everything he bought in the UVR all at once. Ten minutes later. He sat on the couch, wearing only a bathroom rob on. He was obviously impatient to not even dress up first, before making the call. Fuck me, I don't remember their phone number. Annoyed, he asked for the all-knowing queen to give it to him. 
suddenly, a long list of phone numbers was displayed before him, each for a different race. His eyebrows twitched, as he forgot to mention that he wanted the human branch one, sorry, can I have the one for humans? As you wish Sir Felix, the Queen left only one number on the long list and even highlighted it with green light, so he wouldn't miss it. Felix smiled and thanked her. Although, Felix could simply just order her around and she would obey since she was merely a basic version of the real queen. He still felt that it was improper, as she was always nice to him, especially in his lowest during his previous life. So, he always treated her like a real person and only made requests, not orders. Ring ring ring. Clack, hello, this is Wormhole Express Human Branch. How can I help you? A warm enthusiastic female voice resonated in the room. Hello, this is Felix Maxwell, from planet Earth that exists on the borders of the Alexander's Kingdom. I called your company to ask for a few items I purchased in the UVR to be delivered. Felix gave a professional straight-to-point response. We are happy to do business with you, sir. I just need your AP bracelet ID number first to obtain your personal details. She paused and requested, can I have your permission to do so? Of course, be my guest. A few moments later, she informed him, all right, we have your planet coordinates as well as your home address. Do you want us to deliver your items to your current address or you want to change it? Leave it be. I want my stuff to arrive here, he replied. Good, now that we got that out of the way, I need to ask if you have the serial codes of the purchased products, or they are still in the seller's hands. Without answering, Felix swiped his finger left on the hologram and sent all of his items' serial codes, from potions to stones. Pleased by his cooperation, her voice got a bit warmer. Finally we need to discuss the delivery method and their prices. If you are not familiar with them, I can explain in detail each one benefits and their required payment. No need, I want to choose the basic 7 days delivery plan. Felix didn't bother hearing her explanation of those VIP methods that he couldn't afford even with his current capital. As you wish sir. Based on the current number of items you provided us, the delivery price shall be 550. 500 SC. Do you give me permission to deduct it from your bank account? She requested with a tone lacking in the previous warmness. It seemed that she wasn't pleased by his commoner choice. Go ahead, composed, he gave her his permission. Yet, his hand that was clutching his chest in pain, said otherwise, fucking blood-sucking wormpires, asking for half a million to deliver thirty items or less, peep. His bracelet vibrated slightly, entailing that the payment had been successfully transferred. It was a great pleasure dealing business with you sir. I hope you have a nice day, goodbye. She instantly hanged up after getting the money, not waiting a single second to hear his response. Felix wasn't mad even a bit at her disrespectful way of treating him. He understood that every basic customer like him was treated like this by every company. Whether in the UVR or the universe. You only get shown respect when you slap them with your massive donger bank account. He stood up from the couch and went to order lunch. Yet his thoughts were on a completely different matter. His mind was trying its best to find a way that could help him avoid his family after he awakened seven days later. He never planned to wait until the end of the month and do it with his cousins, as the faster he awakened the earlier he would reach greater purity in his integration, and began his climbing journey on the SG individual ranking ladder. If he went and did so, he must hide thoroughly, since it was quite impolite to awaken without informing the elders and his grandfather after all the care they showed him. The way of hiding himself was what annoyed him the most. He simply couldn't disappear for 23 or 24 days straight. The elders weren't fools to not figure out that he was hiding from them, fuck it, I will show my best form during those seven days, and pretend that I was sick after. As long as I don't obtain a high-profile mutations, I should be safe. Felix stopped bothering too much about it and just decided to go with the cheesiest trick in the book. As his thoughts became clear, he remembered his free-loading tenet. Asna where did you go again? I thought you had nothing to watch. So why didn't I hear anything from you the entire day? A few minutes later, no response came through. He repeatedly called yet still nothing. This time he wasn't mad at her lackluster response, as he figured out pretty quick that she was probably asleep. His guess was right, as Asna was really sleeping peacefully on a mist-made bed, with dark eyes from mental exhaustion. 
it was only a natural result after she spent six months binge-watching movies and series without a pause. No matter if her body needed sleep or not, the consciousness always needed a break from time to time. Otherwise, she would turn insane. Sleep was truly a gift one should treasure dearly, as some people couldn't even enjoy such a basic human need. Chapter 57 Eager and quite impatient, Felix roamed around the living room with his hands folded behind his back. He couldn't sit still for even a second, as his items were about to arrive in a couple of seconds. A week had already passed by in the blink of an eye. Felix already stopped going to the awakening mock practice after successfully enduring 100% for over 20 minutes continuously. His results showcased that he was absolutely ready to awaken for real. Thus, there was no point in torturing himself with the rest. Meanwhile, the same couldn't be said about his cousins, as they weren't able to even endure the basic 50% for five minutes before passing out. This constant daily torture forced ten juniors to quiet the training camp and return their bloodlines bottles to the family. The only one who performed only below Felix was Noah, as he managed to endure 50% for 20 minutes. However, the process wasn't smooth or pretty like Felix's. In fact, by the end of the duration, he flat out fainted for 12 hours straight. The sight scared the elders out of their wits, as they believed that his brain must have been damaged in some way or form. Thankfully, his cold personality was still the same after he woke up. However, the situation he caused, managed to raise some warning flags on the elders' heads. They realized that it was a bit too much for the juniors to get tortured like that every single day without a break. So, they changed the schedule from seven days of practice to only four days. What's going on? Am I really unlucky to get an amateur wormpire, or something happened during the delivery? Irritated and somewhat confused, Felix scratched his cheek and glanced again at his bracelet. It turned out, his delivery was delayed by a whopping two hours, which was honestly unacceptable behavior. Felix didn't pay half a million to be treated like this. It was one thing to get hanged up, on his face by their customer service. But another, to have his delivery messed up like this. You asked for this. Finally, he wasn't able to handle it anymore and decided to rant on their customer service about this shitty way of treating their customers. However, just as he tried to dial their phone number, his finger froze in its place, took you long enough. Felix's eyes brightened up at the sight of wind rushing from the windows furiously towards the center of his living room. Yet, the weird part was that not a single object or furniture got displaced. It was like the space in the room froze everything inside, even Felix's body. A few seconds later a small crack emerged midair in the exact spot where the wind was rushing before. Bewildered and speechless, Felix sized up the small crack that was forcefully getting stretched by a fat blue scaled worm that kept wriggling its body to enter the room, but to no avail. After a few more attempts, it gave up and just remained stuck in the spatial crack with half of its body dangled, almost touching the ground. Hello is anyone there? The space receptors of the blue worm kept flickering around, trying to sense any life-form presence. Suddenly, it paused its actions after noticing Felix sitting on the couch. Cough, I could use some help, sir. It lifted one receptor and pointed at Felix. I doubt that you want to sleep while looking at a fat worm stuck in your room. Don't you kind sir? Although its way of asking was polite, Felix was still as unresponsive as ever. He simply kept staring at this human-sized worm with a deadpan expression. Should I take a video of this humiliating failed delivery, and blackmail the company? Felix was beyond livid after seeing the unprofessional farce in front of him. He truly felt like he was cheated out of a half million. However, his rationality retook control and shook his head to remove that stupid idea from his mind, no thank you, I still want my life, it was never a good option to offend the delivery companies that had his own private information, as they could easily know his hidden persona in the UVR, based on the items he bought. Even though they were heavily restricted by the SGA laws to not spread his information online, they could always find a way to, mistakenly, give it to others. Hell, even on Earth, massive companies were selling data of their users to each other on daily basis. Don't even mention those greedy delivery companies. This was the reason he chose the Wormhole Express company in the first place. As he knew that it was one of the best delivery companies in the universe that took pride in three things, fast delivery, secure information, and professional service. But if he blackmailed them, 
he would have left them with no choice but to drop all pretense and annihilate him. Hello. I know you can hear me. I am talking straight in your mind. The fatty worm kept yapping constantly in his mind, not letting him a single moment to think, although I can't blackmail the company. This annoying fatty is another matter, Felix licked his lips and approached the spatial crack, unworried about being affected by it. After all, the space worm race had complete control over the element of space. Thus, as long as the fatty was near him, the crack couldn't devour him and his room. Stop drooling on my carpet fatty, lest I put a lamp close to your skin. He threatened the blue worm immediately after seeing his acidic drool ruining the carpet. Fatty who was about to open his mouth to thank Felix shivered at his threat and closed its tiny mouth shut. Satisfied by his submissiveness, he patted his head like a pet. Before Fatty could sound his displeasure at this downgrading treatment. Felix grabbed his receptus and brought it close to his face. Now you little shit. I am extremely pissed that the company sent an amateur like you, instead of a professional. He extended three fingers near his receptus and admonished him, first you were late by two hours. Second, you got stuck inside your own spatial hole, like a moron, and finally, you begged your customer for assistance. You literally broke two of your company's main pillars on one delivery. The fatty couldn't even argue back, as everything Felix said was correct. He knew that he messed up this delivery pretty badly. So, he kept his silence obediently not daring to anger him any further. In his mind, he just needed to listen to Felix's rant for a while and everything should be back on track. Unfortunately, Felix's rant was merely the beginning of his nightmare. If it was another customer, they won't hesitate to report your performance to your supervisor. But luckily, you met me. Felix let go of his receptus and smiled, an easygoing person who let bygones be bygones. But you are still required to give some compensation over the damages you caused me. The fatty wasn't an idiot to not realize that his fate was in the hands of Felix's. But, to get blackmailed like this, still left a sour taste in his mouth. What do you mean I caused you damages? He scoffed and said, besides some burnt marks in your carpet. I broke nothing else. So I can gladly pay its damage if you willed me to. How about 600 SC for a new carpet? Quite a generous price don't you think? He offered with a hint of mockery in his tone. Unbothered by his hidden insults, Felix brought a chair near the crack and sat on it, backward. Who said anything about physical damages? What I meant is the harm you caused to my mental health. His shoulders slumped down, as he continued lying through his teeth. You had no idea that I planned to awaken today. I was just waiting for my items to arrive to start the process. But now after this farce, and especially seeing your ugly face stuck in my room like this, how am I supposed to awaken? You ruined my mental preparation for awakening that took me years of effort to build. But now I don't know when I am going to build it again or how long it will take, and this is all because of you little shit. He pointed his finger at him and asked, so tell me how are you going to compensate me? The fatty worm realized that he had no way out from this shit hole but to pay a heavy bribe to shush Felix. Otherwise, his job as a delivery worm was over. He would rather pay him than lose his job. As in his race culture, being a lazy unemployed worm meant only one thing, that was getting isolated by everyone until he commits a star suicide. So, he could only sigh at his dogshit luck and inform Felix of his bribe. I will give you my spatial holding chip. It's the only valuable thing I have in my possession. Just get me out of here. My skin is getting rough from this long sunlight exposure. He shuddered and said, my wife will beat me up if she saw it. Amused, Felix chuckled slightly at the fatty worm, who was trying desperately to hide from the sunlight. Those space worms weren't being nicknamed as wormpires for no reason. In fact, if it wasn't for the many similarities between them and the vampire race, no one would have mentioned it in the first place. However, Felix still didn't give him a hand. He just grinned wickedly and watched him squirm around in anguish. The bastard truly deserved it, as he tried to fool him by saying that the spatial card was the only valuable thing in his possession. Maybe, if others who lacked knowledge would dance in joy after getting the card. But to Felix, it meant nothing, since he could simply buy it from the UVR. What he truly wanted from the worm was actually him. I will take the card in compensation for the physical damages you caused to my carpet that was gifted by my late parents. 
the only gift they left me after passing away. God bless their souls. Felix kissed two fingers and pointed them in the air with a mournful expression. He truly had zero shame to use his dead parents as a source of blackmail. But honestly, with his parents' personality, they pretty much would have expected nothing less from him. Stop being so shameless. Who would believe that this trashy carpet is a gift by someone? The fatty finally couldn't handle it and snapped at him. I refuse to accept such blatant blackmail. Take it back, and apologize to my parents. Otherwise, forget about reporting you to the company, I will report you to your own worm tribe for humiliating my family like this. Felix crossed his arms over his chest and added with a bone-chilling tone, I have everything recorded. Frightened and quite spooked, the fatty's receptus immediately withdrew inside his scales after realizing that Felix even knew how to report to his tribe. If Felix did as he said, the fatty losing his job would be the least of his concerns, as he would get disowned by his parents and exiled from the tribe. Since family was a sacred and glorified based on their tribal worm race culture. It should never be dishonored by anyone. Otherwise, exile awaits the offender, who the fuck is he? I thought this planet should be filled with uneducated country bumpkins. So why the hell does he knows my race traditions? His mind was in an utter mess, not able to comprehend who the fuck he was dealing with. So are you going to agree to my physical compensation or not? Felix knocked on his head, to force his receptus out. A few moments later, the fatty nodded silently, not wanting to speak any more. God knows if that prick was going to put him in another trap by twisting his words. Satisfied, Felix patted his head again. Good boy, now moving on to my mental damages that your reckless actions caused. He smiled warmly and said, I simply demand an easygoing request that you can fulfill without losing anything. The fatty flinched at his warm tone, as he expected from this demon nothing less but to get ripped off heavily. Alas, Felix's request turned even worse than what he expected. Chapter 58 I want to obtain your lifelong free delivery contract. Felix grin widened, as he laid out an ultimatum that shattered fatty's wishes of Felix going easy on him. Give me a fucking way out, you heartless devil. He broke out of his silence with a deafening roar. How dare you ask for my contract that can be used for my protection? Stop acting as I abused you. My request is quite fair if you think about it. Felix cleared his ear nonchalant and clarified, since if I reported you to your supervisor you will definitely lose your job. Hence, the contract that you are protecting now will be taken as well. So in my opinion you only have one option, and that is to accept my deal and keep your job. At least your wife won't starve. He suggested, smiling. If Fatty had eyes, he would have already started sobbing over being exploited in this inhuman manner. He was just a simple honest working worm, what did he do to deserve this heartless treatment? Too bad, no one was here to rescue him from Felix's clutches, thus the only thing he could do was curse to vent some of his aggrievedness. You are the real wormpire. You blood-sucking monster. I curse you to die at your awakening. I will never deal with your race anymore. Felix's thick skin blocked all of his curses easily. You can curse me for eternity, I don't give a crap. He stood up from his chair and extended his palm under the worm mouth. The only thing you need to do now is to stop wasting my time and give me the contract to sign. Fatty mumbled a few extra curses under his breath, then opened his mouth unwillingly, showing a set of razor-sharp teeth and a black hole that kept whirling in his throat continuously. Without warning, he spat an AP bracelet with some drops of acidic saliva on it. Felix swiftly retracted his palm, dodging those drops reflexively, smack. Livid at this messed up the attempt to harm him, Felix smacked the fatty right in his shiny head. He knew that fatty did it on purpose, as an act of revenge. After all, the black hole in his throat led to a clean oversized dimension inside his body, where all of his shipments were being stocked. There was absolutely no way for the items inside to get tainted in any way or form. Otherwise, the worm race wouldn't have become the best, in this delivery industry. You little prick, you better ask the queen to show me the contract ASAP. Felix cleaned Fatty's AP bracelet from those drops and put it on the chair. Then unexpectedly, he went to pull the curtains of every window in his room. Close them off you demon. My skin is cracking. Fatty wailed in anguish after getting exposed to a heavy dose of sunlight. 
He wasn't lying though, as his smooth moist scales were showing signs of getting dry up. Contract. Felix merely crossed his arms next to the window and observed him getting tortured like this. His personality might appear shameless and playful in front of his close relatives and friends. But deep inside, he was as psycho as Asna. Otherwise, he wouldn't have dared to blow his soul up before. Something only insane individuals would attempt to do. Queen, please present him my lifelong free delivery contract to sign. Unwilling, Fatty cried out loud, Sir Bodody, I can clearly see that you are being blackmailed. Should I activate the protection protocol and inform your emergency contact? Queen AI suggested with good intentions. However, Bodady refused the protocol and rushed her. No, just do as I say fast. If a word gets out of what happened here, my life is going to be over. So just go ahead and give him the damned contract to sign, as you wish Sir Bodady. Suddenly an aqua holographic contract hovered above the chair. Felix smiled and closed off the window's curtains. That wasn't so bad right, he smiled warmly, as he approached the sulky worm. Choke on my spit. Unperturbed, Felix ignored him and focused on the conditions and terms of the contract, reading them with his eyes. A few moments later, he grinned gleefully, as he spotted the two conditions he heard about in his previous life. Forward slash forward slash term 4. 5. The delivery must reach. Within a minimum period of three days, and always takes priority. Term 6. 3. All items delivered will be free of charge, no matter the weight or the amount. This condition doesn't include paying for empire-wide or universal-wide customs taxes. Forward slash forward slash no wonder he fought tooth and nail to force the fatty to give him this contract. Just those two terms alone were enough to make his life much easier, don't even mention the rest of the terms. Delighted, his grin kept getting wider and wider, as he continued to scroll down the page. Suddenly, his grin stiffened after he noticed a condition he never heard about before. The signatory must provide absolute safety to the contract provider from Hunter's aggression. Failing to a bid by this term will result in paying a fine of 20 billion SC, his loud voice kept getting softer and softer, each time he read a word. By the time he reached the whopping 20 billion fine, his voice resembled a mosquito buzzing sound. Silence abruptly engulfed the room, as Felix was lost for words at the mere sight of such a dastardly condition. Only now, did he realize that his information on the lifelong contract was utter garbage. He couldn't believe that he actually wasted coins to buy false intel like this. In his previous life, he was interested in getting contracted by a delivery worm after becoming a third-stage bloodliner. So he wouldn't bother about paying constantly the heavy shipment prices. However, the intel about the conditions of the contract was heavily protected by the wormhole company. Thus, Felix had to buy it in the UVR from Intel gatherers. However, the fucker who sold it to him explicitly said that the only downside about the contract was the need for Party B to help Party A to get more clients for their delivery job. Felix at that point easily believed in him, since he knew that the Wormhole Express company rewarded resources to their junior delivery worms, based on the number of deliveries achieved in a year. It was common knowledge in the UVR. But in reality, he actually needed to provide 24-7 security for Bodidi, protecting him at all costs. That was clearly an impossible task for him. Hell, Felix wasn't confident that he could protect himself, don't even mention others. What's the meaning of this 20 billion SC? Felix frowned his eyebrows and said, I don't think your life is worth even a couple of millions. This is what you get from asking something you can't afford, you poor pepper. Bodidi didn't hold back in his belittling at all, as he added, I never seen before a thick-skinned commoner like you who lusts over free delivers from my race. Something we only do to strong and rich individuals, who could afford to protect us from hunters. I see. Felix nodded his head a few times in understanding, totally ignoring Bodidi's belittling. He quickly figured out the real reason why those contracts even existed in the first place, based on Bodidi's words and the public knowledge he had. The worm race was one of the best if not the best space elemental controllers in the universe. They could create wormholes, freeze space, create dimensions, and even had a hand on creating the spatial card. However, their strength was abysmal compared to other races. Heck, even humans' bloodliners could flatten them easily if they managed to capture them. That created a race that had amazing utility abilities but trashy combat prowess. 
this meant they were juicy targets to hunters from all different races. Whether to be enslaved in secret and be used to privately open up wormholes or just harvest their body parts for potions and substance creations, what was messed up about this was the fact that hunters never targeted spaceworm seniors, as they knew that it was nay impossible to capture them or even approach them. Their space element control was no joke. However, the same couldn't be said about the juniors like Fatty Bodidi. They were still learning how to harness the space element. If it wasn't for so, Bodidi wouldn't have been stuck in his own spatial crack like a retard. The hunters took advantage of their lackluster control and targeted only them, striking exactly during the delivery work hours. As they knew that amateurs like them always left hefty trails behind after opening a wormhole. They took advantage of those trails and laid ambushes on one side of the wormhole bridge, waiting patiently for their prey to arrive at their destination or return from it. Their operation didn't have even a 5% success rate, but it was enough to kidnap or kill an amount that managed to raise warning flags on the spaceworm seniors' heads, leaving them no choice but to implement this lifelong protection contract that offered free shipments for eternity, as long as the signatory protected the safety of their junior. The moment its implementation was announced, Every individual who had absolute confidence in his reputation and strength rushed to sign it as fast as possible. After all, to have a dedicated delivery worm that served no one but them in the universe was truly a birthday wish being fulfilled. Just like that, the hunting was lowered to the bare minimum. Which was quite understandable, as the majority of those hunters were simply commoners looking for instant richness. However, if it meant offending an individual that had authority over their life and death, the hunt wasn't worth it anymore. On the other hand, there was Felix, a weakling who had neither strength nor reputation to scare off the hunters. Thus, he knew that unless he found a way to salvage this situation, he could forget about obtaining the benefits of the contract. Can we modify the contract as we please? He lifted Bodidi's bracelet in his hand and brought the hologram close to his face, trying to find any loopholes to take advantage of. Fatty sneered at his attempts and answered, Yes we can, but no matter what you say I will not lower the price tag. He laughed wickedly, sounding like two sharp razors grinding on each other. Hell, I hope you sign it. So I can commit star suicide on your son. Just so you can drown in debt. An unpleasant memory instantly resurfaced in Felix's mind after hearing the star suicide term. He was traveling with his clanmates to an undiscovered galaxy for exploration, based on newly bought news from the UVR. But unbeknownst to them, the wormhole that was supposed to take them to the new galaxy ended up being a star suicide wormhole that was opened by a Moran worm who was sick of his life. While humans kicked the buckets by themselves, the space worm race opened up a path directly to a star to burn themselves into crisp. A truly glorifying and dramatic way to die. In a normal situation, there should be no problem with this. But sadly, the wormhole they opened would stay active until it either gets turned off by the owner, or the energy that sustains it run off. This reckless selfish behavior by them caused multiple tragedies of galaxy explorers getting turned into ash, after entering one of those wormholes, thinking that it was their path to treasures and new resources. Unfortunately, Felix's crew fell into the same trap. He could never forget the brightness and the hellish heat of the star that welcomed them with open arms at the other side of the wormhole. A surprise that could make the toughest man on the universe piss his pants in fright. If it wasn't for their spaceship's high-grade alloy, and Captain Inhuman reflexes by activating all of the ship's thrusters to travel away at the speed of light, they would have been roasted alive. Furious at this bastard who reminded him of that traumatic experience, Felix started beating him ruthlessly. Who are you trying to threaten you retard? You couldn't even open a hole that fits you to do your job properly. Don't even mention opening one that can harm others. Unexpectedly, Bodidi took Felix's punches with his hard scales like a champ, not even feeling a slight itch. Yes, that's it, to the side, please. That's the spot, keep adding more pressure please, and use your legs if you need to. Felix never once felt more urge to rush awakening and gain some strength, just to beat this fatty to plump. Listen up you little shit. My patient has run out. Felix tapped on his bracelet and showed Bodidi his company's customer service number. I will modify the contract from lifelong free deliverers to only 20. But in turn, the protection bullshit must be removed. If you don't agree, I will straightway complain to your company. At least they will refund me my coins over your shitty delivery. 
Bodidi knew that Felix was not messing around anymore. So he tried his best to negotiate for a bit of leeway. Twenty times is too much. He shook his head and offered, make it ten and you have a deal. Aggressive, Felix pressed dial on the number and said, I hate wasting time on negotiations. So make it seventeen times and that's it. Don't even think of lowering it again, fuck. Fine, hang up already. Felix truly gave him no option to further his negotiation after seeing that bracelet ringing. Queen modify the contract please to those terms. He sighed reluctantly. Queen did as requested efficiently. A few seconds later the contract terms changed, and Felix immediately used his UVR ID number to sign after checking that everything was loophole free. After doing so, his aggressiveness and bully personality withdrew back, allowing his playful personality to grace the stage. Io, brother fatty, you look uncomfortable in this position. Let me help you out. He smiled warmly and grabbed Bodidi from his space receptus, trying to drag him inside. However, just as he pulled, Fatty wailed out loud in pain. Fuck, stop it. I don't want to enter your demon lair anymore. Just take your items and push me outside the crack. He swiftly opened his mouth and spew out a small chip that resembled an earthling's phone memory card. Felix let go of his receptus and picked it up. Without delay he installed it on a small entrance in his AP bracelet, then he displayed a hologram before him that showcased the icons of all of his purchased items. Relieved that not a single item was missing. He closed off the hologram and grinned cheerfully. Glad to do business with you, brother fatty. I will call you the next time I need your talents. He patted Bodidi's oversized belly and suggested sincerely, I advise you to cut some weight, or else you won't remain long in the company. Fuck you. I am not your brother you devil. Just push me away. I don't want to see your face ever again. He cursed him while wigging backward trying to exit himself. Unfortunately, nothing much changed, as his body didn't budge even an inch. Felix stared at this miserable sight and decided to give him a hand. So, he pushed him with all of his strength. Yet, his attempts turned out to be futile, as the fatty's weight was at least eight times Felix's. Can't you just close the bridge and cut yourself in half? He tilted his head slightly and said, I believe you can easily recover your other half without an issue. As a worm-based being, Bodidi still enjoyed some basic evolutionary benefits, and one of them was the worm's uncanny rejuvenation speed. Even on Earth, worms could recover their bodies after being split in half. Don't even mention the elite space worm race. You bastard, if I wanted to do so, I would have done it without needing you to tell me. Bodidi snapped, as he waved his receptus around. But I would rather get blackmailed by you than feel that pain again. He said, shivering. He was clearly remembering an unpleasant memory. As you wish, let me get some help first. Felix shrugged his shoulders and explained, I don't think I will be able to push you all by myself. Turn off the lights before you go. Too bad, Felix hastily closed the door, leaving him all by himself dangled in the middle of the room like that. Felix headed straight to Noah's door, planning to ask for help since he was the only one who could help him without too many questions asked. He knocked two times on his door and waited patiently. A few seconds later Noah opened the door and eyed Felix expressionlessly. Felix took the cue and explained why he came. I need a favor to ask. Can you come to my room? I will give you extra pain relief potion if you agreed. Noah thought about it for a while, then nodded slightly. He had nothing to lose anyway. Five minutes later, both of them were pushing Bodidi's body outside of the crack again. This was already their sixth time, and each time they did so, he budged slightly backward. Their arms were already turning sore. Fortunately, this time their efforts were successfully rewarded by the joyful voice of Bodidi's on the other side of the bridge. So long losers. Felix and Noah did not take it to heart, as one of them was happy that this farce finally ended, and the other didn't care about anything besides his little sister. Thank you, brother Noah. Here is your reward. Felix tapped on the relief potion icon on his hologram and immediately the bottle materialized in his hand under an aqua blue shimmer. He then handed it to Noah, who watched the process with a hint of surprise in his eyes. But that was it, he neither asked nor stayed. He simply took it, nodded his head in appreciation, 
and excused himself from the room without asking about the entire weird situation of the fatty worm. Good luck on awakening, and if you needed anything just call me. Felix smiled after seeing him closing the door softly. Noah was indeed the perfect handyman for those issues. No questions, or bullshit, just straight out does what he was asked, and leave after being paid. If it was Olivia, she would probably have scolded Felix for blackmailing Bodidi. Felix removed all of those useless thoughts from his mind and glanced at the epic tier for bloodline icon with a glimmer in his eyes. It is time to awaken. He smirked and walked to his bedroom. Chapter 59 Felix stood next to his bed with a hologram in front of him, showcasing the details of the spatial card that he just blackmailed from Fatty. Forward slash forward slash model name, XL 9th generation. Model number, milligram 4P2LLA serial code, F17PQQL2G5MD device compatibility, AP bracelet 4th generation and above. Doesn't support devices below. Capacity, 30 cubic meters. Forward slash forward slash satisfied, Felix nodded his head after reading the capacity of the spatial card. 30 cubic meters was the same size as an average motel room. He knew that he earned a bargain since to buy just a few square meters, the price wouldn't shy from a couple of millions. The spatial cards were not sold for the commoners who didn't have even a couple of thousands in their bank account, but for the bloodliners, rich people, celebrities, and authority figures. So, for Fatty to actually possess one of it, it simply meant that it was given to him by his company to hold small items like Felix's. Since his dimensional space was used mainly for oversized shipments. Such as containers, machines, and even corpses of dead beasts. Hell, some professional delivery worms could actually deliver a whole spaceship inside their bodies. I wish you good luck dealing with the aftermath of losing it brother Fatty. He chuckled at Fatty's upcoming misfortune and clicked the withdrawal button on all of his items. He pointed his bracelet at his bed and a sudden blue light projected from it, flowing like ripples of water. As the light touched the bed, twenty items or more started to slowly materialize on it. Felix stared at this captivating scene with a hint of praise in his eyes. No matter how many times he saw it, his respect for the metal race never diminished. It wasn't just him who felt that way, but actually every user of this convenient tool that enabled them to hold as many items as their card allowed them to. Felix could only bow his head in respect for the metal race never-ending lust for the truth of the universe, that pushed them to continue researching anything that had value. If it wasn't for so, they wouldn't have bothered to combine their technology with the space worm abilities to create such a sophisticated device. Heck, even the AP bracelet was created by them. The entire universe technology was being carried single-handedly on their shoulders. If they advanced forward, the rest advanced with them. If they stopped their groundbreaking inventions, the universe would halt as well. After a few seconds, the process had ended, and all of Felix's items were laid neatly on the bed. Asna wake up. It is time to awaken. Just five more minutes. Asna murmured softly while hugging her pillow. I can't wait a single second more. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Felix started to annoy her to ruin her sleep. He already waited more than enough. It was time to awaken, and he won't tolerate any further delays. Fine, I am up, just shut up already. Irritated she threw her pillow away, as couldn't continue sleeping under his annoying voice. So, she woke up with bloodshot eyes. Clearly, the time she slept wasn't enough to cover for her mental exhaustion. Good, you have five minutes to prepare yourself. Eager, he removed his t-shirt, exposing his well-built upper body, and picked only the items, which were needed for awakening. The four pain relief potions, the tier 4 bloodline, rejuvenation potion, and lastly the double percentage potion. He then arranged them on the floor next to where he planned to awaken. After doing so, he went to his closet and took an oversized injection needle that he purchased yesterday from the street pharmacy. Hopefully it's not faulty. He opened its package and tested it by drawing his own blood to check if it was working properly. After all, the last thing he needed was penetrating his heart with it, but failing to inject the bloodline inside. Following the successful test, Felix placed the injection needle inside the bloodline bottle and extracted a whopping 20% of its content all at once. The bottle was marked with accurate measurements, on one side there was a metric system that displayed measurement down to the milliliter. 
Meanwhile, the other side showcased the percentage numbers. All of this just to help the bloodliners from not screwing up their awakening or integration after so. This amount should be enough. Although 20% was quite a large amount to awaken with, Felix wasn't worried at all, since he bought the double percentage potion just for this reason. If he drunk it after injecting the 20% in his heart, the potion would do its wonders and half the upcoming pain waves from 20 to merely 10. Felix was confident that he could handle 10 waves of pain for merely 6 minutes after drinking the 4 pain relief potions. This strategy of his was used by the majority of bloodliners to secure for themselves the first passive ability, and also bring them closer to the lesser purity stage. After all, the moment they reached 15% the first passive ability should be unlocked automatically. Calm and peaceful, he sat in a meditation position with the injection needle close to his heart. He took a long inhale and called for Asna, are you ready, go ahead, I will keep a lookout, Asna replied in utter boredom. Here we go. He smiled and stabbed his heart with the injection needle, forcing all of its content inside his heart. Without delay, he took advantage of those precious few minutes of calmness and drunk all the potions needed to facilitate the awakening process. After drinking them he relaxed his muscles and closed his eyes. Only a minute left before the first wave strikes. I am thankful to mom and dad for having me and thank, before he finished his awakening ritual or whatever that was. He got interrupted by a noisy exclamation from Asna. What the hell am I seeing? Just as Felix wanted to scold her for ruining his focus, he closed his mouth shut as he listened in disbelief to her random bullshit. Felix, you need to hear this. Her bloodshed eyes had a hint of images that were being displayed at the speed of light. I'm forcefully reading the memories of this bloodline as we speak, and I just found out that there are actually three bloodlines mixed in it. She closed her eyes and reopened them again. But this time, those images were gone. She massaged her eyelids and clarified what she meant in a faster pace. The first one is from the heavy anaconda and the second one is from the green mamba. Yet, the most terrifying one is the bloodline of an ancestral beast called the Midgard Serpent or in the language of his worshippers Jormungandr. Felix immediately lost it and scolded her. What the fuck are you talking about? This is not the time to joke around Asna. I will bombard by waves of pain soon. So leave me alone. Asna didn't have the time to explain everything to him since the process of awakening would begin soon. So, she just said one thing that tempted Felix to take her word seriously. The Jormungandr is the poison element primogenitor. It was born at the beginning of the universe with full control on the element of poison. Astonished and honestly quite disbelieving in the nonsense he just heard, Felix's calm focused eyes couldn't help but bulge out. However, Asna quickly changed the subject and asked him urgently. Tell me quick. Do you want me to filter the other two bloodlines, leaving only 1% of the ancestral being that I found, or you want to continue with normal awakening? She rushed him again, decide fast as the moment integration start I can't do much. Do it, I trust in your judgment. Felix agreed without hesitation, or even pausing for a second to check if Asna was just pulling a prank on him. Good, you won't regret it. Asna smiled happily after not hearing those words for eons. Without wasting any more time, she filtered 19% of the Anomamba bloodline from the pure 1% Jormungandr bloodline and then unexpectedly stored it inside his body. It seemed like it still could be removed from the body without issues, which was honestly quite understandable, as Asna's cosmic social status was so high within the universe, even the Jormungandr bloodline could only obediently be manipulated by her. Don't even mention those low-tiered bloodlines. But this control and oppression were valid only because this was just a bloodline. Otherwise, if the ancestral beast was here in his flesh, Asna's social status wouldn't mean shit to him. He might show respect but not total obedience. Shortly after, she finished manipulating the bloodlines and informed Felix, I am done, now you won't deal with ten waves of pain but just one, since you will awaken with only one percent. Felix sighed in relief after hearing that. At least there was some good news after his whopping twenty percent got butchered to merely one percent. However, before his relief took root, a sentence from Asna sent him to the depth of the despair. Even though it's just 1%, you should expect the pain to at least triple, as well as the duration. Good luck, I'm cheering for you. Asna clapped her hands cutely after delivering such heart-wrenching news. You buy. 
Aru. His curse was cut in half by a high-pitched shriek that escaped from his mouth, marking the beginning of his awakening. All of Felix's bravado and toughness he showed before in the awakening mock practice was no more, as he kept thrashing on the ground with his hand smashing everything that near him. If the bottles weren't made of tough glass material, they would have been shattered by him already. Fortunately for Felix, his pitiful wails and cries were being confined inside his room, as it was soundproof. The only spectator to this pathetic charade was Asna, who already found a comfortable lying position on the misty couch with her arm hugging a bucket of popcorn. Her wide smile and delightful eyes were clear proof that she was enjoying watching Felix getting tortured like this. Inside Felix's body. Immense changes were occurring on his nuclear cell that hosted the human DNA code. Yet, currently, this sacred code was being tempered by foreign genes that invaded the majority of Felix's cells and started to fit themselves somehow, without killing their host. This was the main reason why the integration process was always painful without any way to stop it. The only thing that was possible was reducing its duration, or in other words, hasten the process to end faster. A simple analogy of what was truly happening to Felix's body now was to simply consider the human body as a vase made of clay. The awakening process tries to reshape the already made vase without breaking it into pieces. Either by adding an extra handle or making the base wider or thinner. It all depended on the bloodline unique characteristics. Thus, resulting in mutations that could range from either having a different hair color or growing an extra limb or a tail. Those mutations could get removed only by replacing the bloodline with another. But even this method wasn't successful all the time. As in some cases, the mutation might stay permanently after the bloodliner etched an ability in his human 1% bloodline. A plausible reason for why so, was that the ability held the same genes of the mutation itself. For example, if a bloodliner had a third eye in the middle of his forehead, and he decided to keep an ability that could be activated only by that third eye, the mutation was going to remain permanently following its ability. It was just common sense. Now Felix's body had already started to display some mutations after a couple of minutes in this process. Firstly, his height increased by 3 cm all at once, pushing him to reach 180 cm. He could finally call himself, tall, proudly. Secondly, his hair got longer and glossier. Then its color began to transform from blonde to a spring-like green with a hint of dark purple shade at its tips. A breathtaking combination that could make girls trade everything in their possession to have a single strand. Yet, the biggest mutation only took place after nearing the end of the awakening, and it happened to his eyes. As his pupil turned into dreadful slits with dark violet irises surrounding them, resembling a field of midnight rose, circling around an eerie smooth crack on the ground. Those mutations could be said to be a quite low key when compared to having bone claws or a bushy long monkey tail. After his eyes transformation, nothing else changed from his body since 1% bloodline wasn't able to change much. To do so, one must use a higher percentage of a bloodline during the awakening or in replacement. In fact, if Felix continued with the original plan and used a 20% bloodline, serpent scales were definitely going to cover his body. That was one of the main reasons he wanted to awaken by that large amount. Since he knew that those scales were going to add an extra layer of defense naturally. But now, he could only obtain other mutations, in his first replacement. A few minutes later, Felix's body that was twitching like he was having a seizure, stopped moving at once. If it wasn't for his chest that was rising and falling slightly, anyone would have assumed that he failed to awaken. After a while, Felix slowly opened his muddled eyes, while lying naked on a pool of sweat mixed with some blood that originated from his eyes mutation, finally, it ended. I can't believe I almost fainted during the process. Thank God Asna intervened and called for me. He thought with agitation at such a close shave. He truly was blindsided by the pain getting tripled from what he was used to. Yet, that wasn't even the real reason he struggled to survive the awakening, but actually it was the long duration that increased from 6 minutes to a whopping 16 minutes. Felix's best record in the mock practice was pulling through one wave of pain for 20 minutes. However, the awakening that he just went through was the same as dealing with three waves in that duration. Something he clearly wasn't ready for, you almost got me killed Asna. He scolded her while staring at the ceiling with blooded eyes that allowed him to see everything in red, and what's wrong with my eyes? Did I awaken ability at 1%?
this has never happened before to anyone. He grinned, wondering, maybe this is because of the ancestral bloodline? So bad as to be able to see everything in red. Your blood is blocking your vision you retard. She facepalmed and chided him, get a grip, you are embarrassing the Jormungandr bloodline. She truly began to regret advising this idiot to merge with a primogenitor bloodline, as she felt that he did not deserve even an ounce of blood from a being that was born in the early days of the universe. Though so as well. I just wanted to mess with you. Not embarrassed in the slightest, Felix tried to clean his eyes from the blood, but pain assaulted him immediately as he moved his hand. His body desperately needed a full treatment. Otherwise, he would need months to recover. Good thing he prepared a rejuvenation potion, which accelerates the recovery process vastly. To the point, his body could return to its peak form within a couple of minutes. So he picked the potion from the ground with some difficulty and drunk it quickly. After doing so a pleasant feeling welcomed him, like bathing in a cold spring during the heat of summer. Anyone who felt this pleasure would wish for it to be everlasting. Sadly, it stayed for only two minutes before its potency declined, marking the successful ending of the treatment. Felix immediately stood up and started stretching his body fully, creating a symphony of loud cracking noises. It sounded exactly like every bone in his body was displaced. I never felt better in my life. He said with a wide beaming smile. After cracking all of his joints, he suddenly noticed his long glossy green hair that touched the ground with its dark purple tips. Not bad, not bad at all. He examined the silky soft strands with eyes full of praise. I wonder what Olivia will say, after seeing that mine is better looking than hers. He wondered in amusement over his next encounter with Ollie, since she had green hair as well. Whatever, I have more pressing things to take care of now, than my mutation. Solemn, he let go of his hair and asked, Asna mind explaining the situation from the top again with more details this time. He crossed his arm and sat back on the floor again. It was clear that understanding his new bloodline was a priority to him than cleaning himself up or his room. Do you want the long version or the short one? She asked, smiling. Chapter 60 Of course the long version. The more details you provide, the more understanding I will have on this bloodline. So try not to miss anything that can be crucial later on. As you wish. She took a deep breath and said, to understand the bloodline you just merged with, you need first to know the history of the primogenitors of elements. You see, in the very early days of the universe, each known element had a primogenitor that has total control and rule over it. What do you mean by total control? His confusion was quite comprehensible, as he never heard of such a concept before. Even the public data in the UVR never mentioned a word about the existence of the primogenitors and their ways of using the elements. The only thing he was positive about was that the beasts in the universe were able to only use the same six abilities. They awakened during their growing phase. That was it. They could never suppress the number, nor change the abilities. They were stuck from birth to death with one set of abilities they inherited from their parents. The only known way to break those shackles, was for them to evolve. But that was a whole other story. I meant exactly what you heard. Total control and manipulation. She changed her tone to contempt. But before she continued on, she remembered the last lesson of looking down on the human bloodline system. So she coughed and returned to her normal tone. You see, both humans and beasts don't really control the elements no matter how high their element affinity is. She fought the urge to sneer and clarified, you were simply using already created abilities without even knowing how they were created, and who created them. In other words, the abilities that you use are registered in your bloodline, and all you have to do is think of them and they will automatically be activated. She paused for a second, then said the crucial information she was building for. But in reality, all of them were, but simply creations of the primogenitors. Who could manipulate the elements to create what they desire without any limitations on numbers or such? Agitated, Felix's heart began to beat faster and faster, as he listened to the astonishing power of those beings. Yet, he did not interrupt her. So in this sense, the abilities that you obtain from beasts are but ones used by the primogenitors before and passed down to their descendants via bloodline. She paused for a second and dropped a bombshell on him. This means beasts were actually but normal creatures without any elemental powers just like your human race. 
but after being mated by the primogenitors, their offspring obtained the blessing of their parents. Thus getting some of their abilities marked in their bloodline. You can easily infer the rest. Asna ended her explanation with a yawn, too lazy to carry on speaking. She was truly struggling to not fall asleep. Felix easily figured out what happened after. It was as clear as daylight that those descendants must have been able to pass their bloodline further down the tree by mating with different types of beasts. Thus, creating new species that could use unique abilities, two elements, or more of such varieties. The primogenitors provided the foundation, and the descendants enhanced it over the long period of years to reach its current state. And we humans took advantage of this diversity and created a usable path to gain strength just like other races. He couldn't help but sigh dejectedly at the conclusion he arrived at. Correct, this is why I said before that your path was limited and not complete, since you guys are leeching from beasts' powers, who are also leeching from their ancestral powers. Pfffff, so fucking funny. She finally couldn't handle it and broke into jeering laughter with hands holding her sides. Felix wasn't even mad after being shamed like this. The only thing he felt was pure embarrassment at his human race. After all, the bloodline system that humans took pride in was merely a byproduct of leeching from leeches. Which made it even worse. No wonder Asna berated his race power system before without mercy. But don't worry, now that you have the Jormungandr bloodline, you will have a quite high chance of unlocking his poison element manipulation. She wiped her tears and comforted him, at that point, you will be able to learn and create an unlimited number of poison abilities. Before Felix could feel happy at this great news, he heard Asna murmur softly, but you will have to provide me with high-tiered beasts that use the element of poison, so I can extract more of his bloodline. She suggested, and it's better if the species were serpents just like their forefather. Felix's eyes almost rolled at the back of his head at such dastardly news. He knew that the bottomless pit of his path just turned into an abyss that was impossible to fill, no matter how many coins he obtained. After all, while the rest of humans only needed to buy two bloodline bottles or a maximum of three to reach origin purity. Felix, on the other hand, had to buy multiple bloodlines bottles just to finish 99% of the Jormungandr bloodline. He really felt indignant about this. But who could blame him? He was just planning to close the hole that affinity rating would cause to his bank account by investing in movies. But now another bigger hole had appeared that probably was going to drain every coin he had or was about to earn, just to reach the first stage of replacement. Don't even mention other stages. Forget it, I just need to double down on my investment plan. Things might turn better by then, hopefully. Downcast, he massaged his eyelids with heavy shoulders. He could already envision his future of running everywhere to earn coins just to support his bloodline path. You don't have to worry about coins since I can store the other filtered bloodline to sell later. Asna tried to uplift his spirit a bit, by mentioning what she did during the bloodline manipulation. Felix's saddened expression immediately brightened up at her words. Although, he knew that the price wouldn't be the same when he tries to sell it, due to his unknown reputation. But still, it was better than buying tier 5, 6, or even 7 bloodlines just to extract a little percentage of the Jormungandr bloodline. Then throw them in the garbage. My heart can't handle such a way of wasting resources. He sighed in relief and suddenly asked, but how are you able to do this? I thought you had no control over my body. Indeed I can't do that yet. But the bloodline you forcefully tried to merge with is a foreign object, and by using my social status to oppress it, I can manipulate it however I wish in your body. She answered him while stretching her arms lazily, like a cat. I see, so where is it currently? And why can't I feel it? He wondered about the way she managed to store it in his body. Are you stupid? She rolled her eyes at his retarded question and explained, of course, the bloodline is swimming peacefully in your bloodstream. And with my orders, it can only obediently swim without having thoughts of merging with you. She chuckled and added, there is no need for me to collect it and store it as a ball or something, you idiot. Fuck. You don't have to insult me. How would I know about your perverse ways? You share absolutely nothing with me about yourself. He retorted in irritation. Let's keep it that way. After leaving that sentence, she covered herself with a blanket, preparing to continue her sleep. 
Unfortunately, Felix still had many questions unanswered. Well, now you should tell me about this Jormungandr and his story. Eager, he narrowed his eyes in focus, not wanting to miss anything about him. Asna removed her blanket with an annoyed expression. I don't know much about his story, since I only saw random bits and pieces about his existence from those memories. Just tell me what you know already. He hurried her to cough up everything. Unbothered by his impatience, Asna closed her eyes peacefully and entered her storytelling mode with a soft voice. The Jormungandr primogenitor was born to manage and control the poison element in the universe. Any race that relied on poison could only worship him and bow to his greatness. The majority didn't do so out of respect, but merely to not bring his wrath upon them, since he could easily chain their race from using his element. Thus, leaving them naked to everyone's aggression. This was during the early days of the universe, way before even the Dark Ages era. That period of time was being referred to as the Primogenitor's era. It was called as such, due to their never-ending roaming within the universe and obtaining the worship of every race that uses their element. However, because they entangled themselves with mortal lives they had to face the consequences of dealing with their affairs. Wars, betrayals, massacres, and sacrilegious actions, like destroying the primogenitor statues, pushed those ancestral beings into having constant friction between them. Some were easily resolved, while some turned into an enmity that could be solved only by death. They are not immortal. Felix didn't want to interrupt her, but he couldn't help it after hearing such boggling news. He believed that since they had such a high status in the universe, they should possess immortality like Asna. Well, they could live for eternity without problems. She gave a half shrug while sleeping, but, they were not unkillable like my race. I see, no wonder information about them was non-existent in the UVR. They must have died at some point in time. Felix nodded his head in understanding. His conclusion was based only on what she said. After all, she mentioned indirectly that primogenitors were socially active in the universe. So for them to have no presence at all in this era, it meant only that either they died or were asleep somewhere. Heck, they might even be sealed by someone like it happened to Asna. I don't know about others, but the Jormungandr definitely died. Before letting Felix interrupt her again and delay her time of returning to sleep, she explained, I saw his death in those memories. It was during a battle against the Thunder Primogenitor. I didn't see the full battle, but only the last few seconds of it. She yawned and continued softly, forcing Felix to focus on her mosquito buzzing tone. I saw that the Thunder Primogenitor smashed a colossal hammer on the head of the Midgard Serpent. The blow was so powerful, three planets nearby were turned to dust by its aftershock. Goosebumps coursed through Felix's naked upper body, making him shiver in coldness and excitement. His heartbeats quicked after imagining such a godly battle. He really wished he was there to spectate it. Just as he opened his mouth, Asna interrupted him, the Thunder Primogenitor died soon after landing his blow. To be exact, he stopped breathing immediately after moving nine meters forward. Probably due to a poison inflected by Jormungandr. This is all I managed to see. If you want more information, get me as much as possible of his bloodline. Now let me sleep in peace. She shooed him away and cut off the connection, not wanting to hear a single word from him anymore. This time, Felix left her be, as she already shared everything that she knew. Thank you Asna. He didn't know if she heard him or not, but Felix wasn't an ungrateful prick to not show gratitude when it's due. Asna truly deserved to be thanked after today's effort. She might have been lazy for the past months, but immediately after making her move, she proved that her assistance was by far the greatest cheat he could have ever asked for. Felix stood up, planning to go clean himself up. As for the 19% Anomamba bloodline that was still in his body? He decided to leave it be for now since no harm was done to his body. But, most importantly, he didn't want to ruin Asna's sleep again. He walked towards the bathroom naked with his eyebrows frowned. Only now did his nasty smell assaulted his nose. Thus, he ignored everything and jumped straight inside the shower. Fifteen minutes later. He stepped outside, dragging his long wet hair behind him like he was pulling a truck. I really need a haircut, at least cut it to shoulder length, lest it hinders my training. He thought while dragging his heavy hair next to the mirror of the bathroom. The moment he saw his reflection on it. 
an out loud exclamation escaped his mouth. Who the fuck are you? Chapter 61 Dumbfounded, Felix gapped at his reflection in the mirror, finding it hard to believe that his appearance changed this much. After all, his entire face went into heavy reform due to awakening. First, his eyes that mutated into a dark violet serpent eyes. Then his facial skin color turned even paler without a single blemish on its pores, making his skin appear cleaner and smoother. This combination plus his unique breathtaking hair could make any passerby turned around at least three times, to check how one could be this handsome without any plastic surgery. If the rest of his facial parts didn't remain the same, no one would have been able to recognize him anymore. Not even his grandfather. He truly received an upgrade. Yet, Felix only sighed in helplessness after seeing his face in the reflection. It was bad before that women feel ashamed to approach me due to my handsome looks. But now it is even worse. With my new look, no girl would dare hit on me. Maybe I should disfigure myself to give them a chance? I don't want to stay single for two lives. That's too humiliating. He murmured under his breath while touching his smooth cheek, whatever, I'm used to living a dog life. Disappointed, he shook his head and left the bathroom with lonesome back, shameless bastard. Asna murmured in her sleep unconsciously. He truly deserved to be cursed, as the fucker already forgot that Layla confessed to him, just to be rejected by him. The girls were daring to enter a relationship with him. But clearly he wasn't and kept using those excuses to offset the blame. Fifteen minutes later, Felix sat in front of the bathroom's mirror, cutting his long hair to reach shoulder length. After a few moments, he put down the scissor that was in his hand and sized up his new outlook in satisfaction. Now this is much better. Suddenly, the green tips of his hair magically turned dark purple again, just like he had them before, interesting, I thought I would lose them forever after cutting my hair. But it seems like they will always grow back. His eyelids twitched, truly a trashy mutation that gives nothing but bonus points in being a good-looking, while others have claws, metal nails, long fangs that could penetrate even steel. On the other hand, he had a regrowing tips mutation, whatever, better than nothing I guess, indifferent. He stood up and began cleaning the hair strands on the floor. After he was done, he washed his hair with shampoo thoroughly, tomorrow I should call in sick and hide in my room until the end of the month so it won't be weird if I told them I awakened a day before using a different tier 1 bloodline. He suddenly jolted, as he was walking towards his bed after remembering that he was literally using a primogenitor bloodline, while trying to lie about using a tier 1. There was not a single low tier bloodline that could cover over this massive behemoth, sigh, the only option is to bullshit my way through. Felix knew that only by doing so, could he not get found out, since no matter what he said, they could only believe it for now simply because he was still a newly awakened bloodliner without a single ability. After all, it was impossible for them to guess his bloodline without seeing all of his six abilities together. Only then could they infer if he lied or told the truth. Abilities were the ones that defined the bloodline, especially the ultimate ability a bloodliner unlocked during 99% of integration. The moment this ability gets used, others could limit their guesses to only a few types of beasts that ability belonged to. For example, the rare tier 2 poisonous fanged cobra that Felix used during his first stage of replacement in his past life, was famously known for having asterisk deadly venomous bite asterisk as the strongest ability one could unlock during 99% integration. So if one saw him using this ability he could guess what kind of bloodline he was dealing with, and what sort of abilities pool he should expect to face. But, before using the ultimate ability, it was extremely difficult to guess. Felix was relaying exactly on this to bullshit his way through the family's upcoming investigation. Dejected, Felix held in his hand the Anomamba bloodline bottle that had 20% of it gone. He knew that what remained in the bottle now could at most provide him with 3%, or 4% extra Jormungandr bloodline if he was lucky, whatever, after my cells cool down, I will integrate what remained. Then resell the bottle in the market, although it would be at least 30% cheaper, he couldn't complain much. At least he was getting 70% of his coins back. He clicked on the retrieval button on the spatial card, and the bottle disintegrated into light particles, returning inside the AP bracelet, let's deal with the gifts now. He glanced at the potions and substances he bought as a gifts and tapped on Layla's phone number. Ring. Ring. Cluck. Hello young master, you finally called me. 
I was worried sick after not hearing from you over the past month. Layla's worried voice resounded in the room. Thank you for your care, Layla. I am doing just fine. He chuckled, and said, anyway, I called to ask for updates about the island construction, as well as to inform you that I am sending some gifts for you and Jack, plus medicine for Kled's recovery. He smiled, I hope you won't refuse my gifts. Young master, you did not need to bother getting us anything. We are happy to serve you without rewards. No need to say more, just accept them as a thank you for all the effort you put on my island. Before she said anything else, he cut her off using an unquestionable tone. Now don't mention this anymore, and give me an update on the island. A bit flustered, Layla could only accept his gifts without protest. Since you insist young master, we are honored to accept it, she paused for a second and said. As for the island construction, everything is currently heading in the right direction without hiccups. But we had some problems during your absence. Oh. Since you didn't call to inform me about them, I guess they have been resolved properly. Correct? Yes, young master. She confirmed his guess and clarified the issue, it happened during the third day of your absence. It seemed that Engineer Harold was displeased about your decision of giving 10% of the hotel budget to Eddie the airport engineer. If he was upset, why didn't he let a fart when I mentioned it, but only made a move after I left? Displeased, he frowned his eyebrows at Harold's childish actions. I thought I hired bold engineers who are not afraid to make their voices heard. Not this kind of coward. If Harold complained properly to him, he would have given him either a solution or an explanation without getting pissed. But now only punishment awaits Harold, it just depended on its severity. Tell me what did he do? When Eddie came to obtain the resources needed to start the airport construction, Harold bribed one of the warehouse managers to give Eddie the worst batch. She sighed and added, but the true mess only appeared after we discovered that the bribed manager was a man of Eddie. And so the worst batch that was supposed to be sent, turned into being the best ones that were shipped specifically to be used for the hotel construction. Then what happened? I hope the hotel did not end up with leftovers from precious materials. Black lines were already taking form on his forehead. No, thankfully Abigail intervened and stopped this farce before it could hurt both projects. She then scolded them and took the best resources that Eddie stole and returned it to the hotel. She said with admiration. As expected from Madam Abigail, truly did not disappoint me. Felix's black lines eased up a bit at the thought of having Madam Abigail within his staff. At least, one of them turned to be competent. Listen well to what you need to do. First, ask Madam Abigail if she wants to create a new hotel design and take over it. If she said yes, send Harold home, I don't want to work with irresponsible cowards like him. Second, punish Eddie for lusting over resources he shouldn't have touched by deducting 30% of his salary for the next two years. His dreadful slits narrowed, as he gave his orders with frigid tone. He might tolerate pranks and games, but tricks that could have an everlasting negative effect on his island. He wasn't that forgiving. No one was allowed to damage the island that he planned to turn into his main base of operations on Earth. Anyone who entertained such a thought would be dealt with severely like Harold. But what if she didn't want to take the hotel or Eddie refused to accept the punishment? She asked worriedly since she really didn't want to affect the current stability. Simple if Abigail doesn't want to redesign the hotel, just reward her with a 50% salary increase for the next two years, and give the redesigning job to Barry. He probably finished dying the seaport. A chuckle couldn't help break his frigid face apart after remembering Barry's design. As for Eddie if he dares not to accept the punishment, send him home as well, and find another. If he made any noise about the illegal use of his design, call the family lawyers to teach him his place. Felix decided the fate of everyone who participated in the matter in a couple of minutes by single phone call. One could only imagine the faces of Harold and Eddie after they hear about this sudden calamity. That's it for now. You can expect the package to reach next week. He instructed, when you get them, just follow the instruction that will be written on each package to use them properly. All right young master, I will handle everything as you asked, have a peace of mind. Good I never doubted you. He smiled, now go take care of those rascals. I will call you later when I am not busy. Goodbye. Have a nice day, young master. 
Soon after, Felix hanged up and tapped on his auntie phone number to inform her of the gift he prepared for her. I hope the everlasting youth potion pleases her, ring. Ring. Clunk, hi little Felix, I missed you dearly son. Aunt Mary laughed softly and asked, how are you doing in the family? Anyone bullying you? Hello auntie, I missed you as well. He smirked, he he, don't worry about me being bullied, you should worry about my cousins. Good, as long as they don't bully you. Never worry about that. He quickly switched the subject, anyway auntie I called to inform you that you should expect an incoming gift I bought. He asked, mind telling me your current address? I don't know which mansion you currently reside in. My dear, you didn't have to bother. But since you already bought the gift, I can only accept it. Pleased by his thoughtfulness, she informed him of the address. I currently reside in California Mansion. You know the one besides the beach? Oh yes, my mom took me there to visit you once. It was really a pleasant memory. Felix said while reminiscing about the short time he spent there with his mom. That's the one dear, I will email you the full address later on. Good, do that please and when you receive it, just use it based on the instruction on the package. Hearing you say that really piqued my curiosity. Tell me what did you send? She asked in wonder. He he, not telling, the only thing you need to know is that you will be surprised. Now I will leave you be, auntie. Call me when you get it. And greet uncle for me. Bye. I can't wait to see what you sent. Goodbye dear and take care of yourself. Felix immediately hanged up after hearing her reply and isolated the items he planned to gift on the left side of the bed. So he could ask a servant later to handle the delivery process. Now that the gifts were dealt with. The only thing left was to give his grandfather the longevity potion. But Felix decided to hand it over during the awakening of his cousins. So he could bullshit everything at once. After all, the potion was being sold for almost a million SC. The difficulty to fool his grandfather and elders about how he managed to obtain that many coins, wasn't less than fooling them about his bloodline. After finally taking care of those minor issues, he lay on his bed and requested, Queen log me in please. Chapter 62 Felix opened his eyes to the sound of birds chirps and a bright sunny day within the UVR. The day couldn't get any more beautiful. He stretched his arms behind his back and stood up from the bench. It's time to buy some general techniques that I desperately need now. He called for a taxi and waited for a couple of seconds before it arrived and picked him up. To technique center please. He requested, smiling. Ten minutes later. Inside a humongous shop that had a large black signboard hanged slightly above the entrance. Felix was sitting in the lounge with a hologram in front of him, displaying the current empire-wide news. As expected Wally is still trending even after an entire month. That game truly changed his life for the better. Felix smiled while looking at Wally's glorified image that had a bold title above his head, Rules are unchanged, but can you do the same? Indeed as the title of the article said. The rules were still untouched, anyone who was not afraid of the hellish pain Wally went through, could repeat his feat and win as well. The SGA never changed the rules unless there was a loophole but it had been ages since the last loophole surfaced. Now, the only thing left was to either win properly or find an unorthodox way like he did. No one would stop you, my time will soon arrive to dominate the entire news platform. Just wait for this handsome daddy to have all his pictures planted everywhere, confident, he smirked and turned off the hologram, planning to head to the counter, in order to check about his current position in the queue. Sir, there are still 102 customers ahead of you choosing and testing the techniques. If you are in a rush, I suggest that you pay a small fee to be served as a priority customer. A polite beautiful lady with a ponytail informed him professionally. No need, I can wait. Just make sure to give me a call when it's my turn please. Disinterested in her suggestion, Felix waved his hand while walking back to the lounge. He knew that he couldn't act like a rich lord anymore by paying to skip the queues and lines. He had to pinch every coin from now on, so he would have more coins to bet during the upcoming game. It was truly a sad fate for Felix to have millions in his bank account. Yet, still feel broke. But, he couldn't do much about it. No one forced him to choose the best of the best. He could have easily avoided those problems if he simply walked the normal path like everyone else. 
but in his eyes that would be the greatest injustice to everyone in the universe who wished to have a second chance in life with this many opportunities and cheats. 45 minutes later. Felix received a call from the receptionist, informing him that his turn had arrived. He immediately strode forward to get this done as fast as possible. Please enter public room number 149 to see the general techniques catalogue. She gave him a key and continued her explanation, additionally, you can test them in it for free the first five times. But after so, you need to pay 1000 SC fee for each test. Understood? Yes. He took the key and scanned it with his bracelet. Immediately after, it broke into light particles. Felix nodded his head politely and walked towards his room with a hidden smirk. He planned to learn the consciousness access technique first, to pay a surprise visit to Asna while she was still asleep. He he, we still have unfulfilled promise between us. He rubbed his hands together with a lewd expression. No wonder the bastard was in a rush to learn the technique. The promise he made with Asna during the shower was still on his mind to this day. Based on how frequent he took showers and changed his clothes, Asna probably owned a heavy debt of nudity to pay. Shortly after, he stepped out of the elevator and kept walking slowly, bypassing room after room until his eyes landed on the room numbered 149. He put his bracelet on the door scanner and waited a couple of seconds before the door opened up automatically. Nostalgic, his eyes kept roaming around, observing each corner of the white simple room that had nothing inside but a chair and a large screen, showcasing boldly hundreds of technique names that would make one's head spin from all of their variety and outrageous prices. It's been really long time since I used those kinds of rooms. As his eyes landed on those prices, his eyelids couldn't help but twitch. Still as expensive as hell. He clicked on the search button and keyed in the name of the technique he wanted to purchase. Soon after, a list of all the techniques that had the same name was listed, from the cheapest to most expensive. Felix didn't bother scrolling down to see those techniques that he couldn't even afford with his pity capital. He clicked the purchase button on the third technique on the list, Sir Felix, I advise you to prepare your mentality, as in five seconds the details about the technique shall be sent directly into your mind. Felix thanked the queen for the early warning and closed his eyes. Abruptly, a massive amount of information detailing everything about the technique flooded his brain for six seconds straight. Overwhelmed a bit, Felix sweated heavily from his forehead with his hands on his knees, supporting his weight. It was quite tough to handle such a load of information all at once. At least I didn't faint, or get a headache. He sighed in relief. Let's see if I'm able to enter my consciousness even with only 1% bloodline. He wiped his sweaty forehead with his sleeves and sat on the chair. He wasn't 100% certain in it working though, as in his previous life to activate manually a general technique one should at least be at greater purity. So, the consciousness barrier wouldn't break instantly after one failed the attempt. But he had to try, as his consciousness barrier wasn't like the rest. He was somewhat confident in it sustaining at least three strikes before breaking. Here we go. Out of nowhere, Felix pinched his throat and started speaking in an unknown language that sounded extremely bizarre and quite annoying to the ears of the listeners. It quite resembled different buzzing sounds mashed up together. Shortly after, he stopped speaking and sat straight without a single quiver, just like a corpse. But that changed after a few seconds, as he dropped on his knees and started to cough a large amount of blood. Cough, fuck. One small mistake and the entire manual activation fell apart and cracked my consciousness wall. Vexed, he wiped the blood from his mouth and sat back on the chair. Now, he only had two more tries before the damages caused to his barrier be unrecoverable. He must use them wisely. Composed, his irregular breathing was normalized, as he concentrated on practicing in his mind that weird-sounding activation code. He had to wait anyway for those cracks on his barrier to recover. Thus, it was better to at least rehearse a bit. The language of the hive race wasn't that easily spoken by anyone. The only reason Felix's was able to, was because the clan he was in, made it mandatory for every junior bloodliner to attend the hive race, language class. After all, there were tons of general techniques released each year by the hive race. Just like the mental transmission that the Alexander Kingdom used on earthlings. Thus, it was a must-learn language in the universe for hard-working bloodliners. As for the lazy ones? 
the hive race didn't forget about them and made the technique activate automatically if a strict condition was met. For example, this technique that Felix was trying to manually activate, could automatically take effect after the user reached the origin purity of the purification realm. Although Felix was part of the lazy group after he became a third-stage bloodliner, he still didn't dare to laze in that language class, as the reward of being one of the top ten in it was to receive a technique of their own choice. He wasn't going to miss that at any cost. Thus, he learned and mastered at least 20% of the language, earning him third place in the class. Who would have known his hard work would have come handy in this situation? Still, Felix was taking quite a big risk even with his good mastery of the language. After all, to manually activate this technique while being a newly awakened was a risk no one would try to do. Hell, they might not do it even when they reached the lesser purity, the recommended power level to manually activate it, since there was no point or clear benefits worthy enough to risk their own consciousness destruction on this endeavor. Simply because their consciousness was empty without a single fart in it. So who would bother taking such a huge risk just to enter and see nothing inside? They could just wait until they reached the origin purity and automatically enter without any issues cropping up. But Felix's case was different. His consciousness was being rented by Asna, and as the landlord, he must check on her as soon as possible. After all, it was extremely weird that someone was living inside his body without even seeing how she looked like. This curiosity was slowly eating him from the inside, and no matter how much he tried to ignore it or avoid it. It would always come back, every time Asna spoke with her mesmerizing voice that could charm even the devil. So he was really determined that now was the time to see her and get rid of that annoying curiosity. Otherwise, he truly wouldn't be able to focus on his bloodline path. Thirty minutes later, Felix stood up with a relaxed expression. All right, it's time for round two. He took a deep breath and pinched his throat again, then spoke with the same bizarre language but this time he spoke longer and fluently. A vast difference from earlier, as now his voice was far more pleasant to the listeners than before when he sounded like a banshee screech. He soon stopped speaking and just sat silently with closed eyes. On a lake that was filled with see-through water while being closed off by thin transparent walls, Felix was lying with his eyes closed peacefully. However, that peacefulness broke in an instant after he woke up with hands extended forward, trying to hold into something. Boof! Boof! He gasped for breath like he was drowning in an ocean, while his eyes surveyed around him, fucking hell, I hate that feeling of dropping from the air when I always try to enter this place, annoyed, he eased his rugged breaths and stood up, planning to visit Asna ASAP. He had no idea when she would wake up. Thus, he had to make haste to prank her successfully. Let's go see that old witch. I bet she is ugly as hell with a wrinkled face from all of those years she lived. He chuckled with a playful look. He was pretty confident in his guess, as he based it on the fact that Asna took the shape of a flame when they saw her in the ruins. He doubted that her energy was low to the point she couldn't take her original shape, good thing my consciousness is still small, so it is easy to find her, just like he thought, it was really easy to locate her, since even without the size of the lake, just the large mansion that was made of mist was an easy hint to where she was at. He strode towards the mansion on tiptoes, trying his best to not make too much noise by splashing water everywhere. Otherwise, his shocking surprise that he was building for would be ruined after she wakes up and caught him red-handed. Unfortunately, the only one who was dealt with a heavy shock was him. As the moment he entered the mansion and laid his eyes on Asna's otherworldly beauty that could steal men's heart in a split second, he stood petrified in his place with his eyes fixated on the crimson-haired beauty that was sleeping peacefully. The last thought that coursed through his mind before his brain got short circuit was, I am done for. Chapter 63 After a while, Felix broke out of the enchantment and took a deep breath with his eyes closed shut, not daring to see her bewitching face anymore. He knew that he screwed up big time after seeing her for just a few seconds. As in before, he only heard her voice while imagining her as an old hag. But now, that he saw her real form he would find it extremely difficult to listen to her properly without recalling her angelic beauty. Heck, even if she cursed at him, it would only sound like heavenly bells ringing in his ears. That's why he knew that he was done for. After all, if he couldn't fix this enchantment, the fate of being her simp wasn't too far of a stretch. At that point, he would truly become her slave. A yes-man who would never refuse any of her requests. 
no wonder she said that he wasn't going to handle seeing her naked before. What a joke, currently he couldn't even keep eye contact with her face without breathing like a horny teenager. Don't even mention seeing her nude. No doubt, Felix would straight away pass out from the arousing sight. As he kept taking deep breaths periodically, his enlarged slits slowly returned to their original size. He placed a hand on his heart that was beating 100 times per minute, trying to calm it a bit, get a grip, she is as old as the universe. Don't be fooled by her captivating face. In the end, she is still an old lady. He tried to relax his teenage hormones that were causing his body to have such an intense reaction, by mentioning the large age gap between them. However, his plan quickly fell apart as he heard her talking in her sleep with a charming voice. Die, you stingy bastard. You dare refuse to bring me movies to watch. Burn in hell. Even though she was cursing him, Felix only had a love-struck expression on his face while hearing her talking about him. Just like a crush finally responding to your message after six months of waiting. What he feared would happen, ended up happening eventually. So, without further delay, he quickly escaped from his consciousness without fulfilling his plan of scaring Asna. In the white room, Felix woke up with black lines on his forehead. Fuck, she was probably planning to take advantage of my age, by harassing and teasing me when I visit her for the first time. Good thing he saw her while sleeping without her knowledge. So now, the situation could still be salvaged if he slowly managed to numb her beauty from his memory by seeing her constantly, or imagining her all the time. This way when he finally sees her for real, the only response he would give was, meh, not bad. But that wasn't going to be a walk in the park since she could read his mind and easily figure out his plan. So he had only a limited duration to take advantage of, and that was during her sleep. I will never give her the satisfaction of seeing my stunned expression when I meet her next time. He stood up with his fist clutched tight and said, I swear on it. He then dropped the matter for now, as his time inside the room was tight. So, he began scrolling for other necessary techniques to buy. Such as the UVR consciousness connection, that would allow him to connect to the UVR wherever he was in the universe without relying on signal towers like commoners. The consciousness access technique he was using now only allowed him to enter his consciousness, nothing more, nothing less. After buying a couple of different techniques, he closed off the screen and left the white room without testing them. A few hours later, Felix already returned to his room in reality and paid a servant to handle the delivery process of the gifts. It was really a weird moment when Felix welcomed the servant, wearing wide glasses that covered half his face, a cap on his head, and a hoodie on top. His appearance resembled a celebrity trying their best to remain undercover in public. However, Felix wore like that just to cover up for his mutations, so the news wouldn't leak outside this early. The last thing he needed was handling the elder's investigation right now, as a more pressing issue was chasing after him, which was how to deal with Asna's overpowered charm without alerting her. He spent hours thinking of a solid plan. But, no matter what he came up with, he always returned to his original first plan, that was to numb his emotions by seeing her constantly in her sleep. He knew that a plan like this wasn't reliable much, but when compared to what he came up with, it was the only one that had the highest chance of success. After all, everything in the universe would gradually lose its beauty and luster if one kept staring at it constantly for a long period of time. Or at least, the feeling wasn't going to be the same as seeing it for the very first time. The only fault in this plan was the fact Asna could wake up at any given moment without prior notice. Felix had no plans to meet up with her while awake. Otherwise, the fate of getting harassed and teased to death was inescapable. Hence, the current dilemma, whether to go for this plan or not. Fuck it, I will enter as much as possible during this month to build immunity against her. He massaged his temples gently and added, if she wakes up, so be it. I will take her teasing like a horny teenager, nothing to be ashamed of since I am excused from anything I do or say during my hormonal upsurge. This is all the fault of my body, not me. He quickly built a solid excuse to use in case the plan failed. After all, his body was still 18 years old. The year where hormones were doing most of the talking and not his rationality. Felix sighed one last time and pinched his throat again, planning to access his unconsciousness to kick-start his plan as fast as possible. There was no time to waste, as every second count in this race. Either he survives her charm, or she wakes up and finds out about everything. 
Twenty days quickly passed by, as the big day of awakening in the family was happening tomorrow morning. Everyone was on edge, whether parents or the few remaining juniors who were about to awaken. No one was spared from the tense atmosphere. The entire building had descended into a deafening silence, in preparation for tomorrow's big event. Yet suddenly this silence was broken by Felix's loud bragging voice that resonated on every floor. Party in my room to celebrate this daddy's successful awakening. Only female cousins are invited though. Thank you and good luck tomorrow. After finishing his announcement Felix paid the monitor room guard two cigarettes and bolted in the direction of his room. He knew that the elders were going to rush towards it, to see if he lied or not. Thus, it was better if he was there already than to be cornered by them in the hallway. Just like he guessed, the moment the announcement was made, everyone's peaceful expressions changed to disbelief and shock. Especially the juniors who were relaxing their mentality in preparation, as they heard his damned voice, loud and clear from the speaker that was installed in their room. Bullshit, how can he awaken when his bloodline is in the hands of the elders? Kenny that was practicing yoga in his room sneered after hearing Felix's bold claim. His reaction was exactly the same as the rest of the juniors. They honestly believed that Felix was either lying as a prank or to lighten the mood. Whatever it was, his claim was totally bullshit. After all, the elders were definitely not going to give him the bloodline bottle during this sensitive moment. It wasn't just him, but every junior had their bloodlines taken by the elders ten days prior. After a moronic junior tried to awaken secretly after realizing that he couldn't handle the torture of the mock practice anymore. His thoughts were understandable, as he believed that he would rather go for it, and wish for Lady Luck to grace him than to have his bloodline bottle taken away after giving up the practice. Unfortunately, his shriveled body was found the next morning laying on a pool of clotted blood. Thus, the juniors had no plans to head to Felix's room and entertain his crap. They would rather continue their mental preparation, hoping to get a peace of mind for the big day tomorrow. On the other hand, Olivia was the total opposite, as she quickly left her room with a worried expression. I hope this is not one of his stupid pranks. Or else he will be heavily punished by the elders. She chewed on her lip inside the elevator and murmured, stupid Felix, it is really bad timing for pranks. Noah's ears twitched slightly, then returned normal. That was the only reaction he had about this situation. Meanwhile on the roof, near the swimming pool and the garden. Wide-eyed, Robert spat a mouthful of orange juice at Albert's face. Did that rascal really awaken? He wiped his mouth and said, I know for a fact that he won't lie about those kinds of things, which means he bought another bloodline from the UVR and used it. Dumbfounded, Albert cleaned his face from the juice drops. He did not even lash at Robert after being showered like that, he simply responded with a questing tone. But why didn't he wait until tomorrow? Isn't much better to awaken under our supervision? What's more pressing is to find out which bloodline he integrated with and why did he do so without informing us. Abraham slammed his palm on the table and shouted, this is intolerable action that must be punished. Otherwise, everyone would start copying him and doing what the hell they want without our approval. He huffed, we can't be having any more dead bodies on the building. Enough wasting time asking us. Charlotte pushed glasses upward her nose bridge and said, let's go find out in person. I trust Felix will have a plausible explanation. After Felix reached his room, he kept the door wide open and sat on a chair in front of it with a relaxed smile. He felt quite relaxed about the entire situation, as he spent the past half-month preparing enough material to counterattack every question they throw at him. A few moments later, the first to arrive was unsurprisingly Olivia, who peeked inside the room with one eye while leaning against the wall. Immediately after spotting Felix, who was sitting in the middle of the room in a carefree manner. She yelled out loud while barring her small fangs at him. Who are you? And what did you do to Felix? Chapter 64 Felix didn't know whether to laugh or cry at her reaction. But he could not blame her. After all, his entire demeanor had transformed after his stylish mutations occurred. If before he appeared harmless and playful to everyone else. Now with his current appearance, his bearing completely changed to being cold and dangerous with those gleaming deadly slits. But that's only if he kept his mouth shut. Too bad, Felix was not known for being as such, and he wouldn't change his personality just to fit his current style more. 
So, he welcomed the fuming Olivia with his typical charming easygoing smile. Come inside little Ollie. Don't worry it's just me Felix. Olivia stuttered while pointing her shaky finger in his direction. What happens to your hair and eyes? Before Felix could even answer back, she fired another question with a hint of excitement in her voice. Did you really awaken and those are the famous mutations that I read about online? Indeed, those are the byproducts after awakening. He answered, smiling. She quickly rushed to his side and asked with stars in her eyes. Can I touch your hair, please? It looks so soft and smooth. Felix rubbed his nose and allowed her to do as she please. Yet, he instantly regretted his decision after she planted her face on his hair and started rubbing it with her eyes closed shut in content. So soft and silky. This is the dream hair of every girl. Enough Ollie, get your face away. He pushed her clingy head away and scolded, you are dirtying it with your dripping saliva. Fuck my purple tips are all stained. Stop being stingy, just let me smell it one more time. Olivia just kept evading his hands while sniffing his hair with a happy expression like a puppy. Who could blame her though? Felix's hair had a unique natural fragrance that could be sold as perfume worldwide and reach instant success. The mutation might be useless in fights, but it made sure he wouldn't lose out in terms of looks and attractiveness to anyone. God damn it, Olivia, don't force me to cut eye. Suddenly both of them froze playing around as their eyes made contact with five elders who were watching them with a wide grin. Olivia, who are you flirting with? Charlotte asked. Sigh, our little flower is even flirting with men now. Time truly flies. Carter's shoulders slumped a bit. For my grandson to have his girlfriend flirting with another man even in his room. Robert sighed, I truly raised disappointment. If he saw her now, his hair will probably turn green, don't you think? Albert threw a jab at Felix without mercy. True. I know for a fact mine would. Abraham nodded his head while touching his long white hair. Irritated, Felix stared at those old fogies tease him with a dark expression. He knew that the elders were taking advantage of this situation to vent some of their anger at him, after not being informed that he was awakening. If before, they were a bit skeptical at his announcement, now, after seeing his hair and eyes, it became pretty clear that he was telling the truth, which made it pretty hard for them to stomach. After all, too many things could go wrong during the process of awakening, and only by having someone at Felix's side, backing him up whenever an issue popped up, could he awaken safely. Just like when Asner intervened when he was about to pass out. But the elders had no idea that he had her at his side. They thought that he went full commando, like an idiot, and risked his life for no apparent reason. Elders it's not what it looks like. This is Felix after he awakened. Olivia jumped away from Felix like someone stepped on her tail. She tucked her hair behind her ears with a slight blush on her cheeks and murmured, and he is not my boyfriend. Felix immediately supported her claim with a nod and changed the subject to not embarrass her any further. What brought you here grandpa? Are you here for the party? He asked. Rascal stop playing dumb. Hurry up and explain yourself. I can only hold those fogies from beating you up this far. Robert held his hand behind his back and ordered him to cough up his excuse, you better provide a good reason. Otherwise, even I won't be able to save you from the punishment. He is right. Don't try to bullshit your way out of this. Abraham approached him and said, just tell the truth. At least your punishment will be light. Queen AI, please show them my betting log. Felix kickstarted his plan immediately without using words, but actually showing them hard evidence first, to facilitate the following lies. As you wish, Sir Felix. Right away, Queen presented for each elder a holographic log that showcased Felix's latest bet. The elders were not expecting this at all, as they assumed that Felix would either lie through his teeth or acknowledge his wrongdoing but they still read the log with narrowed eyes, trying to see what he was on about. Yet, the moment they spotted the huge amount that he won after betting on Wally, their eyes couldn't help but widen in disbelief. You, you actually managed to win one million from betting? Abraham shouted out loud, almost deafening the elders near him. However, they didn't seem to mind as their eyes were too engrossed in reading that amount over and over again. Their expression was slowly changing from disbelief to envy and finally greed. 
The only one who didn't show those desires was Robert, who kept chuckling foolishly like he lucked out on a lottery. Felix merely sighed after noticing their human-like behavior, as he understood that the entire family budget did not surpass 5 million SC even after having the AP bracelet, and being in contact with UVR for over eight months. That 5 million was the fruit of their investment in the UVR in the past eight months. When compared to Felix who earned 80 million in two days due to his memories, it truly appeared pitiful. But, this was the true reality of earning money in UVR. It was never an easy endeavor to do so. Since to sell within the markets, having a good reputation, was a must. But to obtain a good reputation they needed to sell first. Such a vicious circle was the reason why the majority of new businessmen, who were trying to make a living, tuck their tails between their legs and cancel all of their business ventures. As for investments, that rarely worked well in the UVR where scammers were popping out like mushrooms with new projects to fool the investors every goddamn second. Only veteran investors were able to spot the small pieces of gold in the sea of dung, those scammers created. One should never take Felix's ways of earning money as a standard. After all, he was really just cheating his way up by taking advantage of his memories. If he didn't have them, he would have definitely performed even worse than the family. Indeed, it was truly just blind luck due to my curiosity. He scratched his nose and asked, do you want to hear the long version of the process or the short one? Please share all the details on how you did so. Abraham sat on the couch near him and said with his arms crossed, this is extremely important to the family future. As you wish. With a confident smile on his face, Felix started sharing the bullshit story he worked hard to create. Well as I mentioned before, I only gambled because of my curiosity. But before I did so, I needed the capital first, since I was penniless the moment I was dropped in the UVR. Indeed, just like us. The elders nodded their heads. So I tried to find ways to earn coins as fast as possible. Thus, I did what anyone in my age would do. He shrugged his shoulders, I searched online for a solution, and just like always the UVR network did not disappoint, as I have read in a public forum, that there is a law, entailing that any newcomer in SGA gets a 100. 000 SG loan with low interest and without providing a valid reason. Here I was wondering how you managed to get capital. It turned out you used the free loan rule. Disheartened, Abraham sighed after realizing that Felix did not luck out a job in a well-paying business or a shop like he assumed. But, merely used his SGA rights, which they already had knowledge of. His disappointment was understandable, as the family currently wanted nothing more but to expand as far as they could in the UVR. Thus, if Felix had actually found a job, it would further enhance their garbage social network even further by obtaining the friendship of his boss. I can already see the rest of the events. You betted your entire capital on the currently famous solid wall, thus managing to hit it big. Indeed, my father senses tingled that there is a profit to make in this gamble. So without hesitation, I threw everything I had on Wally. He looked at Abraham right in his eyes and said, I wanted to inform you about taking this gamble with me. But I know that it will be really hard for you guys to bet the family future on a single sense that might turn wrong. The elder's silence after hearing his explanation was a clear sign of agreement. In fact, they felt like if he told them, they would do everything in their power to convince him to either not bet or cancel it. Elder's caution attitude towards life was not the same as youngsters, who never gave a crap about future repercussions. It was a correct move not to inform us about this one. Robert scratched his beard and asked, but why didn't you tell us that you planned to awake yesterday with a different bloodline? Indeed, if you told us, we would have done our best to assist you. Charlotte nodded. Felix truly felt like a criminal being surrendered by detectives. Nonetheless, he neither broke off the character nor showed any loophole in his story. Well, I could not share all of the details, since I am bound by a contract I signed. But I can tell you one thing. He stared at their penetrating eyes, that were scanning every twitch in his face, just like a lie detector and said, the bloodline I awakened with, was a legendary rank. The instant he said the rank of the bloodline, everyone's brain short-circuited. The bombshell he dropped was too much for their mind to handle. They simply couldn't process how could someone in their family obtain a legendary bloodline, while they weren't able to even buy an epic rank one. This unbelievable fact truly blew their minds away, and their diluted stiff eyes were the best proof of so. Elders are you all right? 
With a hidden glint in his eyes, Felix asked worriedly, thud however. The only response he received was Robert's body dropping on the ground with a hand clutching his chest in anguish. Speechless, Felix stared at his grandfather having a heart attack at this untimely moment. The shock was truly too big for Robert's fragile heart to handle. Good thing, he didn't expose that he actually earned a whopping 80 million from the bet. Otherwise, his grandfather would straightway drop dead. Chapter 65 Everyone in the room broke out of their days after hearing Robert's forehead smack into the floor carpet. Thud. Fuck. Robert, don't you dare die on me now. Albert quickly rushed to Robert's side and knelt next to him, preparing to provide chest compression or CPR if his heart stopped beating. As for now, Robert appeared to be only having symptoms of a heart attack since he kept clutching his chest with a twisted expression. It seemed like the squeezing pain in the center of his chest made it difficult for him to breathe. If this carried on, his death wouldn't be a far-fetched ending. Abraham quickly took his phone out and called for the medical team in the building, who was responsible for the medical health of the juniors, to rush here ASAP. Meanwhile, Olivia kept running all over the room like a headless chicken, having no clue what she was supposed to do. Helpless, Felix sighed and took the longevity potion from his spatial card, planning to feed it to his grandfather. He never wanted things to go this way, as he preferred to hand it when he was alone with his grandfather, to avoid more unnecessary questions. If he explained to his grandfather how he bought it, he could leave taking care of the elders to him. But now, he could only use it in front of the elders, who would definitely skin him alive after hearing its price tag, well, change of plans, I guess, unlike the rest, who were losing their shit, Felix approached his grandfather and sat near his head. He then forcefully opened Robert's mouth and emptied all the white content of the potion inside, not giving the elders a chance to stop him. What the hell are you doing, Felix? Have you lost your mind? Livid, Carter jumped on Felix and dragged him away from Robert, who lay on the floor unmoving like a corpse after drinking that potion. No one could blame him, though, as it was a too foolish move to feed a person who has a heart attack with an unknown substance. It could only make his condition worse and even straight away kill him. Just like the current case, Robert's heart completely stopped beating, scaring the shit out of everyone. Immediately, Albert started doing CPR and chest compression in between each pause. No one bothered with Felix anymore or scolded him. They watched Albert trying his best to revive Robert while holding their breath nervously. Nonchalant at being seized underneath Carter like a criminal, Felix coughed to get their attention and said, Elder, you can stop. You won't be able to revive him. He quickly explained after seeing their murderous gazes, I fed him a longevity potion. It will remove all of his diseases at once and also provide him with immunity to them for the next 300 years that he will live. He will wake up automatically after the reconstruction process is over. Don't waste your breath. He said, chuckling. Albert's folded hands instantly froze midair after hearing the name of the dream potion he always wanted, but never had the capital to get it. It wasn't just him who acted like this, but every elder in the room froze as well. Even the youngest of them all, Charlotte. After all, the entire reason they were using coins they earned not on themselves but their juniors was but an investment for the future. A future where one of their children made it big and gifted them a longevity potion that cost almost 1 million SC. However, not in their wildest dreams would they have thought that Robert would drink one in front of them this early without even being aware of it. Albert stared at Robert's peaceful face and wanted nothing more than to slap him hard in the face for having such a grandson that spent his entire fortune on him. Meanwhile, his granddaughter didn't even give him a call once a month. Such filial pity was almost extinct in the current age. The silence did not last long, as it was quickly broken by Felix's whining, Elder Carter, can you get up already? My hair is being dirted from lying on the floor. It takes a lot of effort each day to wash it. Who gives a shit about your hair? Abraham roared with a booming voice, you better confess how much SC you own. Felix. It is clearly impossible to obtain both the legendary bloodline and also the longevity potion with only 1 million SC, no matter how much you think about it, Charlotte said, composed as always. I was planning to explain everything at once in detail, but Grandpa just had to steal the spotlight and act dead. It's not my fault. He said. All right, let's wait for Robert to wake up. Then you can share everything. 
She returned to her seat and put one leg above the other, waiting for Robert to wake up from the reconstruction process. The rest followed after her and reseated as well. Only Carter stayed in his position, uncaring about Felix's cries. Elder, I think it's better to cancel the medical call. Olivia suggested softly. Oh, thank you for reminding me, little Ollie. Abraham patted Olivia, who was sitting next to him, and quickly cancelled the medical call. It was much better to have as few outsiders as possible when dealing with such sensitive matters. Fortunately, Robert did not keep them waiting for long, as he woke up a bit muddled a couple of minutes later. Why do I feel like I am back to my twenties? He murmured while touching his heart with a frown. He then applied force on his neck but felt nothing, followed by his lower back, but still felt nothing. He kept applying pressure on all of the body parts used to torture him due to his old age. Yet, he only felt comfort each time, making his face light up brighter and brighter after each attempt. Relieved and quite happy, Felix stared at his grandfather, who was touching himself up like a kid. Worth it. He murmured. That's the only thing he could say to express his joy after seeing one of his previous regrets get finally resolved. However, his joy was quickly replaced by shame after seeing his grandfather putting his hand in his nether region with clear expectations, written on his face. Shortly after, Robert stood up with his hands in the air shouting out loud like a deranged madman. My dragon has revived after thirty years of dormant. Felix just buried his head in the ground, trying his best not to associate himself with his grandfather after seeing such shameful behavior. Meanwhile, the elderly men all gave Robert a dirty look with a hint of envy. As for Charlotte and Olivia, one just stared calmly, unbothered about the farce, and the other covered her eyes with her fingers while peeking from the gaps with a flushed face. Enough embarrassing your grandson, old geezer. Albert smacked Robert's bald head to vent some of his envy and said, you are making him regret gifting you the longevity potion. Robert did not even lash out at Albert. He stared at Felix in bewilderment after realizing that his body rebirth was due to the longevity potion, and not some miracle he assumed in his mind. Yet, the first thing that came out of his mouth was not gratitude but scolding, you little bastard, why did you waste a million on these old bones? He added in anguish, you could have bought resources to help you reach a higher level than your peers, or at least invest that capital in business within the UVR. So many things could have been done with it. If he weren't bald, he would have pulled his hair out in frustration. I can always earn those later some way or another. Felix shook his head and smiled, but you only have one life, and I would be a fool if I didn't use what I earned to cure your disease and add some extra years. He chided, with your drinking habit, you might flat out die tomorrow. I can't risk it. Everyone had their tongue tied after hearing his claim. After all, to be selfless to your own kin was a virtue worthy of respect by anyone. Robert could only grin foolishly while poking Albert in his temples. How do you find my grandson? H.M.? Not bad, right? He placed his arm around Albert's shoulder and continued bragging with a smirk. You always mock me, saying that I wasted too many assets on a good-for-nothing kid. He he, who's laughing now? Irritated, Albert could only lower his head and accept his taunting in silence. He knew that nothing he said would be good enough as a retort since Robert was completely right. He indeed mocked and threw some insults at Robert each time he saw him trading his assets to negate young Felix's punishments. For a cheapskate person like him to see that happening in front of him, he honestly could not resist mocking Robert for it. But now the tables had turned, the wastrel he was mocking helped his grandfather add 300 years to his longevity, while his granddaughter wasn't even interested in this awakening crap, after he taught her laboriously in her young age to only live for money and money. All right, enough bragging Robert. We still have unfinished business with Felix. Abraham quickly saved Albert by mentioning the ongoing questioning. All right, I will visit this old coot later in his room to continue our delightful conversation. Robert smiled in Felix's direction and said, Felix get it over with, and tell them what they want to hear. Carter understood the cue and helped the irritated Felix to stand up. Elder, you really need to lose some weight. Pained, Felix massaged his back and returned to his seat, planning to continue his bullshit from where he left. As I said before, I am bound by a contract I made when I obtained the legendary bloodline. Hence I can't explain the details of the bloodline. 
he dusted his hair gently while uttering, but I can tell you how I obtained it. Good, that's what we want to hear in the first place. Abraham said. Well, after winning the million SC. I thought it was my lucky day, so I decided to participate in some market lotteries. He smiled. I joined each one I could find until the number of tickets I purchased raised to 150 with a total of 150. 000 SC, so you are telling us you wasted 150. 000 SC in lotteries? Abraham mumbled under his breath in disbelief, not daring to entertain the thought that Felix just wasted that much in a fucking lottery. Who could blame him, though? 150,000 SC was 30% of the entire training camp budget. I am gonna kill you, little bastard. He immediately dashed towards Felix with bloodshed eyes trying to rip him apart. Fortunately, everyone held him back before he committed a crime. Felix stopped trying to build suspense and instantly said everything at once after seeing the enraged elder. He honestly could not afford to play with their emotions anymore. I lost every lottery ticket, except the Bloodline one, which I managed to win the big prize of the month. And it was a legendary tier 1 beast. He added swiftly to ease Abraham's fury, in other words, I spent 150. 000 SC to obtain a legendary bloodline that could only be bought in auctions with outrageous prices. He is right. He truly obtained it as a bargain. Charlotte nodded her head and asked, I guess you used the remaining coins to buy the longevity potion. Right? Felix only nodded in agreement, as this was much better than he planned to bullshit with. Abraham relaxed a bit after understanding the full picture. But still, he didn't let go of Felix yet. But why did you awaken without informing us? He questioned him while being shoulderlocked by Albert and Robert. I doubt the contract will enforce you with such a stupid condition. Do you think I am retarded enough to inform you guys that I plan to awake with a legendary bloodline? He sneered, uncaring about saving them face, I know for a fact that you will pressure me to hand it over. So you can resell it and obtain enough coins to invest in business opportunities within the UVR. So, to avoid the entire situation, I would rather just risk awakening solo than informing you. He shrugged his shoulders with hands spread apart. Don't take it personally, I am simply protecting my own benefits. Tongue-tied at his reason, the elders, were left without any way to retort his negative assumption of them, as everything he mentioned was 100% correct. They knew that when it came to the family's future, personal feelings could be overlooked. Thus, they were going to force Felix to hand the bloodline one way or another. Such a treasure that could be sold for hundreds of millions must not be used on one person. Too many things could have been solved by having that amount in their bank account. First, it was enough to stomp all the families and authority figures on earth, leaving them to bite their dust. Second, it could be used to buy better bloodline and resources for their juniors. Most importantly, they could buy longevity potion for each of them without feeling a dent in their capital. This was what their thoughts were, and they were not ashamed of them. Because everything they do was for the family, except the potion one, that was simply a universal wish for everyone. But Felix was right, there was nothing personal here. He had no reason to hand over his own benefits for the family. A place where he had only but bad memories. So, they didn't blame him either hate him, they just sighed in helplessness over missing such a large opportunity to make a difference. All right, there is no need to say more, lad. You did what you thought was right, and no one will scold you for it. Albert walked towards the door and warned sternly, but you better work your ass off to bring its potential to the limit. Suppose you can't even secure a representation spot with this bloodline. I will beat you to death. The rest gave Felix a warning look and hastily chased after Albert, planning to see how they could take advantage of Felix's awakening to help the other juniors. They obtained the answers they came for. So, there was no point remaining in the room anymore. Although, those answers did not please them much. They still felt a little better after knowing that a Felix had awakened and also with a legendary bloodline. At least, they must be the first family on earth to have a legendary bloodliner. Robert hugged Felix with a warm smile. I am proud of you, kid. Your decision was the best one to be made, since only by securing your future can you start thinking of others. Thanks, Grandpa. I will keep your words at bay. Felix returned his hug while making an inviting motion to Olivia with a hidden glint. 
she shyly approached them and entered the hug as well with a cute smile. Sadly that smile was replaced with disgust after hearing two loud farts coming out of Felix and his grandfather. She quickly tried to remove herself from the hug. But, would the shameless duo be that generous and let her leave without taking a whiff? Sadly, it was a hard no. So, poor Olivia could only remain within their clutches with watery eyes and constipated expression from the deadly smell. Savi me elders. Too bad, their devilish laugh quickly engulfed her cry of help after using their unique trapping technique to prank her successfully. If Robert wasn't in a good mood, he wouldn't have entertained Felix's hidden wink he gave him during the hug. Chapter 66 Three days quickly passed by, as the big day of awakening ended up on a successful note without any hiccups. Eight juniors managed to awaken successfully after surviving the excruciating agony of the process. Some were known to have higher chances to awaken like Noah, Kenny, Olivia, and Sarah, while some managed to awaken out of nowhere, surprising the elders and their peers. Jackson Maxwell was of them. A fog element user with the spectral owl bloodline. No one believed that he was going to awaken successfully, as he fainted throughout the entire mock practice. Regardless, he didn't give up on awakening for real, and the elders weren't allowed to take his bloodline unless he explicitly agreed to give up. Thus, they could only watch him risk his life, knowing that his chances were null. After all, he failed the mock practice miserably, it was only natural to assume that he was going to fail the awakening as well. However, he defied everyone's expectations when he managed to remain conscious throughout the entire process. When the elders asked him how he felt, he answered that it wasn't as bad as what he experienced in the mock practice. In fact, he wasn't the only one who said so, as the rest of the juniors who awakened successfully with him mentioned the same. From this, the elders and seniors of those juniors realized that Felix and Charlotte were right in their tough-handed approach. It was much better to make the mock practice have the same difficulty as the real awakening during the last five days, as even if the juniors failed the practice, they would still have experienced the real awakening, and wouldn't be blindsided during the real test. Not to mention, the casualties were at the bare minimum, since the majority of the juniors decided to give up after realizing that it was impossible for them to even survive the first five minutes of awakening, based on their mock practice results. The only ones who went for awakening were the juniors who either succeeded in the mock practice, or at least survived the first 10 minutes before passing out. Due to those significant results, Felix earned some brownies from the parents of those children after saving their lives indirectly by his awakening practice approach. But Felix didn't give a crap about their gratitude, as he saved them in the first place only because he had nothing to lose, and it wasn't much of an effort. Otherwise, he wouldn't even bother. Currently, on the 35th floor, Felix stood together with the eight awakened juniors. Some of them received easily noticeable mutations. Such as Olivia who had a small growing yellow lily flower on the top of her head, making her cuteness reach a new level. However, the elders and Felix merely sighed after seeing this mutation happen to her during the awakening, as they knew that it wasn't possible anymore to pat her head. The gentle-looking flower acted like a protective helmet for Olivia, and she couldn't get any happier about it. Then there was Kenny who received a somewhat low-key mutation, as dark shades covered both of his eyes, making him even harder to read. Meanwhile, some did not undergo any mutation at all, as they remained exactly the same. Just like Noah, nothing changed about him or added. But, it was understandable since not everyone could receive mutations from an awakening with just 1%. It all depended on luck. The only certain way to get them was by increasing the dose of the injection as much as possible. Nevertheless, Felix's mutation was still the envy of everyone, as the moment the elders left his room after their interrogation, they announced that he truly awakened under the supervision of Robert. They had to add an elder, otherwise, the rest would start complaining about favoritism. However, the elders thought too much about it, since the juniors' brains excluded all those pity secondary thoughts and focused only on one thing, and that was one of them truly awakened. They had seen awakened bloodline as many times on the internet and UVR streams, but still, nothing beat seeing the real deal. Thus, they all rushed towards Felix's room, like a debt collector coming to pay a visit. Felix already anticipated their arrival, since he heard the announcement as well. So, he left the door wide open and sat in the same chair, feeling like some endangered animal on public display. As soon as they arrived and saw his new outlook, they went bonkers in his room, 
chatting and asking billions of questions about his process of awakening and mutations. The boys envied the purple slits that made him appear dangerous and elegant at the same time. While the girls never stopped harassing him to let them touch his hair or smell its natural spring fragrance. In spite of that, Felix only felt annoyed by the whole farce, as he truly believed that his mutations were quite trash compared to what he saw in his past life. Alas, those teenagers cared only about dashing mutations, and not about their usefulness in battles. Meanwhile above the stage. The elders kept viewing those juniors with a foolish grin, ruining the serious atmosphere of the gathering. But who could blame them though? Every time they imagined the jealous looks of other families after seeing their nine awakened juniors during the upcoming US national team battle, that grin gets fixed on their faces without any way to remove it. Because based on Charlotte Intel, the majority of the business families in the US only had four awakened, while their true rivals had a maximum total of seven awakened. So for their Maxwell family to have two extra members on their rivals was truly a gratifying thing to see. Charlotte fake coughed to wake up those foolish geezers from their imagination since everyone was looking at them weirdly. Too bad, her attempt didn't change anything. So, she could only walk up the podium and take it from there. It seems Elder Abraham is not on his peak form, so I will be the one who will inform you about what you should expect on the second stage of the training camp. She paused for a bit to see if she had everyone's attention and added, the second stage of the camp will teach you how to integrate the remaining 98% without issues. In addition, to help you reach at least lesser purity before the third stage of the camp. Keep in mind that not all of you will reach it. The juniors were a bit skeptical at her certain tone, but Felix knew why she was confident in her claim. Since in this stage, the goats would be separated from the sheep. Or in other words, it's finally time to see who was going to have a smooth path ahead of him, and who was going to struggle his entire life just to break through the purification realm. The method the elders were going to use was simple actually, and that was to separate them based on their affinity rating. Those with 40% or below would form the below average group. Those with 40% to 60% would form the average group. Those with 60% to 80% would form the gifted group. As for 80% to 100%? Humans born with that affinity were as rare as a triple elemental user. The reason why the affinity rating was the true decider of whether someone was going to have a smooth path or not, was simply because the higher an elemental affinity a bloodliner had, the faster the body was able to adapt to the bloodline it was merged with. After all, in every integration, the human DNA gets broken apart and reconstructed it again, but this time with the beast genes merged with it, author note, just like the scene in the first Spider-Man movie, where Peter Parker got bit by the spider. I will post the link in the comment section. Thus, it was natural that an adaptation period, or what the majority called the cooldown period, was a normal outcome. Since the body wouldn't be able to handle, having its DNA constantly broken apart and rearranged again, without even taking a breather in the process. However, the elemental affinity was able to hasten this adaptation period, to the point it could even remove it entirely. This was one of the main reasons why humans were only able to awaken with beasts that had the same elemental affinity as them. Otherwise, the body would immediately reject the bestial bloodline, and either explode or enter a state of shock, just like it was rejecting an organ donated by someone. If we reverse this reason, we can easily infer, that the body of a bloodliner with a high elemental affinity rating would accept the foreign genes of the beast with open arms, nullifying the adaptation period, or even removing it entirely. In a different sense, the integration process was the same as an organ transplantation operation and the affinity rating was the decider whether the body would accept the organ or reject it. And if it did accept it, how long it would take before the body could recover its peak form. Felix was desperate to raise his affinity no matter what, just for this reason. As he knew that with his 59% poison affinity rating, he would need at least 24 days cooldown period between each integration. His cooldown wasn't even that bad when compared to bloodliness with a 1% affinity rating. Such a garbage affinity forces them to wait for at least two months before they could integrate again. One should only imagine how long it would take them to reach the peak of the purification realm with such a messed up cooldown. This was how the sheep were split from the goat in the human bloodline system, there was no such thing as born genius or prodigy, due to comprehensive ability or something in that sense. The only thing that mattered was whether one was lucky enough to be born with a high affinity to smoothen his path, or born with trash affinity that would make his life hell. 
it was all about luck and fortune. Noah who had a whopping 70% affinity rating was beyond lucky, as it meant he was able to integrate every 18 days. Plus, with his hard-working no-bullshit personality. He would never idle around, or give up his bloodline path as the majority did after not being able to handle the continuous torture of each integration. This was how humans cultivate or in this case integrate to obtain their strengths. Even though their system was painful and long, humans still choose to tread it. Since the moment they stopped, the whole beast invasion situation would resurface again. But with a different race. The universe did not accept weaklings, no matter if it was in the Dark Ages or the current SGA era. After Charlotte explained all the necessary information about the integration process. She separated the nine juniors into three groups. Two juniors were placed in the C group because of their affinity that was below 40%. Five juniors were placed in the B group since their affinity did not reach 60%. Kenny and Felix were within it as well. Lastly, the A uh, group had only Olivia and Noah as they both had 65% and 70% affinity respectively. After separating them properly, she said calmly to the grumbling juniors who did not like those settings. You don't have to be upset, as you can always climb up if you performed well, and also fall down if you remain idle and waste our resources. Bored, Felix kept yawning with an absent-minded look, not focusing at all on what Charlotte was saying. He just wanted this gathering to end already. But who could blame him? Everything that she said, he already had knowledge of, and everything that she was promising as a reward, he could obtain better by himself. At this point, the entire training camp had no meaning to him but a waste of time. The merit shop turned to be a disappointment, the AP bracelet that he planned to work hard to obtain he already secured it before the camp even started. So in a sense, it was quite meaningless to remain in the camp anymore. But he couldn't just go ahead and tell the elders that he wanted to quit, as they would skin him alive if he mentioned anything about lazing around while having a legendary rank bloodline within him. Plus, Felix didn't want to ruin his chances of joining the Earthlings' representative team by going against the family board. He would rather play house obediently with his cousins than to go on his way and struggle to reach the world representative battle, by participating in public qualifications. He wasn't a fool to let go of his family thigh, that had an already secured spot within the US national team battle, and go struggle within the sea of commoners, who were trying to do the same. A couple of hours later, Felix wore his pajamas and lay on the bed comfortably planning to log inside the UVR and place his bet on the second game that he remembered clearly on his mind. Although there were still four days before its official start, Felix couldn't wait to empty his bank account on his bet. He struggled inside the UVR for way too long, just to save each coin, in order to increase his earning after the game. God knows how many lines and cues he had to stay on during the past month. Heck, sometimes he didn't even log in for three days to five days, just to not get lured to watch a movie, play an online video game, or even visit the Red District. Too many distractions were within the UVR and for a somewhat rich lord like Felix, they were the greatest honey traps. Thus, he entered the UVR only when necessary in the past month. But now, the game he was waiting for desperately was finally here. Felix couldn't but call eagerly in his mind, Queen Logmian, it was time to earn some free coins. Chapter 67 The moment Felix logged in, he directly took a hover cab towards the gambling den 20 minutes later. He exited the den with a grin after successfully emptying his entire bank account that had 64 million SC. He left only 10,000 as an emergency. Felix obtained 45 million SC from selling the filtered Anamamba bloodline. After successfully integrating the last 4% of the Jormungandr bloodline he found inside the bottle. This happened five days prior after his cooldown period went off. He wasn't lazing around during the past month as he went from a store to another seeking to sell his bottle to the shop owners. He had to throw his net a bit wide since each shop owner offered a different price. However, all of their offers were a huge rip-off as some bastards even asked Felix to sell it at 45% cheaper. For those greedy fuckers, Felix only spat on their faces and escaped. What else could he have done? His reputation wasn't good enough to support his claim that his bottle had 75% plus essence. Heck, he wasn't even able to sell it directly to the buyers due to it. After all, how could they trust in his words? They fell for the same trick so many times, it wasn't even funny anymore. 
Thus, Felix sadly had to settle with selling his bottle at 30% cheaper after spending days searching around for a shop owner in a good mood to offer him that price. None of this would have happened if he was able to return the bottle to Luby and ask for a refund. Too bad, doing so in this industry was extremely unprofessional and abhorred upon. Felix didn't want to irk Luby this early. He still needed to take advantage of him. The only good news about all of this was the fact that Brother Fatty agreed to deliver the filtered bottle to the buyer, after he met up with Felix during his potions delivery. After all, Felix had to buy them again for the second integration. Since Felix was making an off-record delivery without contacting proper channels for so, he had to bribe Fatty with 20,000 SC to make it happen. However, Felix wasn't complaining much about the bribe, as it was much better than paying the original basic 150,000 SC just to deliver one bottle. The wormhole company's minimum payment was always 150,000 SC. It didn't matter if Felix wanted to deliver a chewing gum or nail. For days later 7 p.m. Felix sat with his usual cheering outfit on, within millions of fans in a Coliseum sports stadium that had ten layers of seating, each contained a couple millions of fans. Weirdly, at least 60% of those fans were females from all shapes and types, wearing a pink t-shirt that had a gorgeous male face, smiling warmly with glittering grey eyes designed on it. One look at that face and any shallow female would fall over heels for him. Shortly after, every one of those females cheered out loud with flushed cheeks until their throats went dry, deafening all the poor males in the audience, who came to spectate the game to cheer for their bets or loved ones. But, after seeing the same gorgeous male that was on their t-shirt teleport on the playing field with a warm smile on, they understood why. Nonetheless, they still grumbled with frowned eyebrows at those superficial females, who were cheering like fangirls. Felix's bet was not on this man where asterisk re, but on a completely random average individual, who was only in this game to add numbers. Regardless, Felix still bet on him to win, as he knew that this game would have a twist that was going to teach every player an unforgettable lesson for eternity. Trying his best to hold his laughter, Felix's lips kept quivering at the sight of the grey-eyed idol, getting interviewed by the MC over his goals and wishes. He he, sadly your only wish after this game is for it to be completely erased from everyone's memories. Not able to hold it back anymore, he let out a wicked laugh with his chin raised and arms spread apart like a madman. However, not a single female near him paid attention to him or his words. The only thing that was in their eyes, was the gorgeous face of their idol. The half hour of the interview quickly passed by, as the MC used the full duration to shower the grey-eyed idol with all kinds of questions. Some were about this game, while the majority were about his private life. Yet, no one complained about this MIC hoarding, except for the players who were seething with suppressed rage over being undervalued by the MC and the pretty boy like this. Every player had a hidden evil glint in their eyes, as they kept watching the MC and the idol flatter each other after the interview ended. No matter if they were males or females players. None of them liked what they were seeing. Still. They only stood silently between two white lines that stretched for over five kilometers in a wide circle inside the stadium that appeared, just like Earthlings running track stadiums. But, on a much bigger scale and more advanced technologically. This game was one of the popular sports format based. Named, Unlawful Marathon. As the current 50 players were required to run 10 laps around the track which meant a whopping 50 kilometers of distance. However, this was just the condition required to win the game. The real entertainment came from the fact that rules were completely non-existent. The players could do whatever they wanted to win the race without any repercussions. Anything was allowed from hindering competitors using their own bloodline abilities, to making teams and defend from others' attacks. The only rule that stood in the field was to run properly the 10 laps after hearing the countdown hit zero. One could only imagine the chaos and massacre that was about to happen at the starting line, where everyone was still in one pack. If it wasn't for such a gruesome scene, the audience wouldn't have bothered spending money to come and watch live. Damn, still as invisible as ever. Felix's eyelids twitched at the sight of a short player, lining up at the leftmost side of the track, unnoticed by anyone. If he wasn't playing with his long green tail by rolling it onward, then stretching it straight again continuously. Felix would have honestly found it quite difficult to spot him. This was the player he bet all of his capital on. Oh, it seems that the main event is about to start. 
Felix chuckled immediately after switching his vision from his bet to the man where asterisk re, who was sandwiched in the middle of the track by a resentful mob. But, it seemed like the idol didn't notice any of this, or simply didn't bother to do so. He just kept his warm smile on his face, while stretching his limbs under the screams of females' fans. After all, he was the son of a well-known governor within the Alexander Kingdom. Who would dare to kill him live? Even beating him excessively was an unforgivable crime. Unfortunately, his shenanigans over the last couple of years had started to rub the players off immensely. This wasn't the first time he hogged the MIC like this, but just one of the many times. Too bad for him, it seemed like this would be the last one as well. As the moment the reverse countdown reached zero, every player ganged up on him and started beating the shit out of him, without using their bloodline abilities, since they just wanted to teach him a lesson and not kill him. A governor's position was not to be taken lightly. So after a few moments of threshing him up to vent their anger, they left him lying on the track with a disfigured face and ripped off clothes, showing bruised parts of his body. Yet, the worst part, was that his nether region was in full display, showing a minuscule worm between his legs. The moment his messed up appearance was highlighted on the large screen, females all over the stadium either fainted from shock or cursed out loud at the assailant's vicious beating. But, the majority of them broke off their spell and gave a disdainful look at his worm. Meanwhile, the men laughed their asses off after seeing the man where asterisk re lying on the floor, like he just got run over by a herd of buffaloes. Especially Felix, whose tears never stopped gushing out from laughing so hard. Although, he already saw this scene that turned into an iconic meme over a hundred times in his past life. He never got bored of it, not even once. There was always a hidden joy when seeing someone fall off, or fail a stunt. Don't even mention seeing an arrogant idol get beat up live without mercy. This was the lesson that everyone learned in this game. Never hoard the MIC for too long. Otherwise, your fate would be the same as his, coming here was truly worth it. Felix let a few last chuckles and switched his vision from the idol that was being carried on a stretcher to the player he bet on. But, he could not find him anywhere. As expected he really can camouflage himself perfectly using his chameleon bloodline active ability. After understanding that his bet was already active in the field. He immediately switched his normal vision to heat vision by using the enhancement he bought. Look and behold. His bet took advantage of the player's distraction during their threshing and bolted away first. He was almost close to finishing half a lap while the rest were still struggling to even leave the pack without being bombed by some ability. He kept running on his four limbs while being completely hidden from both the contestants and the audience who never bothered to pay attention to such an average player. However, he never dared to slow his speed down for even a bit, since he would easily get noticed by those with senses passive abilities, such as asterisk heat vision asterisk, or asterisk echo location star. As for active abilities? Any element that touched him, would break off his light bending invisibility. If it wasn't for such glaring weaknesses, his bloodline wouldn't have been ranked as uncommon. So he ran with a fixed pace, keeping a quite good distance away from them. If he kept going like this, finishing the 10 laps without anyone's knowledge, wouldn't be impossible. He didn't need to run a lap or two around them to be dashing for the audience. But merely keep a fixed distance, and no one could ever catch up or harm him. This race was designed as such. Anyone who managed to leave the pack safely would have better chances of emerging victorious. However, the moment someone got stuck inside, he would remain there until he either dropped dead, get heavily injured and sidelined, or simply depend on luck and win after one last sprint. Too bad no matter what those players tried to do, it would always remain futile as one was running ahead of them without their knowledge. After two hours of constant running and bashing each other, the remaining 16 players or so finally reached the last half lap, and so, using every ounce of their energy, they sprinted without care about those near them. It was like a tactical agreement made in silence to just fight it out in one final sprint without attacking each other. Peep! Unfortunately, before they even passed 100 meters, a familiar loud buzzing noise resounded in the stadium, marking the emergence of the champion. Dumbfounded and quite speechless, everyone had their eyes gaping at the large screen that was showcasing a man standing upright at the end of the track with a relieved happy smile, on his face after winning probably his first game ever. After all, his bloodline was uncommon ranked. 
to actually clutch the championship with such a trash rank that everyone looked down upon was a feat worthy of respect and applause. Too bad, the only one who was cheering and applauding was Felix, who was shouting at the top of his voice in excitement over the massive windfall that was about to fill his bank account. His excitement is quite understandable since the winning chances of this random lad were 1 in 7. Which was quite large considering that only 50 participants were in this game. While those with higher chances of winning had only 1 in 1. 1 ratings, quite pathetic in comparison. Felix already calculated in his head that if his bet turned successful, he would earn a whopping 480 million SC. Half a billion from only one game. Anyone would have their jaws dropped after hearing this amount, which could turn their lives upside down. But Felix's excitement died down gradually, as he remembered that he still needed to obtain more and more, and never stop obtaining coins if he wanted his bottomless bloodline path to keep moving forward. If only he watched clips on other games that went viral in this period, he could bet half billion all at once on one of them. Sadly, his memory was completely blank. So, for the next upcoming five years, he was thoroughly blind to the game's results, which killed his gambling strategy at once. Nevertheless, Felix didn't mope about it for too long, since he still had his investment plan that might turn even better than making money from gambling. After all, every coin he earned from his investment would have an impact on his reputation. If he kept on investing successfully without failing, it wouldn't be long before he begins to receive invitations to closed-off auctions, high-class public gatherings, and events that he desperately needed to be part of in order to obtain resources that never reached the public markets. Like the elemental potion. Or at least its materials needed to create it. Chapter 68 Felix left the stadium under the thunderous cheers of the audience over having such a dark horse as their champion. The audience never hated cheering for the underdogs, even if they lost a bet on the process. He immediately took a cab towards the gambling den to transfer the coins to his bank account. Fifteen minutes later. He exited the den with an even wider grin than he entered with before. Without further ado, he started his investment plan by heading to the teleportation company planning to pay a visit to the Oblivion Film Studio, the production company responsible for producing the movie Human Melodies. He didn't want to waste any more time since only one month was left before the official release of the movie. Therefore, his investment opportunities on the movie had already shrunk to a large degree, leaving him only with marketing an S. But that was enough for him, as he knew that the more spotlights were on the movie, the bigger the reception would be. In turn, the words would spread quicker about this hidden gem, making it a blockbuster movie much faster than in his previous life, when it took at least a month before it truly drew the attention of everyone in the Alexander's kingdom. This way he would return his investment capital plus a windfall of profits after it goes viral everywhere much earlier than expected. After a while, he reached the teleportation company and paid the fees to pass the queue this time. He walked inside the device and clicked on the destination he planned to head to. The studio was in a different city after all. Two hours later. Felix sat in a coffee shop, wearing a business suit, and drinking bloodish thick coffee that had a soul-capturing aroma. Felix took a small sip with closed eyes in contentment, then said composedly to a bearded man sitting in front of him, Sir, I know that your movie had some difficulties during the production period. He began mentioning some of them using a finger for each problem. Investors pulling out, actors losing faith during the filming, cutscenes leaked by your own staff, and much more. Felix closed his spread out fingers into a tight fist and said passionately, but you managed to pull through all of them. Sure it was a difficult process that drained all of your budget, but still, you did it. Felix opened his tight fist and left only one finger extending upward while adding in temptation. But you only have one more step to take, just one. That is to advertise your work that might turn out to be the masterpiece of the year to everyone to see. I am not talking about the normal of releasing only one trailer online and praying to draw some interest. He shook his finger and continued, No sir, I am talking about a kingdom wide that will feature your movie trailer or poster in every notable website, every screen in the supremacy games, and every billboard in those neon streets. I am talking about pumping 300 million SC into Pure for over one week continuously until everyone in the kingdom must watch it to soothe their curiosity. Felix suddenly stood up and put both of his hands on the table and smiled confidently. That's what I am willing to offer you for only 40% of shares in your movie. 
You spent two hours harassing my staff to get me here, so you can say this preposterous offer? The man scratched his grey beard in irritation and asked, Are you out of your damn mind? I honestly do not see any absurdity in my offer. It is as sincere as it can get. Felix took a quick sip to fuel his throat for the upcoming negotiation, then said unhurriedly, Mr. Cosby you do realize that I am taking a huge risk by gambling on your movie after only seeing a few scenes that were leaked. I am putting my entire fortune on your movie success. So it is only fair I can expect some good returns, don't you think? He asked Mr. Cosby neither agreed nor disagreed with his claim, he simply said his own piece. But do you honestly think that 40% of shares on a movie that I spent my blood and sweat producing are only worth 300 million SC? Aren't you looking down on me too much Mr. Felix? He questioned Felix calmly without a hint of anger or humiliation in his expression, as he claimed. Felix chuckled softly while pointing at himself in derision. Do you honestly believe that I am dumb enough, stupid to such a degree, to invest in a movie without investigating everything about you and your staff? He laid his question without expecting an answer. He simply continued his mocking while shaking his head. No, 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 my dear Mr. Cosby. I already did my due diligence and found everything there is about your movie, from the good to the bad. And believe me, there is more bad than good on my list. His eyes turned rigid instantly and added. If you think that my price is wrong or low, then you are the one who is looking down at my capabilities Mr. Cosby as my offer is perfect for what I have written on my list. Felix without waiting for Mr. Cosby to ask about it, immediately displayed holographic list midair that only he and the producer could see. The moment Mr. Cosby saw those scandals that he put a large amount of money and manpower to bury, his composed expression couldn't help but break, as his pupils enlarged for a few seconds. But, he quickly blinked and his pupils were back to normal like nothing happened. Felix did not miss such a hint. After all, everything that he wrote in the list was merely pieces of what he remembered about the scandals between actors and staff within the movie crew. He was simply fishing for weaknesses that might keep his shares as close as possible to his offer, and the producer just handed him the ammo after his suspicious reaction. Felix immediately went on offense after he got what he wanted. Now can you tell me whether my offer was plausible or not? I am putting my money, my reputation, my everything in a movie that is filled with problems both ways, outside and inside. If it was not for the beautiful scenes that captured my attention, I would not even dare to put a dime in your irresponsible crew. His aggressive approach was smoothly replaced by a softer one, but I am still willing to follow my investment instinct and take a gamble on this one. So Mr. Cosby, one last time, are you willing to cooperate with me and accept my fair offer? Or are you willing to throw the dice all by yourself, without a single coin in your budget to market your movie? Felix asked calmly, meanwhile, his heart was pumping faster and faster from nervousness. A few minutes later of drinking coffee silently, Mr. Cosby stood up from the table while fixing his suit. Felix's heart immediately sank, as he thought that his aggressive approach before might have offended the producer. Fortunately, a sentence from Mr. Cosby managed to calm his heart a bit. Make it 35% and I will think about it. I apologize, but that's impossible. He shook his head and clarified, the best offer I can give you is 39% and that's only because I loved your other works. Otherwise, you won't even get that 1% removed since my offers are always fair and within reason to avoid those kinds of long-winded negotiations. All right, I will think about it with my crew. Mr. Cosby sighed over not being able to successfully cleave more percentages. But, 1% was still quite a lot considering that 40% had 300 million SC worth. You will hear from me a week before the movie release. Mr. Cosby smiled and offered a handshake. Satisfied about how things turned out, Felix shook the producer's hand after the first part of the deal was done. He then paid for the coffee and left the shop. Now, the only thing left was to wait patiently for them to call him, unless there were variables such as other investors intervening after seeing that someone heavily pumped funds on a movie they labeled as unprofitable. This was Mr. Cosby's reason for not agreeing at once. He wanted to delay the deal's conclusion as much as possible, since the more variables resurfaced in that period, the lower the shares Felix was going to hold. Felix understood what was on Mr. Cosby's mind, as he didn't even hide it from him. However, Felix had his own plans to reduce those variables to the limit, if not completely uproot them. 
anyone who had thoughts of competing against him for the shares, would have to think twice about it. After leaving the cafe shop, Felix wandered around the dense neon streets with hands in his pockets for about ten minutes now. Handsome why don't you come and play? Big bother our establishment has everything that you desire. Felix mused while walking near a bunch of escorts that were calling him flirtatiously to enter their establishment for some taste. Yet, he merely shook his head in rejection with a polite smile. This is already his fifth catcalling since he entered the center of entertainment in Alexander's UVR territory. The Holy Sinful City. A strange name, but an understandable one. As this city was known for being the holy ground of all entertainment platforms. Movies, series, games, animations, shows, 